Imagine if John Lennon Just got bored with being dead Climbed out of the earth Went to Scotty Oxen said Don't go telling your girl I love this Someone was that crazy To imagine such a plan To resurrect John Lennon To impersonate the man Talk about big balls no, don't get me wrong I, I, I was talking about Mike's courage That guy Hanford's nuts No I mean he's pretty crazy Mocking idols take some guts I remember when John Lennon Was shot in NYC I was 19, 1980 I'd worn a double fantasy A bright summer's day here Needless clouds fill the sky I thank God for a sense of humor It's what gets us off the floor I think Lennon would love Hanford But Yoko, I'm not so sure Let's, uh, let's meet our uh, esteemed panel here Joining us on this special bonus episode He's a first-timer Stage, the silver screen, the small screen Please welcome Anders home. Hello! Hi, gang <laughs> Thanks for saying hi to my gang I really appreciate it <laughs> Yeah, man I know how you roll Raised How, on the streets. You were raised on the streets. We we both were. I remember seeing you. Yeah, uh, no, there was a street in front of my house, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It wasn't just the house and then a sidewalk Yeah, uh, that was attached to the across-the-street sidewalk because there there actually was a street. And that's badass. But I also want to introduce our uh, the next three newcomers to the show. Can it be? They must know each other. Why would I introduce three people at the same time? Uh, as in fact they do, they uh, are in a rock and roll combination, just a dynamite <laughs> musical combination. Mm. <laughs> um, they, more, 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 more. <laughs> they're an emotional rock and roll band. Oh. Uh, individually, they are uh, Mike, Steve, and Steve of American Football. Hello, guys. Hey. Hello. <laughs> All right. Charming. And this is why musicians are great podcast <laughs> guests. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming. <laughs> we, we have another guest, and, and as musicians, all of you, I mean, uh, and Anders, I consider you the most serious musician out of the lot. <laughs> I would. Um, you, I'm sure you're going to be excited about this because we have a, an incredible guest to come in here. Um, you know him from his circular glasses, first and foremost. <laughs> that's, that's right. His eyeglasses. Oh. Uh, uh, he is a member of, uh, maybe it's just me, but for me, one of the the rock and roll groups that legitimized the the art form of rock and roll. I and think that's safe to say, of course. I think the the album Sgt. Pepper um, was really one of the first kind of 
albums that made an artistic statement, as far as I'm concerned. Well, certainly, especially on the front cover. <laughs> yeah. That was a busy one, wasn't it? My Wait, word. Please welcome John Lennon. Is well, here. thank you very much for having me, Scott. I, re- I really appreciate it. And America, this is the band American Football, who are sort of taking up your legacy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. I hope you become as popular as the Beatles one day. You know, we were a big band, you know. Really? Everyone saw us, yes. They were, records were flying off the shelves when we put them out. Why is that? You know, I think people thought our music was good. Okay, okay. And, and we, you know, we shared the same opinion. <laughs> you guys both... Uh, we loved it. Yeah, or all four, four of you held that opinion. Well, yes, every one of us thought we were good. Yeah, yep. fantastic. You know, the, the first... <laughs> question that comes to my mind, and maybe Anders and American Football, you guys are thinking this uh, yourselves, is, hey, uh, John Lennon, are, aren't you dead? Well, you know, I get that question all the time. I'm, I was dead, but you, I came back. <laughs> oh, you know, these things happen. You die, and you can come back to life if you like. I've only heard it happening one time, not in comic books, uh, and that's a little man named J.C., Oh, Jesus so, Christ. So he did it too. But he wasn't in a rock band. Mike, you, you've heard of this happening? Uh, Nikki Six. Nikki Six. He oh, yeah. di- oh okay. True? He was dead for seven minutes Woke or something? Woke up with a pool of blood in his hand and all that. I saw that behind the music. Uh, I don't know the details. <laughs> I, was I wasn't there. Yeah, yeah. right. So, okay, so the Jesus, wizard. Jesus Christ, Nikki Six, and now John Lennon. So now <laughs> John Lennon. But how long were you dead? Oh, I would say maybe four years. <laughs> so 1980, <laughs> yep. you died. I died at age 40. And then 1984, you were back? I leapt out of the ground. Yep. And I would travel around and not, you know, tell anyone I was alive because I like the private time, you know. Seems like your accent and dialect has sort of changed in the past uh, 30 years that you've returned as well. well how do you too. mean exactly? <laughs> you know, this is how I talk. This is how I've always talked. Okay, yeah. Well, maybe you're just acclimating yourself. Well, to... you're probably used to my singing voice, which is slightly different. Let's hear a little bit of that. Oh, yes, I want to dance around and love you all the time. Is that a new song you've been working no, on? that's an old one. We never released it. <laughs> okay, why not? It wasn't very good. Oh, uh, okay. And you only wanted to release the good stuff, is yeah, that right? Yeah, we did. We released all the best stuff we had. Yeah. Well, this is quite an opportunity, isn't it? I mean, guys, uh, anyone have a question for John Lennon? I mean, how often is one in the same room as a Beatle? John, any tips for a band about chords and progressions? Oh, yes. Some of the lessons. Well, I, I heard you. Hey, you know some of the tricks already, yeah. of course. We've got a few tricks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we have know. a wizard in the band. <laughs> we would just, the Beatles just call them progressions, but we also took lessons when we were younger. Show off. Hey. Certainly. <laughs> so Certainly. So you're saying, you're saying take lessons. If you're young, take lessons. If you're old, learn the tricks because you haven't time. <laughs> you know, you don't have time to learn all the, all the chords. Sure. If you're yeah. older. How, well, how many chords are there? Oh, there's got to be about seven or eight, at least. Well, we got A. Sure. We got B. <laughs> Hold on, we're on two already. We got C. <laughs> we're running out. That's three. D. Mm-hmm. E. Yep. F and G. That's seven. Yeah, that's seven chords. I that's was wrong. <laughs> oh, no, there's also an A sharp you can use. Oh, okay, yeah. So, But that's eight, and that's it. That's it. Okay. That right. should be it. That's all we ever used. Yeah. Oh, really? So just A sharp was the only? <laughs> that's right. Well, you know what? We didn't all play chords, you know. Oh, what'd you play? Well, I played a chord, sure, and so did George. And Paul, he played the bass. And I get this question all the time. Paul Paul played the bass? He played the bass guitar. Oh, okay. (laughs) But I get this question. People come up to me on the street and And say... And they recognize you. They recognize me because I'm very recognized. You know, you mentioned the glasses. This is, because this is the first time that I've ever heard of you actually being alive. It would seem like if people are constantly t- coming up to you, they sure, would talk Sure, I talk to them and I tell them, don't tell anyone. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> they don't. They don't do it. <laughs> but people will come up to me all the time, Scott, and say, I love the Beatles. Who was the drummer? And I have always have to say, you know, there were many of us in the Beatles. Some of us played guitar. Some of us played bass. But Ringo, Ringo was the drummer. Oh. That's the big Beatles secret, you know. <laughs> okay, okay. Very good. All right. I remember. Can I tell you a story, an old Beatles story? Oh, I would love, I mean, gosh, yeah. I would love Please. To. Well, you know, one time we were, Ringo, as I said, played the drums, and he came up to me and he said, John, you know, maybe I could play the guitar one time. I said, no, Ringo, you can't do it. It's too late. You don't know how to play it. You, you'd have to learn how to do it. And he said, well, you know, I could learn. I could take a practice and learn from you. I said, we're about to go on Ed Sullivan's stage right now and play our songs. You, we, you, you do the drums for this time, and then 
Maybe later we'll discuss it, but we never did. And that was the last time he had ever brought that up. Yeah, he realized, you know, he can't just switch around instruments like that. <laughs> Espe- but, you know, he, he wanted to do it mid-song, too, and I said, really? <laughs> what? You <laughs> wanted to do it mid-song? Sure, he was crazy. He just, <laughs> just dropped the drumsticks. Throw me the guitar. Just throw yeah. it over here. Well, he, no, he wanted to play the drumsticks on the guitar, and I said, you, now you're really <laughs> off here. This is not right. You know, Ed Sullivan, he wouldn't stand for that type of stuff anyway. <laughs> That's the only reason you didn't do it? Is because Ed Sullivan wouldn't stand for it? Well, that was the first time being on TV. We wanted people to understand who we were and who played what instrument. Right. Okay. Well, that's good. That's a good tip, American football. <laughs> yeah, you get it. If you're ever out there and someone asks you, answer them honestly, what instrument you play in a band? That's the biggest part of being a band is <laughs> knowing what instrument you play and mm. telling people about it. Yeah. Huh. Anders, a- any question you have for the yeah. people? Yeah. Yeah. And that was awesome. Um, yeah. What'd you do for the four years or how'd that work? Were you just, was it like, were you in limbo or when you Oh, no, dead? I was in heaven. You know, when you die, okay, thanks. you slip out, your soul sort of slides out of their body and rolls away. It doesn't just uh, like float through? It like- get, no, I'm getting to that. You roll down the street away from the crowd of people who was, you know, gathered around your murdered body. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. You, you get up, you dust off yourself. There's dust that clings to your ghostly spectral yeah, yes, form? Yeah, you're rolling around in the New York City streets. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> mm-hmm. you get a, you grow wings and you, you, you get a, a harp and you fly up to heaven. Where Does do you get hurt? this harp? It just appears. You know, it's like a magic trick. Do the wings hurt? No. When they grow? Okay. No, no, no. It's, very, it's all very, uh, as, as I like to say, unpainful. <laughs> Unpainful, yeah, and you like to say that. <laughs> <I'll>, <laughs> I like to say that if something feels good about me. British people are just sound smarter. When you used to have sex with Yoko, <laughs> would you describe oh, it as wait, unpainful? <laughs> that's what I would always say. <laughs> I would come home, you know, from a late day of, of working at a record studio. Okay, so you used to work <laughs> nine to five at the record studio. Right, we go in and from nine to five write music. Okay, I would come home and say, you know, do you want to feel? <laughs> Say, Yoko, do you want to not feel pain for a little while? <laughs> <laughs> and she'd say, sure. And, you know, we take her clothes off and have sex. <laughs> okay, very nice. Wow. Have you seen her uh, since you've been back? Or you cut her loose? You know, I tried to avoid her. <laughs> Why is yeah. that? Well, you know, I didn't really like her very much. Oh. Well, because she broke up me, my friend. <laughs> So she actually, you hold the opinion that she did break up the Beatles. <laughs> yes. You know, she told me not to tell anyone when I was alive. So what did she do? What was her plan, her evil plan to break up the Beatles? You know, she would come in and say, John, I've got some songs. So I, you know, work on these songs. And I'd say, you know, I'm at work. We can talk about this at home. <laughs> it's for making each other feel better. <laughs> wow. Yes. Okay. Well, she, you know, she never liked Ringo very much. She didn't. Why but, not? You know, she thought he, he wanted to play the guitar. And she said, no, he should be on the drums. And I said, I've already handled it. <laughs> I've taken care of that, you know. Also, he had a lot of rings, right? Okay, is it? A, it's a joke on his name. No, no, he literally has a lot of rings. I don't know. I never looked at his hands. <laughs> You've never looked at his hands. <laughs> no. Well, you know they were moving so fast when he was playing drums. Oh, that's true. Yeah. yeah. He, you know, you know, Ringo is not his real name. What's his? His real name wasn't Ringo. What is his real name? It was Richard. Richard Starkey. Sure, but we all figured, you know, you can't have John, Paul, George, and Richard. It doesn't sound very good. Why not? It just why doesn't th- sound... We, Ringo sounds better, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, but why didn't you guys all change your name as well? I mean, Because we were all so used to signing our own names. <laughs> but Ringo wasn't. No, he had never held a pen. <laughs> really? Why is that? <laughs> because they were always filled up with drumsticks, you know. Oh, so he was too busy holding drumsticks. Sure. Interesting. And, and then we decided, you know, you can be Ringo because you already know an R and an I. Sure. Just f- well, how did he already know the R and the I if he had never <laughs> held a pen? You know, this is all, <laughs> it's all sort of falling apart. This <laughs> oh, so, uh, okay, well, you know, through the passage of time, yeah, you, you know, forget exactly the details. the details if you, you know, yeah. coming back. Seems like you know a lot of the details, but then these yeah, particular like, ones, these, you're a little This one on. detail, I don't remember you. Oh, okay. Anyone else have questions for uh, about the Beatles or uh, solo material or, or or Hamburg, Germany? Oh, boy. Mm. What about Stu Stutcliffe? You know, I try not to think about him very much. Why not? Because we kicked him out of the band. Sure. Yeah, because he wasn't very good at his drums. And I heard about this Ringo guy. He played drums? 
Who are we talking about? <laughs> Stu Studcliffe? No, no, that name, I forget who that is altogether. <laughs> okay. Uh, maybe oh, you're thinking I'm thinking of, of Pete Best. Oh, right, right. Yeah, I, liked, I didn't like him. You didn't like him? <laughs> no. Re- refresh me. Now, here's a question for all of you. <laughs> refresh me on who Stu Studcliffe <laughs> He played bass, I believe. No, that's uh, Paul. No, no, I mean, this was er- in the early days when you played back in Germany. And oh, he, right. He uh, he decided to stay in Germany and marry. Yeah, that's when an we had artist. two bass players, and we didn't need. E- no, you know, I didn't play bass. We needed either point. of them, but Paul said you got to have me on bass. I said, all right, you already, you know, you're already figured out in the John Paul George and Richard thing. Have you kept up with Paul over the years? <laughs> no, you, you can't really. He moves around so fast, you know. <laughs> what do you know? I don't know. What do you mean? When he goes on tour, he doesn't stop. And it's tough to meet up with him. He stops when he gets on stage, right? Well, you can't go out and have a conversation with your old friend, can you? <laughs> when he's out on stage. Sure. It would be nice if you were to walk out there on stage and sing a Beatles song or two with <laughs> that him. Would, you know, I think a lot of people would like that. <laughs> yeah, I do think that. <laughs> because we had a lot of hits. <laughs> sure. That they'd want to hear. You know, the original members singing the hits, that would be something. That would be so. Why haven't you done it? Well, of course, we can't get George back. No. Well, what he, <laughs> he might be in the same situation as you. Sure. But he won't come back. You know, he likes it up in heaven, he said. So you didn't like it up in heaven? I think that, you know, bespeaks to uh, Anders' original question here. What, like, how, how did you actually get back here? Back on Earth? Yeah, yeah of course, yeah. <laughs> you know, I decided to, to leap out of the ground. Wait, so you were up in heaven. I, my soul was up in heaven. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I said to God, you know, I said I should go back down. I was 40 years old when I died. Mm-hmm. That's too early, I think. Mm-hmm. And maybe I'll make some more music. Maybe I won't. <laughs> it sounds like you haven't. No, I haven't. <laughs> so you kind of held that as a bargaining chip to God. <laughs> yeah, I, d- I did a little lying to him, you know, to get to get back down. He said, okay, you can go. But um, if you ever see Paul, you know, go on stage with him and sing. And uh, now I can't, I can't see you too clearly from over here. But oh, sure. um, Let me turn is your is your body the one from like the ground, or is it the new body like from when you were forty and just? It's the one from when I was forty, but I still wear the, the old mop top hairdo. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, you grew that out. Yeah, I like that. You know, I, we used to call them flop tops. Really? Yeah, and it was in an interview with a magazine. You know, when we were younger. And we said, yeah, we like our flop top haircuts. And they said, I can't hear you very well. I'm just going to say mop top. It's very interesting. Well, you know, we were so mad. <laughs> really? Yeah. How, for how long? For, well, let's see. Since I, every, uh, when I died, I was still so mad. every moment. Every moment of my life. You were upset with this guy. Yep. Wow. And, you know, I had, I had Ringo go. I said, Ringo, go beat on his head like a drum. <laughs> and he did it. He was always going out and beating people up for me with his drums. With his with drums. his actual drums? Yeah, well, <laughs> sometimes, sure. <laughs> you know, if he had the drum sticks, it would be a longer beating. But if it was just the bass drum, you know, that's one bang right on the head. Sure, You're yeah. done. Yeah. John, can you tell us, were, were you in Beetle Heaven? No, I was in regular Heaven. Beetle Heaven is for all the fans. Oh. <laughs> Wait, but the Beatles aren't there? No, it's just it sucks. <laughs> just wax. Sounds like Beetle Hell. There's wax figures of us up there. Yeah. Oh, like a Movie Land Wax Museum. That's right. My goodness. So the Beatles fans, when they die, anyone who's ever a fan of the Beatles, mm-hmm. anyone who ever even liked one song? Uh, no, you have to own at least four of our albums on vinyl. <laughs> on vinyl? Yes. Okay, so yeah, all the CD people, you know, the people who own Beatles. They're not CD. allowed in Beatles. Oh, you're going to regular heaven. Awesome. You get to hang out with the Beatles in regular heaven. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> That's the irony. That's the irony of it all. Now, is there a Beatles hell? Um, well, you know, I don't know, but if, if anything, I hope Stuart Sutcliffe is there. <laughs> hey, you know, he, he mucked up a stage back there in Hamburg. I couldn't move around. He was... A, he was getting in the way of my view of seeing Ringo on those drums. <laughs> Not his hands. Wow. That's a, half the reason I couldn't see his hands was because <laughs> Stuart Suffcliffe. Suffcliffe. You, you don't even remember his name. I hate him. <laughs> hey, uh, you know, uh, Anders was telling us about all the stars and celebrities who are going to be on Workaholics this oh. season. Do you maybe want to be on Workaholics? I mean, that would be an amazing get for you guys. Uh, I mean, our our demographic, I don't know if they would like it. Uh, that's true. You do one, often wonder if, you know, a younger demographic wouldn't recognize John Lennon. Well, that's true. You are a 75-year-old man. Yep. Yeah. You're that's, really old. Oh, yes. My, my hair, you know, it's as white as my suit used to be when I used to wear that white suit around. Sure. Oh, right. Yeah. I remember that one. Yeah. <laughs> From the Magical Mystery Tour years? That's right. But, yeah. you know, I had to get rid of it because I, I got it dirty, you know. Oh, how? Yeah, you know, I was rolling around in it. <laughs> On the grass? <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, when I died, I got you know I was wearing that suit and rolled around and got dirty. Ah, oh, that's too bad. So I jumped out of it and went to heaven. Now I can't. T- you're a 75 year old man, but I can't tell if you, the state of your body it, it looks to have decomposed a bit in those four years. Oh well, I, I really wish you didn't bring that up. I'm very sensitive about my looks. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's okay. Do you want to talk about it though? Ah, uh, sure, <laughs> sure. What do you not like particularly? About? Well, I just mean the fact that a lot of your flesh is rotted off of your face. Yeah, and yeah you know, I'm, I'm going to go on over to Beverly Hills and see if I can get that straightened out. <laughs> Put a new nose on and some cheeks. This is the first time you're hearing this? You've been back for 30 years. You know, a lot of people, when they meet legendary John Lennon, they don't start making fun of his looks and how he's decomposed. I'm so sorry. It's just they ask me questions, you know, about... <laughs> What it was like being in the Beatles. Well, I mean, I'm so sorry. Would you prefer I switch topics? No, it's your show. You can talk about whatever you like. All right. Well, uh, can I ask you, what is your favorite Beatles song? Oh, boy. You know, I don't have a favorite song, but I do have a favorite album. Oh, okay. It's, uh, it came out a few years ago. It's Beatles 1. It had all of our favorite top hit songs. The anthology? The, the Beatles 1, yeah. Yeah. It had, that, you know, I talked about the Sgt. Pepper cover. This had a very nice cover, too. It was red. <laughs> and it had a one on it. It had a one on it, so you knew exactly what the name of the album was going to be. So that was your favorite? That was my favorite album because it had all my favorite songs on it. <laughs> very nice. There were a lot of wow. songs, you know, on other albums I didn't like very much. Oh, really? Like yeah. which? You know, that Mr. Kite song that I wrote and sang on, I didn't like it. Oh, why not? Well, it sounded, it, you know how I wrote that, right? I read no. it off a poster. What? Yeah, that seems like a lazy way of doing things. <laughs> I wrote, recorded that. They hit stop on the recorder machine. I regretted it instantly. <laughs> really? But it seems like at that point there would have been plenty of time to say, hey, let's not release that. Let's uh, not. Know, pre- I was busy back then. I had to get to a lunch. <laughs> you had to get to one lunch. Yep. And that meant a song you didn't care for ended up on one of the most influential rock and roll records of all time? Can you believe it? <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> Can you believe it? Well, gosh. John Lennon, do you like emo music? What is that? Emotional music. Emotional music. <laughs> sure, I love it. You like when like, I like gro- when people emote. Do you too. like when grown men perform emotional music? I like that even better than nice. when young men do it. <laughs> <laughs> the older the man, the more emotional he can get. That's <laughs> true. I mean, are you guys more in touch with your emotions now? Absolutely. Yeah. So we it have sounds children. like children. Are you writing new music? I guess that's something that people should should wonder about. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> if, it um, if it ain't bro. Don't <laughs> yeah, you it. know, let's just play these old 10 songs over Can and I over just and say over. One thing to American football. Well, if you guys ever want to, you know, uh, uh, play one of the Beatles songs or if you go on stage and play it, you know, I'll send Ringo on you to beat you to death. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm talking, he uses a big kick drum now. <laughs> now he switched kick drums? Yeah, he gets bigger and bigger every year. <laughs> really? He grows by one centimeter? <laughs> now it's the size of an American football stadium. <laughs> oh, what? No, that's not true, but it could be if he lives long enough. <laughs> that's some of that famous Beatles wit, isn't it? <laughs> that's right. That I the saw wizard. in the uh, the Help movie. Oh yes, what a movie that Hard was. Hard Day's Night, actually, is mm-hmm. what I'm thinking of. Oh, you are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you remember making that movie? Do I remember? Sure, I remember that one. Yeah, why? Well, because you know it was the first time in my life I had film cameras telling, you know, following me. Telling around. you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we had uh, f- uh, cameras that would speak. <laughs> really? Yeah, it was the first time that ever happened. <laughs> and, I haven't heard you know about what? it happening since. Yeah, it's been the last two. Hey, you know, in this heat, this white suit is really coming in handy because white <laughs> does not absorb sunlight as much. Sure, sure, but you could wear a white t-shirt and white shorts. You'd be even cooler. One That's true. Say. That's true. All board shorts and a cut-off sweater. I would love to see you wearing board shorts and a cut-off sweater. Well, well when, just when you look say down, cut-off... my boy. I'm wearing them right now. <laughs> what?! <laughs> In That's, between you saying the white suit and now uh, you took off the white suit and you're I'm wearing board shorts. I'm struggling to take off my white pants uh, with board shorts underneath. I've never heard of nor seen a cut-off sweater. Uh, uh, describe it for me because it's almost indescribable for me. It's basically a sweater that you wear, any sweater, you know, knit wool. Sure. Ma- cardigan. Oh, it could be cardigan as well. Mm-hmm. And you cut it off at the sleeves as high as you like. It could be just above the wrist. It could be all the way up past the bicep. Yours are past the bicep. You almost look, look like Bowser in Shana Na. <laughs> well, I'll take that as a compliment. Well, I certainly intended it to be one. Well, then we're on the same level. <laughs> all right, fantastic. <laughs> Uh, John, you're going to be with us the whole show? I'll be with you the whole show. All you ask, by the way, when you see people out on the street, yes. is don't tell anyone that please. you're still alive. I'm happy to spend time with you and, and uh, write you an autograph, but just don't please te- don't tell anyone I'm alive. 
I'll sing a song, an original song for if you like. A new song? For anyone who wants to. I'll spend an hour and a half with someone. Just don't spread it around. Because you don't want Yoko to know. Well, you know, she, I still have one of her berets. <laughs> and I wear it from time, not in this heat, but I wear it from time to time in the winter. And I don't want her to find out about it, you know. Yeah. She finds out I'm alive, I lose that fashion statement. <laughs> but I keep atop my... Yes, very good, very good. You'll be with us the whole show. If you'll have me. I will. And, uh, you know, you were talking about uh, drummers, Ringo specifically. Oh, the greatest drummer of them all. No one could ever beat him. No one past, present, or future mm -hmm. could ever beat him on the skins. Well, we have uh, someone present uh, who, who drums, but also uh, he uh, has his own musical, I call it a side piece, <laughs> but it, oh, sure. It's a, like a side project thing where uh, he's the star. He's the drummer of Foxygen, but he is also, uh, his side project is Diane Coffee, is his uh, AKA, also known as. And uh, we have Sean Fleming on the show. Hello, Sean. Hello, Sean. Hello, how are you doing? John? Well, it's fantastic to meet you finally. Thank you. It's, it's always nice to meet another musician. You know, Scott's a nice guy, but he doesn't know what it's really like out there. No, I don't really. Hey, you know, you have a son named Sean. Sure I do. Sean Lennon. Yes. Well, don't tell him I'm alive either. Okay, you're still He trying. has contact with my <laughs> friend Yoko. <laughs> right, yeah. He's still in contact, yeah. Yeah, sure. So, uh, Sean, welcome to the show. Your first time on the show. Uh, and uh, uh, I heard your record, Diane Coffee, and uh, Everybody's a Good Dog is the title of it. I heard your record. I said, that's what I'm saying. I need to have that. I need to I need to own this. So I purchased it. I have it right here in my hot little hands and my hands are very hot. Uh, is that heat? It's a hot day. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's a great, great record. Uh, track three, soon to be, won't to be. I like that fuzz petal. That was something. Oh. Is that what? Is that the technical term for that? That's what we used to call it, a fuzz petal. But but yours were actually fuzzy. Yeah, well, we had extra. We were the Beatles. You know, we had a lot of extra it was the cash 60s. floating yeah, it was around. The, yes. Yeah, of everything course. was fuzzy. Everything was fuzzy in the sixties, including our brains. <laughs> very good. Very very, very good. good. That was good. <laughs> well, I don't know. I disagree. So so this this record is. Uh, uh, it, it's, it reminds me sort of like... Like um, kind of Sam Cooke meets Meatloaf. Ah. Yeah? Jim Steinman. Yeah. Uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show. That's yeah, kind of yeah. glam. Jim Steinman is glam as Hedwig. far as I'm concerned. It's pretty much Hedwig. the Hedwig That's soundtrack. That's glam too. Yeah, yeah. Sam right. But with Motown. Meets meets but with Sam. Okay, so glam meets Motown. Yeah. Mm. All right, very, that very good. good. What, what did you think of uh, Motown? Well, the, the movement or the record label? Uh, the, well, first of all, the city, the Motor City. <laughs> I loved it. We used to play a concert there every year. <laughs> On which day? Uh, well, car, uh, National Car Day. Oh, okay. Is it, I, which which I coincides is, with Christmas, doesn't it? I think it, it is d December 25th. <laughs> right. If I'm wrong about that. And hey, listeners, if you could ring in... Call us in and let us know. And National Car Day is on. Yeah, call in. We, you know, we ask people to call in every single episode. No one ever takes us up on well, it. Some people, I think, listen to this a little late. Oh, that's true. Uh, so this is a really fantastic record. I, I really, really enjoy it. I only have people I enjoy on the show. Aww. I'm bombarded with uh, requests uh, by musicians to be on the show all the time. And I listen to the records and I go, not my cup of tea. <laughs> But you are my cup of tea. I'm your cup of tea? Yeah, I love it. I, what kind of tea am I? You're, I, you're like a hibiscus English breakfast blend, Ooh. which I, I believe Sounds hibiscus exotic. is glam, yeah. and English breakfast is Motown. Motown. Yeah, exactly. What about this for an album title, Motown Tea? <laughs> okay. <Yes. laughs> <laughs> Sounds pretty yes. good. Uh, you know, I'd buy that. The, it, would you? I don't know. Maybe the music's terrible on it. Why don't you make more records and then you can title one that? I would, but you know, a lot of my instruments are back at my home, and as you know, I'm traveling around <laughs> in an RV. That's right. You're traveling around in a recreational vehicle. I can hum. You know, on my recorder, I can hum as much as I want, but it really is the instruments that make it. Yeah. Make a song a song. Well, why don't you get Sean over here with his Diane Coffee band to, you know, why don't you do some sort of collaboration? I thought of that the second I walked in. Really? The exact second? Yes. Before we were even introduced. Uh, but then I learned that you're not a drummer anymore. Is that true? I'm still a drummer. Once a drummer, always a drummer, they That's say. That's true. You sound like a classic friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you're talking about... I'm talking about Ringo. Oh, of course. Yeah, your best yeah. friend. Sure. But, you know, he used to get that... He got that saying from George. What saying? 
You know, what's a drummer? Drum? Oh, always a drummer. Why did George say it? Because, you know, one time Ringo said, let me try this instrument. What is this? We said, it's a guitar. Why don't you try it out? And George said, that's not going to happen at all. You know how much this thing cost me? I just got it polished. I'm not letting you, Ringo, hold it. You'll bang it around. Because we assumed anything he touched, he's just going to bang around. <laughs> he's just going to hit with sticks. Sure. Yeah, because that's, you know, he didn't even know that drums made sounds that were musical. Right. He just walked into the room at one point he and walked started into the banging room on and started banging the air. And I, it was my idea to put roller skates on him and push him towards the drum kit. <laughs> you could have just pushed the drum kit to him. Well, I don't think a roller skate would fit on a drum kit <laughs> okay. very well. Maybe on a skateboard? <laughs> Well, she will. Okay. Uh, so uh, the, the other guys in Foxygen, it's like, push him out of the way. It's like, no, it's me time. Stepping in the limelight. It's baby. Diane Coffee time. This is me. It's time for me to be Paul McCartney. Yeah, exactly. Did Ringo ever think about that? Like, from getting out from behind the drums and, and you know. He did. Well, he always did after a show, he would get out from behind him and leave. <laughs> We so, all got out from behind our instruments. That's so he didn't sleep with them? You'd never fit in a car with a guitar strapped around you. I think you could. Well, you'd have to do some pretty fancy work. Then. Open the window. Well, it's freezing cold. Okay. Depending well, on where you are. So if it is. were a hot day, it would be okay to get into a car? Be, it would be preferred. Okay, very good. Um, very good. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and uh, this record comes out. And what do you hope happens? Uh, you, you know, uh, international success and acclaim? Is, is that about uh, where you want to be at? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, John, I mean, John, what what did you think of all this? Like, too much? Too much? Yeah, sometimes the fame can be a lot. It was wonderful. It was so great because you got paid so much money, you could buy anything you wanted. What What's the weirdest thing you bought? The weirdest thing I bought? Mm-hmm. I bought. Uh, you almost say that like you're stalling. St and, and, and did you call like a, a, a what? <laughs> like you're stalling. <laughs> You all sound like you're repeating what I'm saying to I'm give you more what time. I'm saying. Yeah, I, it, consequently, I'm giving myself a little bit more time. The question was, what weird thing did I ever buy? Yes, thank you for repeating it. I again. bought a pair of green slacks once. <laughs> That's the weirdest thing? That was the strangest thing. But here's the thing. They were way too long. They, they went off two feet off my feet. Oh, sort of like a wedding train? That's right. Wow. They were so strange. I would, you know, I would trip and fall everywhere I went, but what? I wore them for a full year. <laughs> Straight? Every day? That's right. What year was this? This was, this must have been, oh, I want to say 1999. Oh, okay. So this is after you returned to life. Oh, yes. Yeah. What was happening in 1999? A lot of people uh, worried about Y2K. Yes, I wasn't worried at all. I hadn't mastered the computer yet, so I hadn't... I, I but you have since then. Since then, yes. I cruise around the internet. Yeah, surfboard. That's right. <laughs> And you, uh, uh, and, and 1999, that was uh, just about the dawning of the Willennium. That Will was, Smith's yes, Willennium. Yes, well, that yeah. was, well, that was something, uh, you know, I, I was very much behind. <laughs> the Willennium? The Willennium. The Willennium. Yeah. Yeah. And it didn't really take shape the way I had planned. Well, you know, we're 15 years into it. We, we've still got some time. Sean, uh, what is your favorite song of all time? Uh, oh. I've got uh. my fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, song of all time. Mm -hmm. Right now, if I was going to listen to one last song, yeah, I, like, uh, okay. Yeah. Let's imagine this. You are uh, I you're, get shot. Yeah, yeah. You're in a you're in a prison. You're blindfolded. Okay. I have a rifle to your head, and I'm okay. saying, you know what? For your crimes against the state, I'm about to execute you. I will allow you to hear one last song, and I will sing it. <laughs> what do you pick? Uh, Check Thy Bearings by Donovan. Check Thy Bearings by Donovan. I just bought a Donovan record. What, I, what record? Uh, it was more of a best of that had about like 40 songs on it. Oh, I wonder if that one's on there. Was Check Yellow Yellow on probably it? Probably not. I, that, that was off the Hurdy Gurdy More obscure? Album. Yeah. I'm going to write that so. down. You, you guys were friends, right? Donovan and... Uh, we were great friends, sure. You guys went to India together, right? That's right. Well, you know quite a bit about me and Donovan. Keep yeah, going. Yeah. <laughs> it's always fun for me, John Lennon, to be reminded of my relationship with Donovan. The more specific the details, the more I enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. So go ahead, Sean. What else do you know? Oh, God. They went to uh, India for what purpose? To uh, what uh, end? The, the, to, uh, to get all, you know, psychedelic and oh, spiritual. Oh, We sure did. Mm -hmm. We sure to did. To meditate. What did you call Donovan? Donny boy. <laughs> Donny boy. Yeah, I would say, Donny boy, the bearings are calling you. <laughs> 
<laughs> you better, you better get them. Well, yeah, right. Then he said, ah, but to get them, you know, get yeah. it done. <laughs> so then that gave him the idea for the song? Mm-hmm. Wow. Yep. And he said, he, he said, can I borrow your guitar to, you know, try it out? I said, no, I none of your life. Wow. It, it, was he talking about ball bearings in that song? As far as I'm concerned, he was. <laughs> okay, good. Yep. Do, can you flex your muscles for me? Sure, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> ow, ow, oh, ow, ow, ow. You are surprisingly jacked for a Beatle. I never really thought that the Beatles were like, you You look like Carrot Top under there. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> wow, What? what is your regimen? My regimen is a thousand push-ups a week. <laughs> okay, how do you and, space them out? Oh, I do uh, One, 10 in the morning. 10 in the morning and then... 10 in uh, the afternoon. And then 980 That's right. in the evening. It, this is all on Monday, and then the rest of the week I take it all. <laughs> okay, very good. Very good. <laughs> well, we have a new, uh, another guest on the show, and he, uh, boy, I'm excited to talk to him. Hey, he's, he's a rock and roll Big photographer. Fan. Thank you so much. Skip Garcia is here. Hello, Skip. Dude, I'm so happy to be here. Yeah. And I want to say John Lennon. I mean, I didn't know this guy was alive even. And uh, I, like, I hadn't bumped into you on the street. It, it sounds like you have a little bit of a cold. So I have a, no, I have, a, I have a chronic nosebleed. Oh. Uh, I used to do a lot of cocaine. Oh, okay. And I, I've, I, I cocaine my whole nose bone out. <laughs> so now I, I was going to say, it's, it's like very wobbly. It's nose. like a Muppet nose. I hear it yeah. all the time, and it's okay. You can push my nose. You can push into my nose. Can I? And maybe oh. touch my brain a little bit. Okay, here, let me try this. Whoa. <laughs> Ugh, that Ugh. felt really weird. I know, man. Yeah. I remember I, I photographed your son, Sean, uh, coming out of the Dakota once. How was he? How did he do? I mean, I think he's done surprisingly well. <laughs> he's in that uh, Ghost of a Sabertooth Tiger band now. Good for him. <laughs> okay. Boy, you, you were shaking your head. Uh, you know, how many musicians can you have in a family? I think maybe three is that's just, I mean, limit. well, we have, of course, Julian, too. So that's well, He's four. making music now? Yeah. He had oh. uh, much too late for goodbyes. Is it rap music or dance music? No, no, no. It's like, it's, rock it's a lot like yours. Oh, yeah, I would. His voice sounds eerily like yours. Who's to say I didn't sneak in there? And <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> I took a picture of John Pertwee the week that uh, Star Wars came out mm. from underneath the coffee table. Mm. And what he was doing was he was smashing his penis right into the table oh. so it looked like the rings of a tree. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So you were taking pictures from underneath a coffee table? Is that the angle you're talking about that you well, take? Well, I'm always looking for different angles because, hey, every, this day and age, everyone has iPhones and Samsungs. And sure, there are a LGs. lot of different brands of phones. Yeah, <laughs> we, know. Apple does a phone as well. <laughs> We were talking about that one, the iPhone. Yeah. Oh, they, they right. That is have, the name of the Apple iPhone. Yeah. Okay. They also have iPads. <laughs> yeah, and, sure. And the tablets. Court st the court stipulates right. there are a lot of electronic there products are a lot of out them. there. And so for a, a rock and roll photographer, like to get make a little, you know, any kind of leeway, mm -hmm. he has to go for angles. Okay. So, Sean, when you're uh, being photographed on stage, what... Uh, what angle do they traditionally? Wait, did my see? son Sean Lennon? Oh, shit. <laughs> no, we're talking about. Of course, I you got me spooked. Okay, okay, yeah. Don't worry, your beret is safe. Oh, thank you. They like to aim for the genitalia, like you said, like rings of a tree or. I mean, we got to sell it. Crotch line. We got to sell yeah. rock and roll. And that's a lot of time, unfortunately. What sex, we got to do, man. Wait a minute. Did sex you, and drugs? Did you photograph Lenny Kravitz recently at one of his shows? Uh, yeah, I did. Luckily, I, I was right there in the front there, and. I may have had a friend who took a little box cutter to his jeans what? before the performance. That was you? <laughs> but yeah, man, that's the kind of thing we have to do now to compete against iPhones and Samsung. And How LG much money did you make on that Lenny Kravitz cock That shot? little ditty, uh, $20,000. Wow, that is a political statement itself. He's up there singing American Woman. Sure. And his pants split apart and his, you know, he's waggling his beef in front of everyone. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's the fascination and the obsession with the black cock. <laughs> what? That, that I'm confronting with this picture. Oh. And I'm making people juxtapose what they're seeing with what they're feeling. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Are you okay? I just have to, I have to swallow a couple times. Yeah, swallow oh, that blood. Of blood. Uh, so, <laughs> you know what really, you uh, use? America's fascination with, with the black cock. I don't know uh, about that. I don't know if it America has, to has be a fascination seen. with that. <laughs> People are either jumping on it or running away from it, man. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's dividing the whole country, dude. So if I can you know, take my Pentax and put it underneath the floor of some kind of, you know, like if I make a plexiglass floor and I get under there and I just take pictures... 
I mean, I can show America a side of music that people don't usually get to see. Mm. So you, okay, interesting. I it's, always love hearing a professional photographers like <laughs> taking pictures. <laughs> well, it's always fascinating to hear someone talk about their art. So, in that sense, it's interesting. But uh, Sean, I don't know. What do you think about this? I mean, you got a guy basically out there uh, contacting friends to take box cutters or to rock stars. Trousers? That's delicate work. Yeah, well, I mean, I, you've seen Skip's work, though. I mean, I, it's beautiful. I mean, I, it's what fantastic. I saw of Lenny Kravitz was beautiful, yeah. yeah that was something. Yeah. It sure oh. was something. Did you, did you put that little piercing or cock ring or whatever it was in there, or was that, <laughs> was that? Was that all Lenny? It's all, I mean, it's, it's, all, it's all parts of the game. It's like if you're going to go take a picture of a rock star somewhere, you give them a little gift. Like, yeah. hey, here's a butt plug. Uh, feel free to use it whenever you want. Um, okay. And then I also think it's, later it's, I see them and I see a little bulge in the back of their pants. So I'm like, bingo, just the shot I wanted. Okay. I also think it may, may have been a perspective thing. You know, if you're going to, like, take a picture next to a mountain, you want to include, you know. Uh, the mole. Oh, head. like next to, next to Lenny Crow's cock? Yeah, you want to, you want to include, like. I tried to put like, out a quarter next to it. Yeah. And shoot with one hand. But, you know, I had my, my Zeiss 35 mils on it, so. I couldn't do five things with two hands, so unfortunately, yeah. you just have to take my word for it that it's uh, it's quite large. Yeah, like a small, like a small aluminum bat that a three-year-old would use it. Like a bat that you would get at a baseball game, like a, a souvenir bat, bigger than that, oh, you smaller mean, than you a mean t-ball like, bat, like a large toothpick. Oh no, I'm talking about like no, no. He's when you go, that. if you go to like a joke store and you get an exploding cigar, no, but like he's saying a large toothpick as big as the one you're thinking. Oh, all right, like yeah, too, really, too like big. really big, yeah, too like, big to even fit in your teeth. Yeah, like a dinosaur's toothpick. That's right. Okay, uh, you guys are agreeing. Here. Like something Dionne Warwick would use. <laughs> uh, hold on a second, I gotta swallow. Okay, go ahead. We'll take some time. <sighs> God, this is disgusting uh, to listen to. Oh, yeah, man. So, I mean, this. Uh, I hope you do some festivals because I'm always at the festivals. Oh, yeah? Which one are which ones are you at? Are you at, uh, like, Lollapalooza or Coachella? The Motown Car Festival. <laughs> Motown Tea? <laughs> oh. Hey, hey, don't steal that okay, from me. Okay, all right, all right. Motown Tea, don't steal that from me. That's the first lyric. Well, sometimes these up-and-coming bands are the most desperate for exposure. Mm -hmm. So if you go to a smaller stage... You get in there, and then you say, hey, you mind if I leave a, my phone in the bathroom? And I, and I put it on, like, automatic to shoot, like, in a minute. And then, boom, 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 I get a bunch of shots from people using the bathroom. And that is, that's good because people think rock stars are just, like, these people that don't use the bathroom. So it's good to have that out there that showing us they're human. Yeah, they're human. They're just like us. Yeah, John, what do you, what do you think? I mean, I they, would hate to have someone take a picture of me in the bathroom. Really? Why They'd is that? see me without my shirt on? <laughs> Wait, why are you taking your shirt off? I just I take off my bald shorts and my sweater, cut off sweaters off when I use the bathroom. Right, so you're just totally nude in the bathroom? Sure, because I always take a shower after everything I do in there. Oh, I see. So a number one or a number two? To right. immediately Even if I'm washing shower? my hands when I'm done with that, I take a shower. What do you do when you're at the airport and there isn't a shower in the restroom facilities? It's never come up. <laughs> really? I've never got, had gone to the bathroom there. Uh, oh, I, was, I thought you were going to say you've never been to an airport. No, I go to the airport all the time. I love to fly. Oh, really? Where are you going? Me? Yeah, where do you go off to? Where do you jaunt off to? I jaunt Where does a John Lennon go in his day off? Oh, uh, John Lennon will go off to Milwaukee for a weekend. Milwaukee? Or he'll go down to Orlando to try to get into that uh, Harry Potter universe world. <laughs> Have you ever been there? You say you've tried to get in. No, they never. They, I always get these coupons, you know. Ringo says, hey, do you want these? Because I know you're such a Harry Potter fan. I said, sure, I'll take these. <laughs> I make my way down to Orlando. I look, they're expired most of the time. <laughs> Why is Ringo giving you expired coupons? Because he hates throwing things away. Uh, Oh, he's a sort of a hoarder? A little bit. Mm. A little bit of a hoarder. Yeah. So you still hang out with Ringo all the time? All the time. You know, we're having a great summer together, he and I. <laughs> really? So he just bought a boat up at Lake Arrowhead. We've been tubing a lot. <laughs> Tube. it, on, on July 4th, it, we got it. I couldn't get out of the wake, but on July 4th, I broke the wake. And I'm, you know, nowadays, I'm parallel to the boat. It's thrilling. You go too fast on one of these things, and you get dumped. You're skidding across. Yeah. I bet. It's, so it's he's a, he's uh, steering the boat, and you're, you're sure. And then, but then I'll we'll switch, switch, and I'll yes, yeah, sure. Oh, great! Which do you like better? 
Well, of course. I, I, you know what I do? Li- I do like getting outside that wake, and you can't get out of the wake when you're in the boat. <laughs> right, yeah. You're causing the wake. Sure. Yeah, very good. I can't believe you're alive, man. <laughs> No I just can. can't believe you're here. I'm freaking out a little bit. Do you want to take some pictures? Do you mind if you take some pictures? Sure. Let me just. All right. Can um, you have your please. camera here? Absolutely. Can, yeah. Yeah. Do you let want me, to? Uh, you know what? It'll be go. a good picture. I'll cut down the middle of my sweater, cut off sweater here so you can see my chest. You want to lay on the ground? Yeah, sure. Yeah, just lay on the ground. All right. Uh, oh, oh, the, oh the, so it's cool. I put here. the camera right by my crotch, just so it's like I'm dropping my balls on your face. Okay, but it's not. It's it's a camera. Sure, I know. I can see it. But I a, want you to feel like oh, a man's putting his balls in my my, oh. my face. So you want to, you want your subjects to feel like their space is being invaded? It's a kinda little, a little worried. You know, you're familiar with the work of Terry Richardson? Sure, 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 sure. Well, very similar, except I don't put my fingers in people's mouths. Other than that, we're very similar in style. Wait, but he's putting worse things in people's mouths. Terry Richardson? Yeah. So are you doing that? You're just not doing the fingers? <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll put other things in people's mouths, but not fingers. But that's dirty. Fingers. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's dirty. Well, that's appreciated. That's appreciated. You know, your picture with Oko, Oko Nono, was, which got me into the business of, of taking photographs. Two virgins. The, uh, oh, the famous one of that. them on the bed? Is that what you're talking about? Uh, it's one of... You signing Double Fantasy and Mark David Chapman's getting it. <laughs> He's giving you a record and you're signing it. You Wait, know that what? picture? That's my favorite John Lennon picture. I have a, I have I a like a seven by twelve, uh, just tarp on seven my seven by twelve. That's a weird feet. dimensions for a <laughs> that, photograph. That feet? That's a big one. <laughs> It's a tarp. It's a tarp. Yeah, it's uh, it's canvas, and it's my image projected. You I took a picture the... of that picture just so I could own it. Jules, Jules. Oh, so that's your photo then? Yeah. Okay. Very I good. love it. Yeah. Okay. I can't believe it. It's so weird. Yeah. Oh, well, well, let me see your pictures. What'd you get there? You took some okay. pictures of John. What, what'd you get here? There's a picture I took. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. You see, John is. Uh, you can only see the top of his face. Oh, my God. I'm blinking. I feel like a fool. Yeah, but, I mean, this is even worse. Like, it's just focused on your, your genital area. Well, that, that's <laughs> what happens when you're taking pictures. <laughs> okay, I don't know, but you're blinking. Yeah. Why are you so upset about that? Because it's you just... can't time out. When, you look silly when you're blinking. In a, you look like you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> okay, I, I feel I not feel terrible about that. I'm wasting digital space do on you, your Do camera. you want him to erase this one? Do what you want, but you know I would never be. I happy think as to... John Lennon, you have the right to ask him to erase no, a picture. I don't right? like to be on my high horse. Like go that. ahead, no, go ahead. I He's only use g- my name to get into restaurants quickly. I would never. You're using your name to get into restaurants. Sure, I'll go down to Perkins. Uh, Perkins. <laughs> what's your other favorite restaurant? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> I see you. What's your other favorite restaurant? Do you have my other favorite food? restaurant? <laughs> Just Perkins. Sure, I'll go down to Perkins and say, hey, I want to eat right now. <laughs> fool! I call everyone a fool in there. Let John Lennon eat now, you fool. Famous uh, uh, Beatle and a uh, solo artist in his own right. Uh, well, in my own right, sure. And you also were a f- uh, member of the uh, John and Yoko band, or what was it called? We called ourselves the Plastic Ono Band. Right, right. And it was not my decision to name it that. <laughs> yeah, it seems more like that would have been her decision. I wanted to go by a new persona back then called Whistling Pete. And Yoko, whistling Pete. Sure, I want to be, you know, sort of a country western goofball. And Were Yoko's, you going to whistle? Sometimes I will, sure. <laughs> well, because one hears Whistling Pete and one has the expectation it's going to be whistling That songs. was always going to be the joke of it. Oh, I see. You know, Whistling Pete, when are you going to whistle? Not right now, I'm sitting on a thistle. Ding, 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 ding. And it was <laughs> okay. these types of songs. I can't sure. right now. I'm, you know, every uh, excuse in the book for Whistling Pete. Sure, sure. But you know, Yoko said, I want to do serious, serious. Uh, I said, no, it's more serious than a whistling ca- cowboy who won't whistle. Uh, that is serious. It's a serious situation. Yeah. Yeah. Jump on up and tumble around. Uh, whistling Pete's in town. Mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. just sort of remembering the lyrics. Yeah, well, these are great. These are fantastic. I, I mean, if, you, the things you're remembering are just, wow. Yes. New John Lennon yes. lyrics. Get on the saddle and <laughs> here we go. Whistling Pete's ready to start the show. Oh, okay. So here we go. And then it would go would into. Would that be the first song or would that be late in the album that you were ready to go? Yeah, well, the first couple of tracks were me setting up. <laughs> setting Open up the, the case and pull out your strings. Just the strings? Well, the, yeah, put them on a guitar. That's the thing. 
Very good. Okay, well, uh, we also have Sean Fleming here, a.k.a. Diane Coffey. Great record, and uh, you're a fan of music, right, John? I, I mean, love it. You know, it's it's what we use to dance to. <laughs> Is that the express purpose of music? <laughs> as far as I know. That's the only reason that the Beatles ever made music, is you want people to dance to yeah, it? Yeah, you could either dance fast to some of our quick songs or slow to the slowies. Do you think if people are laying on a couch listening to a Beatles record, is that a waste of time? No, not at all. You're, you're pr Most likely, if you're laying down listening to music, you're thinking about what dance steps you're going to do when you get up. <laughs> you're pre-imagining. I would imagine. That's all I do. Yeah, okay, very good. And uh, let's see, we also have Skip Garcia here, photographer extraordinaire of the Rock and Roll Lifestyle. Yep. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's me. It, it, this is a delicious interview, bro. Thank you. Thank yeah, you so much. There's so, so many tasty little morsels to chew on. Yeah. Morsels of information or just oh, entertainment? Oh, just fun and entertainment mm -hmm. and, and information and yeah. fun. Now, you have a new book uh, coming out that you wanted to promote, a book of your work. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. It's called I Walk Among Trees. <laughs> okay. Um, and what it is, it's a series of pictures taken from a plexiglass dance floor that I made in my basement. Oh, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> All right, well, and you have a copy of this book uh, here? Oh, yeah, I Walk Among Trees. Wow, if this, you go to... This is a huge book. This is like 7 by 11. This is massive. This is like tarp-sized. Oh, it is. It's available at 7-Eleven because it's 7 by 11. Oh, so wait, this is too big. This is 7 feet buy, by 11 feet. If you feet. buy a big gulp and a Reese's Pieces, you get, the, you get this book for like ten ninety nine. Okay. If you Can go I to say, like the Grove, you're gonna pay like fifty dollars because it is an art book. Well, it's it's a, it's surprisingly light. <laughs> yeah, well, that's look at true. me, look at me, twirl this on my <laughs> finger like a pizza box. It feels like five pounds. How is a book this big that light? Well, we use we use toilet paper to print it up. Oh, uh, okay. Um, so it's very. So it has a, another use when you're done with it. Yeah, you can bleed on it. Oh, no, I guess I meant or, wipe your Or you can wipe ejaculates off a lover. No, no I, well, I was thinking. I would I, rather what? you not do it with my book, but it's, I think it's the, the main use for toilet paper for most people <laughs> is to wipe your butt. I didn't want to go there, dude. Okay. I, mean, I love you, bro, but I don't want to go there. The two places you. you did go are disgusting. Making love is one thing, man. <laughs> Shooting out a fucking fire hydrant-sized log out of your ass and taking pictures of it is quite another. Who said anyone would take pictures of it? <laughs> well, I'm the photographer, Yeah, man. when you're talking to a photographer, you got to understand he's most likely going to take a picture of it. <laughs> All right. They, they, no, Scott, it's with photographers. they got a curious eye. Yeah. They always have. So, yeah. Wow. Well, this... Uh, I, I, so this plexiglass is, uh, dance floor yeah. is what I use, and I just... <laughs> I play I play music. I just have these these people dance and we take pictures. Yeah. So these are upskirt shots, basically. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And who do you have here? Who's this one? All I see is just a big. Well, well, well you have Adrian Brody. <laughs> Adrian Brody. <laughs> we have Adrian Brody. And then we have uh, Megan Trainer. He, he okay. I should have known because Adrian Brody is holding his Oscar. <laughs> That's right. And he's wearing, he said, uh, he said, I'm fine with doing it, but just let me hold my Oscar. And he's wearing that outfit that he wore to introduce Sean Paul. <laughs> the Rost outfit. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Okay. The two things, I said go for it. The two things he's most famous for. Yeah, so I guess I should have known it was him. That's right. So he's in the book. And, uh, Who's the second person you said? Megan Trainer. Megan Trainer. So all about that uh, base. That's right. Uh huh. And this uh, is an upskirt of her. It is, but she's wearing underwear. Okay, good, good. So luckily, uh, my intern had a small conversation about what her vagina looks like. With whom? With her. With her? Yeah. And so we had, uh, we had a police drawer artist come in and, and recreate what her vagina would look like. Just based and on this we conversation? we photoshopped it into the picture. And that's the only time when I feel like I compromise my own artistic integrity because it should have just been a regular un upskirt. Uh-huh, but she and, wouldn't take off her underwear. But she would take so off her underwear. So you photoshopped in the vagina and then photoshopped underpants on top of it? <laughs> because well, you clearly said that she's wearing underpants. She's wearing underwear. And then I, yeah, we had to, like, photoshop. Uh, that's, no, that, I mean, that's dedication to... <laughs> well, I don't, I'm to not going to ask you how you wrote <laughs> Day in a Life, but I'll, I'll you. allow you to ask me about how I superimpose a vagina over a picture of someone wearing underwear. Quite easily, there's these things mean. called crotchless panties. And, it, and that's what... Oh, I have a nice template in my office where I can... It just... 
frames of vagina in uh, underwear. Hmm. Really nice. And then I could always Photoshop that in there. All right. How did you write Day in the Life, by the way? That is a good question. I was on my bike. I was out on a mountain bike ride, and I thought to myself, well, this is a happy little life I've carved out for myself. Mountain biking whenever I please. It's writing music. And I thought, well, no one wants to hear a song about mountain biking. Mountain biking. It's not the 1990s yet. <laughs> Because I, I knew that was going to be that was going to be a thing. Sure. Yeah, so certainly. Said, yeah. Oh, but I came up with a tune. You know, get up and out of bed, and then I we all just put it together right there. It was one take. We wrote it sort of improvised. It was improvised, like exquisite corpse style. It, that's true. <laughs> really, it so was. Everyone did one word. That's right. It, well, at a everyone time? did one word, and then we changed some of the words. We did a whole bunch more to really finally get. But it you right. said it was one take, and it was all improvised. It was one long take. Oh, I see. And then you cut out the crap. Oh, okay. That's not really one take. Mm. If you just keep the tape rolling. You know, you're splitting kind of, hairs here. Yeah, it's kind of cheating to say it's one take. Oh well. I mean, you're... Lionel Richie famously did one take of "Hello" and then said, "Okay, that's it," and that you know. But it's not like he did. Five of them and kept the tape running and kept the last one and just cut off the beginning. Well, you know, yes, it's a loophole, but sure. <laughs> we didn't use know. a lot it's of cheating. loopholes. It's cheating. It's cheating. You know what? You're a cheater. Hey. Yeah, you're a cheater. You know how that makes me feel? How? Terribly. You say that right to my face. Well, I'm sorry. It's, it's what I believe. I accept your apology. <laughs> well, it was kind of not really an apology. It was more... You said I'm sorry. Well, that's true. Okay, you got me there. Uh, that's the loophole. Yep. I... Uh, have more loopholes. I should have been a lawyer, not the rock and roll stuff. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, who's this picture of? <laughs> Sean, are you looking at this one? Yeah, it's. Uh, is that Sigourney Weaver? Yeah, who is that? That's Sigourney Weaver, yeah. Well, wait a minute. That's a Sigourney Weaver beaver. <laughs> Funny you should say that. That's the, that's the name of it. The name of what? Her of, vagina of or the, the picture? portrait? Oh, okay. What's I was wondering name? if she named What's her. What's the name of her vagina? Oh, uh, Leslie. <laughs> Okay. And I write all this down. I'm like, whatever. I'm like, give your vagina a name. Give your bu- your butt a name. Give your breasts names. You're Just the one asking the questions, and then you're dismissive of them. Like, whatever. The whatever. I mean, whatever to get them comfortable. Oh, you know? I see. Yeah. I'm like, call your titties Laverne Shirley and see if that helps. And that makes them comfortable. Uh, sure. <laughs> sure. I don't know. Sure, and, uh, you know that's the name of the game in this business. Just is making comfort. people. I can't believe the pictures that you've gotten of these people. I mean, how are people so comfortable with you? I, you have, you know, you're you're gushing blood. Well, sometimes you're licking it up anytime it comes out of I your mean, nose. Rock and rollers are a special breed to themselves. Mm, Sean, so that's don't. true. Yeah, that's yeah. very true. They don't mind getting a little crazy. They see blood. And yeah, you know, I like, if, if, I, if, if my penis had a name, I would strip right now and feel completely comfortable. If it had a name? Yeah. Let's yeah, name I don't it. Have it. Yeah, let's name it. Let's take yeah. pictures. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, let's name it and take pictures. Let's, right. let's uh, you know, workshop some names for this thing. Sure. Describe it, and we can sort of, like, figure out some attributes that... That, uh, uh, you know, it's uh, well, let's see. Uh, it's, you know, it's... it's is it like it's, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, conical? It's pink. It's pink. Okay, that's good. Yeah. That's a start. Well, right away, I'm thinking we name it Pinky, but I want to hear more. <laughs> well, Pinky, though, kind of... Uh, uh, that's a name for a finger. Yeah, and also the smallest finger. I don't know that you want to release... Ooh, good point. Yeah. You know well, what I mean? Yeah, that's true. Not everyone's Pinky is the smallest. Oh, re- let me take a look at your hands. Wait, what are you asking him to show him your hands where yours are filthy and disgusting? And God, look at those pinkies. But it's my guitar. I can put my own gummy hands on. What is on. going on with your gummy hand? Why are your hands so dirty? Well, I had a, I had a, li- a few ice cream cones outside. Oh, <laughs> God, it's, it's a hot ten day. The, it's 10 in the morning. Well, the, yeah, no, it's a hot day, and they leaked all over the place. Okay, but why? Oh, I'm an know. idiot. I bite the bottom of the cone out first. Oh, John. Well, you know, I also have chocolate all over my penis as well. Okay, so it's pink, and Ooh. it has chocolate on yeah. it. Yeah. <gasps> Snowball! No, wait. Do snowballs? Are no, snowballs are only hey, pink. Hey, turn I off, thought I had turn something. Turn off that uh, early it's Simpsons episode snowball. and pay attention, Scott. <laughs> okay, yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. So you like, but, you know, we're spitballing. <laughs> we're just spitballing here. Well, okay, pink with chocolate all over yeah, it. Like, it sounds like Kim Kardashian. Uh, because can, uh, can it, Is it like a ship? Can I name it a girl's name? Wait a minute, because you're can saying her vagina has Kanye West inside of it? <laughs> if... If and when I take, I'm going to bring my Leica and bring it real close in there. Uh-huh. And it's, yeah, and that's like, those are the colors that, that's what's keeping this country apart. 
Okay, his yeah, hatred, I don't need to hear more of your crackpot and theories racial about, diversity. Yeah, I don't know that is being just permeated by the industry, the music industry, and the television industry. And so, anything I can do to bridge that gap between okay. art, commerce, sure. Uh, you're selling integrity. your book. Is that what you're talking about? You're trying to bridge the gap because you're selling your book at Seven Elevens. We're all selling something, but or is it Sevens Eleven? How would one pluralize Sevens that? Sevens Elevens. I don't, I'm working it out too. Whoppers I don't have Junior. Answer. What? I don't know. Uh, I think, I think it's 11. like moose. It's just 7 Eleven, plural. 7 Eleven is the plural, you think? I thought it was huh. meese. <laughs> you thought the plural of a moose was a meese? No, that's mice. No, mouse is, is mice is. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. We, need, gonna, we need a full. You know need, what you should make, Skip, is a book of animals and what they're called plurally. Oh, man. That would be my fondest wish. I'd read that in a day. Oh, one day. Front, De- depending how long it was. Cover to cover. Sure? I'd read it uh, from the left to the right. Perfect. American style. <laughs> Reading American style. Yep. Wow. I call my penis Al Roker. Why is that? Because it's friendly, you know? And I'm like, I go, what's up, Al? It's like, well, let me tell you what the weather's like. And, like, well, and sometimes it's raining from it. <laughs> yeah, that's really fun when I do that. And I'm like, why, why is it raining out of Al Roker's head? <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's right, I'm peeing. But <laughs> why is Al Roker doing a handstand and Walter's coming out of that's his That's part of that's what I do. Like what I do uh, to make rock stars and everyone comfortable is the same thing I do to myself. Like for you, John, I would say like, what is your favorite uh, performer? Mm, yeah, who's your favorite? Uh, uh, did you mean in rock music or just or anywhere? Ringo, really? <laughs> Ringo, your best friend, Ringo. For sure, I'm biased, of course, but I also like the way he drums. Yeah. What's uh, what's your favorite song he sings? Is it Yellow Submarine? Or? Mm, no, no, not at all. No, You don't like that one? I had a big problem with that one. Why? Because, you know, submarines are usually gray or green. Sure, but that this is a unique submarine. <laughs> nah, we we didn't, uh, I didn't see it that way. <laughs> I mean, why sing about a gray or a green one? You know, this is a yellow one, so it deserves a song. When it comes to military underwater equipment, people want the truth. Okay, I'm sorry. You're getting worked up. You're standing. Sorry. And you're, you're standing. I'm over me and you're swinging your fist. I'm not going to hit you, but I am going to work out some of these swings. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. I don't oh. mean, God, wow. I've always heard of the old submarine what was a phallus. Oh. Well, if that's the case, then I really don't like it. We didn't need to clutter up our albums with penises. <laughs> well, what about uh, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds? Wasn't that about LSD? That was about LSD. I wrote that after I tripped. Really? And then I told everyone, oh, my daughter drew a picture or something or other. Oh, but it's really... It's about as... I mean, how could you not think that? Ah, uh, yeah. You'd have to be a, you know, a straight edger. <laughs> you know what straight edge is? Sure, it was that movement in the 90s where people didn't do drugs. Did you... What is it in the 90s? I think so, yeah. Sure. I remember it back in the 80s, even. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Well, I wouldn't have known it from 80 to 84, of course. Sure, you were dead. What did you miss in that period? You missed uh, uh, Return of the Jedi. Yeah, but I, I watched that. Star on Wars Laser. Episode Six. Yeah, I watched that on Laserdisc. So you caught up with it. Mm-hmm. When you got back, were you sort of like, "Wow, what?" I mean, all this four years of stuff. Look at all the new car models. <laughs> that was the first thing you noticed. The first thing. Well, I came out of the. You know, I went right away to Detroit. Look at the '84 Camaro. <laughs> Can you believe the wings on it? Yeah. And we, did you happen to be there on Christmas Day? Yes, that's right. All right. Very good. Uh, what is your favorite car, uh, Skip? Um, well, I had a really great Pinto. On yeah. My, on my, it was great because it's it's shaped like a pear and you can put a lot of equipment in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of camera equipment? Sexual equipment. <laughs> okay. What sex, like a sex chair or something? A sex chair, a uh, Sibian. <laughs> um, double sided. Okay, yeah. Um, I don't know. <laughs> what are you putting all fuzzy this? Fuzzy handcuffs. Fuzzy handcuffs. A little, Why are you transporting this stuff? Just keep it at your house. Well, a lot of times these celebrities want me to go to them. Oh, you're bringing it to the celebrities. So I bring the studio to them and mm. uh, the, the whole experience. Okay, okay. Very good, very good. It is. Very good. <laughs> it's very good. Very good. This is all Please very remember good. my books at all sevens, elevens. All sevens, elevens, and it's only eleven ninety nine. You were it's saying ten ninety nine if, you, if ten... you buy a big gulp and a Reese's pieces. Reese's pieces. Yeah. Okay, that's uh, too much sugar for me. I'd rather just buy the book. Pay fifty dollars for it. Oh come on, man! Why, why you... do you want me to spend less? Because it's part of a tie-in, you know. Like I, you know. 
for 7s, 11s to allow me to sell a book is groundbreaking. Well, me. I mean, I got to say, it's taking up a lot of shelf space. This is not an impulse buy sized item. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, How many lot. can you fit in one 7 11? Well, we have well, the one right here on Hollywood, mm -hmm. we have about 8,000 copies of it. <laughs> Uh, they, don't, they can't sell dog food anymore, I guess. But it's okay because you should, anything if you're else. going to 7-Eleven for dog food, you're not a good parent. Yeah, that's a, <laughs> to a dog or to, <laughs> to anything, really. Okay. I wouldn't let you watch my snail. You have a snail? <laughs> I do. I have two snails that live in a broken, in a broken old radio. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Why do they live there? Is that the only place? I mean, what about a... Uh, well, know, it's a piece sort of, of a shit old radio, aquarium. so I just took the face off it and put a piece of glass in there, and there I go. I got two I have a snail terrarium. That's, that's, uh, oh, that's very nice. I snail could. terrarium. That's a song. Oh, that's a whole album. I mean, maybe. you made Octopus's Garden. Why not snail terrarium? <laughs> that's a good point. I would keep it off the Whistling Pete... <laughs> sure, that's a side. That's his own thing. That's a side piece. Uh, thing, you know, yeah. you don't see too many cowboys talking about snails. Do you think a Whistling Pete's going to have a new record? I mean, look at uh, Sean over here. He has Diane Coffee, his his alter ego. Mm -hmm. You know, you could have your Whistling Pete thing, and no one would have to know you're alive. Again, I don't mind if people know I'm alive. Just don't spread it around. <laughs> okay, but I thought you told me once that you didn't want to put out new music so no one would know you were alive. Oh, maybe my opinions change. <laughs> okay. You, guess... As you get older, you know, a musician gets older, he, wa he says to this himself... This was like two months ago. <laughs> well, he says to himself, two months later, he might say, oh boy, am I relevant anymore? Or do I still have things to say? I think you do. You're John Lennon. Yeah, sure, I have things to say, I, mostly about... You know, tubing behind of a speedboat. Okay, but I think people, if, if there's an album in that, yeah. yeah. Would you rather have a John Lennon record about tubing behind a speedboat or no John Lennon record at all? It's like the Brian Wilson stuff, all about you know vegetables. You know, would you rather have that or not have it? I'd rather have it, even I'd though it's weird. I'd rather have it too. Why not? You know, the the records he made about directions to his house. You know, I mean, it's interesting. When I get back, Scott, you've you've inspired me. Thank you. When I get home, thank you. That, you're welcome. Well, you're welcome. Okay, great. When I get home, I'm going to you know, blow the dust off of some of my old instruments and see if I can plug them back in and okay. see if they work. When do you expect to get home? You're in your RV now. At the end of the summer, I'm going back. Yeah? Where, where are you living? The Wait. Dakota. The Dakota. Still, yeah, I, I still live there. <laughs> Wait, the place that you were shot outside of? Sure, I've gotten over. I mean, you know, you can't undo history. All oh, right, I don't know. I don't know if River... You, know, you can't. You know it's true. Well, you I don't can't. know. If River Phoenix came back to life, I don't think he'd be hanging out at the Viper Room. Why not? He fucking owns it. <laughs> All right, that's a good point. Uh, so I get worked up when people talk about... Okay, all right. Stop where, standing above me and swinging. own what? <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> you must really hate Ashton Kutcher and all the restaurants he owns. No, I don't hate... <laughs> You're not understanding okay. me. <laughs> all right, I'm sorry. No, just listen to the new album. It'll all be discussed. <laughs> oh, so you're going to make this record? Yeah, I'm going to make a record about... Half of it's going to be about water tubing, and the rest is going to be about <laughs> celebrities owning businesses. <laughs> all right, I expect side one to be about one issue and side two to be about, about the other. We're going one for one. One song about one song tubing, and then a song about celebrities. Okay. Back to tubing. All right, very good. Whistling Pete. No, this is going to be a John Lennon. This is a John. Oh, okay. Whistling yeah. Pete's got his own stuff. That's his own thing. Okay, so this is a pure John Lennon record. <laughs> I expect the next time that you come to play some of this record for us. I would be happy to. Hey, have me in in mm, ten years. <laughs> ten years? Why? It's going to take you that long? No, I mean I got to. I got to get around to it. Well, you said you were going to go home after the summer and start. All right, all right. I have me in in, in like a month and I'll have it done. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, we also, for Sean, we want to say you have a lot of live dates coming up, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. A lot uh, of dates. Including the... Well, what are all their names? Oh, come on, John. That's just a joke about dating. John! You're sexist, John. You're sexist. <laughs> sexist people can... Oh, I don't agree with any of this. I, you know, I, you know, I don't know if you know what the meaning of sexist is. Well, how many people do you have uh, sitting in with your band? Uh, so five, including myself. Great. Yeah. Mm. I'm, yeah. I'm glad you include yourself. You know I, what yeah, I mean? Of course, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, why talk about them all the time? Like, include yourself in this number. This is my time. Yeah, it's like your time yeah. to shine. Well, you, you know, know I, I one mean? time didn't include myself on a track, and you couldn't hear any of the vocals. <laughs> so what did you do? I was sing well. I was I was in the other room singing away. <laughs> right. So they put me. Uh, they put a skateboard onto me and rolled me. <laughs> you don't. You can just walk places. You can have 
People I was walked. being very stubborn. I was in one of my moods. Oh, yeah. You're getting those. I'm getting those. Are good. you going to play a song? Uh, yes. <laughs> but off air. Yeah, I'll play it off air. Yeah, okay, off. good. Oh, this... did you mean right now for this? Yeah, well, oh, I mean... No, I thought you meant am I going to play a song eventually before I decide to leave this earth for good. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I hope so because I want to hear that record. Who said it was... Well, maybe it won't be music after all. Okay, so uh, it'll be what? It'll be music. All right. You'll get by with a little help from John Lennon. It's Questions for Lennon. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Questions for Lennon, the advice podcast where we answer questions emailed in from our listeners. I'm your host, European rock and roll guitarist John Lennon. And we've got a, we've got a great show for you today. We, I've got an old friend here sitting across from me. This, is, this guy was with us, not from the beginning, but very, you know, right after the beginning. John, I first saw you. In the Cavern Club. That's right. That's right. And what was I doing? I was, I was bent over because it's so low, you the ceiling. You were in the bathroom, bent over. Right. And you were emptying out your stomach into the pot. Uh, and what did you call it back then? I called it magical mystery... Food. Food. Because... <laughs> You know, it would go in. The Cavern Club was not known for its food, was it? The, oh, I had a bangers and mash there that I almost every time... Hey, I would order it every time, and then I would throw it up every time. And that's how you stayed so thin. That's how I stayed thin to the end. And you saw me, and I saw you, and I saw your vomit coming out. Right. And you said, that's when I first helped you. You said, help me clean up this vomit. I said, help me, Rhonda. I thought that was your name because I was listening to so many of those, uh, the surfing boys or whatever they were called in America. At the time, you were a musician. <laughs> That's right. I was doing a lot of music back then. I would end up doing music for a, pr- uh, a lot of years after that, too. And then you hired me inadvertently. I signed up. I didn't know what I was signing up for. And I spent all those years with you and the boys. Can I tell you a Ringo story, John? Oh, let me get your name out here first. I'm, I'm so excited to have you here. John, I'm, do you want to hear a Ringo story? I would love to. I would love to. Give me two seconds to say your name. It's Georgie Taylor. He's here. Georgie Taylor. He was our mis- what was my nickname? And you remember because... It, Mr. Sort It Out. Mr. Sort It you Out. Were there right, you, you were there right next to us all the time. And we never knew. People would ask, is this your lawyer? Is this your manager? I would say, you know, he just sort of sorts things out. I don't know where he gets I his money from. We never job. paid you. We never, never paid you. Never got paid. No. Never got a, a single penny. I one time gave you one of my extra buttons on my shirts because you needed Later it. Later you asked for it back. Right. And, I, and, and a good on you, I got it back. Of course. I'd In better condition. I loved being with the boys and I loved helping you out and I was happy to do it and I've still to this day never received a penny for it. Oh, Have you ever made money off your music? No, I was doing a lot of it for free. Because I, I've mentioned this before and on the podcast. I know that. I would, do, I would do it for the free lunches because you can't get a better lunch at a, than getting a studio lunch. That's right. And I would, I would come in and I'd sing and write songs for the Beatles, a band I loved, a b- bunch of people you I loved. You were a fan of the Beatles I, before you were in it. That's right. I was a big fan of, I was a big fan of the name of the Beatles. Just the word of it. And one time, only once, you asked me to play guitar. That's right. It do you was, remember the track? I do. It was the lead guitar on Back in the USSR. That's and I'd right. never touched a guitar before. It was beginner's luck. And you said, take it, do whatever you feel, and you recorded it, went right on the track, never was changed. We had we had everything. We had the bass, the drums. And I've never picked up a guitar since. No. I, I wouldn't want to hex it. <laughs> You're scared of them. <laughs> I'm scared of them. Always have been. Because after that one guitar, the, the, so the lead you did, you had so much fun, you threw it up in the air, you said that was great, it came right down on your head, and split it in half. And went to the hospital. That's right. Thank God for the public service. Thank God for hospitals. In, in England. And I got taken care of by public aid. Right. And... You boys were kind enough to let me back into your service That's when right. I recuperated. And I, stu- I stayed vigil by your bed for, I think, about 10 minutes. You know, I was there for as, just a bit of time, you know, because I wanted to make sure you were there. You at least, had worked. I had work to do. And I, I, I didn't, you couldn't stay there for long. I, and I didn't recognize you very well. Well, it wasn't my bed in the end. That's as right. As you remember, it was Yoko in her bed, 
in the studio. But you thought for 10 minutes that it was me recuperating. We were on so many. And what a nice gesture on your part to stay right there. I near, appreciate Near it. what you thought was me recuperating. And right. I, I'll always appreciate it. I'll never forget it. Years later, can I tell you a Yoko story, John? Please, I, I feel like I've heard them all, but I know you've got stories I've never heard before. One time, Yoko was in that very famous bed. Right. Well, you know, we did most of our sleeping there. And she said, the pillars are too hard. Oh, she, yeah, we... Georgie, like... Georgie, do me a favour. Mr. Sort it out. Go get me a pillow softener. Well, now, Which they I... don't sell anymore. Which they don't sell anymore because it was made from Agent Orange. That's right. That's right. That's right. It, it was a chemical. Lo lots of damage. It was a chemical that was used in Vietnam mm. by the American military. Right. But at the time in England was sold as a pillow softener. Right. And I went right to the local corner shop and I asked for the biggest vat they had of Agent Orange. was still called Agent Orange, pillow softener. Brought it in, dipped both pillows in. Actually, there were four. Gave it to Yoko, and she turned to me and she said, Georgie, and I, then I don't know what she said because it was in Japanese. She said, well, you know, I had a translator tell you. But she smiled. She smiled and said, I've got a terrible headache, and, you know, there's sort of a burning sensation on the back of my head, but my neck is feeling better because the pillow is softer. That's right. So I owe you, a, you know, a great debt of gratitude. And that's a Yoko story. That really happened. That really did happen. That's right. You I love there. it. You know, well, we used to get you confused a lot with George Harrison. It's true. And oftentimes you'd hand me a guitar or berate me. Right. For poor playing. Right. And I would say, but, but John, it's me, Georgie Taylor. I don't play on the albums. I'm Mr. Sort It Out. Right, and I'd have to go find my glasses. I'd always leave them in different and rooms. And then I would go find them for you. And this is what you would do. You would see me and say, you, get on guitar, play rhythm for us. And you'd turn to George Harrison, the great, and I'd love to tell you a George Harrison story. Oh, we, will have, we have plenty and of time And you would for send it. him off to the store right. to get some... Um, I, I, he would do a lot of my cracker runs. He'd get you some crackers. And, I, and he would never get the right ones. He can never do it the way you did. And that's, that's ultimately why he was kicked out of the band. Right, because he wasn't doing your job well. He couldn't do my job, and I could no. certainly do his. No, we, we'd have you on guitar. But you know, you'd never, you'd never sit on the drums. No one touches the drums but Ringo. That was the rule. Do you want to hear a Ringo story? I would love to. One time I was entering the building, and I'd forgotten my key. Right. And I couldn't get in. And I was meant to open it before you and the boys showed up. Right. This was right around Revolver. Mm -hmm. And along comes Mr. First Timer, Ringo Starr, always the first, right? In the he studio. Because he would always say, I've got to tune up my drums. That's not, that's not, a, that's not a my concern. Do whatever you want. You, you would dismiss him and not listen. Right. You asked him, write it up. If you have a complaint, Ringo, this is what you would say. I right. remember, John. Write it up, put it in the box, and dump it in the river. Anyhow, I'm standing on the steps. I can't get in because I've forgotten me key. Do you remember that part of the story? I do now. I wasn't he, listening to the beginning of the along story. Along comes Mr. Ringo himself right. of the Beatles. Right. Probably hungover. He was a party man. And he says, uh, Georgie, what are you doing? Can't we go in? I want to tune me drums. Drum it up a little bit. Tooney, 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 tweeny. Right. He would say it every time we say, look, we love you. You're the best of the drums we've ever heard. But we don't need to hear you say tooney, tooney, tweeny. <laughs> it's every time. It just takes so much and, time to say and it. And I said, uh, Mr. Ringo, sir, I am so sorry. I, uh, you can dock me pay. Even though you didn't ever right. pay. It would mean you'd pay him, I guess. But I can't get you in. I've not the key. And he looked at me in that Ringo way of his and mm -hmm. said, well, we'll just have to wait. And we waited 12 minutes and along came Paul and he had a key. He was always a problem solver then in that in. way. Then you we know, got in that Ringo story for you. Some people, you know, you tell that story to the wrong person, they say, that's more of a, a, a key story. It's a Ringo story. <laughs> And so many people, I'll tell that story, I'll try to tell it, not as good as you have, at a party, you know, at a cocktail party, and people will say it's a key story. 
I will take whatever I'm drinking, fill the glass up to the top, smash that on the ground, and say, I've had an awful time here, I'm leaving, and, you know, push over any type of furniture that I find as I might, because you don't, it's a Ringo story. It's a Ringo story. It's a Ringo story. It always has been. Always has been. Never will be anything different. Can't make it something different if you wanted to. How could it? Now, George, I got to ask you, what are you doing these days? Because I haven't seen you in a couple weeks. Well, I'm doing fine. Good. I've been dead for seven years. Did that, you know that? Is that a fact? I passed away about seven years ago. Uh, but uh, parts of me are being kept alive. Right. By various um, artificial means. I'm seeing the machine work and the tubing sort of That's coming right. out of you. Lots of tubing. And my brain is floating in a liquid, which is electrified. Courtesy, I don't know. courtesy of the... Of the royal crown. <laughs> uh, That's what it's her, one of its many uses. Her high, <laughs> royal crown cola. Right, and one of one of the uses of royal crown cola is to keep, <laughs> uh, you know, dead brains alive. That's what I mean. Oh, I hope everyone listening should be clear. Any time we mention the royal crown, it's cola we're talking about. We're talk, talking about everyone an adornment. Everyone always for a quick, assumes it's the queen right, herself, but, but it's not. No, it's a cola that doesn't. No, you know, it's, it's not readily available. It's a cola from. <laughs> and I'm being kept alive by various artificial means, and I'm perfectly fine, and I love it. You're also, lovely, I've become lovely. a vegetarian. Did you know? I didn't know it. Yes, that well, was going to be my next question. I don't have a stomach. Right. So it's not that hard to avoid meats, but uh, I found it makes me feel more uh, energetic, and it's nice to know I'm not killing any of the little birdies sure. or the little uh, worms or trumbleumbles. Right, because not a lot of people eat worms, but if you're eating a bird, that's yeah, a worm you're killer. You're eating a worm. Right. right. Not a lot of people, people don't know that. Now, and I was now gonna... that I've been dead right. and my body's being feasted upon by worms, most of it, right. well, I want them to do well, don't I? I'm on the worm side. You're paying it forward. I like that. Because you were never on the worm side before. No one ever is on a worm side. You, in fact, if you remember, who was on Worm Patrol back at Abbey Road? That would be you. Me. One of your many duties. How many times in a rainy day would a worm sneak in, right. scare the bejesus out of George, oh. send Paul running in screams into the corner, and then the call would go out. Where's Mr. Sort it out? Get him in here. Get that worm out. That must have happened one time in all the years we were there. Well, because we, we, it happened one time. If it Everyone happened once, it. it happened one time. If it, well, I'll tell that, you that. That's, that's true. We never wanted it to happen again because it disrupted the whole... We, we had a... Jeez, uh, uh, I'd say another whole record for uh, Sergeant Peppers we were going to put out. We didn't get to it because we just didn't want to go back in the studio. Because, too wormy It was what you said. Right. Too wormy. One worm is too wormy for me. Now, and, and this oh, is... Oh, the this boys is... all had the peccadillos. In fact, if you remember, Ringo had an actual peccadillo right. in his backyard inside of a glass case. And he was told by the National Service, you cannot keep that here. There's, he, there's people around, but he did keep it there for a while and he gave it to his good friend, Peter Sellers, the movie star. Is that a fact? Peter Sellers took the peccadillo over to Ireland where he had a castle and he threw it off the balcony. Did it smash? It smashed. The poor animal passed away. Because I've, I've heard that story up until, you know, it's throwing it off the top and then what happened? I don't know. Well, would you like to hear a John story? This no, is you're about not going to do it. You're not going to make me, you know, no, you're not going to embarrass me, are you? You're going to love it. All right, I'd love to hear it. One time, it was morning, and you had your jam butties for breakfast. Right. A little bit of jam and a little bit of butty, and you were eating it down, yum, yum, scrump, scrump. Right, a lot of crunching. And loving it. And Yoko was saying, get out of the bed if you're going to eat any jam butties. You're she getting hated crumbs. all kinds of crumbs in the bed. We were very different in that way because I liked them because, you know, I'm always such an itchy guy with the wool suits I would wear. Right. Those crumbs would itch me up. A bit of free advice here for you. Eat crackers and crumbs in your bed because if you're itchy, you don't have to, you know, waste all your fingernails down to nubs. You can just roll around in the in the sort of crumbs and get the itching, scratching done for you. It's Yoko got out of the bed and she said, I'm done with it. I'm going back to Japan and I'm not coming back and you're on your own. 
immediately John, right. and this is where the old John comes out of the shell. Oh boy. You started crying and doing heroin. Right. Immediately. And pissing yourself, if you remember. I remember that, the piss. Magical Lenin way. Only you had that wonderful urine that had a little touch of green in it. And you started crying and falling apart. And Yoko, ever the lady of the house, turned around, took the heroin away from you. Right. Right? Right. Wiped your tears dry. Mm -hmm. And said, you get back in that bed, John. She jumped in too, and she started wailing away like an old whale. I, I, re I remember that. Getting stabbed with a spear. And guess what came out of that? What? From your Two Virgins album, cut three on side two. And you knew exactly what you were doing. You, I knew I was knew that provoking artistry. I didn't know it at all. I got very lucky. You must know. I had no idea I was contributing to some of the greatest works of art no, of you're our being century. Modest. You, you knew I very well no bringing idea. me that toast. When I saw Yoko screaming and hollering and bellowing as though she were giving birth, I thought... My goodness, that is a racket. No one will ever want to hear it. How little I knew that it would be the most wonderful, tuneful music anyone could ever make, as good as any Beatles song ever done. That's true. Good old Yoko. And I'll tell you a Yoko story if you ever want to hear one. Scatterwalling away. Because she was scatting and caterwauling. Right. So she invented scatterwalling. You know. do know that. We're, right? we're, I'm talking to the, I know she's talking to the people over at Webster's Dictionary to talk about it. Try to get that word Try going. Try to, to claim it. You know, you, when you go into a dictionary, you see each word, and you notice the little trademark on the end of each that's and every right. single word. Someone makes money, always that, coin. Right. Every time a word is read out of the dictionary, somebody gets money. And Yoko... Well, it wins the day once again in that story. She and then, did. of course, she broke up the Beatles. That's right. Well, that's true. Uh, some people say it could have been me because I lost it at a time. There was a time when I had the, the van for the Beatles where we kept all that's of right. our equipment. And I was driving it. You know, one, one night I was sort of very sleepy. And I was driving and I'm going down a, around a bend in a road. And all of a sudden, I think I'm going to take a sleep. I'm driving so well. Why not sleep for a little bit? Take what? my hands off the wheel. Into, into the River Thames goes the van. Right. God bless it, I fell out the car, you know, right before it. I fell out the window. On to, you'll remember this, a, a bit of hay. <laughs> Thank God I was driving by that hay bale. Well, I've got news for you. No. Guess who was driving in front of you, tossing hay bales out the back? You're kidding me. That was me, and I knew you were in a very bad way that evening, God. and I wanted to save your life. And I thought there was a good chance you'd hop out the window right. at any moment. Right. And I thought, a nice little hay bale that you could land on mm -hmm. might be a very comfy way to land your John Lennon noggin without hitting the pavement. Well, I appreciate it. You know, and I, felt, I woke up on that hay bale in the morning. And I, I woke up, I rubbed my eyes, and I said, I guess I'll have uh, two lumps of uh, sugar with my coffee. You know, I was and such who a great was there to give it to you? You were right there. It was, so such, a great, it yes. was such a great sleep. But you lost the van. The van's gone. And as a result of that... The instruments were gone, and the, the Beatles instruments. never played again. It's sad, really, when, you, when it, it really just comes down to the physics of having instruments in front here. That's right. It's You've too bad. You've got to keep... The instrument's alive, so the band can keep making the music. And if you're an electric band, you got to plug it in. And do you remember, the next day at the studio, Paul McCartney shows up. Paul McCartney himself from the Beatles. For the bass player from our band. For the bass player from your band. George Harrison, Ringo Starr, and they all say, I'm ready to go. Let's go make the best album we've ever made. There's no instruments. John lost them. Okay, goodbye. Right. Walked right out the door. It's been fun. Nobody said, you know, F you or screw you. Or thank you. Or yeah. That was great. <laughs> or what a career we've had. That's a good they way of looking said, at it. No, they could have said, thank no you for driving the instruments every morning. No instruments. <laughs> Goodbye. We're done. Don't let the door hit us on the ass on the way out. <laughs> well, I said, Which that's your, were. that's up to you. <laughs> you figure that out. Making you sure. can't, it's not right to leave a room. But insist the people inside make sure the door doesn't hit your right. own ass. Make sure the door That's doesn't hit me. You're doing the door. I'm I'm ten feet away from it. You know, if I had arms and there like Strike was Armstrong. You and Yoko in that bed of yours. Right. 
We had it on wheels at that point, so we could just move it and, around. And what does Yoko say? We could play the bed. She That was her offer. It's an instrument, too. Remember, uh, Yoko, everything's right. an instrument. Right, right. As it turns out, she was fairly right. Everything except her voice and anything she touches. But otherwise, she she was very true uh, that you can make music out of almost anything. The first time she told me about that, you know, everything's an instrument, we were in a music shop. And I said, great, yeah, I think My, you're it right. It blew your mind. Right, because everything in that room was an instrument. And then we, we then go into a museum, and she said, remember what I was saying? Everything's an instrument. I'm looking around, I see a vase, you know, and a painting... I said, I don't know what you're talking about all of a sudden. But then you remember that vase, and I do remember because I saw the bill. You tried to plug it in to an amplifier, and you broke it. And it was from the Roman civilization. It was from thousands of years before. I still owe them an apology, by the way. And I think you owe them a few thousand dollars. That, uh, that I'm trying. That in the letter, I'm going to say, you know, maybe you don't charge me for that because I was following the ravings of a mad person, someone who well, thinks I instruments don't... are everywhere. Good luck with that excuse. <laughs> I'm going to try it. And you don't send old Mr. Set It Right to fix that problem. I, I don't know. I, I can, can handle it. I can handle that one myself. Let's talk about the Cavern Club oh. and, the, and the menu a little bit more. I'd, I'd love to go back to it. Fish and chips. You can't eat it, can you? You could not eat that. No, I mean, you can't now because it's, it's a fish. Well, I'm just a stomach. Uh, and a brain floating in liquid. So now that you're just a stomach, do you just take some food and put it into your stomach, you know, from the outside, not even chew it? That's right. It goes right in the stomach. The The nurse comes around once a day and right. plops some, some food right in there, right oh, and the stomach goes after its work. And it can put anything in there at once. I don't taste a thing because uh, everything I'm saying is just a thought coming out of me brain. And, and thank God we've got the hookup here to get those thoughts into the microphone. Yes, well, they're pretty loud thoughts after all. But uh, that really, they had the fish and chips. Cavern Club menu. Right. Because initially, before the Beatles, if you remember, the star of the Cavern Club was the menu. That's right. And it was a massively popular club until the Beatles came and chased most people away who wanted to have a nice meal. They were the first place, sort of in... In, in a way, the Beatles ended the Cavern Club's reign of uh, success. Right. I remember it, after it, our first show. They had, they had a wonderful uh, fish and chips. Right. Uh, and they, they, had they, a, they had pee on a plate. That was a good one. Pee on a plate, tiny little plate. Right. And, and a that, pretty big pea. Well, that's what the pea looked huge. It looked like a full meal, which they served it as an entree. Smart. And uh, smart. It came from the war. Keep in mind, this is after the war and rationing. That's true. And uh, one pea, all to yourself, was uh, quite an indulgence. Right. I, many times I would take home a doggy bag. I can't finish this pea. And as long as you had a small enough plate, well, you felt like a king yourself. Right. And they did. They did have a crown option. If you if you wanted to, they could. They would bring out a paper crown and say, "Eat like a king here at the Cavern Club." All right, fine. That's right. I'm not. But I'm not wearing this crown up on stage. But you did wear paper crowns for the first two years as the Beatles. You tried to sell yourselves as the kings, the future once and future kings. Right. Didn't work. Didn't no work. one cared. Too long. Then you said, "Too high. Let's go low." Beatles. Beatles. What's what's uh, the the shortest animal we know? A beetle. That's right. How do we want to... And off you went that direction, and the minute you had the name, you already had the songs. Right. Literally nothing was working. No one wanted to hear you. You chased people away. You almost destroyed the wonderful, wonderful Cavern Club, <laughs> which was on the third floor when you first started it, and then became was dropped down into the basement. Well, we had so many fans coming, it knocked the floors down one by one. I don't remember how the physics of that worked. We had so many fans come in, the floor was so heavy on the third floor, and it would just drop down one level at a time. It took only a few months before you were in the basement. That's true. I do remember that now. That's why there were three floors underneath you when you were finally in the basement. And there you finally hit upon the name, The Beatles. And, and do you remember whose name, who offered the name? Well, I Me, got, I, I got named you. That's right. I said, call yourselves the Beatles. It'll work great. I said, I said you, what's your name again? You never got it right. I never got it Georgie right. Georgie Taylor. I'm reading it on the paper, Georgie Mr. Taylor. Sort it out. Right. I was calling you Greg for a while. I always had a G name, though. 
I, I worked for you for so many years, John. And do you remember the the chaos that was Apple Records? Oh, there was, well, yeah, there was apples everywhere. It was too many. Too many. And then you there was applesauce. And that would have been nice. That would have been, been nice been if we just became, you know, the Beatles, not a rock band, Apple sa- sauce salesman. That was, we were going to go there for a minute in that direction. Well, there was a lot of money to be made. In Apple sauce. Because in the war, and the, we were all just fresh out of World War II. Now, do remember that the time was a difficult one for, for Britain. Right. And you would have your man come up the street. The rag man would come. Mm-hmm. The tin men would right. come with the pots and the pans. Right. Bang, bang, bang away. Mm-hmm. And here comes Mr. Applesauce. Right. With a giant wooden cart filled with rotted applesauce. It's leaking out the sides because he didn't seal it. Well, he was a blind man, wasn't he? Well, he was blind and, he, and I'll say he was stupid. Well, he wasn't very intelligent. No. That's the truth. Not a knock against him or his family. No. And he would dole out the applesauce with his hand. Right. His dirty hand. Right. And he would dole it out into your pocket and you'd take it home. And for years, applesauce was a scourge of Britain because we didn't know how to serve it. Then when we learned about refrigeration. Right, thank you. And we learned about plates and spoons. Lids for our jars and that sort of thing. Suddenly it's a taste treat. And that's why the Cavern Club took off initially. Right. Applesauce was the big hit on the menu. Then along comes the Beatles, ruins the meal time. No one can eat because ruins of the, the building too. Building destroyed, and then, well, the Kings at the time. Then along comes the name, the Beatles. Suddenly a hit. A hit. But it makes sense because guess where you go find Beatles down in the basement. That's right. There you go. They're right. always down there, and that's where makes we that we spent a lot of our time. Now, Georgie, let's, do you want to get to now, one of these initially, questions? Initially, uh, I've got one question for you. Sure. Do you remember when you considered, you and Paul, and I remember this because right. I was standing right next to you when you had this conversation. I remember you were standing between us, and I said, get out of the way. We were trying to talk and to I each other. And I stood beside you. Right. And the conversation was, should we be a rock band? Right. Or should we sell insects? Insects. Now that we've got this name, the right. Beatles... What do you do with it? What do you do? Keep playing these songs, which right. is interesting. Maybe maybe lucrative. Could be world-changing. why don't we start a little company that makes uh, harvest insects and sells them? Right. We had the ideas. I had re- drawn up schematics because what for Because what else leash. would you want except to pick up the phone book if you needed a, a bug and call a company called The Beatles and say, bring, bring me five bugs. Right. Uh, bring me some bugs. I'm trying to pull a prank on my sister. You know, a boyfriend, new boyfriend's coming over. We want to sort of make a racket. You'd be right there. You'd be the only person to do that. You'd, you'd, you'd rule right the world. you'd be right there in the phone book. Right. You, to be. you put a little, you know, a bug, a ladybug and a, a spider or something in an envelope uh, and trot it over. Makes perfect sense. But, well, what happened? We didn't have you didn't do the it. guts. And who did? A little man by the name of Warren Buffett. That's right. And now he's very wealthy. Look at him go. And insects. If you're listening to this, Warren, uh, we'd love some of your money. And at the time Warren Buffett was hanging around, if I don't recall right. incorrectly. Yes, he was there. He was around with you and John, you and Paul. Right. And if for a time you considered him for drums. Well, because he would, he'd always have that little uh, notebook with him. That he'd be, and he'd be writing his numbers in. He'd write numbers Numbers. In. Every number he could think of, he'd just write it down. Now, do you remember, Ringo, before he had a drum set? Right. Thinking and making notes about drumming. Boom. He, he boom, would draw. Boom. Yep. Bang, bang, bang. That filled, he filled notebooks. He's got a whole library. I go to his with, house sometimes. He's still got them with all. With ideas for sounds right. and beats. I remember I, they, I showed him a picture of a drum kit once. And he pointed to it. He said, you know what this would sound like? I said, I don't know, bang. He said, no, boom. You know, uh, okay, great, good for you. You know what this would sound like? He's pointing to a symbol, crash. No, he said, smash. I said, okay, you've got, you certainly know See, what you're talking about. That's called research. And that's what Ringo does. That's why he's a great drummer. That's why Not I'm, because he can drum, because he does the research and planning. He knows where his hands are supposed to go, when they're supposed to be there. That's why I'll sit on a drum kit and I'm, I need a roadmap to get around. Right. I won't do it. I'm scared to death. But Ringo's done the paperwork. He's done the, he's, you know, he put in the 10,000 hours to become a genius at it. Malcolm Gladwell, another 
Almost Beetle, if you remember. I remember. Tried to join at the very end, a young fellow at the time. Right. He was about nine years old. Right. And you was you were working on Abbey Road. Mm-hmm. And knock, 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 there's little Malcolm Gladwell. Can I be in the Beatles, sir? And said, what almost, was it you said to him? I said, I almost stepped on you, you're so small. We could sell you as one of our beetle bugs if we were doing that, but we had made such a great career as a rock band, so I, I kind of just thought that idea. I said to him, and I, I'll, never, I'll always regret saying this, get the fuck away from my face. It was, and he bought, he cried, he cried so much. He stayed there. The rest of the Beatles said, "Why did you do that?" I said, "I don't know. I I just I lost it. I don't know what. I just lost it on this little nine year old kid. Uh-huh. He grew up to be Malcolm Gladwell, so I feel foolish. But it was a tough. It was a tough one. And do you remember the time you were trying to decide who to have sex with? I would always go to you for that. And I said, "Well, you, Yoko's the only woman in the room, right?" And she's in bed already. You were always hanging around in our bedroom. So save time. I, the decision's made. The decision's been made. I'm, I'm married to her. I'm You're in ma- the same room with her. She's in bed. She's in bed. It's Valentine's Day. We've gone to dinner. Hop in. Hop in. And um, I remember you said, you asked me, you know, can I stick around and watch? And I said, same thing I always told you. Only if you'll film it. And, and and you never did have a camera with you. Never did. And I always think, I want to ask you about this. I always think you never intended to film us. You just wanted to know if you wanted us around. If, if we wanted you around, I should say. Yes. I just wanted to know that you loved me. We loved you. But as it turns out, you couldn't remember my name. And that was fine with me. I was happy to be a part of the joy. The music, above all, was the great great gift that you gave to the world. That's true. Second to that, the bugs. The bugs that you raised, and many people don't know it, but you single-handedly developed new strains of cockroach. Right. Um, Well, you're putting me on the spot here a little bit, so I'll put it out there. Folks, about six times out of ten, whenever you see a bug... It's a Beetle brand bug. We put a, the ones that we didn't sell. We just put out into the world, and well, there you go. The bugs that you love are Beetle bugs. Now you know they're free. You know Warren Buffett. We, that's what we learned from him. Give it all away at the end. That's right. Give away all your bugs. Yeah, that's right. And he's going to give his a lot of his bugs away. He told me. Fantastic. He's a fantastic guy. Well, let's get to a question. Other people have emailed in, and they want to know. You know. They need advice. These people don't know how to run their lives. They need a little help from their friends. All right. Hello, John. Help. My wife loves root beer. I mean, she loves it. She must buy it once a week. I like to spend time with her. Hell, I love to spend time with her, but I don't like root beer. What can I do? Cheerio. Shane from Cape Cod. P.S. Thanks for the help. Now, wait a minute. We haven't helped you yet. (laughs) Save that uh, P.S. for another email. Yes. We haven't done anything for you, Shane. Well, there's not much you can do. Divorce is always an option. That was my first inclination. Get divorced. But it seems to me the real problem with root beer right. is the bubbles and the smell. Mm-hmm. It smells wonderfully sweet and mm-hmm. possibly too much for you. Right. And I, I advise you to do this. Work on your nose. Have some of your glands removed so you can't smell the root beer. As far as you're concerned, it could be a cola drink. You've no idea. All you know is it's bubbling and it's a little bit brownish. And you've no idea what it is because you can't smell it no more. So, two ways to get that. Doctor can remove your nasal glands. Mm -hmm. Two, head injury will oftentimes... uh, destroy your ability to smell. Right. Hammer to any part of the head will knock out your smell. A simple hammer right. could be a ball peen, could be a regular claw hammer. Right. Try to use the side that's not a claw. Don't use, exactly, and do not use a mallet. And You're gonna, do not ever use a mallet. You shouldn't even have a mallet in your home if you do. You could accidentally not give yourself brain damage. Right. Right. And, and in this case, this is what you're looking for. You're looking for a specific kind of brain damage 
And you could read the books of Oliver Sacks to help you know how to hit your head at just the right space so that you can't smell. He's got a great series of books, and I think that if you go to the library, they're the only books in the library you have to pay for. Here's what I'll suggest. If you don't like root beer, get a whole set of cups. Throw away all your cups, drop them in the mud or something, and say, oh, look at this, all these cups can't be cleaned, we've got to get new ones. Buy a whole new set of clubs, but, uh, cl- uh, cups, but what you do is you drill a hole in each bottom of each one. So your wife takes out the root beer, she pulls it in there. It's gone. It's all over the floor. And then she can't figure out anything. You say, well, hey, I, that's up to you to figure out how to drink this stuff. She can't do it. You've got no root beer in the house. And then for, to make that plan work, and it's a good plan, I must say. Thank you. Covers all the bases. You're going to need to gaslight this lady of yours. So you're going to need to get some friends to come over and say, as far as I can see, these cups are fine. Right, right. I think it's all in your head. And when she starts to lose her mind just a little bit, you just push her a little over the edge. Right. And and make sure, you know, have a straight jacket ready, put her in that. You're sending her to a nut house, and there you go. You've got no, no, no more root beer. No more root beer. And you can visit her once a week, and they won't give her root beer. Right, you say you, you love to spend time with her. Well, that you can spend time with her there. Good for you. you the relationship is still together. I, 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 see no, I see no other option than these two. I see no downside. <laughs> Me neither. Meanwhile, the state takes care of her. You've got not to spend a penny, not another farthing on her. Well, I hope that helps, Shane. Good for you, Shane. You're a lucky man. John Lennon himself has helped you. Songwriter sensation. Singer, songwriter, and the man in white. Yes, they were. Thank Sometimes. You, thank you for wearing white. I do appreciate that. I always wear white every day of the year. It, it, really? Yep. Even after Labor Day? Because I was going to say, you're about two months too late on this. I don't, you know, I don't care about any of those Labor Day rules. Everyone who wants to tell me what to do can shove it. <laughs> really? I'm in a terrible mood. Oh, no. What's going on? I'm I so sorry. I had a real bad run-in with the cops recently. The cops? Yes. Oh, no. Well, you know me. I, I think I've told you this off the air. I love jumping in leaves. Right. Well, no. I mean, we've had these lengthy discussions <laughs> for hours and hours. And re- really, I meant to say we don't need to discuss this anymore. But now you want to do it on it. I want to do it now. So, I, you know, I, me, I, uh, me and Ringo often... Uh, I your best say, friend. Does everyone... I'm from the band The Beatles. <laughs> no, everyone knows this. I was in the band The Beatles. You were I dead for guitar. four years. You came back to life. Sure. Everyone knows Oh, this. all right. Well, then, well, here we go. I was, re, uh, Ringo and I were raking up piles of leaves to jump in because we liked that crunch feeling all over us. Sure. And we start, we jumped in for a little while. And we had a lot of fun and a lot of laughs. And this is, you know, we're in the park, of course. And uh, Oh, wait, so these were not your leaves on your private property? No, I said, you know, I still live, live in, in that, Dakota, that Dakota, of course. This is yeah. across the street in Central Park. Right. We ended up, you know, we said, all right, we're done with all these leaves. We're not going to bring them out to the street. We just lit them on fire, you know, to oh, get no. rid of them. Oh, no. Yeah, and a cop came up and he said, you can't do that. You're going to spread, you know, spread a wildfire. And I right. said, you know, I'm, a be- I'm John Lennon. I can do whatever I want. And he, did, you know, he, did he have the same questions I had the first time I met you about how you came back to life? And yes, all but that? he rattled them all very quickly because the, the fire was spreading. You know? Sure. And it ended up destroying quite a bit of uh, historic you know, buildings in Central Park. Oh, no. Yeah, it was terrible. He was right. But I, you know, I'm so stubborn when it comes to leaves. Well, I know. Did uh, Ringo give him a, like, peace and love, peace and love? Well, like, Ringo, uh, as, as, soon as, <laughs> as soon as the fire started, Ringo was up a tree. He got so scared. <laughs> really? Did he just scramble up a tree? He, he's quick. And I said, don't go up there. Those will catch fire, too. Oh, no. Luckily, yeah, you, you want to go down when there's a fire. Yeah, he, I started digging a hole, exactly. <laughs> oh, really? Just like that famous Beatles song. Yeah, that's right. Dig a hole if you see fire. Well, you know that one. I'm surprised. Because I know it. I wrote it. <laughs> oh, okay. And you you, know normally, played. you don't know a lot about the Beatles, I have to say. No, but I do know very a lot about that song, Dig a Hole, There's a Fire. And, uh, you know, I'll tell you, some, a lot of people don't know this about that song. You know, Ringo played the drums on it. No, we know that Ringo played the drums exclusively on most Beatles he, tracks. On all, every single one. Well, no, I believe there was uh, uh, one of the early singles he did not play. Well, that's well, I don't, <laughs> well, I'll have to look into that. It's been so long <laughs> sure. since I've looked into it. Well, it's been probably less time, and I don't even remember, but uh, that's all right. Um, w- welcome back to the show. It's so good to see you. Oh, thank you. I, I want to put this to rest. Oh. Uh, a lot of people have been wondering... Uh, there was a rumor the first time you were on the show. You're not Ringo in disguise. You never meant to be Ringo in disguise. Absolutely not. Such allegations are uh, is 
I'm just going to say that poppycock, and I don't like to use that word because in England it means something quite different. <laughs> Wait a minute, does it mean the vagina in England? <laughs> just like fanny? Yes, yeah, so, <laughs> poppycock is another word for vagina in England. Oh, no. So anyway, that's a ro- that is a baseless rumor, and I don't want it to spread. And also, I, I just want to reiterate, if you do see me on the street, you can say hello, but don't tell anyone. <laughs> just don't tell anyone. That you've seen and me. if you've listened to this podcast and you know that you're alive, also don't tell Keep anyone. Keep it to yourself. Tell people you listen to the podcast, spread the word. That's a good way of getting the word out. And this hasn't, this hasn't come out to, to Yoko yet. She doesn't know. She has no idea. At least I don't think, unless she's a listener. If you are a listener, Yoko, uh, yes, I am Ringo. <laughs> okay, you're trying. This is why everyone's so confused. Was this just a thing? Did you just fake your death to get away from Yoko? Is that no, what it is? I loved her. Uh, she's I wonderful. Still love her. She's a wonderful artist. She's fantastic. I think she's great. Yeah, she's great musician, humanitarian, weird, weird tweeter. Do you do you read I her tweets? You know, I don't tweet much. Oh, you don't much, well, <laughs> but you do tweet. I tweeted once to, about a, two weeks ago and said, "I'm here, Twitter. Let's get it started." <laughs> and no one believed you. No, I, 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 gave, I gave up on it. You know, because I was retweeting. Oh, you were just retweeting? Who were you retweeting? I retweeted, well, Yoko, but I would never read him. <laughs> I would just look at him and start retweeting him. Oh, no. Oh, that's it, too it bad. It didn't make sense. We have a very musical show today because we have another singer-songwriter sensation as well. And I, I would imagine that you guys would have a lot to talk about. I would love to. You know her as a uh, wonderful singer-songwriter in her own right. Uh, maybe not a Beatle, but... Uh, Hold on, let me get to look here. No, that was never a Beatle. <laughs> that was never a Beatle? That person I meant to say. Oh, okay. Please welcome Nico Case. Okay. Back to the program. Hi, guys. Hi, Hello. welcome back. Thank you. Thank Haven't you. seen your, your lovely face in, in uh, nigh upon uh, my, over... My puffy face. 700 days, I believe. <laughs> you think your face is puffy? I don't Feels think puffy. so. Really? Yeah. Just because uh, we all just woke Feels up. Feels like it? a catcher's mitt right now. Yeah, really? Pretty much. Can I test it out? Yeah. Well, no, I so, would. Someone want to throw me a high cast one? I wouldn't agree to that, Nico. It's going to end up hurting for you. <laughs> yeah, this man can pitch. Well, chin music. <laughs> I was going to catch. Hopefully. <laughs> I was going to pitch to myself. I see. Hold my, it was almost like I'm doing a selfie. Hold my arm out really, really far away and then. <laughs> I wonder if pitches get confused. I wonder. Yeah. About what, though? Uh, you know, you give <laughs> take a selfie with this phone. Oh, yeah. I don't know exactly what you're talking about <laughs> no, right you now. You know, sometimes I just get going with a <laughs> sentence. Sure. Well, you're, you and know, you, you almost were going to be a stand-up comedian, you were telling me once, in between the, the, the leaves That's true. conversations. That's true. Yeah. You just like to get on a topic and start, you know, testing it out. I'll get on a topic and riff, but the problem was those stages were frightfully high for me. I hate heights. Oh, ri- well, I thought those stages for the, is that, you know, Shea Stadium you guys performed on? That's the, the highest stage that, of all. That was the highest stage. Of, that's why it was our last concert. I couldn't take it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you guys were playing up in the stands, up in the outfield. That's true. <laughs> any any footage you've seen has been doctored. <laughs> like the moon landing. That's too, well, uh, you know me. I don't believe any of it. Oh, you don't believe in the moon landing? I don't believe Nico, in the moon. Nico, where do you stand? You don't believe in the moon? Hold on, Nico. Hell no. Back up, Nico. <laughs> Hell no. I'm in a terrible mood, and I hate the moon, and I don't even think the sun is real. The sun nor the moon? Oh, I don't know what I'm saying anymore. What do you think they are? Do you think that, uh, you know, the, our, our landscape is just like a virtual reality screen or something? Can I, can I tell you honestly what I think yes, it is? Yes, please, please. I think, I think the sun is God's flashlight. <laughs> That's all. So it exists. You it just think exists. it's a flashlight. What That's, is the moon then? The moon is just a dimmer flashlight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, very good. Uh, Nico, welcome back very to the show. Very good. <laughs> I think you're throwing that term around pretty loosely, Scott. Uh, welcome back to the show. It's so great to see you again. Uh, fan favorite, one might say. We all remember two years ago your wonderful uh, rendition of Santa Baby. <laughs> oh, Christmas pisses me off. It's, oh, right, yeah. it's right around the corner. Do you yeah, want to hear yeah. a little Santa Baby? Yeah, I'd love to. How about a little duet? What do you say? Sure. Here we go. Mm. This is mm. Nico Case and John Lennon with Ooh. Santa Baby. Oh, Santa baby, don't you want to come? To- I don't know the words at all. Why don't you? Why don't you let her start then, and you just fill in? Why did you take it upon yourself? She's the one who's done it before. Good point. Good point. I don't know what to do. Remember, I'm you're- a helpless little baby Santa. <laughs> I'm a woman. I Give me the money. I'm a gold digger Santa. You're a fictional daddy. That's weird, <laughs> Santa baby. What is it? And, and, and you, you don't like that song because it's like women are doing it for themselves. Do you, how do you like that song? Your rhythmics. Is that the opposite of Santa baby? 
the exact opposite? <laughs> Sisters are doing it for themselves. Uh, yeah. Do you think that should be played during Christmas? I just don't want Christmas. You don't like Christmas. I at like all. Go Tenenbaum. I like uh, the Vince Guaraldi. Uh, mm-hmm. I can I can hear that all year. What is it about? And do then everything like- else can. Just be flushed down the shitter. Do you not like the holiday itself, or do you not like, like the music the associated? I don't like the buying. Yeah. Maybe yeah. you haven't got a good present. Yeah, what if? What about just the receiving presents? Sounds like you don't like to buy no, presents for other like, people. I don't like getting presents either. Oh. <laughs> I like I silence. I like silence over a severe dinner table. Silent night! Like. Silent night! Right there! <laughs> I like self-reflection and a great deal of... Uh, do you like when everything's slow? I like deep knee bends and after dinner coffee, Scott, deep is what I bends. like. This is not the Christmas <laughs> Under that the I grew up with. This no. is like a war on Christmas. You're, you're waging a war on Christmas. We've become lax in our society, Scott, oh, and I don't, I don't want to perpetuate this shit. Do you like the, the uh, weather associated with it? You live uh, out there in back east where, yeah, the, I like that. You know, where snow happens and all that kind of stuff? You like snow s- goes mad. Mm-hmm. You like snuggling time. up uh, with a loved one or uh, a hated one? Those loved ones are dogs, and yes, I do. Well, there you go. See, I mean, I like the winter because dogs, dogs and cats, dogs like to get close to you. Yeah, for and horses, warmth, horses and it makes, get all fuzzy. It makes you feel like they love you oh, they <laughs> when do. really they oh, just they want love warmth. You. you think no, so? I do. think every dog loves you. Really, John? Do you have pets? Uh, yep. Yeah. What do you have? I have a big Saint Bernard. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's bigger than this table, as quite a matter of fact. What's his name? His name? <laughs> yes, his or her. His name is. Uh, his name is Boney. Boney, because of what he eats? Well, sometimes, but he's also, he's so big and fat, it's you know, an ironic nickname. Oh, it's iron- Oh, yeah. it's a nickname. What's his actual name? His actual name is Edward. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, and why name him Edward? Is that after your former king? Hey, that's what, he, he, this dog spoke once. Uh, what? And I said, what? I said, it was quiet, it was late at night. And I said, look, I've had you for about a year, and I haven't, I don't know what your name is. What, do you have a name? Speak once. He said, Edward. Wait, you may have magic powers. No. I don't think this is the dog. You commanded it to Absolutely speak not. once and only once. That is, again, a baseless rumor. I mean, you came back to life. Maybe you're, you anyone say anyone can do, can, do can do it. You said John F. Kennedy can do it. He did it. He's sure. your neighbor. Right. We, yeah. We, we, he was the one who, uh, well, I'm not going to get into that. Uh, you're not going to get into it? No. Okay, well, don't I think you, I just want to say... Don't you death fakers have a code where you're not supposed to out each other? Aren't you supposed well, to be... You can, out, well, you can out your close friends. Yeah. Is your... By the way, you death fakers, is your motto... Uh, don't say that as if it's a derogatory <laughs> term. Is your it's motto... It's just shorthand. It's just shorthand. Is your motto breath before death? <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, that's right. Oh, you've seen... Oh, my God, my tattoo is showing. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm sorry, I'm wearing this midriff suit. <laughs> well, you Showing know, my midriff. And this uh, uh, box set is how many records is it? Eight. Eight Five of your records. Word. Yes. Fantastic. Eight. There's, eight. There's eight total because I've only ever made eight. And yeah. Good to stop it. at eight if you've only made eight. Exactly. Yeah. You don't want to put a ninth in there. Blank music. Remember number nine? Oh, do I ever. <laughs> Tell what us a, about that. What a record that was. Yeah. Yes. Well, Do you know, mean what a record or what a, uh, like a recording session? Recording session. Oh, okay. We had gotten pizza that night. Oh. Big ones, you know, b- the size of uh, a truck tire. Ah, right. so you were phlegmy. It was more of a spoken word night. That's true. Right. Mm. And, you know, I, I said, I got one lyric. I'm just going to do it over and over again. Really? Your one lyric was number nine? That's right. Mm-hmm. And the, the guy said, do whatever you want. We're into this pizza. <laughs> <laughs> right, so you just press record. Yeah, I, I had to press record and run into the, into oh, the recording no. Is that booth. why you hear like a door open at yes. the beginning of that you song? you hear a door, you say, excuse me, excuse me. Oh, hey, I've, don't talk to me now. I've got to get up to the recording area. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I said the words a bunch of times and I gave up. You a Beatles fan, Nico? Yeah, I did. Uh, no offense to you, John Lennon. I uh, suffer a great deal of Beatles abuse as a child, though, because my parents. Somebody hit you on the, the head with our no, records. No, they just played it over and over and over and over and over again. Nothing your parents are that. Beatles fans? Or, that's so, or a, someone that's in your household? putting it mildly, yes. Oh. How could I put it more strongly? Um, you could shake your fist. <laughs> okay. Were your parents Beatles fans? Oh, hey, watch it. <laughs> it almost hit my nose. I'm oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> All right. You almost hit my nose. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to speak to one another if there's a very loud Beatles album playing at all times. That's what we said when we made them. There you go. We said, let's just <laughs> drown out families. So are you burnt out on the Beatles? 
I think I'm just saturated. Yeah. Do you know saturated. every every single song I do. by heart? Every single song. Oh, Bulldog. Every, Ooh. Probably, yeah. Now, hey, let me ask you something, and you don't have to uh, spare my feelings, but who's your favorite Beatle? Well, it was always Ringo, because he always seemed That's like, his a, favorite like a puffy cartoon. Yeah, I just want to snuggle up best, with that guy, he? and I yeah. liked his solo records. Ringo's, oh. Ringo's Road to Gravier. He's fantastic. Oh, I love it. I'll put that on any day of the week. It's great, isn't I, it? I will say... Sundays? Sundays? Sun- no, well, of course day? not. The Lord's Day. I'm okay. in church. I, I was going to say... Um, I, I do. I do want to say though that I am offended. You didn't say me. I said I wouldn't be, but I am offended. <laughs> Why? But you're, but you're kind of hogging the favorite spot, you know. Yeah, everyone everybody. Loves you. Everybody goes for John first. You know, I want more. They more, think it more. makes him classier than. What do you think of Paul? Have we talked about Paul? Oh, Paul. He. Yeah, I remember. He was the bass player in the band. Yeah. No, we all know Paul McCartney. He He's still alive. The, oh, sure. As are you. Yep. <laughs> That's true. And you know, he did die too. You know. No, I didn't know you that. You heard what? the record, you know. Paul, you know, Paul died. Paul he is said, dead. Oh, that was true. That was true. I was looking right at his dead body. So John F. Kennedy did it, mm-hmm. and then Paul did, it. Paul did, did it. it. Is that what gave you the idea of Breath Before Death? Yeah. Well, Paul did it. He did it so I'm quickly. Keep he, was, that. he was out for you know two seconds. Oh, okay. That and he is keeps not telling a... me I was taking a nap. Get off of me. I yeah. That it sounds like he was just dozing on the couch. Maybe. Okay. You're you're a you're a big or used to be at least okay. a big fan of, of John here. Is there anything you've always wanted to ask a Beatle about the songwriting? I want to get back to the songs. What about the songwriting chords? You know what I mean? Like, I've never there... been interested in chords. Really? Honestly. You don't like chords? Mm-hmm. Oh, no, you're I a like noodle. Them. I like them, but I don't remember what they are a lot of the time. There's so. a few in your songs. I have to say. There is a lot of them. Um, but don't ask me to remember what they all are. Mm-hmm. You ever use an A? Oh, I do like an A. Mm-hmm. I had a problem with A for a while, but mm-hmm. I matured. Not your into key, an a. or uh, uh, your voice got lower. Is that what it is, I, or just I, just, you... I don't know what it is. Mm. When I, you play the all... A, do you use three fingers or do one flat? I use three. Me I too. got a tiny little hand. Me too. Child I have big hands and hand. I use three. Well, you use a big guitar. Well, that's true. <laughs> it's, it's a Giants guitar. It was Andre the Giants guitar. Hey, he, wants it, he wants it back, by the way. Wait a minute. You saw him up in heaven? I saw him walking around with the other. He came back to he life. He came back to life? Oh, my God. Andre the Giant? That's yep. one that would get out. I can understand people not talking about you. comforts me for some reason. Yeah. I feel better knowing that he's back. He's back, and Good he's guy. doing great. Really? Yeah, Good. sure. He lives in Lake Tahoe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> because of the water skiing? Yeah, well, he skis during the day and lives uh, under, in a house under the water. Oh, that's fantastic. Good Air, for him. Air's hey. thinner there. It's just easier for a guy with for a guy size that's capillaries. All. He's got huge capillaries. Oh, yeah. Also, it's thinner up where his head is at. That's true. The rumors about him are true. He is tall. <laughs> I don't think those are rumors. We actually have measurements of him. Um, well, I'd like to see them. <laughs> okay. does, he, does he go about in a loincloth? Mostly, except when he's skiing. He goes you know, in a full uh, fur pants but no shirt. Wow. Wow, indeed. Wow, indeed. Wow. Uh, and Nico, this is out right now, and like people like the God Pan, but a big, a big one. What's the God Pan? The God Pan. Pan. You know, pan. pan. Oh, oh, oh. But I thought you said the God hairy Pan. Hairy legs. And I was wondering what you were talking about. I thought that was like some sort of like uh, fountainhead type of reference that everyone knows about. The God Pen. No, no. That, <laughs> like you know, that's where we get the term the Pan Flute. Sure, yeah. You know, no, I know in a pan. sentence. Hey, pass me that Pan Flute. I want to play. Yeah, but it's actually Pants Flute. I had no the idea. The ancient Greek has been um, misinterpreted by scholars. <laughs> the for TS years. is silent. So they were saying, "Let me play your pants flute," implying, "Let me." Well, he's a very randy god. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that's true. <laughs> he's uh, Andre's a very randy giant. <laughs> well, hey. <laughs> so, so Nico, this is out right now. People can buy it in uh, uh, record stores in time for the holiday season. I mean, Black Friday's coming out. You know, very soon. Yeah. Dangerous. Yeah. People- Dangerous day. Yeah. Oh, well, why? I'll yeah. be in my fallout shelter. So. Yeah. Thank God. You know, people go crazy on that day. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're full of turkey. They're all juiced up. And they say, get out of my fucking way. I want to buy everything here for low up prices. <laughs> oh, my God. And what are you talking about? You don't need that many shirts. Oh, you think it's just shirts? <laughs> it's mainly like electronics, isn't it? Show <laughs> anywhere. Okay, Ottomans. fine. You don't need that many Walkmans. <laughs> they don't even use that technology anymore. And somebody's hitting me on the head to get a Walkman? Yeah. yeah Absolutely. It sounds like you had a bad experience when you were out there once. What I store have. did you go to? I was over at Best Buy. Oh. And I went in and I said, what size shirts do you have and where are they? And someone hit you over the head. <laughs> hit me over the head. Like, we don't sell shirts here, you bum. Especially white ones. 
Yeah, no. Of course, they had blue ones, but they were on people. <laughs> right. I said, I'll buy that from you. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I assumed he'd say yes, and I just started pulling his shirt off. Okay, okay, I can see why. A teenager. They hit you. I can see why they hit you. Yeah, they hate. They hit, hit me and hate me. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and Nico, what are you? Are you going to tour around this? What are your plans with this? What are you doing? What's your life like? People want to know. You're so reticent. Let today. us in. Let us in. I want to know everything going on. Well, later today, I'm going to go to my hotel and try not to eat the peanut M&M's in the mini bar. Uh, yeah, good that's luck. Uh, good luck. Yeah, you, yeah th- thank you. <laughs> I usually put those in like a big conical tube oh, and then dude. you open it up and it's just a bag. Yeah. You know, it's like they trick don't you. Don't even get me started. And you know what, honestly, I don't even really like peanut M&M's unless <laughs> they're in a fucking hotel room. So I don't, I don't know what the psychology is behind that. Yeah, but if I you have them. any indication. Hotel food. I love them. I love every type of candy. You put Confinement a peanut M&M's does in weird me, things to you. I know. Yeah, it, it meaning your mouth or just you put it near me, it's not going to be there very long because you'll eat it. Exactly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to go home tomorrow, and then I'm going to walk around and uh, assess what sort of winter damage is going to happen and what I should do to prepare for that. Okay. What do you like to do? Do you like to exciting shit winter coat your house of some sort or uh, plan where you're going to build a snowman? I like to staple plastic onto stuff. Uh, okay. Prop up some blue insulation. I've been you know, there. Hay bales. <laughs> What have you stapled plastic on? I just staple it together. I love that feeling of plastics being stapled together. To anything. It it's just good, a right? weird sensory thing for me. I know it's strange. Yeah. Hmm. Well, that it sounds like you have a Don't great... Don't sprain ho- your hand, you know. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Especially not your precious guitar Not my guitar hand. hand. He doesn't play guitar anymore. He loaned no. it to Ringo. And I he... let that fl- you know, I was supposed to come in and sing a new album for you. Remember yeah, that? Yeah, I remember the last time I said, you know, come in and sing some of your new songs. I was going to, yeah, it was going to be that, you know, that Whistling Pete album. Yes, that I country remember. country song. We talked about this the last time he was oh. here. He has a, an album called Whistling Pete. Is That's it the called? concept. It's, you what, know. How's the song go again? Uh, you'd have to check the tape to make sure I'm correct, but it was, uh, hey, Mr. Pete, why don't you whistle? I can't write now. I'm sitting on a thistle. Oh, right, yeah. So, you know. And that's the melody, too. It will work it out, but the, <laughs> my, the, my point is I haven't been able to work out it much because my guitar is at Ringo's house. Ringo, he borrowed your guitar. He borrowed it. And I said, could I please have it back? I mean, you know, I owe, I owe my friend a, a, an album. Yeah. You're the friend. I know. Well, I, you know, you can buy a guitar. Uh, not, not a guitar like this. Yeah. A some Fender. <laughs> they sell many Fenders. <laughs> not one guitar. like this, though. It's, it's, a, it's red. I'm sure you can With get a, a red whammy bar. <laughs> I'm sure you can get one somewhere. Yeah, but the whammy bar, you know, I got it custom made. It looks like a a, a skeleton's finger. <laughs> okay, well that that may be hard to do. <laughs> so no, you can't buy a guitar like this. Okay, <laughs> and he's got it, and I said, give it back to me. And he said, it's in my closet, and it's buried. I said, what the pull it out, you know? Mm. And he just wants to try. He wants to play like Eddie Van Halen. That's his big thing now. Ringo's playing guitar, and he wants to play like. A- he Eddie wants Halen, to, and I said he's he like doing pr- the fret. Uh, yeah, thing. he wants to finger tap. Oh no! I said that first of all, that sounds gone out of style. Yeah, and secondly, that took him a lot of time. I'm not going to see this guitar for another twenty years. Yeah, well, why don't you just like you know, uh, uh, just exist upon your riches and just you know retire? That's what I would do. Hmm. My riches might be like. A pile of leaves as we... <laughs> Wait, hey. you're getting excited over here. Oh, I'd like to invest. The two songwriting titans. Remember the titans? I certainly do. They're right in front of me. Look at them. Here we are. We do need to get to our next guest, uh, and uh, uh, he is uh, a, a person, certainly, and uh, a person that I know. Is that fair to say? Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, let's turn on his mic. Definitely. That would be a good... Oh, is this not on? Well, now it is. Uh, yeah. Is this thing on? <laughs> <laughs> Classic. Yeah. Uh-huh. Got it. Got it. Um, and uh, Mookie Blakelock is here. Thanks so much. Hello. Yeah. Great to see you. Um, it's great to be here. Thanks so much. This for- is John Lennon. This is Nico Case. So nice Hi, to meet Mookie. you. I was in the band The Beatles. We played rock music in England. I- I'm familiar oh, with fan- both of your <laughs> bands. I'm big fans of both of your bands. <laughs> Who do you like I- better? Oh, you can't make me do that. Oh, I'm gonna. Oh, though. I'm gonna. I'm gonna say honestly, I I like Nico's band better. Better than the Beatles. Yeah, Stop. I think they are better. Is this a cruel trick? You have me on. Your guests don't like me at are all. Are you just saying that because you feel that I need the the boost? Like, is this like a pity? Like, no, really. I'm say I if if you're talking about the albums of yours that I 
Uh, each of yours that I have, I would say that I listen to yours more than I listen to yours. Yeah, well, you know what, Mookie? I've never heard any of your albums, so why don't you make some fucking well, music? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! I'm going to be looking at the wall for the okay. rest. No, I'm upset. <clears throat> well, Scott, thanks for having me on. I wanted to... Yeah, he's uh, over my emotions pretty quickly, didn't we? <laughs> well, you know. Fine. You're going to act however you act. <laughs> That's true. I'm not responsible for how you interpret a comment. All right. <laughs> Um, it's great to see you. You, we've known each other uh, for, for many a bit. years. Many years. Yeah. So I have a new web series coming out. Oh, great! Called um, "Please Slate Your Name." And Please it's slate about your name. Auditioning in Hollywood and sort of the kind of process of auditioning. It's Each tough... episode is a new audition for a new kind that's, of fake. That's clever because uh, <coughs> do, do that right into the mic if you could. <coughs> I'm okay. sorry. I've been feeling a little weird this That's morning. okay. But uh, please let your name if, if people have not auditioned. Nico, do you audition for things? Do you act at all? or? Uh... No, I only audition for things. You only audition. <coughs> right. you, you, uh, it, no come, acting ever happens. Mookie, come on. Try to control yourself. But, I'm uh, really sorry. I've just been... That's okay, but uh, please let your name is something that uh, the the auditioners say to the auditionees yeah. at the top of each audition, which and means say your name and say how tall. Sorry, because Mookie and each, doesn't look very well. Each episode is sort. Of, I'm sorry, it's really it's really hot in here. I it's not fine. actually. It's I, kind I of feel frizz. a little <laughs> chilly. It's a matter of oh my God. winter is upon us. <laughs> Oh, hey Nico, you're uh, on Mookie's side of the table. Do you oh. mind uh, administering the Heimlich maneuver at all? Sure. Okay. Uh, Whoa. You smell like uh, burning toast. Uh, oh, oh, what in the world is happening? Usually, yeah, when you smell burning toast, you're the one yeah, with well, the problem. I know, but <laughs> are you okay, Nico? I'm pretty uncomfortable. <laughs> oh, Mookie What's has happening? gone down. Mookie's collapsed. What? Oh no, he's, he's rising. Up. Are you okay? He he. Oh wait a minute! Wait a minute! What is this? Oh. Mookie, what are you doing? Oh. It's oh. the Jaws theme. The Jaws theme. But, but instead, of, oh. instead of notes, it's the, the word he he. Oh. Where am I hurting? He I'm back! It's me, MJ! I Scott fan favorite, Michael Jackson! Oh my, my god! Right Okay, my oh, try not to shout directly into there. Speak, what? speak into it certainly, but it's my normal level of enthusiasm that fans have come to know me by. Is my mic on? Oh no. Well, we turned it way down because you were sh screaming into it. Oh, I understand. Sure. Okay, we can turn it up now. Or are you going to use proper mic technique where you like back yes, up from it? I'm okay, sorry. Okay, we can turn it back up. I feel terrible. All right. I'm uh, so sorry. Everyone in the room's mad at me no. now. No. No. Well, hey, excited. Michael, it's great to see you again. How, uh, how I are believe you? you when you say it, Scott. Uh, yeah, this is Nico Case, another uh, singer. Uh, Hi, Nico. Songwriter, Hello. and this is John Lennon. You Hello, Michael. It's been a long time. Hey, hi. <laughs> Hello. Hi. You you did duets with Paul McCartney. I sure did, but never say, with John. Say say say. And the doggone girl is mine. Oh, sure. You were never done songs with me. Well, yeah. Well, you'd done that you've heard, but we've been singing together for a long time. Oh, yes. Really? That's right. Every time Paul and I would record a song, John would come and just hang out in the studio. Yep. And we'd, we'd collaborate, we'd think of ideas for albums, but guess what? Never happened. Never but never released them. Yeah. Now, some people say that Yoko broke up me and John. Yoko Broco? <laughs> Yoko Broco. <laughs> Yoko, Yoko Bro did a classic Broco, bro. <laughs> Do you think Yoko ever says YOLO? That would be cute. I wonder if Yoko has a bro code. <laughs> What's the Yoko bro? Uh, if Yoko, if you're out there listening, text me or tweet me. And maybe we'll get lunch. Nico, the, this is Michael Jackson. I don't know. Uh, Michael, a little background for, about Michael. I, I know of him. You know uh, of him. I just, I'm really confused right now. Yeah. Uh, Michael. Well, let me explain. Yeah, please. Uh, you, you, you're dead. Well, I died. I'm sure you read about it in the news. Mm -hmm. And, well, I've been hanging out in hell for a long time for, well, crimes I've committed. That, Surely, that you, you were not, those, you were not too. punished for in life. But certainly when... I certainly was not. If you reach a certain level of notoriety, well, things can slide. But you met the well, ultimate judge. Yes, Satan himself, who yeah. is not a big fan of my music or myself. So that's interesting. So Satan, is he swayed much like judges on Earth are, where uh, if he's a big fan of your work, he'll... Yeah, he's kind of like the Scalia of hell. If there was one judge on the Supreme Court and it was Scalia... 
and it wasn't a court. Do you know what I mean? I know exactly what you mean. Oh, I'm boy. I'm sure I'm following it. But uh, so, so you were in hell, and then unlike John Lennon, you, you didn't come back to life. What no, happened no, to no. you? So my soul inhabits, it finds an overweight white comedian... Slides up its butt. Oh, oh dear. Or whatever's open. Oh, okay. I see. <laughs> and uh, but it's low that's to how I the earth. Okay, yeah, it's low to the ground though. So, and usually the anus is the the closest sort of way to get in there. Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> you bet. You okay. nailed it. Good, good. You hit it right on the head. Too loud. <laughs> I don't know. I can't tell. We'll, we'll adjust the levels. Uh, I don't want to upset anybody while I'm here today. I don't want to hurt anyone's ears. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so you're be you 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 inhabit the bodies of overweight. Who else have you inhabited? Well, hmm. <laughs> oh, oh, overweight remembering white the comedians? rubrics that you set up. Yeah, overweight white comedians. Who else have you been inside? Uh, John Panette. Okay. Um. Ralphie May? <laughs> really? Yeah. He, he went up and down. You know, he was on that celebrity weight uh, f weight factor. What is it called? I think it's the whack the wake whacker. <laughs> the wake whack whacker. The wake whacker. The That's what it is. Celebrity weight factor. And um, Pat Oswalt. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, no. He's our good friend. Come on. Well, I like him too. I think he's funny. <laughs> okay, but now you're in if Mookie. Ralphie May. Yeah. Who were you in the last time I talked to you? That was um, well, he was an up and coming guy. What's his name? Jeff Billings. But oh. he quit comedy and moved home. Oh, okay. Jeff Billings, right. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Well, it's good to see you. I'm sorry you've taken over Mookie's body. This is a weird situation, isn't it, Nico? Why are you I mean, sorry? This <laughs> is... it's, it's, it's incredibly weird. Yeah. Are you a big uh, Michael Jackson fan as you were of John Lennon? Um, <laughs> oh, not... don't make her say Don't make her pick. I don't. I, I feel so cliche saying I like uh, young Jackson Five Michael, mm. and you know what was the cut off, off the wall? I like off it. the wall. So Thriller, you're yeah. not into. No, I like Thriller. Gonna okay. I like Thriller. Push out, gonna burn this is go out. Okay, Just confused post uh, Child Gate. Yeah, you know? yeah. Well, sure. Yeah. How I does mean. Satan feel about children? Is is he was he like? Is he protective of them? Well or is he is, oh, he. Oh boy. Does he He's, hate the children? Does he hate the children? Does he just think of them I... as like fireplace logs? Is that how he feels about children? <laughs> no, no, no. Well, the reason I'm in hell is because of the crimes I've committed. Right. Which surely you've read about. <laughs> you no, know, we know. We, you don't need in to go In the papers and on the blogs. So that, that must imply that Satan loves children because he wants to protect them from, you know, horrible I think, people like I don't yourself. think whether or not he loves children factors into his decision. I think there's some kind of, <laughs> is he chaotic? Kind of karmic justice on earth in the atmosphere, yeah. and it chooses whether or not you go to heaven or hell. And once you're there, you're just at the at the whim of whoever's in charge. So he's chaotic heaven neutral. Being God, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. He's just like he's like the he's like the prison warden. Okay. He doesn't care what you did, but once you're there, he's going to make your life a living hell. Literally. <laughs> okay. You haven't said your. I mean, since you started, you have. <laughs> Yeah, your catchphrase, hee hee. And you have your catchphrase. Yeah, well, sure, it's drum. And Nico, do you have a catchphrase? Uh, it seems like you should try one, you know? Uh, uh, sort let of me like think. Wayne's uh, World had, like, uh, what were Wayne's World's catchphrases? Party on, man. Party on, Garth, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, right. <laughs> I never knew what swing well, that, meant. That's going to be my goal today, today is to come up You should up come with up one. with something. If okay. I hear you say one, I'm going to pounce on it and say, that's your catchphrase, okay? And then you'll, you'll have to say it every time you... How about, I'm not your lunch, bitch. I don't mind it. I like that very much. All right, let's go around the horn. All right. Hee <laughs> hee. Drums. I'm not your lunch, bitch. I love it. Wow, three musicians, three catchphrases. I wonder, is that, I'm not your lunch, comma, bitch, or mm -hmm. I'm not your lunch, bitch? Meaning you don't like to fetch lunches for people. You don't get to eat me for lunch. Oh. Comma, bitch. Oh, I like I it. I love it. But you, I like it. You love it. Okay. Difference uh, of opinion. Well, I, I, I mean, we're I'm, all, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna walk it down the aisle. We're all, <laughs> <laughs> and you'd be, you'd be called an insane person if you said, <laughs> Try "I want it. to go into a church and walk down with a phrase." What are you talking about? But it's a and why are you alive? We're on a slippery slope. You have to agree that we could get there. You could. We could get there one Nico, day. Nico, do you agree on this? 
I do. It's just like quantum physics. We got a ways mm-hmm. to go. One day you'll be marrying thoughts. <laughs> and vibrations. Sure. You John know what walked I mean? Lisa Marie down the aisle. Oh, this is, really? I didn't know that. That's yeah. true. Well, her father had passed away at the time. Sure. Elvis. At the time. And we established that he's still dead, right? Uh, I want to say he's... I haven't seen him, but I'll say he's pretty dead. Right, okay. You're saying he might not be? He has the choice. I gotta call Lisa Marie right now. Don't out the yeah. DFs. I know. I keep outing everyone. Uh, Andre the Giant's going to ball me up and dunk me. (laughs) Well, that one. Um, And uh, so uh, what have you been up to? I mean, it's it's been a minute since we saw you, too, just like Nico. It sure has. Despite the fans demanding me to come back, it's been a while. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. (laughs) And what what have you been up to? Well, recently in the news. Yes. I just wanted to dispel a rumor where... A former bodyguard of mine had said that I was really upset that I was never knighted by the Queen of England. Oh, okay. Well, uh, you're going to England, Nico, in a little bit. I am. So you uh, can relate to this. It isn't likely that I'll see the Queen, but... Uh, you never know. I you never know. I could leave her a note. There might be some sort of like Prince of the Pauper situation Nobody where she's can stop like me from leaving a note. running That'd around in costume and, you know, what would your note say? Running is the, le- I wouldn't imagine her running That's true. no matter what. Not in those heels. <laughs> if you left the Queen a note, what would it say? Please See, do you get Jackson. this question a lot? Well, I'm pretty tired of answering it, so I'm okay. trying to muster up enthusiasm. That know, when you go like on I'm these press irritated. tours, it's, what would you say to the Queen if you wrote her a note? Just <laughs> let's talk about the my new- home life. Yeah. And, yeah, and the preparations I'm going to make for the winter. <laughs> <laughs> the exciting things that I live for. Well, yeah. differences aside, you seem perfectly knightable in your current That's what I form. said. Well, you've got two years. shoulders. That's basically all you need. They're fucking these are knighting the people, everyone these days. These are the people who have been knighted, okay? Uh-huh. Paul McCartney, my good friend. Two shoulders. And collaborator. Two sh- yep, there's two shoulders. Steven Spielberg. Okay, let me think about this. Um, One, definitely. Now he's usually behind the camera, but the pictures I've seen, he's had two of those shoulders. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Holding up his neck and head. Yep, two shoulders. Comedian Bob Hope. Bob Hope. Oh, I used to see him around to Luca Leg. Two shoulders, definitely. Two shoulders, yes. Yeah. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Yep. I'll take your word for it. Yep. And Elton John. Definitely a two-shouldered man. Yeah, I. Uh, he was dressed as Donald Duck once. <laughs> That's how you know him. That's how I. Oh, was he a musician? No, he's. Yeah, he's. Well, you saw him because he was giving a concert. In That's right. Like I re- now that I remember that picture, I look slightly down. There's a piano under his hands. Yes. Of yeah, course. and you were thinking that duck has perfect pitch. Yeah, this <laughs> how is very unusual. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you're telling me all of those people's con- contributions to society are greater than mine? Me, the king of pop? Hee <laughs> hee. Inventor of the moonwalk. That's true. Yeah, you don't get a lot of uh, uh, credit for being an inventor. That alone! Did you invent it or perfect it? And I invented the video game Moonwalker, too. <laughs> well, I, don't I designed know the game. I, I you put wrote in all code the on that, too. And all the boxes, and I shipped them off personally to every arcade. Oh, my goodness. It's true. That's a lot of work. One time I went to, the, I went to, I went to Buckingham Palace, and I tried to pull a fast one. I went, I went hey, uh, Queen Elizabeth... I got an itch right here on my shoulder. Could you scratch it with that sword? And she did. And I went, it's actually itchy on my other shoulder, too. Could you? And then it's itchy on the top of my head. And right before she went, nice try, Jacko. Now get out of here, you pervert. Did she call you, first of all, did she call you wacko Jacko ever? No. Well, no. Then Right then she said, take a hike, Jacko. And then on the way out, I heard a whisper to one of her uh, one of her knights uh, in, her, in her guard. She went, that guy's a real wacko. Okay, and she knew you were a pervert is my second question? Oh, yeah, that was public knowledge by then. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, I'm sorry that you're not knighted. I mean, are you going to take any steps to try to address this? or? Well, I'm going to try, uh, if you don't mind me hopping on your flight to England, Nico. <laughs> If I could squeeze into your suitcase or something, maybe you could drop me out of the Buckingham Palace. And now that I'm a different person, I can just... Have you tried, like, a change.org petition or anything for the Mm. Queen? I think that's a waste of internet resources, personally. (laughs) I thought that was a website for people who had too many big bills. (laughs) (laughs) It's like Coinstar.com? That's what my impression was. Okay. Uh, well, I'm sorry, but I don't. I don't think this is going to happen for you. I mean, you're not corporeal any longer. 
Corporeal. Fantastic word. Oh, thank thank you. Uh, I mean, you're not in the military either. Oh no, I know. I yeah, I dodged the draft. <laughs> Did you? Yeah, when I was a little boy. What, well, what war were you up for? Vietnam. <laughs> Wait, they were going to draft you a little yeah. boy into Vietnam? It was sort of a PR thing, like Elvis got drafted to World War II. And you were gonna, they were going to put you in the shit? Oh, yeah. But you know what I did? What would you do? I ran away with Ben. <laughs> Wait, Ben was real? Yeah, I hopped on Ben's back and we scurried up to Canada. Oh, wow, that's... <laughs> you must have I thought tiny. you were going to say you just hid behind the fridge with Ben, but <laughs> uh, it's quite a different journey. No, no, yeah. no, no. No, I, me and Ben... We hitchhiked to Canada. Hmm. We hung out up there. Uh, tried some poutine. <laughs> and what'd you think? So good. Hee <laughs> hee. Did you staple any plastic while you were up there? No. <laughs> oh, no. Your loss. No oh, plastic to me is like running your hand on a brick wall. Mm. Yeah. Good or bad? I I don't. I've I never heard it. that metaphor. <laughs> oh, okay. You've never it. heard that before. <laughs> okay. Hey, maybe if you haven't guessed it by now, but I'm kind of a weird dude. That's true. Michael, you've written some songs. You like co-write your songs sometimes. I've written many, many songs. Which songs have you written? You had the copyright to all the Beatles songs for a while. Did that make you upset? Ooh. That pissed me off. But you know, I went over to his house and I said, Michael, we got to do something about this. Yeah. If I can out moonwalk you, I get all the songs back. <laughs> really? What happened? Well, let's just say my bank is full of songs, bitch. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm I don't know. I, I, I like that catchphrase uh, saying <laughs> yeah, bitch you're so much. You're trying to take it over. Let's no, hear. I'm not going to take it's, it. Anyway. It's okay. Once you say it, it's, it's Unless, not, not really yours anymore. Nico, if I can out moonwalk you, I'll take that catchphrase. It's likely. All right, we let's, should all, let's we see. We should it. all trade each other's catchphrases. All right, Nico, stand up. I want to see the, uh, your moonwalk first, then we'll see John's. Here we go. All right, Nico, standing up, and uh, go ahead. Uh, say your catchphrase before you moonwalk, though. I'm not your lunch, bitch. Whoa! Whoa! That that's that a was, that was maybe even better than Michael Jackson. God, can I tell you something? Can I tell you something privately? Yeah, please. Could everyone, you come everyone on else? under the table with me. Yeah, here we go. Ready? Scott, I'm fucked here, man. What are you gonna do? I'm, I can't moonwalk for shit. I know, I, but I, I have to. It's a nice table. I'm enjoying. The I have to point it. out that you never said that you would give her anything if you lost the competition. That's true, but now I feel I've already made plans with what I'm gonna do with her catchphrase <laughs> in my head. What are those plans? I hate breaking. Pro well, you know, my Christmas cards are all gonna say. <laughs> Give me back. I'm not your lunch, bitch. Happy give me back. Give me back. Th that, you forget that part. I misspoke. And, okay, well, we what a cab from the airport. I take my Christmas card so seriously. I'm worried about the TSA, though. I was, oh, was going to suggest I'll that Michael Jackson song, give you moonwalk I was, uh, but not know lessons, you. but you've already out moonwalked him. Oh, that's him. a good point. Yeah, well, he's never. The way Nico just moonwalked, I can't believe it. Yeah. All right. Well, you're going to have to follow up on this. Let's get back. Okay, let's go back up top. Sure. Oh, hi guys. Uh, hey. Hey. You know what, Nico? Um, I'm so ready for your moonwalk. Sure. I, I would love to do I it. I feel we, very competitive. We right might now. have to postpone. You see, a spider bit my ankle. I, I was underneath the table. Was and it I a saw brown it. recluse? Uh, yes. Would yes. that, yeah, oh, yes. I, it had nine legs. Yeah, it was so poisonous it had an Help extra leg. I'm trying, man. It was so poisonous it had an extra leg that was just for Don't let it go poison. necrotic. I, you know what? I don't think you should. Good advice. Good. You know, I, I, yeah, so yes, we'll have to do this another time, this moonwalk. But but when you do... Oh, I'm going to nail you to the... I'm going to kill you in this one. You were about to say nail you to the cross? I don't know. <laughs> That's not a thing to say. <laughs> I'm feeling really complicit, so... Nico, sorry. have you ever thought about writing a song called Don't Let It Go Necrotic? It's a good title. No. Okay. So uh, I, I know you're it. sick of that question, too. I just like the word necrotic a lot. Yeah, but so do I. Don't I know but you don't need well. to use it Lots into of it. consonants. Necrotic. You know? I mean, what does it mm -hmm. rhyme with? Ka, 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 ka. Necrotic. Mm -hmm. uh, aquatic. Aquatic. The life aquatic. You Ooh. could talk about that in the next uh, no. lyric. You ever no. do that where it's like, God, I got such a good rhyme, but I'm sort of changing subjects in between lines? Don't let it go necrotic. I really like the life aquatic. You know, sometimes I mean, you just gotta get there. I wasn't the greatest guy. No, you weren't. Re you you were you were viewed as a role model, and then you're doing all these terrible things behind the scenes. You know, that's right. 
I gotta say, I'm not. I am not a fan. I'm not a. I'm. I'm no longer a fan. Of, I. I loved your music. I'm no longer a fan of you. Personally. Why? Because of my personality? Yes, your pers- your Well, I mean, it's you know. I know. I realize it's probably a sickness, but I, I. You know, I'm just. I'm just not into it. I'm not into what you did. I'm not into how you got away with it. Although, you know, some would say you died before your time and you were punished. And you know, I don't know. You being in hell is great, but I don't like the way that you're walking around here on Earth inhabiting the bodies of you know uh, my friends now. First Patton, now you, Mookie. Ah, oh. wow, Scott. Tell me how you really feel. <laughs> all right, all right. I Come on, just feelings. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe not. <laughs> that is a joyous noise that he makes. Well, he's crying but saying he he at the same he, time. He. I just all I've ever wanted is for people to like me. Well, you know and they I- did. They did until you turned your back on on their their uh, trust. I think you owe everyone a big I'm sorry. Yeah. Have you ever thought to apologize for everything you did? Nico, would you be interested in hearing an apology from Michael Jackson? I wouldn't, no. No, you don't like apologies? Do you think it wouldn't It wouldn't uh, solve the situation, you know? No, like, it's just more airtime yeah. for a sociopath, honestly. That's that's a good point. Why am I even letting you on this show? You know what I mean? I mean, you John. Love, no, no, you love the drama. I'm a fan favorite. John, you're bad enough. <laughs> bad enough? Oh, that day, I am fine. I'm offended All by All the that. things you did? What are you talking about? Remember that one song where you said the N-word over and over? That was a mistake. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember it, but that was a mistake right, if I right. did it. I'll apologize. I'll publicly apologize. I will. I'll come out and say that I've come back from hell. I'll publicly apologize if I am knighted by the Queen of England. No. Please, no. Sir Wacko Jacko. Reward your be- behavior. No. If you're listening, Prince Charles, make this happen. He is. He, I bet he is listening. I'm definitely. sure he is with those big ears. <laughs> I don't, why do I do that? Yeah, that's a funny joke, what? but it's a seriously, fact. I bet he can hear it with his big ears, though. Yeah, but he can. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, we're joking around. Yeah, I'm just, yeah Joe, just joking. joking we love but, you. but I will be serious and say that I think he yeah. can hear with those big, big ears. Big ears like this. <laughs> yeah, but hey, all right. We don't want to say. We don't want to say. But right. you, I mean, he wouldn't be a mile away from a radio, do you? <laughs> all right. Okay. Oh, okay. Right, we're joking right, around. Right. Just joking we're about obviously joking about that. We're joking about that. Bed sheet size. Yeah, it's pretty Okay. All right. Come on. Stop joking. I will stop it. Right now, uh, but I, I will don't... say that I think he might be able to hear us right now. <laughs> all this joking around because he has huge ears. Yeah, we don't all right, all right, all right. Okay, okay, all right, all right. I heard they modeled the Mount Rushmore after. Me. Okay, okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, they modeled Mount are Rushmore back after under the them. table again. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's get back up. <laughs> Sorry, guys. How we many making... spiders do you have down there? <laughs> Wait, you didn't have to pretend to be bit by another spider? I was really bit this time. Oh, wow. Right on my backside. Oh, okay. And I don't mean my back. You're talking about your butt. All right. All right. Uh, well, guys, this is, I mean, you know, when you get three songwriters together and three singers, uh, one wants Me. one wants to hear a, do, uh, a trio. One wants to hear a, a, a collabo of some sort, oh, you know? And fine. Thanksgiving is right around the corner. Mm. What if you guys sang a song about uh, turkeys and the plight of the turkey and uh, almost a We Are the World type of song about turkeys? Oh, I like that. John, why don't you start us I off? I just lost sure. my turkey. I can't. <clears throat> you lost your turkey. You soon. lost them. It's too soon. You had a turkey? Oh, no. Yeah, Pam. She got uh Pam, what eaten. happened? She got eaten. Oh, By no. whom? Couldn't tell you. Just found little bits oh, of I gore th- and some feathers. I oh. thought that you meant that you killed your turkey and ate your no, turkey. No, no, no. Oh, I never okay. would kill her. It was a pet turkey. She was a pet, yeah. Oh, okay. I'm so sorry. So you're going to, you're probably going to, this is a fresh topic. I would say use it. You know what I mean? Like Pam. That's a great. Oh, we could dedicate it All to right. Pam. That's a great song title. Pam. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. John, okay. start us off. <clears throat> Well, we just wrapped up Halloween, and Christmas is on its way, but there's a holiday coming up where we eat turkey all day. Don't forget mashed potatoes and stuffing too, but the main thing we like to eat is feathered goo. (laughs) This is not the most sensitive song, I have to say, <laughs> considering Pam. No, no, it'll The title is Pam. It'll turn around. Okay, all right. All right, Nico, you in on this? Pammy, I'm sorry that I didn't get to kill you myself. Oh, wait a minute. Pammy. I was counting down the days on my calendar, but Mr. Fox came along and fucked up my plans. So, next I've Thanksgiving. I've got feathers on my hands, Pam. Oh. 
I'm I've sorry, got little feathers buddy. on my hand pan. I've got feathers on my hands, Pam. And next year we're going to eat a fox. Wow. Whole. Mm. Whoa. While he's still alive for the crimes he committed against our best friend, Pam. I'm the fox. I am the fox. And I'm this here to turn. say... I don't regret it. It's a full opera. <laughs> okay, this is like Jesus Christ Superstar or something. I'm not your lunch, bitch. Whoa, how did you get that? Full circle. Wow. And it just ends right there. So it's yeah. kind of a mini whoa, rock opera. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, I'll man. see you in a month. <laughs> Bye, Santa. <laughs> oh. Don't forget to bring me candy canes. Wow. What an amazing collaboration this was. Well, you have yeah. Nico Case, Michael Jackson, and John Lennon all on the same song. All on the same page, too. Wow, yeah, yeah about how that song was supposed <laughs> yeah, to come out. The exact right. same page. Okay, so what, yeah. do you, what are the plans for this? Uh, can we put out a single? Uh, it's when I wrote, you know, I, I released that song, Thanksgiving that Valentine's single. Day song. I made so much more money than instead of putting it on the White Album. Mm, what, what song we was that? We missed our opportunity you don't for remember Grandparents that song. Day. So. <laughs> when is Grandparents Day again? It's like September 3rd. That's the, song, that's the day know. that Billy Crystal and Bette Midler celebrate? Is that what it is? I don't know. I don't remember. What was your song? You, you don't did. remember the Valentine's Day song. I no, what out. was it? Uh, cu- the Cupid, uh, the Cupid Shuffle. The Cupid Shuffle. How did that go? Everyone said, "Oh, <clears throat> I'm so sorry." <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, compassion. Everyone's in love and they're doing the Cupid Shuffle. Do 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 do. <laughs> Hand do. out uh, Valentine's cards to your wife. And you're doing the Cupid <laughs> Shuffle as you're singing it, which I have to say, I've never seen a dance like that. And but I have to say, what happened to your spider bite on your foot? Because you're dancing around, you could probably do the moonwalk. Wait right a minute, now. no, wait a minute. Oh, hold on a second. I don't want to get into one of these. Nico, he's a liar. Hey, hey. There was no spider. There was no spider, and now, he, he look, can moonwalk right now. Look, look, I want to say something. There was a second spider, though. I did get hit, bit on, on the On the bum? I never got bit on the ankle. I made it all up. All right, well, I want to see this moonwalk right now. Yeah, me all too. All right, all right, here we go. <clears throat> oh. 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 It's perfect. His eyes are crossed in pain. Oh. Wow. Oh, yeah. Nico, I gotta say that was a better moonwalk. <laughs> oh, I would say oh, it's an improvement. I, would, I have to my heartily original. agree. It wow. took everything out of me. I need to go to the hospital after this. Okay, we'll take you to the hospital. Good but Lord. you get the catchphrase now. <laughs> was it ever worth it? I don't know. But what you, the hell am I gonna do with this thing, Marion? Do you want to say it? I'm not your lunch, bitch. Oh, oh very hey. good, very good. Hey. Uh, you know, Nico, can I just say you can have it back? What? It's, it doesn't really flow, does I, it? No, it's just, it's not me. You, drums is your catchphrase. Drums phrase. is my catchphrase. It's every time I, I want to honor could, my friend. I was buying that one a lot more from you. Take it back. I feel like I put you through such hell with this whole I can moonwalk now I can and I'm the best at it type thing. But I can, you can let it go. It. We'll call it I a draw. We'll call it a draw. Even though yours was amazing. Well, thank yeah. you. Uh, anything you're plugging? Oh, yes. Oh, as always, buy Beatles albums, buy the bundles. The money goes directly to me. Every Beatles record, the money's going to you? They yep. used to go to me. Did you re-record every record on your iPhone or something? Uh, no, my, I can't get this thing to work. I can basically play uh, Doodle Jump, but I can't figure anything yeah, else on his phone. Yeah, he uses it as a digital camera. <laughs> yeah, but who knows where the hell those things are going. The cloud, uh, for another time, but the cloud. Oh, man, I would Good love, fucking Lord. I'd love to hack into your phone and see what kind of weird stuff you have uh, going on You'd probably on see pictures of me and, uh, you know, the leaf piles I've <laughs> oh, made in the past. That's true. Yeah, you know, you know, I need the money to pay off all these... Um, Fines I've been acquired. <laughs> Fines? From, from all the bur- leaf burning. All the leaf burning. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're tough. But no, for me, well, I will say, uh, next time, Scott, I'll have some songs ready yeah, for you. Yeah, next time, come back with some songs. I was I a mean, little unprepared. Well, I it's know. been a hell of a fall. Uh, well, you know, next time. Next I'm going to hold you to that, okay? Uh, you know, uh, what else? Oh, I do want to say. <laughs> yeah. Watch the Super Bowl halftime show this year. There might be a special guest. <laughs> Wait, yes. you're going to be on the Super Bowl halftime show? Just watch it. There Just watch be, it. There might be two special guests. There might be two guests. Wow. That you yeah. hey, okay. Hey. We're dead. Hey. Maybe I'm definitely going to watch this year. Michael Jackson to uh, John Lennon. We've Oops. really, you know, cut drums. Yeah. Surely we'll come in at number one. I would imagine so. Number one. That reminds me of my favorite album. Which one? Beatles won. <laughs> Your best of. All the best songs from the Beatles yep. in one convenient disc. All right. Well, guys, 
Uh, thank you so much. It's it's such a pleasure to have uh, three wonderful musicians here. Well, uh, I think we'd all like to give you thanks, too, on this Thanksgiving holiday. I appreciate it. I don't always mm. give thanks to get thanks, but that's what Thanksgiving is all cool. about, going around thanking people. So I say we do our famous catchphrases one last time, starting with Nico. Not your lunch, bitch. <laughs> um... You'll get by with a little help from John Lennon. It's questions for Lennon. Let's get things going. I'm going to introduce my guest. It's a birthday today. Thank you so much. It's, it's it ex- is, yes. It's exciting to have a birthday on the show. Thank you. Say, thank you. Happy birthday to me, John. Thank you for helping me ring it in. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome... Arlene. Thank you so much. You're such a sweet boy. Thank you. How, am I say, how do you spell your name? Oh, it's spelled E R R R L E E A I N R. So you're saying ah uh, Because uh, I don't uh, say my ahs uh, well either. Ah. Uh, uh, you, uh, you, uh, you say it like the word aura. Oh, bro. oh, like the colorful things at parties that people could take a picture of and tell you if you're sick. Have you ever done that? Yeah. I had a birthday party just yesterday where someone took pictures of my aura and they the, said the glow around you uh-huh. you're talking about. Yeah, and they said yours is just all gray. It's just solid gray. Oh god. Now I'm not I'm not as you know, expert in anything aura related, but gray can't be Gray's got to be bad. No, they said it's the best. Oh, you Gray's have. the best. Yeah, they said you had Erlene, you had the best aura. And I think it's because I'm just a celebratory person. So you had you, but no, you, mm-hmm. I know you from living in our building. Yes, thank you. Please take out your trash in a timely manner. <laughs> I know. I, I, I got I, a possum on my fire escape because you left your trash. Well, <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I know, I get a lot of complaints. What I do is I, I you know, fill up my trash box the way anyone else does. Why do you use a box? They give I, us bins. I use a cardboard box because I like to just throw the whole thing out. Well, that makes sense, but that possum, now he now he lives in my world friends now. He is my pet. What is his, well, what's his name? Carol. Carol? Mm-hmm. The possum's name is Carol. He came with it. I had to honor that. <laughs> it's funny, you, when I think of a possum or like a raccoon or a skunk, you mm-hmm. think you want to name them uh, Rusty or, or sort of uh, something a little more grimy. Sure. Carol's a nice name. Carol's nice. Do you ever think about that with your hit song? Carol Raccoon. You ever try that instead, maybe? I, I'll or- try that now if I ever play it live. Carol Raccoon, uh-huh. you came into my room and cleaned out the trash I collected. In a box. That's the um, remix version <laughs> that I do. In a box. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but th- thank you. Actually, I wanted to thank you. You finally came to my birthday party. I, I had been putting it off every, you know, you're always having these birthday parties. Every day. I'm always get- yeah, right. You're always having these birthday parties every day, and I'll get the invitation and think to myself... What the hell is going on down there? I got to check this out. It's Party Central City. I mean, I am very fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, get to, I know you're fun. We're well, having a great time right now. I'm having a great time. I'm glad to hear you are because you sound sick. No, I'm just, I'm very old. You know, when you get to be my age, you know, you have a birthday every day. So you get to be my age, and it takes a toll on you. You're lucky I'm sitting up straight. Okay. Uh, here, I, there's a lot going on here I want to address. You look like you're just fresh out of college. Oh, thank you, you young, handsome son of a gun yourself. No, I mean, you look like a person who is not old. Oh, thank you. Ooh, this is laying it on thick. Does Yoko know? Okay, come on. <laughs> no, and she better not know because I'm not talking to her because I'm wearing her beret that she gave, that I took from her that looks so great. I don't want to know. I'm still around anyway. Look, I didn't ask to jump in your marital problems. You came over here hollering at me, and so I just had to draw a line in the sand. I've done nothing but keep my voice pretty much at the same level the whole time. <laughs> this is holleration, and you know it. All right. <laughs> now, you're telling me you're an old person. Uh, I'm not. I would never say such a thing. I'm just saying, you know, when you look, when you get to be a woman of a certain age, and for me that age is seven thousand three hundred. Okay. Then you, you know, it has to take a toll, and so I'm not sick. I'm just. This is this is entropy. So you're, you do celebrate your birthday every single day. Don't don't you celebrate all your birthdays? I celebrate all my birthdays on the year. Oh well, to lucky me, I got three hundred sixty-four more days to celebrate. So you're. Who 
Hmm? How did this come about? Uh, what do you mean? I was born, and then the next day, my mother said, it's your birthday. You're okay. one day old. Didn't you, weren't you ever one day old? I was a day Or did you just go from zero to 32, and then dead, and then back? I, whatever, I don't do days. When did you die? How old were you when you died? I was, I, to, to be to be quite honest, I was in my 40s. Really? That's uh, as, as far as I could remember. You look great. Oh, well, thank you very much. How old is Yoko? Yoko at this point is, she's probably my age. Sure, that tracks. <laughs> yeah, Yoko's probably my age, or maybe a little younger. You both look fantastic. We both look fantastic. We feel fantastic. That's all the, and I also feel fantastic. Part of what has kept me young is fully celebrating every. You know, some people skip a birthday. They go, oh, over the hill. I right. don't want to celebrate right. this one. I had to celebrate my 40th birthday. I was still a baby. I didn't have a choice in the matter. My mother put a tiara on my head and said, happy 40, bitch. That, oh, my God. <laughs> that's, a, that's a bit rough for the... She was very fun. <laughs> oh, she was doing it in a fun way. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, it was, that's good. It was bitch with just the SH. So we, when you're you're turning 40 as a toddler... Uh-huh. Because you're celebrating your I birthday... Mean, an infant. Every single day. Yeah, as 40 days old. So you're, you're, are you getting... Gifts appropriate for a, for a forty year old? Oh yes, I have so many wine towels. Yes, you're getting you're sort of a, a, a new driver. Yeah, it's a says, new golf driver. Uh, I got a tank top on my thirty fifth that said, "If lost, return me to the nearest wine bar." Right. Oh, you're getting a lot of wine, a lot of wine related. Oh but. yeah. For basically, what you need to know is that a woman's life from age twenty nine through fifty eight hundred is just getting her wine and wine pair. Fidelian gifts. You must have you must have a closet full of those Nama stay in bed t-shirts. Oh, so many. I got so many pillows with little pugs on them. I ain't have a dog. I, I like the when people wear those shirts that have never even tried yoga. Oh no, and never would. Never would. Never would. I'm a Christian. But they're already <laughs> that in therapy. You'll never catch me there. I don't think anyone's going to catch your age, I'll tell you that much. Oh, no, 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 thank you so much. Again, with the flattery. <clears throat> now, you, so you you must be in the Guinness Book of Records. Oh, what's that? That's an old, that's a book that comes out every year that oh. lets you know who in the world has the longest fingernails, who's the two heaviest uh, twins on motorcycles, who's oh. uh, uh, the fastest swimmer, Michael Phelps. I recall, you know, I think my mother tried to sign me up for that uh, sometime around my 250th birthday. Okay. Oh, you're, no, it so must you're have still, been still a year old at that point. Uh-huh, yeah, just about. I was just starting to walk at 250, uh-huh. And, um, and they said, no, ma'am. And they you know, tried you're walking to, at 250. I believe so. That's pretty early. Is that <laughs> too early for no, walking? I'm impressed. People do it, but it's it's an impressive feat. Well, you know, but you need some impressive feet to do something like that. I had to get places. I, I was having a birthday every day. My mother got sick of carrying me around, showing me all the gifts. I had to have my own means of transportation. Are you keeping all the gifts? Uh, some of them I donated. I was trying to make a birthday uh, cake for you. Really? Now, John. Well, I'm that's so lovely. I, I should have brought it up because I didn't. I the whole thing was a disaster. What did it turn into? It it turned into a, what tasted like a meatloaf. Oh, what do you put sugar in your meatloaf? I put I put accidentally meat in a cake. Okay, and carrots in what I thought was a meatloaf. And then I put ice cream in the oven. The whole thing was backwards. This is, well, backwards is one way to put it. It's also, yeah, it sounds like you've never made a meal. I get confused easily. And I, I have, a, you know, a second's worth of tolerance for recipes. Yeah, th that is something we've always known about you. Just quick-tempered John Lennon. Wow, man, what the hell's a teaspoon or a tablespoon? Fuck it, give me this ingredient. Well, when you've lived as long as I have, you learned one of the secrets they don't tell you about baking is there is no difference between a teaspoon and a tablespoon. You heard it here first from Earlene. When you're 7,000, it's just... It's a cup of a pint, a quart, a gallon, a liter. Don't matter what country you on, it's all going to taste the same in the end. <laughs> and that's a fact. That, that's a fact, Jack.
<laughs> but yeah, but so I did want to thank you for at least showing up. You asked about the gifts and, um, you know, honestly, the gifts have slowed down. I have a lot of people in my life. I have some good people, some good friends, right. some good. I, I mean, Thankfully, my parents, all my family is still alive. Um, so I have. Oh, good for you. Yeah, I don't know a lot of people my age who still have their, their parents still living. Well, that, that's unique. Yeah, if, really if you is. are going by the 7,000. I'm the only person I know with an everyday birthday. How does something like, how do you, how do you, do you just choose that? Uh, you'd have to ask my mother. The mother chooses it for you. My mother told me when I was born, she said, tomorrow is your birthday. Uh-huh. And then that day, she said, it's your birthday. You're one day old. I wonder why that is. I don't did know. Did she just like the idea of making you special every single day of the year? That's the way to do it. I don't know. Why did your mother name you John? Was it after a, a pope? Uh, no, I, it was after, I, I wish, it was after a toilet. Oh. She, yep, she, I, I was born. And it, little, uh, they, they just called me Little Pink Boy because I was mm. pink as a uh, cartoon pig. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. they wheeled me into the nursery area. Wheeled? With a, oh, because you're a baby. Uh, I'm sorry, I walked did you very think I, early. I didn't know. Oh, you're an early walker. No, they had to wheel me. Uh, they didn't squeal me, even though I was the color of a baby, a cartoon pig. I got confused. I thought maybe you had immediately injured yourself upon no. being born. No, 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 no. I, I, I wasn't biking yet. They wheeled me into the nursery, put me away, and my my mother Wait, was. Define put me away. What do you, what do you mean? They wheeled me into a room, into a little bassinet, and then put found a drawer, a drawer with clothing in it. Okay. Open the clothing drawer, put okay. me in there, and put me into the drawer. And shut it. Shut it. They left a little bit of a crack in there. Oh my god. So I could breathe. Oh. This was a this was a hospital. It wasn't a hospital in the sense that there there were uh, you know uh, doctors around. It was a hospital in the sense that it was a country inn. Oh, my a bed and breakfast. Goodness gracious! Right, I was, I was, uh, I my first meal. You know, what my first meal was uh, b- biscuits, bacon, and eggs. Oh well, with with uh, English muffin on the side. I mean, God bless America and England. Here's <laughs> you had a very classic American breakfast for being born in England, and then you had the English muffin. English, but that's what Eddie <laughs> good. And you know, but do you know what color the eggs were? I, I couldn't begin. Red, white, and blue. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to ask you, after hearing this harrowing tale of child abuse, whose upbringing was stranger yours and mine? Good, good point. But yeah, good point. I, but you know, I didn't grow up to become a world-renowned musician, so maybe your mother had, maybe that neglect... Did something for the uh, world. Uh, are you ready to give some advice to people? Yeah, I would love to. Okay, here we go. Hey, John, this is AJ. Oh, look at that. Oh. He's right at the top. This is AJ. You might remember me from the first couple episodes when you changed your mind about whether or not I should quit my job a few times. Well, I took some of your advice by quitting my job, moved across the country, and now work for an amazing company and started to date an amazing woman. My question is, how do I stop all this success from going to my head? That's a great question. Yeah, well, what will you say first? Well, let me let me give some background here. So this was this is AJ. We all remember AJ. This was the early days of this podcast. He wanted to quit his job. I kept going back and forth. Do it, don't do it. I didn't know what to do. I think I left it with just do whatever you want. I'm done with sure. this. I can't keep coming back to this thing. Sure. This and if I a- gave him advice. Who knows what the hell it was? I don't know. This is a free podcast, sir. You can't keep coming back to him for this. This is unpaid labor. <laughs> this is not free. This is stitch of premium. Oh, well, then you, you paid for that advice. You earned it. And John, yes, you, you are obligated to give it to him. <laughs> I'm his employee in a way. That's right. So he quit you. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. I hope he's still listening. Don't quit. And I him. hope that cash is still rolling in. <laughs> I, I think, yeah, so he, he quit his job. Good for him. Good for you, AJ. And now he's, he's working for a better company. He's de- dating a woman. That's An fantastic. amazing woman. I hope she knows he wrote, wrote in to you about this. I hope she's on board. I hope she's listening and say, what? I was just part of some podcast experiment. Yeah. At least it wasn't a free one, honey. This is premium. Yeah, this is. You got a man there who's paying for his, his advice. You got a man who is willing to pay monthly for podcast content. That is how you know he will make a good husband and father. He is committed. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, AJ's listening to this with his girlfriend. I go, oh, hold on. We're not there yet. Oh, you never know. Wedding bells are in the air. Ring dong, ding dong. And Christmas bells are ringing. Uh, his, uh, I would go with probably a tuxedo with tails for that. Oh, yeah. 
Something like that. Uh huh. And for you, ma'am, you need to dress as a giant lobster because you are a catch. A, a giant lobster, a giant uh, white lobster, because it is a wedding. It is a wedding. Respect yourself. And you know, follow the tradition where uh, the bride wears white. Uh huh. The gentleman wears a, a tux. Uh huh. So do that and a top hat for both of you. Yes, but because there are plenty of fish in the sea and you are not a fish, you are a crustacean, you gotta be a, a lobster. Right. And a net would be on both of you for the whole night. Yeah, it's wrapped around you. And then when you go to kiss, there's a hook in one of your mouths and it's gonna be bad for one of you, but we don't know who. Uh, oh, it's gonna be. <laughs> I, would, I would suggest having a doctor on hand for that wedding with uh, some, some stitches. Yeah, this is gonna be blood. They might Stitches need to be a to vet. There will be blood. There will and be. I'm not and I'm not talking about this wedding. That's the movie you should be playing during, you know, your honeymoon if you got some, wanted to watch a movie. Oh, I got a great book for you to read. What is it? There will be blood. The movie? Yeah. The book about the movie? The read the movie. The screenplay. Read it. Read it. Hey, hell, I'll write it. You're gonna love it. Oh, did you? Congratulations. I wish. On I all wish. the awards. One of my one of my faves. I would have loved to have written that. I I've written a lot of things that no one agrees that I wrote. Moving. <laughs> no one agrees with you. No, I try to say I wrote that. They're like, I lead. Eat your pizza cake and shut the hell we up. We want to leave because you won't let anyone leave your party until until I finish the you pizza. Finish cake. the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And that's those are big. Tell me this. We talking about weddings. Do you leave a wedding before they have cut the cake? No, there's etiquette to these things. Do I you leave, leave? I leave a wedding before the before the ball drops. Well, is uh, is every wedding on New Year's Eve? The ones I've been to. Oh, well, congratulations to them. Happy New Year. I, happy New Life. People are having weddings not on New Year's Eve. I, I I guess I never thought about. I mean, some are, but I really. Yeah. God, the only weddings I've ever attended. Let me ask you this. New Year's Eve. Is it the same people getting married every New no, Year's Eve? No, no. Every, different people? Different okay. people. Okay. Yeah, no, okay. I, I can't imagine ever being, yeah, I, I can't imagine oh. ever having a wedding that wasn't on New Year's Eve. So uh, maybe break that tradition, AJ. If Yeah, don't get married on New Year's Eve, you basic. <laughs> <laughs> Called out on that one, AJ. You better not, or you're basic. I mean, just basic as shit, getting married the same day everybody else in the world is. So that that's just advice for you there, AJ. But what, what you want to know is, how do you stop all the success from going to your head? Oh, I don't think you can. I, this sounds I don't think you can. You're amazing. doing great. You got an amazing job, amazing girlfriend. Everything seems to be working out. You quit your job, two middle fingers in the air. Mm-hmm. F off, F you. Mm-hmm. I'm moving on. Oh, was there no swearing on this? Because it's Stitcher You can swear premium. all you want. I didn't know if Stitcher Premium meant that it was more of a Christian company. No, no, I just don't know if AJ swears. Oh, sure. Because well, I, I didn't want him to hear those swears. It's shut off. I might have sweared at AJ now for that. I apologize. And I'm going to swear here, AJ, so be ready. I'm the shit. Oh. And I know it. Okay. You heard it here from John Lennon. Do that. Uh, uh, ride it. Ride that success because here's what's going to happen. You're going to get more success. Mm. You walk into a restaurant or something. Mm-hmm. Let's say a restaurant. You walk in there and say, I'm a successful guy. Uh, you know what they do? They'll reward you for that. They will. If you say that sentence out loud, I'm a successful guy, they'll go right this way. So they're to our best table, our best champagne awaits. They will. You ever been on a plane and say, I'm successful? They'll walk you right into the cockpit. Yep. They'll say, please, sir, fly this plane now. Our pilots have both passed out. And you and you won't even question it because you got you feel so good. You just give me that. You'll put down your briefcase. Your tweed suit will be uh, so warm. And you will fly us straight to Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, John, is George Harrison going to come back? I don't know if he wants to. Okay, I just thought it's I'd check up in. to him. Uh, I, I talked to him before when I came back, uh-huh. and he said that sounds fun. I'm going to give it a shot. Uh, I'm going to give it a shot. He just seems so laid back, like he's happy wherever he goes, like dead alive. He just seems he's, content. He was easy to deal with. Yeah, he was. You know, on tour and everything, he was just. I'm good with whatever, man. That's really nice. Anyway, and then you're the best. Yeah. You're the best. Yeah, he is the best. I'm sorry to pick a favorite of y'all, but I just wanted to add. I know this isn't Arlene's questions for Lynn, and I know that we're supposed to be talking to the people, but I just right. had to get that one out. Well, that's great. I, 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 I you know, he, I'm not even my own favorite. I'm, Ringo's my favorite. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, he's, he's, God, he's cool. He needs some fans. He's got some fans. He's got some fans in me. 
Oh, well, they're good. I'm glad, it's nice to see y'all supporting each other. You know who did not like Ringo very much? Hmm. Sting. Mm. We we saw him at, uh, God, it was some event. It was the Kung Fu Panda 2 premiere. Mm, mm-hmm. And we all went. We all got on the list somehow. I don't know how it happened. Mm-hmm. And we all snuck in. We're watching the movie. This mm-hmm. is going to be great. Free popcorn. It's free at a premiere. Give me two bags. Oof. Free at the premiere. And, uh, and Sting was there. Uh, we said, oh, did you do a, uh, no, Ringo said, did you do a song in the movie? And he didn't. Oh. And he, that hurts. That, that stung Sting. Because he's the king of cartoons. <laughs> Sting has done more cartoon songs and compositions than I think any artist in history. Uh, you'd have to go on Wikipedia, but you might be right. I believe so. He did. Remember um, the the Emperor's New Groove? Uh-huh. That not oft referenced Disney movie where David Spade voiced a llama. Depends. I think, I think it depends what circles you run in. Okay. I I, I, I uh, hang out with people who are constantly talking about that movie. I, I talk about it a lot. Eartha Kitt is a personal friend of mine, and she was amazing in it. But um, uh, he did a a whole soundtrack for that movie. He did the whole thing. He did, and then they scrapped it all except one song. And they left the one song at the end. These are just true facts. So this isn't in the world of Aline is what doing you, her own thing. I live in the real world. No, this is a this is what happened in Hollywood. They wrote all different movie that was more serious about the emperor. Really? And then they went, let's make it funny. And Sting was like, but I have all these songs. And they go, we'll stick one of the credits. And I all think right. that began the downfall of him not being the king of cartoons. Who's got that title nowadays? Um... Probably, um, well, who's in the Lion King? <laughs> who's in the new Lion King? Seth Rogen? Yeah, probably him. Yeah, King of Cartoons, <laughs> Seth Rogen. The S- King of Cartoons, because he's in a live action movie. Oh, but, but it used to be a cartoon. <laughs> so he's such a king. I'm no, I'm working this out. It works. The logic works. <laughs> He's such a king of cartoons that he doesn't even need to be a cartoon. No, like when you're that secure in your kinghood, you don't need to be a cartoon. No, I just can't wait to be king. I want to think I bring that song back <laughs> for the movie. Are they better? So, uh, so don't so let it go to your head. Yeah, let it go there. Uh, go go out to movies and planes and try to. Uh, you know, don't be a jerk about it. Yeah, like don't hijack. Let's Let say, them I'm, hey, I'm pretty successful right now. Yeah, let can them I uh, you. fly this thing? Mm-hmm. They can might I? say no. They might say no, but they might say nice elbow patches on your jacket. Right. You they look. could say that. If they say no, they say, well, no, you can't. But you know, how about some frequent flyer miles? Uh huh. Great. Exactly. Here's a credit card. Because you, did you really want to fly that plane? No, that would be stressful. Stressful as all get out. Mm-hmm. Congrats, AJ. I hope that helped. <laughs> But I do want to get to our other guest who's sitting here uh, as well. And I want hello. to. <laughs> hello. 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 Can you hear me? <laughs> yes, we can all hear I each can other. I can barely hear you. Uh, please welcome back to the show, John Lennon. Is hello. Back. Hello, John. Hello. Hi. Hi, Scott. Hi, Tig. Hello. How are you doing? You guys have never met before. Is that right? No, no. not on the podcast. No, you met no. you met outside of the podcast. No, but I, I just wanted to make you know never on the podcast, never outside of it. Okay, yeah, I don't think you need to make that delineation. Oh, uh, I didn't being... know. You tell me, you're the host of the show. Okay, yeah, you don't need to do that. Uh, Tig, this is John Lennon, the Beatle. He was dead for four <laughs> years, from 1980 to 1984. Decided to come back to life and oh, has been I know the story. keeping a low profile. Oh, you know about this. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. You'd have to be, you know, under a rock if you don't know it. I actually point. wanted to be in the Beatles when I was little, and um, and I. Didn't I didn't connect the fact that you were already dead and that the band had already broken up? Mm-hmm. Well, we could have if you if you showed some interest, you know, wrote in the letter. We probably could have gotten back together. Just yeah. would have been or, a letter, <laughs> or at least the ones who were still alive at the time. Maybe they would have at said that this time. This Joel. is what we're looking for. Right, we're looking for one more member, a young girl from uh, Mississippi. Mississippi. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah watch listen. the show. We're listening. <laughs> um, Do you play any instruments, Tig? Guitar and drums. Yeah. Well, we, simultaneously you know, or? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you use Only. You, do you play the drums with the guitar? You bash it into the drum? I drag the drum set along the strings of the guitar. <laughs> okay. Well, that's, that's one way of doing it. <laughs> the only way. <laughs> you, again, you don't need to make that delineation. You, you implied that there were other ways. Right. And then you <laughs> I just want to make everything crystal clear. <laughs> okay. Uh, John, great to see you again. Yes, you too. Uh, you too. No, don't. I'm not. I don't want to get into that. You uh, you want to talk about the band you do? <laughs> not at all. No? Not with you. I want to talk about it with a different Scott. <laughs> uh, 
Um, are you a U2 fan, Tig? I mean, sure. Sure. What, yeah. do, what is your favorite song of all time? By U2? Uh, I'll take a non-U2 answer as well. Okay. How about um, You Are My Sunshine? You Are My Sunshine. Yeah. Why do you like That's an old one, uh, I believe, uh, from back during the Dust Bowl days. Yes. Yeah. You're crying. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. You have Maybe tears Maybe she's got dust Hello? in her eyes. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Take a, how long does each episode run? <sighs> Uh, and, and does the pause button work? Because, you know, a lot of people have to leave the room for snacking. Well, you don't need to because I take so many pauses when I deliver my lines. That's nice of you. Mm-hmm. You have so many people on TV who just want to run through their sentences. A yeah. lot of people don't know about Tig's dry delivery. Mm-hmm. You've been a friend of the show for now eight years almost. You've been on so many It'll episodes. Be eight years tomorrow. Right, yeah. yeah. And that was, that's longer than we've actually been on the air. But mm-hmm. you've been a friend to it before... We uh, shook hands. We met in here. We said, let's be friends to this show. Mm-hmm. You take so many pauses in your actual delivery of your stand-up um, because you want to give people time to run out and get snacks and beers. Yes. Right, right. Oh, okay. thank you. I needed a snack. That's very considerate. And you got a snack. What right, are you, what are you, what are you munching on? M&M's. <laughs> oh, the old Mars and Murray's. <laughs> That's right. A few pretzel M&M's. <laughs> pretzel M&M's. Yeah, I'm, I'm more modern than you think. <laughs> well, I thought that you were only as modern as to have peanut M&M's, so you did prove me wrong. That's true. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was recently on a flight. M&M's. <laughs> okay. Where, where were you flying to? I was flying back from Australia. Can you do oh, an Australian right. accent? Yeah, I can do one very well. You do it. Do you, oh, you want me do to you do think it you've been doing it? Because you're not doing it well. I oh, know I was doing it. I was just doing my own voice. Oh, okay. Let's hear your Oh, you know, good day, mate. And how, let's all can we go out to the outback? Take me, you know, take me there right now in your Jeep. Because I can't be on the beach anymore. Wow. Wow. It's mostly it's an uncanny. accent. You just my accents are just saying what's around and what you can do. <laughs> right. Well, I place. definitely got an Australian air about you though. Sure, well that's that's true, because I'm hopping. Yeah. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. You know, I, speaking of hopping in Australia, I didn't know that kangaroos were dangerous. And I was there mm. and I was around a bunch of kangaroos. Why were you around a bunch of kangaroos? Did you go? I was in Australia. Oh, I see. So meaning you just, anyone in Australia Landed. is around a bunch of kangaroos. Yes. Okay. Um, they were gathering on a golf course. Mm. Okay. And I just thought they were cute and friendly and I went up, and I was trying to have my friend take a picture of me right. oh, no. with the kangaroo. Yeah. And um, this happened to me, by the way, attacked by an ostrich. John Lennon knows we were together. Right in the head. <laughs> right in the head. I was not attacked by an ostrich. Okay. But, I mean, what I'm saying is I was attacked by an animal in Australia. That'd be great if that's how the story went. And then an ostrich ran up. <laughs> that would be good. <laughs> um, did, they, did they pounce at you? Did no, they bounce they, at you? They, this one that was w- way taller than me mm-hmm. stood there and eyed me out of the corner of his eye. Mm-hmm. And I was just still kind of playing around. I obviously lived, everything was fine, but I went to dinner with a friend later that is from the area, and he said that they will disembowel you. Oh, oh no. And um, I. That's not hor- what you want done to well, your bowels. But what <laughs> excited me was the possibility of my Wikipedia page being <laughs> she was the disembowelment of Tig Notaro. <laughs> would it be worth it, you think? I do. I think that would be <laughs> one like of its own categories along. that you like collapse yeah. or. <laughs> Disembowelment. Yeah, just like, wait, what? The it could come on many pages. Yeah. Your own page, mm-hmm. disembowelment's page, and then kangaroo attacks. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a subset of kangaroo. <laughs> right. Um, that would be a, an awesome way to die. Mm-hmm. Uh, just like he pins me down and ki- that what they do is they use their back uh-huh. paw do they, do they pin you, you down with the back? or With their little... Their dumb little front thing. They, they they pin you I down with the so. front and then, and then, they then kick disembowel. Your, oh like, my! They kick you like wow. all your innards out. Wow! What do they do with the innards when they're out? You're not around to find out. That's oh. their business. Yeah. That's no not, one that's is not fair. No one has ever known yeah. because usually people update Wikipedia right as they're being disemboweled. People like, are Don't less do interested in the innards mm-hmm. when the disemboweled person's lying there. Oh. Gosh. Nobody's like, what do we do? Take zinners. <laughs> <laughs> Take a picture for Wikipedia. <laughs> but yeah, that was my main uh, walk away. Was that that uh, would have been a good Wikipedia? Terrible. That we were be. we John and I were around a lot of kangaroos. That's right. But they they were very docile. They were small too. They were small. They were docile. They were fast. 
They were small, they were fast, they were dull. What uh, else were they? You guys finish Brown. each other's sentences. Mm-hmm. Some times. Yes. <laughs> um, oh, very short sentences. Yeah. I was attacked by the ostrich. I was. Uh, 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 you were trying to get a selfie. A woman named Lauren Lapkus and I were getting selfies with this ostrich who was behind us. Right. Uh, uh, b- like supporting you? Uh, no, it, it wasn't behind <laughs> us. As, no, it was literally to the rear of us. It's six oh, o'clock. Okay. Six o'clock. Okay. You know, sure, six o'clock. Sure, sure. It was on your six. <clears throat> separated by us, uh, mm. separated from us by a fence. Yeah. So we thought we were safe somehow, but the ostrich. The shortest fence you could ever have for an ostrich. Sure, I mean. By keeping it in. You, you know. would think an ostrich, you know how big ostriches are. Yeah. Their necks, they go all the way up to and like they, eight feet tall. They bend like you wouldn't believe. This was like a five feet tall fence. Yep. We're getting selfies. Yeah. It just goes bonk right in the back of the head. With and I, I saw the whole dumb thing. bill. Yeah, it was looking right at you, mm-hmm. and I, I was kind of swallowing some spit I had. I couldn't get it out. What? Why are you swallowing spit? You know, every now and then you've got to. Yeah, that's true. That's <laughs> I almost point. was attacked by an ostrich. Really? Uh, well, I'm glad you're okay. I'm Thank gl- you. I'm glad you're here to make one Mississippi. I think we got a good sense of what this is. What this is all about, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Don't you think? Well, it actually many does have a lot to do with toilet paper. Does oh, it no. really? Yeah. In what in what sense? People wiping, people swiping, wiping, swiping, um, and griping. <laughs> oh man, I'm out. I we missed. T- <laughs> What'd you say? I said I missed. You missed what? <laughs> missed the, the wipe. wipe. <laughs> missed the wipe. <laughs> <laughs> There's it's a big disgusting. bullseye right down there. <laughs> it's right in the middle. You know, you know? Stephanie, my wife. Um, oh, God, I want to say it so bad. Say what? Oh, I want to say it. Scott, wife. meet me under the table. I want to talk to you about okay, something. Okay. She was watching Hi, Poop Hoarders what are, what are you today. I, I, wanted, I want to say my wife back to her, but I stopped saying that like a She's year my, ago. my. Well, it's okay. If you can't, just go up. I don't want to say back up and say it. Wait, what say are it, they saying? Really? Say it quietly. All right, I'll try to say it. All right, what were you saying? What were you guys just saying? My wife. I. That was good. <laughs> See, that's okay. I'm learning. I'm getting better. <laughs> um, she was watching Poop Hoarders today. Poop Hoarders? Yeah, is this, this woman this, poops It can't possibly jars. be a show. This is... It was television. Poop this is television. Hoarders or Poop well, Hoarders? Well, the whole ne- the whole show isn't called... <laughs> Someone who transports poop it's back and forth? It's not every week a new poop hoarder, but this woman was pooping in jars <laughs> I, and I like... also eats her poop. Okay. <laughs> Out okay. of the jars or she eats it before it goes into the jars? Call Stephanie. No. We need to get some clarification. Yeah, I'm on not this. quite sure, but whenever you eat the poop, Ugh. you know, for my dollar, that's the worst smelling food there is. <laughs> With poop, right? Why? I mean, it smells terrible. It smells terrible. I mean, rotten <laughs> eggs are like a Ooh, close number and two. And that I hate. Number two. <laughs> what is this? What, what are we comedy even doing? podcast? Seriously, right I don't understand work. this. Um, do you have any questions for John? Because I know John mm. Lennon is here. No, nothing. No. I what did question. it feel like to get shot? It hurt. It hurt so much, you know, because you get shot right in the body, <laughs> and most of the I time I think you were shot in the eye. That's on your body. I know. Right. But that, there's that famous picture of your glasses, where the glass. No, that did. I may have explained this. I oh, may. I not think have. we talk, We. Did, I did got we talk shot in the this? body, and I. Fell, your my glasses, glasses fell, fell off, and they hit, you know, the, the side of a rock. And you were, were your last words, my glasses. Right. I said, somebody get those for me. And then someone else said, you've got bigger problems right now. I said, well, where? I said, look down on your chest. So I did. And, you know, blood's everywhere at that point. How long did it take you to die? <laughs> oh, it, it, it took me about 45 seconds. I thought you were going to say years, mm. but you were only 40. I said, that's right. Yeah. Forty-five nice. seconds and then done. Did you have what were your last thoughts? Did you have regrets? The glasses. The glasses. <laughs> I think because right, right when I was really going out, I said, "I hope somebody gets those." Yeah, because they're nice frames. They were anyway. And also, there it's sort of a, a big part of rock and roll history. You were wearing them when you perished, right? You know, that's I mean, huge. Yeah, I mean, they, those could go up on a hard rock wall <laughs> or hard rock. They went down they on, went a, hard on rock. a hard rock. That's why they broke. <laughs> we got to it. <laughs> we all got to we it. All, to our our faces all lit up. Yep. We knew it was I know bit. the answer to this. <laughs> I'm going to be the funniest of the bunch. It, it actually is a lot like being in class and you know the answer. When you're a comedian, you think of a funny joke. Your face just lights up. Right. You shoot your hand up. A lot of people don't know. We've all been shooting our hands up every single time we talk. No, uh, that reveals who the comedian is not. Right. That's true. Um, you used to have your own podcast in these very hallowed halls, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, no longer you uh, got you out know, of the biz. Got out of the biz and moved into the uh, 
Cancer the, business. The cancer, yes. <laughs> You're exclusively cancer projects Exclusive now. <laughs> cancer, diarrhea, death. We have the book. We have the CD. We have the Movie. documentary, mm-hmm. and now we have the, the TV, TV show, show all about cancer. Mm-hmm. Where, can, where diarrhea. Else, where else can you take these things? Broadway? Hoping to have a musical. Mm-hmm. If somebody would please uh, produce it or direct it for mm-hmm. me. So would it be like a singer comes out and goes, I have, and then everyone's like, ooh, what do they have, either cancer or diarrhea? And then they say, cancer and diarrhea. Well, we're getting it all. <laughs> Are you available to direct and, <laughs> and star and write and Scott Ackerman <laughs> as Tig Notaro with diarrhea all and All I need cancer. is one of those sweaters. <laughs> <laughs> I wear sweaters on my show, so it's not that big of a stretch. Oh, you do? Yeah, I do. That's so. great. Mm-hmm. Uh, you are Officer Tig on Comedy Bang Bang, by the way. And uh, on Sarah Silverman program. That's true. You, I, I think you were playing the same character. Mm-hmm. Uh, you were unable to be on this season because you were filming your show, mm-hmm. uh, which was a bummer. But uh, And so we had to end it, and we never wrapped up Who your filled character. filled in for me? Uh, actually, Carl Tart uh, stepped you stopped in. stopped your show for good? I, yeah, I stopped my show for Why good. Why did you stop doing your show? Fuck that shit. Why? Because I said all I want to do is 110. I just want to do 110. Season? Per season. They mm-hmm. said, no, you got to do 10 the first season, then 20, then another 20, then 40, weirdly did enough. Did you enjoy then, doing it? I did enjoy doing it, uh-huh. but fuck that shit. Whoa. It's over. Did I hear correctly? You only bought so many, you know, data cards for the cameras for 110. That was episodes. a big problem, right. yeah. We only had 110. And you said, no, I'm, I know exactly what I'm doing, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, and so we ran out, and then, um, you know, it was a holiday weekend, and all the stores were closed, and we're like, well, let's just cancel this thing. At this point, everyone's off on their own beach, you know, adventures, and then yeah, getting exactly. wrangling people from the beach is impossible. Oh, man. Next two. But we never got closure on your character, I guess. So mm-hmm. what, what is our Officer Tig up to? Does she show up in one Mississippi? Is she like the, is it like the, the, uh, Munchiverse, you know, Richard Belzer as Detective Munch, does Tig just pop up, Officer Tig pop up in several different shows, and then should Officer Tig and Munch do a forehander? Tig? Oh, she's pausing. I'm going to go get a snack. I'm going to get a snack, yeah. No. Oh, hold on. Okay. I missed the answer. I was out getting yeah. a long snack. What did I you get? I missed the question. You I got, now I got pretzels. You got a long snack, too. It's a long pretzel. Right, <laughs> pretzel rods. Yeah. <laughs> Those things are like a car axle. My God, that's the longest pretzel rod I've ever seen. Oh, geez, I don't know who does the shopping here. Don't blame me. <laughs> all right. Who all does right. do the shopping here? Oh, my gosh. Because there's pumpkin Oreos. It's a little strange, isn't it? Yeah, I mean. Ooh, maybe it's, it's Jack Skellington. It's Why? September. It's September. You know, like, save that shit for October. It's very clearly not fresh pumpkin Oreos. No. I, now, that's what I would like is <laughs> an Oreo with some of that cream and then just fresh pumpkin sliced over it. <laughs> a seed on each cookie. <laughs> yeah, sure, that's your promise too, a seed right. on each cookie. If I open up an Oreo store, it's going to be a seed on each cookie. <laughs> oh, boy. And I hope that you do. I really do. Thank I've been you. talking about this off You're the only one who supports me on that. Off mic for so long, as long, long time. as I've known you. Long yeah. time coming. Why are there different flavors of Oreos? That's true. It's I mean, not necessary. No, I mean, first of all, you can't even convince me that they are different flavors. It's just sugar, right? It's like more sugar or less sugar. So right? uh, do you think it's looking at the color you make yourself believe it's, it's yeah, pumpkin? Right. Yeah, it's the willing suspension of disbelief, my dear girl, mm-hmm. which is something that we all undergo when we watch any sort of tent, including one, one Mississippi. Mississippi. That's right. We're back. Nice. An old musician friend of mine is here, and I'm just going to bring him out because I want him to, you know, t- tell his story because he's got such a great one. He's a fellow musician. He's... Known for nutrition, he's here on a mission. Folks, it's James Brown. Hey! <laughs> James, how are you? Ah! <laughs> oh, no, oh, you got your foot stuck in the door. Just co- hey! Come on in. Yeah, my foot stuck. Pull it out. Pull it out. <laughs> yeah, okay, now you're in. Got it out. <laughs> you got... <laughs> you know, hey! James, before you continue, I got to say, yeah. you've got one of those voices that when you do that, when you make your grunts... Ah! So, what do you call them? Soul grunts? Soul grunts. It makes you other people want to do it. Soul grunts. Check out my, my breakfast cereal. It's coming out at the beginning of next year. It's oh. called Soul Grunts. <laughs> so, now Soul Grunts is going to be just a regular, put your uh, put the milk in the, the cereal type thing. You put the milk it's in not, the bowl. It's not a, so, it's not a uh, hot cereal. Nope. Cold cereal. 
Now, let me ask you something, James. Yeah. How the hell have you been? Oh, I've been good. I've been good, John. How about you, Sam? I've been very good. I'm I'm here in L.A. again. I just took my, you know, cross-country trip, as I always do for the podcast. Cross-country? Where you go? Well, I live, you know, in New York City. Oh. So to get out here, I get in my RV, and I just hightail it as fast as I can. Living in America. That's right. It's a good way to see the country. Living in New York City. Yeah, where are you living these days? Now, you were dead for a little bit. I was dead. I came back. Yeah, well. It's, it's, had to come back. It's easy to do. Uh, Donald Trump, man. Had to come back with Donald Trump. Right. Had to see what he's all about, baby. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a scene. President uh, living in the White House. It's a, uh, you, you almost, you can't believe it. Can't believe it. You can't. I had to come back from the grave. I had to see it for myself. Now, did you vote? Uh, I'm going to vote. Yeah, I did voted for him. Yeah, now here's my question, though, because mm-hmm. f- I don't vote because I'm not from this country. Oh, yeah, don't do that. That's traitor. You're going to be, that's treason. <laughs> treason! Treason! So when you go and vote, do people recognize you? They look at me and they say, oh, who's that over there? And I say, it's me. I'm real. Uh, and, the, and then you moonwalk. Yeah, moonwalk out there like Michael Jackson. Did you teach him, uh, uh, Michael, how to moonwalk? No, I taught Michael Jackson how to do something else. You see, Michael Jackson, uh, pants are always too long for his legs. And so I taught Michael. I remember how, seeing early Michael Jackson. Early the, Michael, they were about a foot off his foot. Foot off his foot. A foot off his foot. Foot ah, off a foot. Ah. And I, you know, I had to teach him how to take his take his pants to the garage, and I put him on the on the sewing machine. And, Out to uh, the garage. Oh, the sewing pants. machine's in the yeah, garage. Yeah, the sewing machine's in say. the garage. Can't keep a sewing machine in the house. Bad luck. Is that true? Yeah, you didn't know. I did not know that. Of what what sort of uh, law is that from? Voodoo. <laughs> really? That voodoo that you do, James. John. <laughs> That's me. Yeah, let me I'm put James. this. Let me I'm put this James. mirror. I should be holding this mirror up in front of you. Yes, yeah, yeah. Put the mirror up in front of me. I don't I know. To kiss myself. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what I thought maybe you wanted to do. Yes. So, yeah, yeah, you found... <laughs> hey, not me. <laughs> I moved the mirror. So you you met Michael Jackson and you said, the pants are too long. Come out to my garage. Come out to my garage, Michael. Did you both moonwalk back then? Yes, we did. We did a little, a little salsa shake all the way to the garage. It would be interesting to see you two. Montenegro. Really? What were you doing there? Dancing. Where is that? Montenegro? Yeah. It's out there. It's far away, baby. I knew it. It's a long boat ride to Montenegro. You just what well, Montenegro is one of those places. You're on a long boat ride and you're there. And you just don't. I don't care where we are. We just there. Jesus. I slept the whole time. Oh really? Yeah. How long was that? The oh, whole long time. I slept. Oh, uh, at least my 16, 17 hours. I couldn't wake up. Straight through. Straight through the trip. God. Got on the boat. Went straight to bed. Woke up in Montenegro. I I. I envy someone who could sleep that long. These days, I can. I'm lucky if I get three hours of sleep a night. Really? I can, I play so much Fortnite. I can't believe it. Oh, you play Fortnite? I'm terrible. I'm not I, good at it either. I no. want to get that out there to anyone listening who wants to. I guess challenge me at Fortnite. You're you're gonna win. Uh, now, where are you living these days? Well, you know, I'm living here and there. I got me a big old nice house down in Augusta, Georgia. Yeah. That's where I'm from. Yeah, a big peach fan. Big peach, big Georgia peach fan. Yeah, how big are the peaches down there? Yeah, it's huge. Yeah, how big as a baseball? Or are we talking bowling? Oh, ball? much bigger than that. Much peaches, bigger than bowling? Yeah, yeah. Peach? Peaches, peaches down there are about the size of small baby pigs. Really? And you hold them and you bite into them and they're juicy. Right. Peach juice. Aye, aye. James, when did we meet? We met uh, London, England. Right. Uh, 1964. Uh huh. Uh, yeah, now I remember this. Now I'm remembering. I just couldn't place it. Right? No, yeah. in England. Yeah. You and I were both dressed up as uh, some of the, the uh, gods with the big furry hats. Yeah, we were. We're both trying to trick the tourists. Right. Who over there. And then, see, so most of the time those guards aren't supposed to say nothing. Right. You know? And, and they're they certainly not supposed to grunt. And, and, and I should have had my guitar. That, that yeah. got everyone tipped off. That was confusing. Yeah. But then me, when they come up to me and I would just go, Aye! Right. And they'd be like, hold on now. <laughs> Wait a minute, you're not even supposed to say anything. Exactly. You're not supposed to approach me. Exactly. You shouldn't be, t- you know, spinning around on your heels. Very true. Very true. All these things are true. So that's when we met. Right. And uh, you, you looked at me and you said, hey, you play music? And I said, why, yes, I do. And I looked at you and said, hey, you play music? And you said. I said, no, I don't, but I'd love to because I was lying. Mm-hmm. I didn't think you knew who I was. Yeah. And that's why I still don't trust you to this day. Right. I like to do little tricks like that. You know, if someone says, how are you feeling? I say, terrible. But yeah. I feel great. Yeah. Just the, so I can then go, gotcha. The first impression is the lasting one. Right. Right. The first impression you made on me was to lie to me. Right. Right. Lie to me. Lie to me. Ooh. 
Louie, ooh, I don't dress like Buddy Holly. Did you ever meet Buddy Holly? I met Buddy Holly. Right. Uh, it was very weird. He had just got done, done doing the show. I, and he said, James, I ain't got much time to talk, baby. I got to take a flight. And oh I said, boy. ooh, but the weather's choppy out there, baby. That Don't, flight ain't right. Mm, that flight ain't right. That flight ain't right. The flight uh, ain't right. Uh. And uh, he got on it anyway. Right. And he landed safely. Oh, thank God. But then when he got there, he tripped on a banana peel, hurt his head real bad. So that wasn't the, the infamous flight. No, 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 no. Let me ask you a question about him. I heard this rumor about Buddy Holly. And, you know, every, these Hollywood rumors. Uh, What's that, John? Music rumors flying all over the place. There were no lenses in those glasses he wore. Really? No, no. See, Is that true? Buddy Holly was a hipster. He was hip. Mm -hmm. He was the original hipster. He went to the movies, got some 3E glasses, popped the lenses out, took a black Sharpie marker, right. covered over the real 3D logo. That on the wasn't side. even a. Wait, that wasn't even. They weren't plastic glasses. Those were paper glasses. Mm -hmm. God, jeez. He tricked us all. He tricked us all, baby. And now we're all going out, you know, all the hipsters of the world going out and buying these, you know, $100 pairs of glasses. I want to look like Buddy Holly. Mm hmm. Well, okay, just go to the movie theater. All the kids nowadays, all the kids, that's all they say. I walk down the street, people look at me and say, James! I say, what? They say, I want to look like Buddy Holly. I say, how you know who that is? <laughs> they say, we've got the internet on every single piece of equipment we own. And all I the do is... What the fuck are you talking my about? My nose starts bleeding every time I think about it. Every time you think about Buddy mm -hmm. Holly? You handle your fame. You, when you're out and about, someone says, hey, James, you say, hey. Mm -hmm. you, don't, you don't say, that's not me. No, no, I don't say that. I, you say, hey, don't come on, let's uh, hang for a bit. Yeah, they say, hey, I'm James. the same I way. Say, hey, what? They say, let me walk with you. I say, okay. Let me walk with you. Let me talk with you. And I say, hey. <laughs> How long do these conversations last? It seems like the type of thing. If someone's walking with you and you're screaming and grunting at them, they might say, you know, this is good. They're great. Nice to meet you. Bye. Yeah, it's sort of a defense mechanism. Oh. It's like my quills. <laughs> Puck your bun. That's true. <laughs> I do like that. You, you come up with something, an idea, and then your brain goes right to the what the quills are from, and you scream that out. Yeah. I'm, I'm with my, you know, my fans and stuff on the street. I'll talk to them. I, my whole thing is come up and talk to me on the street if you mm -hmm. want. I'll write you a song. Yeah. I'll do anything. Just don't ever tell. Uh, and I've said this before, but it's worth repeating. Don't ever tell Yoko Ono oh, I'm alive. Oh, yeah. Because I don't want to give uh, the beret back that I borrowed from her all those years ago. Mm -hmm. It's a nice black beret. It fits me just, you know, more perfect than perfect. Is that it over in the corner over there? Yeah, I keep it over there on the, on the ground in well, the let's corner. Let's see it. Let's put it on. Let me see. Oh, hold on. It's dusty as hell. Jeez, I haven't worn this since <sighs> May. <laughs> oh, look at that there. <laughs> Get up. I think this is pretty good. That's a nice beret. It reminds me, it's a nice black beret, and it looks like the top of a, a little uh, acorn. Perfectly. Yeah. It's good. You look like a sex machine, man. Hey, hey, coming from JB. The sex machine. The sex machine. Let me, uh, I want to uh, clear up this rumor. Who gave you that nickname? The sex machine? Yeah, was that yourself, or was that somebody gave that to you? Well, see, here's what happened, you see. In 1965. Uh, it's a great time for you. Yeah. But perfect years, 1965. Uh, I got into a little accident. I was. Oh uh, my God! Are you all right? Uh, I, I am now. Oh, thank God. I was fully wrecked, and I was loading some clothes <laughs> into the washing machine. Uh huh. And uh, I accidentally slammed my fully erect penis into <laughs> the washing machine. I thought you said fully erect. I didn't. I couldn't catch it. And then I yeah, most I, certainly. I thought you said fully wrecked, and I said uh, maybe that's he's saying he was yeah. drunk or something. No, I was fully erect. A wreck. I'm hot. Oh, yeah, I was there. Right. 1965. And so I slammed my penis right into this washing machine. Ouch. And uh, some some uh, some of the shrapnel got into my penis. So the, the machine exploded? Yeah. Oh, my God. Wait. All right. Uh, you don't have to say the brand here on the air, but... Maytag! Okay, folks, be careful. They probably changed their ways since 1965, but still, that's not a, a good uh, history. It was an older one. Older, uh, it was this older yeah. version in 1965. Okay. 1965, I say I got that one. That was November 1965. I say I got that machine in, uh, ooh, May. <laughs> it was in May. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I feel uh, bad for you. But it's fine. It's, it's fine turned now. me into a sex machine, man. 
I was ready to get up and do my thing. So wait a minute. You've got you're a sex machine because you've got metal in your body? Yes. So you're part machine. Part machine. Uh, this is uh, crazy. Like Hancock. <laughs> Don't hey, no spoilers. I didn't finish that movie. You gotta watch it, baby. I just got through the I got through the uh, opening credits and I said I put it on pause. You fell asleep? I fell fell right to sleep. I understand. But well, out of respect for the filmmaker, I didn't want to keep going. That's Will Smith, right? Mm-hmm. Good. Good for him. Did you like Suicide Squad? No. Me neither. <laughs> You're not like it at all. Not one bit of it. One of my least favorite movies. Of all time? All time, baby. <laughs> I don't like when somebody calls out the name of the movie inside the movie. So somebody said, right, but somebody said, where the Suicide Squad? What was this, some kind of Suicide Squad? As I got up and walked out of the theater, said, I'm going to go back to heaven. And you... <laughs> I, I do want to ask you, because people ask me all the time, how did I come back to life? It's mm -hmm. an old story. I was dead in the ground for about four years, decided to come back alive because I wanted to do more stuff. Anyone can do it. How, when did you decide? Yeah, see, how I did it go? I died Christmas 2005. And uh, in 20, 2008, Barack Obama got elected. I said, not impressed. I forgot you, had you died on Christmas. <laughs> That's yeah. awful. Christmas oh, Day. Oh, I, that's a, I remember that news coming through and being like, "That's oh boy." Christmas Day, two thousand five. Oh, I kicked the bucket, and then I just decided to come back. Twenty sixteen, Donald Trump. Want to see what he's all about? Right. See what he's all about. Da. And I came back, got up, dust myself off. I said, "Hi." Dust myself. Hey, I'm alive. Aye, aye. That was right out of the day. How long do you think you could you could go with a sort of a free form uh, grunting and talking and doing your thing? Well, minutes. <laughs> minutes. You want to see me do my thing? Uh, yeah. I say, John, you want to see me do my thing? Yeah. I'm ready to do my thing, man. You know, like a real sex machine, man. I get up. I get up. I get on up. I get up. Well, James, what do you think? Should we get in some of these questions? Let's get into it, man. All right, let's let's do it. First question. Let's see if we can help these people. Dear John and guest, that's you. You. What are your best tips for teaching rules to toddlers? This parenting game is hard. What worked for you and Yoko? All the best, Tina B. Tina B, spelled, and, and not just Tina and the letter B, B-E-E. -E. Ah. So uh, that's, uh, that's something. That's something right there. If, you, if your last name is B, that's, I, 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 I do not envy you. If my last name was B, I'd change my first name to spelling. <laughs> that's good. I would change it to um, Queen. Ah. Queen B. Well, you know, uh, I had a run-in with a B recently. That's what I say. I don't. I'm not a big B fan, because you know I've been stung a bunch of times and I hate it. The other day, I was going into my RV and I put my hand on the um, what do you call it to get into the door? Donut. That's right. And <laughs> I, I, right underneath it was a B. Really? I, I put my hand on it. Oh, that's uh, a handle. It's a handle. And I said to myself, it was down there, and I thought, I can feel it. This is a B. I better not put too much pressure on it. And the B, I could hear him. Don't you put pressure on me, man. You oh, no. squish me. Oh, no. And he didn't sting me. No. Which I, oh, which I respect because they sting themselves the dead. I mean, they sting someone they're dead. Yeah. <laughs> sting myself. He, uh, what he did, he, he, he opened his mouth. He bit me just a little bit. No. Oh. And not, it didn't break the skin, but and he was just showing me, hey, man, I got you right here. I can bite all the way through, or I can sting you. Get the hell out of here. I'm assuming that being bitten by a bee is better than being stung by a bee. It is. It's very. It's much better, but it still hurts. Small teeth. They've got the smallest teeth. I a dentist friend of mine. I was talking to him at a um, cocktail party, Aye. and I cornered him, and I, he does not like me because mm -mm. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm one of these guys who goes crazy with candy, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, on Halloween, Valentine's Day, and he says you're doing a number on your teeth. I said, uh, you know. Fuck you. It's my life. It's my mouth. Uh, I called him. I said, Who, what, what animal's got the smallest teeth? Is it the ant? And he said, John, ants don't have teeth. And I said, all right. Well, you, so, you're so hot shot. Who is it? Bees. Bees got the smallest, smallest teeth. teeth on a bee. Bees got the smallest teeth. 
said, bees got the smallest <laughs> teeth in bees. Small, <laughs> small teeth. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, Tina wants to know about how do you, how do you, what's the best tips for teaching rules to toddlers? Parenting aim is hard. You're a parent. I do. You're apparently a parent. <laughs> apparently a parent. Hey, I do. that might be a good book to write for new parents. They have 14 kids. Yeah. Uh, all of them the same exact age. <laughs> oh, my God. All born in 1965. That was a wonderful year for you. Wonderful year. Well, I guess that makes sense. You turned into a sex machine. Hey! What else can a sex machine do than uh, rear 14 kids? Absolutely. So, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm not even going to ask him all your name, all the names. James Jr. Yeah. Uh, James 1. That's two. J- James two, 2. James 2. James 3. It's funny because James 3 is the fourth kid. Mm-hmm. James, I'm assuming, four is the fifth kid. That's James five. I skipped four. James five. So now we're back on track. Mm-hmm. You probably caught it and said, wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a second. Yeah. <laughs> this is going to be confusing to everybody. Yeah. Uh, James Isha. Okay. Jameson. Oh. J-Mo. Uh-huh. James Winston. I've lost track. Uh, let's say that's seven. <laughs> it's eight. It's eight. <laughs> James Winston. It's nine. Uh, James and Mash. Ooh. That was when I met you. London. <laughs> That's right. Mm-hmm. And the rest of them. So you didn't you didn't name them all at once when they were b- born. No, I I took multiple times. You're right, you waited a couple of months. Wait a couple of months. So Jameson Mash was nameless. Yeah. So he was just you know uh, give that bottle to this guy, this unnamed little baby mm-hmm. right now. Now I'm gonna go to London. I, I gave the bottle to him. I said now I'm gonna go to London and play some pranks on people. You watch after your brothers and sisters. Yes. The oldest one. Well, they all the same age. Uh, wasn't good. It wasn't a good parenting. But uh, Tina B, hopefully that helps. <laughs> yeah, hopefully that helps, Tina. Why let your oldest kids watch your youngest kids? Nay, let the oldest kids watch the youngest. The oldest ones will say, "Here's the rules. Do them, or you're gonna get busted." Absolutely. Uh, the, the way I did it with uh, who, the the young man in my life. <laughs> the young man. Yep, the young uh, son of mine, whose name is. Julian. Ah! I, ju- I told him, uh, yeah, I might not be around for too long, so you're going to have to figure it out. Absolutely. Go ask, you know, ask, a, uh, ask your teacher what the rules are. Absolutely. That's good parenting right there. That's good parenting because I didn't want to set rules for him. Here's what you do. As a parent, this is a, just parenting advice for anyone. You want to be a kid's best friend. You don't, you don't want to be the person who sets any rules. Let the kid decide. You want to be a cool, hip person. Me and all 14 of my kids have a football team. Really? Mm-hmm. What do you play? 11 on 11 against other families. And we got three reserves. Uh, <laughs> other families of 14 kids? Mm-hmm. How do you do in the league? Oh, we're undefeated. <laughs> <laughs> a big trophy at the end of this uh, league? Anything like that? Huge trophy. How big? Big old peach. About the size of a baby pig. What you do is you take a take a bite of the peach, right? You pull the pit out, pit's the size of a football, and you use the the peach pit as the football. You ever accidentally bit into one of those peaches and you hear like ew? Yeah. And oh wait, this is actually a baby pig. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Eating peaches in the dark. <laughs> Have you ever considered that for an album title? Eating peaches in the dark. Are you making music? I'm making some. Music. I'm throwing questions at you left and right. I'm, I'm a very uh, I, I inquisitive today. I love it. I'm McDonald's. So are you, you you are you making music? Making a little music. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and you just gave me an inspiration from album title, Eating Peaches in the Dark. Uh-huh. Because we're, we're, we're recording the album in Augusta, Georgia. Perfect. And, uh, you know, I, I I think now it's time for me to change my sound up. Right. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. maybe. A little less grunting. Are you still still in the soul R, R&B world? Or? Still, still soulful. Okay. A little less grunting. Okay. Yeah. Maybe a little harmonizing. A little harmonizing. Mm-hmm. Find me here. I'll find you there. Perfect. Yeah, you can. Uh, if you want to grab the audio from the engineer, you can use that for a sample. Absolutely. Sure. I'll sample it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, take this too. What you're doing? <laughs> Just use what you did. Any, if you want to lay down any type of beat or melodies or anything right now, I'm gonna. Lo- oh, oh, oh! I do want to say. I uh, hope that helped, Tina. I hope that helped, Tina B. Tina B. <laughs> 
speaking of the poverty line, this person is well above it. Uh, he has publishing uh, deals that must recoup millions of dollars per year. You'd have to, you know, you'd have to talk to my accountant. Well, can we? Who is your accountant? I don't want to say his name on, on the, you know, the podcast because people call him up and say, hey, make me that type of money. <laughs> Wait, but it is a his name, so it is a man. Oh, so no. that narrows it down. <laughs> That's about 48% of the population now is we were able to narrow it down. Is it not 49? It could be 49. I think it's more around 48, 47. Oh, hold on. There. My my headphones are buzzing. My They're God. buzzing. Yeah, those are, yeah, I got a bee stuck in them. <laughs> okay, what are you doing hanging out in a beehive? What, well, <laughs> no, Wait, did you go to a Beyonce concert? <laughs> no, I wish. I couldn't get tickets. Oh, you couldn't get tickets. John. By the way, John Lennon is here. Hello, welcome back, John. Hello, how you doing? Uh, I'm great, but it's not about me. How, great. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it should be about you a bit. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I mean, you put that. in all the effort here. You, you round up the guests, so we all come in and we talk. You do a lot here. Thank. Well, thank you. You're one of the only guests to ever say that. I appreciate it. I'm but a, why could you not get Beyonce tickets? Well, well, I went down to, you know, Ticketmaster, their office, and I, I walked Their corporate the, office? And I, I was driving, you know, on the freeway, and I saw a big building out in Irvine, California. And I so said, this is the 405 freeway? That's right. That's right. <laughs> and okay. I saw, you know, a big building that said Ticketmaster on the top corporate office. I said, well, that's the place. If I'm going to get the you, real thing, you have to actually go on either the website or go to a. I don't do the computer very well. You don't really. Why no. not? Well, you know, they, they, just sign, just logging in to the internet is tough. Uh, pretty much, if you just do it once and now you open your computer or turn it on, it'll automatically. I log always, on. I always have whoever signs me on because I don't do it myself. I have them sign me off because I don't want somebody jumping on and you know doing my emails. And for who me. is this person who does this? Is this your accountant? My accountant. Okay, who is this guy? I want to know who this guy is. I'd love to talk to him next time you come back. All right. Well, his name is George Wilford. George Wilford. That's all I'll give you. He's a man <laughs> named George Wilford. George and Wilford, and CPA. I'm not going to give you that. I will not do that. He, but he probably is. <laughs> he, I don't know what he does, but he's in New York City. I, I've said too much. New George York City. Wilford, New York City. Does he live in the same hotel that you do? I live in an apartment building. Wait, what, what is it? Where do you live in? The Dakota. The Dakota, right. Yes. I've lived there for a long time. Yes, okay. Uh, d uh, John, you're here, by the way. If you're first, this is perhaps your first time listening to Comedy Bang Bang. Uh, brief recap, John Lennon died in 1980. Mark David Chapman, I believe, is the guy who, I believe so. Yeah, we are, we're always anymore. confused about it. Wait, why are you cagey on the person who killed you? Because <laughs> why give him press? <laughs> That's true. Why normalize him? Right. Uh, killed... Was shot in the body. Shot, yeah. I mean, where else is there to shoot you? That's true. You could shoot me through my hair. <laughs> it wouldn't do much damage. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Do I'd get a, an earful from my hairstylist. What are you doing? <laughs> Getting shot. <laughs> right. I come in with a hole in my hair. I, I cut this a special way. So now I'm assuming now your hairstylist is a woman. You, you assume incorrect. <laughs> really? So this is a man who's talking like this. He's a man who's, well, he plays on a, a baseball team. Wait a minute. <laughs> listen, listen this one through. Okay. He plays on a baseball he team. He plays on a baseball team, you know, in Central Park. And just, you know, pick up, you know, a, a oh, league. Uh, sure, sure, so, sure. Sort of a softball. A okay. fun league. Wait, so it is a softball or it's baseball? It's softball. Sorry, I said baseball. I'm okay. so sorry. A thousand pardons to you. <laughs> I beg of you. Okay, no problem. I accept your apology. But I Continue. always schedule my appointments after his baseball games. It's just how it works out, scheduling-wise. But he's a terrible, you know, catcher, and he always gets the ball in his groin. So he comes to work. High-pitched voice. <laughs> oh, I see. So anytime you've heard him talk, right. when you're getting your haircut, he has a very high-pitched voice because he's just been hitting the groin right. repeatedly during a softball game. But when he's not doing a softball or cutting my hair, he's in a uh, Barry White cover band. <laughs> really? Okay. Right, he plays trumpet. So, okay. <laughs> so you've never heard him speak normally, or you're never. just imitating... Okay, so you've never heard him speak normally. Never. Okay. Not ever. All right, not ever. And have you ever seen his band? Uh, no, yeah, I, I have seen the band. Mm -hmm. They're good. They're good. You know, it's not my style of music. Sure. You I did find an occasion to dance during your, one of the slower Your style songs. of music is a lot like uh, based on the uh, early rhythm and blues, rock, rock right. and roll. Right. Most of it's in 4 4 time, a lot of uh, sort of loud uh, guitars, electric guitars. Electric mo guitars. Most of the stuff right, we yeah. did. Sure. Uh, yeah, so, I should say did. So uh, to recap, John Lennon died, was dead for approximately four years. Four years, mm -hmm. 1984. Right. The, the year, by the way, George Orwell. 
talked about so much, and now it's back in the news. Oh, the news. Ha <laughs> <laughs> fake news. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Well, I don't know why you said aha, like you discovered something. <laughs> but uh, 1984, you uh, decided not to be dead anymore. Right, You're I crawled alive. out of the grave. A lot of people don't know about it. Uh, if you see people on the street, uh, say hi to me. Say I'm hi. I'm a nice guy. I'm a friendly guy. Don't tell anyone that you're still alive. Please do not. I don't want Yoko to find out. Right. I'm bar- still borrowing her a beret. She's still in the, <laughs> still in the dark about this. Um, so, John, what has been going on? I mean, you we haven't seen I'm on hide va- nor hair of you <laughs> in, that's, a, in that's a dog's age. I'm on vacation, my man. You are. You're on vacation I'm right now. I'm just wrapping up a vacation here. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Where did you go to vacation? I was in Hawaii. Hawaii, yep. the islands. Yeah, the, the, I had a stressful week last week, so I said, I'm taking this one off. What happened last week? Last week, I was trying to develop a video game. <laughs> I, had, I was watching Wayne's World, you know, the first sure, Wayne's World The movie. first one, yes, not Wayne's World 2. That would be the second one. Right, the first one. <laughs> sure. And not the, the mini movies that they used to play on SNL. Sure. No, those aren't movies. Those were just sketches that I, led up to I the call movie. them skits. Anyway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We were. I was watching, you know, Wayne's World One and the the Noah's Arcade. By the way, they should on. call it Wayne's World One. They shouldn't be allowed to make they a Wayne's they World were going two, into two. But they shouldn't be allowed to make a two unless they call it one. Right. You know what I mean? Every movie should be one. Yes. <laughs> Back to the Future one. Right. Wayne's World one. Right. And if you don't call it one, the piano you can't make one. a two. Yes, exactly. <laughs> There's potential to do another one. <laughs> yes, ex- Schindler's List one. <laughs> what? Okay, so anyway, you're watching Wayne's World 1. Right, and the Noah's Arcade pod came on, and he starts talking about how he was watching someone, the kids, pumping quarters into an arcade machine. Right. At a pizza place, maybe? I forget. And I said, hey, uh, let me update that, and just, kids are playing video games all the time. Sure. You know, PS4, Xbox Live, all this stuff. And I said, I'll develop a video game, make a million dollars. Because they'll be pumping quarters into... Oh, no, I updated the idea, you see. Oh, I see, I see. Because no one plays, you know, no one even has quarters anymore. (laughs) Well, uh, hey, you'll be hard pressed to find a quarter. I mean, that is true. I don't know when the last time I saw a quarter is. I mean, parking meters here, at least here in sunny Los Angeles, they take credit cards right. now. And I every, used to keep a, a rack of quarters just for that purpose, and now you don't need to anymore. You don't need to, unless maybe you've got a laundry machine, but I, I don't. That's true. Who, I haven't I'm, done my laundry in. You, wait, you, you, okay, hold on. I would assume you own your own washer and dryer, but no. I sent it out. You, you sent it to whom? I sent it, I bring it to when I, where I get my hair cut. Okay. And I say, as long as you, you know, in front of me, <laughs> could you do uh, get my laundry done? Mm, a lot like that bottle that W.C. Fields used to talk about. He'd rather have that instead of a frontal lobotomy. But now, uh, John, uh, so you were very stressed about, but, but did you develop the game? No, I couldn't think of anything good. Really? I mean, a lot of games are just like quests or adventures. Right, and I couldn't think of a good one. I, I came up with, you know... To a couple of frogs who are from outer space and they've got guns and called up Activision. I said, I explained it. They said, that's Battletoads. It's done. Right, yeah. I said, fine, all right. As long as I got you on the phone, what about Tony Hawk skateboarding? They said, we, we <laughs> actually published that game. So why, don't, why not think of a skateboarding game that doesn't have Tony Hawk involved? And I said, what about the Battle Frogs, Battletoads on... Well, what about Battle Frogs? Can we get away Battle- with that? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> they said, no way. They said, no way, yeah. You, so then They called me an idiot. On the what, did you say you were John Lennon? <laughs> no, I didn't want to. You know, I wanted to do this on my own, not... All Use Look, my name. It, all you got to do is call up any video game company and say, I'm John Lennon. Let's do a John Lennon video Let's game. Let's do Battletoads. <laughs> no, you can't do that. Even John Lennon can't do that. <laughs> what you can do is say, let's do a John Lennon video game like John Lennon is on a quest to give Yoko back her beret. Just, uh, boom. I wouldn't want to do that. <laughs> Why not? Because I look great in the beret. <laughs> okay. You are wearing it right now. Right. Uh, so you had a very stressful week right, where I you made get one phone done. call and someone called you an idiot. <laughs> right. Well, that, that hurts, you know. Yeah, that, was, sure. that phone call was made on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. I've got the rest of the week to feel bad. Right, yeah. Sticks and stones, though. Will break, you know. Yeah, your bones, you sure, know. Sure, and, and names, you know. <laughs> so there you go. So there you go, yeah. So this happened on Tuesday. You then spent the rest of the week just trying to come up with stuff. Couldn't do anything. I said, mm-hmm. any sports game, you know, I just said sports could be. Video. What about softball where you have a catcher who's hitting the balls repeatedly? Well, you know, that would have been a great idea last week. <laughs> but I'm, I'm done with the video <laughs> Wait, so now. wait. But I give you a great idea and you're done with it. I'm done. So. I'm done. Okay. I'm, I'm, Mentally, it. you're over it. That whole game, you know, the whole video game world is, is way above my head. Right. Above so your pay a, grade. Right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So I took a vacation. Went to 
Uh, Hawaii. Which island? Uh, Kauai. Kauai. Oh, a beautiful, beautiful island. I honeymooned there. Uh, who, who were you with? Were you with your... I was alone. Really? You didn't bring your best friend? Nope. I said, I'm doing this one alone. I just want to relax. I, I got, you know what I did? What's that? I brought my, you know, the camera I got for Christmas. I, did I tell you about that? I don't remember. Did you? I got a, a camera for Christmas. Really? A very nice one. A long lens, everything. Okay. So you got a camera. Like, you know, a professional camera. Sure. And I said, I want, I've always wanted to go down there to the pipeline and, and, you know, photograph surfers. Okay. Spent a week doing it. So John Lennon... Out there on the beach, are you in your white suit and beret? I'm, I'm in the white suit, but it's rolled up, you know, past my knee so I can stand in the water. Okay, Because it's a good lens, but I wanted to get even closer. Right, sure. <laughs> what if you had gotten an even better lens? Would you have had to go in the water? Mm, then I think it would have been too heavy and that you'd need one of those, you know, monopods. Right, okay. So you're out there just clicking away on surfers. Clicking away, having a great time, getting to meet some of the guys, you know, looking at the boards, waxing the boards down for mm -hmm. them. They, called, they gave me a nickname. What's the nickname? Jumbo John. Jumbo John. <laughs> right. Okay. I don't, I don't, I'm not going to tell you why. Uh, now I really want right. to know. It's embarrassing. We went to a, a you know, all-you-can-eat fish buffet. Sure. After surfing day was A lot done. of those in Hawaii, all-you-can-eat fish buffets. <laughs> right. And, God, I took to those jumbo shrimp like crazy, and they said, you keep eating those, you're going to, you know, we're going to call you that. And, and Jumbo shrimp, and I said, just did you consider not eating them anymore? Not even a, not didn't even cross my mind. You were said, hey, uh, hey yeah, call me whatever you want, dude. <laughs> so you started saying, I dude. started talking like them. Wow, the uh, the surf guys, they're surf know. guys. So what? Did you ever actually get on a board? No, just waxed them. You see, you were waxing their boards. Right. John Lennon waxing their boards. Well, you, you got to sort of gain their trust to ah, wax a surfer's board. I see. Were any of them bank robbers, like, a, in a point-break situation? No, I hope not. No, oh. they were nice guys. Yeah. Well, then, then again, in that movie, they seemed like nice they guys, They were really too. nice guys, yeah. Jeez. Huh, I don't know. Did anyone, like, take a gun and fire it in the air while screaming? No. No. Okay, no, so you never that, saw that anything could, like for that. For sure, I could tell you. No. no. So you <laughs> would remember something like that. You would remember. You, you know, you're standing in the, the ocean, someone starts firing a gun. You know, you're Remember something like sure, that. Sure, sure. Well, welcome back to uh, the Continental 48. Oh, thank you. Um, how long were you there? Just just uh, the week. Just the week. Right. Great. Had a great time. Got a good 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 tan. Yeah, you do. You do. You you're like golden brown. Tanning right now. weather. It's tanning weather, baby. Yeah, I've never seen you, John Lennon. I mean, most of the Beatles we have to agree are you know pale as fuck, right? And you. <laughs> well, that's a nice way. Sure, I'm saying that, but <laughs> I mean, if there's one thing we hey, can hey, agree hey. upon, the Beatles, they're pale as fuck. They're pale AF. <laughs> okay, that's a more polite way of saying. <laughs> Thank it. you. Um, in fact, when people used to go see you in Hamburg. Oh, uh, oh, those days, those in, long gone in, days. In the club in the basement where people right, like going, club. that is the most pale band I've ever seen. They used to, when we were done uh, doing our shows, we used to hang for, you know, on strings from the ceiling and be the light bulbs. <laughs> Very good. So that's just a little pale joke. <laughs> that's a pale. That's a joke. Everything I else make is, a pale joke. Okay, sure. Because you are pale. You're, you're formally pale. Are you going to keep the tan? Oh, as long as I can, sure, sure. But uh, you know, I can't find sun like uh, like that everywhere. Right. There, you need upkeep on a tan like that. It's true. Yeah. Um, well, John, thank you so much for being here. Okay. <laughs> Am I gone? No. You. I, I want you to stay here because so I'll stick around the whole week if you need me. Uh, just the day is fine. <laughs> That'll be good. The full. <laughs> Nine to five. No, well, no, probably just maybe Why another hour. Why called these things so early? <laughs> <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. uh, John is a, a one of the, uh, you were in a musical. I was in a European band, yes. <laughs> we, we did, well, you know, it wasn't just a, it was a rock and roll music, you know. Sure, yeah. And the whole time, the whole time I was in the band, we had, you know, some, some people who played, uh, you know, the strings, you know, guitars, of course. <laughs> You, you don't know... You couldn't think of guitars? No, you, you, know, you first thought it was a collection of strings? Yeah. <laughs> I always thought, when I think of an instrument, I think of, you know, I sort of think of each part of it. The components. Right. So the, the stringed instruments, the, the guitars. But you're probably saying, okay, so there was three of them. Technically, yes, but one of them was a little different than the other ones. <laughs> While two had six, one had four. <laughs> strings. That sounds like a Battlestar Galactica prophecy. <laughs> they would, those people would, the people who wrote that TV show would come to us all the time and say, <laughs> we need to, you know, we need titles for these episodes. Could you give us one? I gave them that one. They said, we're not going to use this. <laughs> <laughs> but they would still come to you. It was key. Of course, everyone wants to hang out with John Lennon. Oh, sure. Now that they realize you're alive. And that's a big part of your story. Right. You were in this European band. Right. Called uh, the, the European band. 
Yeah, the, the, that's the, the European, one you're wanting to know. Yeah, yeah. Because I didn't have a solo career. I, yeah, I, 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 solo I know career. you had a solo career, yes. Right. And, you know, I almost started a band in, uh, you know, middle school called The Ramblers. Oh. At least I wanted to, but I couldn't find any bandmates. I'm, I'm mainly talking about the big famous one that changed the course of music forever. Mm, I sat in with David Bowie. Oh, the Beatles. <laughs> yes, the Beatles. <laughs> That's right. Yes. Of course, what a band we were. You were in the Beatles. <laughs> yes. Fantastic group. You know, they were, we, so we had one, a friend of mine was in that group. <laughs> a very close friend. I think I know the one you're talking about. It, you, you bring him up every time we sure, speak. He was always, if you ever seen us play live, you know, you can go on YouTube. Not a lot of people have. No, you, you'd have to go on YouTube at this point. You stopped playing uh, after the famous Shea Stadium. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, right, because they had a baseball game coming up, and we said, we got to wrap it up. <laughs> you only played famously for like 15 minutes of that, and that was because the baseball team started coming on the field? Yeah, there was a lot of miscommunication at that show. I, you, they said, you're here, okay, you're on for right now. Did you think you were playing baseball? We thought a baseball team was coming in to play us. <laughs> to play you. <laughs> right. So we said, uh, you know, during one of the, so, you know, we'd, we'd get up to our microphone and say, you know, she loves you, yeah. And then you'd lean back and say, hey, we got to practice, you know. <laughs> if the Mets are going to play us, you know, they'll wipe the floor. There's only four of us anyway. It's a nine on four situation. And, and anything we have resembling a bat is tiny and Ringo's throwing them around the whole drum kit. <laughs> the guitars also could be used as bats. I, I don't guess. think they'd allowed something like that. Okay. But they would for drumsticks. Right, because they would. And the As our guitars. Well, sure, but the, you know, you, the strings I was dealing with earlier. Sure. Those are either nylon or metal. Metal. We had metal ones. That's what gave us our Beatles sound was those metal strings. And the way you played them. And the lyrics. And, and the songs, yes. The songs themselves. <laughs> yes. That would be a good name for an album to put out. The songs themselves. The songs themselves. Let them do to you what they will and they'll change you. Maybe for the good, maybe for the bad. But this is now the title wrapping around the CD. Sure, yeah. It's going all the way around a couple of times. Right. And then now you're unfolding a, a top. Yeah. <laughs> Pop it in the CD player. This is still the title. And hopefully, don't skip around too much. But with a we CD. We put them in an order. We put them in an order that we like, but with a CD, you can be the DJ. That was how they sold CDs originally. Right. Wasn't it? That was their slogan. With a CD, you can be the DJ. You can be the DJ. <laughs> they normally would pause in between the D and the J, which right. was so strange. Well, because they wanted it to rhyme. But then the, the, the you know, the advertising, you know, giant. They wanted D to rhyme with D. Right. Right. That's exactly right. The most exact rhyme you can do. <laughs> Say the same thing twice. You've got to rhyme so twice. <laughs> sure. Sure. Why not? So, John, catching us up, you were in the Beatles and then you died. That's uh, right. Uh, Famously. You... Well, you were famous when you died. I was famous and the story itself was famous. It made it into the paper. <laughs> yeah. This was before Kindle. What? No. We understand how newspapers work. I'm just... I, I, okay, good. I it would be very odd about. if one of the most famous people on the planet, their death didn't make it into the paper. Right, they just disappeared and no one ever talked about mm -hmm. it. So you died, and then five years later, you came back to life. It was actually you... four. I jumped, I leapt out. Leapt out of your... The grave. The grave, right. I... You decided you didn't want to be dead anymore. <laughs> it, 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 fans of the show know what we're saying. Yeah, of course. Hey, they're nobody. Hey, they're, they're just happy I'm here. Sure. <laughs> What a big head. What a big head I've got <laughs> to say something like that. Yeah, what you're, an ego. you're a little conceited. Oh, they're happy. I mean, I could say anything. No, they're, I got to put on a little bit of a performance. Yeah. So now, uh, normally we see you in the States because you're, you're in your uh, recreational vehicle traveling from right. your apartment in New York. Right. I, if I'm out in the Dakota, I'm probably in the RV. That's what my butler is always telling people. You have a butler? Right. I don't know that we've ever talked about the butler. We haven't talked about him. No. Who's this butler? Oh, his name's Sandy. <laughs> he sweeps up for me and, you know, puts my, uh, you know, crusts when I'm done, puts them in the garbage. Wait, wait, wait. Are Sandwich you... crusts. 
Are you cutting off your crust and throwing them on the floor and he has to sweep them oh, up? No, no, no. The sweeping is dust. He sweeps up dust. The crusts are left on the plate. I'll eat down to the crust and leave them on the plate. Why, why not have them cut off for you, Sandy? That, it seems like that could be part of his responsibility. I asked him about that. I said, you know, I'm, the crusts aren't going to be eaten. That's for sure. That's, you and I both know it. He said, yeah, no, you're not going to eat them. I don't eat them myself. I said, I don't, you know, do whatever you want in the... Sandy's cool. Sandy doesn't eat them himself. Yeah, but I don't care. But you don't care about that kind of information. He, no, he's okay. not paying me to worry about him. That would be weird if you were paying him and he was paying you. Right. <laughs> Just money being exchanged day to day. An equal amount of money. Right. Well, so where were we? We were talking about the crusts. Yeah. Why doesn't he cut them off for you? Because I said, you know, either way, what's easier for you? The crusts are just going to be thrown away one way or the other. Do you want to eat, just me eat down to them, or do you want to risk cutting yourself with a knife? He said, are you, you, you risk cut it biting your fingers. You're not paying me that much. <laughs> How much are you paying him? I pay him 400 uh, every uh, two days. <laughs> it's an odd payment schedule. It's, well, he came up with it. He's odd. <laughs> Let him do whatever he wants. <laughs> so you're assuming the risk of biting your fingers. Have you ever actually bitten your fingers? No, I, you know, I'm a, a human adult. I can take care of it. <laughs> it's easy. I bet half the people in the room don't bite their fingers when they're eating. At least half, I would say. <laughs> Hopefully. So uh, normally you get into your RV and you're, you're going hundreds of miles an hour. <laughs> as fast as I can. To try to jump the Grand Canyon. That's right. That's right. But you've never been able to never do it. I've never been able to. You know, the state troopers in that state, of Arizona, they think... And the only reason you're not able to do it is because they pull you over. Right, at the last minute. Every time, you know, I come out. What happened? Here? We, we talked talk to you about this last time. I even called ahead and they said, we know we, we got a new sheriff in town. He doesn't know the rules. He's a young guy. And we're, gonna, we're really going to talk to him. I saw him, Mr. Lennon. We're going to get you over the Grand Canyon soon. I said, yeah, don't worry about it. I'll do it eventually. But I... You know, sort of put my head down and sulk. But it makes him feel terrible, so that's, that's enough of me. So how did you actually get here? I'm presuming you didn't oh, you know what, hey, jump the uh, Pacific Ocean. I got on the wrong plane. <laughs> I was at the airport. I had my bags. You know, I was going down to Rio to clean up after the Olympics. To clean up? <laughs> right. I always volunteer down there after Olympics. Well, not there, anywhere the Olympics are, but I always... <laughs> you, you haven't volunteered in Rio every year, and this is the first time it's actually come true. First time I'm getting some action. <laughs> you know, I'm... No, no, I, I, I always go clean up after the Olympics. Why do you clean up after the Olympics? Because, you know, I like to, I like to travel. But I also... Every four years. <laughs> right? There's great potential for finding, you know, metals. These people, you know, they be having a party the, you know, for four years, working really hard to win the Olympics. They swim whatever they win, the bronze, silver, gold. Then they go out and party. They lose the things right away. So you there get out I there am. with a, a metal detector? You don't even need it. You spot them on the ground. They're everywhere. <laughs> it's, the, it's the big racket. It's the simplest really? money. So Rio is lousy with medals? Oh, they're everywhere. How well, but, but here's the thing. I don't know. I'm here now. Well, I got how, on the wrong plane. How many actual medals have you collected over the years? Oh, I... Mm, ooh. This is interesting. Because I only know it by weight. <laughs> All right, well, I guess I can calculate. All right, here's what I'll tell you. I mean, it's as many as can fit in a, a Jan Sport backpack. So you don't even know it by weight. You know it by volume? I guess you're right. Sandy keeps the numbers for me, but I think, you know, I think it's up... So Sandy's duties include keeping the numbers for you. <laughs> keeping the metals safe and keeping the numbers. But, you know, last time he told me, he said, I must have been up to, uh, I think, about 25. 25 You know, metals. mixed bronze, silver, metal, you know. Sure, you mix them all up. Right, I don't, you know, it's a metal's a metal to me. Yeah, and you keep, you keep them in a bag. No, I don't keep them in a bag, but they could fit that much into it. <laughs> I keep them in a locked case, <laughs> to, be, to be quite sure. Who's, who's the most famous person's medal that you actually have? I got one of, uh, who, who was a Flojo? <laughs> Flojo, Florence... Uh... Johnson? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what other names would be Joe? J Josephs? Florence Josephs. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably Johnson. 
I'm not a big sports fan, like you. I'm not a sports fan, I'm a money fan. <laughs> Metal fan. <laughs> Metals equal money. Have you ever sold these medals? No, but I could at a you know, drop of a hat if I needed to. <laughs> Everyone wants to buy up medals. A lot of the athletes want to buy them back. I said, well, then you should have helped clean up. <laughs> you made the mess. And now poor John Lennon's got to go clean it up. <laughs> Woe is me. So you missed out on Rio this year. Right. You didn't get to see... I got on the wrong flight, now I'm here. So you ended up here in Australia. Right. What an odd story. What an odd story indeed. But, it, you know, it has a silver lining. Because while I was down here, I said, hey, you know what I could open up here? A helicopter business. <laughs> Why not? You don't see many of them. You know, action-packed helicopter rides all around the cities. Action-packed? Loop the loops, you know. <laughs> Strap yourselves in and you bring your own helmet, but we're going to really do some wild stuff. And what? I'm not, you know, I can't pilot those things. I get air sick, but... Why are you... Okay, so many questions. First of all, it's a BYOH, bring your own helmet That's situation. Right. That's Why right. don't you just spring for some helmets? You know, you, you lose profit that way. Because you can only use helmets for so long. Because, you know, everyone has disgusting, greasy heads. Okay, I'm so with the, you there. The, the helmets, you know, they go, you know, four, five, six, maybe seven or eight, nine, ten, eleven or twelve times, and then you got to throw them away. So bring BYOH. Okay. So, so then uh, you... You cannot fly. Why are you interested in this business? Because I think it's a business that would be a lot of fun. And I think it's a business that doesn't exist. So, create your own marketplace. Okay. So, what, and, but there are helicopter businesses. Right, but they don't do loop-de-loops. <laughs> I don't know. Is it possible for helicopters to even do loop-de-loops? That's going to be, you know, a big part of my research. This is just a dream at this point. I've thought of two things. Helicopters that do loop-de-loops and BYOH. Well, that's kind of your thing, so you're into it. <laughs> okay. Wait, I'm part of this you're now? You're an investor. <laughs> so you decided now that you're here, you're right. going to start this business. Right, why not? <laughs> but, I mean, the last time you were here, because obviously 16 years ago you were here for the Olympics. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Funny. Funny how you just know stuff like that. <laughs> it is funny how, the like... the Sydney Olympics, you, you just know. You just... The things that we happen to know. It's one of those things you know, you know. You know when you know it, you know it. <laughs> you know it. You know, 50 stars You don't stars have to look American it up or anything play, before yeah. the show. <laughs> Never. You just know these things. You just know it. Uh, so when you were here 16 years ago, why didn't you get the helicopter idea then, or did you, and it's been percolating since then? That's an interesting question. You know, when I was here last time... I spent most of my time looking, you know, at the at ground. At the ground, certainly. Because I was looking for metals. Not to the skies. Right, but this time, since I missed my flight, I was in the wrong flight, I spent so much of my time looking up and cursing, you know, the... <laughs> the steady the airplanes? planes that would pass by. You did me wrong, at least one of your brothers did. I guess I've never thought about the fact that airplanes could be related and familial. Yeah. It's tough because, you know, they're not animal, the objects. That don't procreate. As far as we know. Ooh. What goes on in those hangars when the lights go off? One of those Pixar movies, you know. There's a Planes Pixar movie. You don't see <laughs> the, like all the planes fucking the entire time. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, they should add that. They should do a deleted scene. I wanna, yeah, you know what? <laughs> You're a big animation fan. I'm such a big animation fan. <laughs> I would love to get that DVD maybe for Christmas. This year. Of what, the planes having sex? <laughs> Just the planes movie, and maybe on the special features they have. That. I don't think they do. Uh, well, we'll never know unless somebody gets it for me for Christmas. <laughs> Why am I getting you things for Christmas? Well, I got you, you know, I got you that necktie that you said, this is garbage. I heard you say that, by the way, at the Christmas party. Well, yeah, it was a Rolling Stones necktie. <laughs> But I, I, I want Beatles it. stuff. Yeah, you signed it. I, I signed it, Mick Jagger. That was the joke. <laughs> yeah. I want Beatles memorabilia. All right, I'll go. I'm one of the only people who knows you're alive. <laughs> and I thank you for not, you know, telling people about that. You're really on a podcast. You're in front of. <laughs> That's fine. I don't think people are going to go out and blab about this. And I, I wish you wouldn't, because I owe a, a friend of mine her beret back. You know. 
I don't need her finding out. You, your friend Yoko, you my don't want... My friend Yoko, my old girlfriend and wife. <laughs> <laughs> it went girlfriend, then wife. <laughs> girlfriend, wife, and then not talking. Because <laughs> you have a beret. And you I don't got a beret it. that I borrowed, you know. And then I, I, I like the way it looks on me, so I'm not going to give it... You've back. never worn it in front of me. I only wear it, you know, for parties and things. <laughs> you go and do a lot of parties these days? Sometimes, you know, I do more around Christmas time. <laughs> You're a big fan of Christmas, I've noticed. Love Christmas. Ring dong, ding dong. <laughs> the Christmas bells are ringing. Is that your favorite song of all time? No, my favorite song is on, you know, my favorite album, Beatles One. <laughs> That's not an album. That's a compilation. How can that be your favorite album? You made the, the Beatles sales album. would say otherwise. This is sacrilege, but what, what is your favorite song? Um, <laughs> Octopus's Garden. <laughs> I like to meet under the seat. Yeah, I don't remember that's, the lyrics, but... That's not the lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, well uh, you know, listen to the beat. What is the word? It's, I'd like to be under the seat. I'd like to meet some of the beat. Didn't we? Well, that must have been a draft at one point. Maybe. Jeez, we wrote those songs so long ago. <laughs> yeah, back in the uh, 1960s. <laughs> I remember that. I, I remember who sang that. That was Ringo who sang that. <laughs> yeah, one. your best friend, Ringo. Is that why it's your favorite song? <laughs> yeah, that could be a big part of it. <laughs> <laughs> I remember sitting there and he was whistling that. And I said, hmm, give me, that, give me those strings over there and the rest of the... <laughs> The wood attached to it, the plastic. <laughs> the, and guitar, the, the guitar, the guitar, yes. Give me that guitar, you know. Not that one, Paul. I don't need yours. I don't need the one with four strings. I'm talking, and not, you know, George, not that one. I don't know. I don't like that one you got from India. I don't understand That's a it. sitar. I don't know how to play it. How were you so popular? You don't know anything about <laughs> the industry. But no, I do, because I'm a people person. So what, and I, what, you know what I had to do? What? I had to get out of the seat I was sitting in and walk over and pick it up myself. You, you didn't know, have Sandy at the time? <laughs> I hadn't met him yet. When did you meet Sandy? That was, geez, we've been together now for, it must be almost five years. <laughs> now that I really think about it. So he's been protecting your medals ever since the last Olympics that you actually went to. Right. No, I mean, he... he yes. <laughs> Wait. Huh? Hey. Who? <laughs> wow. What was the last Olympics, by the way? That must have been London. Oh, yes, it was London. It was London, yeah. I think we have an athlete here in the room. <laughs> Someone's very excited. Hey! Yeah. <laughs> he knows where I was. Um, well, that's great. Uh, Thank you. John? Thank you. <laughs> I think it's great. Sorry you can't pick up any medals, but I'm happy to have you on the show. Well, thank you. This is great to be here. And uh, good luck with your business. Are you going to stay here in Australia until you get the business off the ground, literally? <laughs> Ooh. Can is, I... is the office going to be above the ground? Yeah, well, it's not going to be a basement. You know, no one treats a, a business with any respect if it's in the basement. But it would be interesting if it was like on a helicopter, like to oh, actually nice. go to a helicopter, you had to transfer from a helicopter to a helicopter. What am I talking about right now? No, I know exactly what you're talking about, and I'm with you. I'm just worried about insurance costs. I think what I'll do instead in the big you know, conference room, the, the conference table will be the shape of a helicopter. That's, That's the best bad. we can do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, it's the smartest thing. Until levitating offices are a thing. Ugh. It is a little strange to rent a helicopter, but you're doing it on the ground. That is strange. Although, at the same time, it's like, hey, you don't get to go above the ground until you actually pay me the money. Right. All right. <laughs> John Lennon, so good to have you here. Thank you. Can you stick around? Yeah, I sure. Yes, I can. I'm not going to start this business tonight. <laughs> Although, I, it looks like you're kind of itching to. I was raging for my water. And the uh, take one down, pass it around. Zero bottles of beer on the wall. Oh, boy. I started that 100 bottles of beer song uh, on my lift ride over here, and I just finished. I thought I'd finish right in time, but it, sorry about that. You caught the tail end of my 100 bottles of beer song. 
All right, welcome to the show. This is Questions for Lennon, the advice podcast, where we answer questions emailed in from our listeners. I'm your host, European rock and roll guitarist, John Lennon. How's everyone doing? Uh, wherever you are, just answer good or bad. Wh- wherever you may be listening to this, you could be at work or in your bed by yourself or in church. You shouldn't be listening to a podcast in church unless, you know, I guess unless it's a, a Christian podcast, you could probably do that. Folks, I, we got a great show. I've got a guest who just took a sip of water, so I'm going to make a talk right now. No, 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 you don't talk with water in your mouth. You'll spray it all over the microphone, and we'll all get electrocuted. The whole building will shoot up in sparks. Folks, I got Big Sue here. How's it going, it's John going, Lennon? It's going great, Big Sue. Oh, that's great. But, you know, yeah, I have my store. Not to plug it right now, but Carpets Rugs down there. And, yes, it is the number one store for Carpets Rugs down there. But we did have a big flood, but we have gotten it figured out. So everything's a little soppy, but uh, but dry. But, uh, again, I'll say, you're buying a soppy carpet, it, uh, price is cut in half. Yeah, oh, yeah, prices are real low. You're doing a great Oof. job with those prices. Oh, yeah. Oh, and it's not good for me. It's not good for me, but it's good for everyone else. You know, I, I did have some water in my mouth. I took a sip of water. It was ice cold, ice cold water. Very good. Ice cold out of the fridge. Do you ever, do you ever, oh, out of the fridge? Yes, ice cold, meaning not ice, but cold enough, it might as well be ice. Cold enough, you know, one more click. It's, you Whoa. don't want that falling on your head. <laughs> Ouch. That would hurt, but at this point, wouldn't hurt. Just be wet. You ever been standing underneath an icicle and the thing just comes right down on you? You look yes. up and you got to think fast. You've got a millisecond to either go left or right. But, oh, guess what's right? A snowman. Uh-oh. He's going to get you. I have stood under an icicle, seen it coming straight down, and I let it hit me. I tell you, it took the chip right off my shoulder. Oh, come on. Okay. <laughs> come on. Okay, great. Oh, you know, there's a big, uh, a lot of fear about snowmen out there. Is there? You, it's, you, you, you'd never guess it because, you know, there's the one Frosty the Snowman song. He sounds so great. He's a jolly fellow. But there are the snowmen, like the guy from the movie. That's right. And he was scary. He's scary. They come to life. Uh-huh. They hug you with their stick arms. Ouch. And you're saying, God, geez, I'm going to get a splinter. Good thing I'm wearing this huge down coat. <laughs> yeah, if you're lucky. But if you're in that, if you're like that movie Frost or right. whatever, where he fucks him in the tub. Jeez, I don't think he, I saw that one. He takes the guy in the tub. Right. He he fucks him to death. The okay. snowman fucks the man to death with, okay. the, with, the, with the carrot nose. With Ouch. the nose. <laughs> Ouch. That's it seems that like hurt. every movie I'm seeing there's a snowman fucking somebody in a tub or a closet. Just yeah. can we come up with some new ideas, Hollywood? Fuck him in a bed. Fuck, yeah, fuck him in the bed. Make it believable. <laughs> snowmen like pillows too, even if they're gonna melt right on them. That's a big concern. I think that's why they do it in the tub, because the production people are saying, if the thing happens to melt, we go long, let's just do it in the tub, then we'll drain it away. And I'm thinking you know, just don't have a, a real snowman. Yeah, use CGI or, uh, you know, uh, foam core. Or claymation. Claymation. I've been saying for years every movie could could and should be in claymation. Could you imagine the Matrix in claymation? That'd be way better. I'd love it so much more. You know what I'd love to see in claymation? Uh, one of my favorite films of all time, The Shawshank Redemption. Oh, boy. Digging with that spoon. Right. And it's clay. It's clay this time. The spoon's clay, the ground's clay. I got a great tagline. Shawshank Redemption, it's clay this time. <laughs> Shawshank Redemption 2. Yes, I love it. But it's the same film. Same movie. <laughs> beat for beat, In same clay. voice actors, should they still be alive. Oh, yeah, you got to get the same actors. you got to pay homage to the people who did it the first time. Right, and by doing that, just having them doing it is the best homage you can pay. Yes, homage, sorry. I say homage because I try to sound a little smarter than people. You say homage, I say homage. You say hey, I say hello. You do, that's true. I do. That song you didn't take off. You drink ice cubes, I drink water cubes. The snowman fucks in the tub. <laughs> Now we're getting off the rails. <laughs> Let's cut the whole thing on. <laughs> Anything can happen. That They recorded that song on opposite day. Yes, they did. Very confusing for the technician. <laughs> yeah, he was saying, why are we working on opposite day? This should be a national holiday. And then they're like, do you mean it shouldn't be a national holiday? Damn. <laughs> 
What's the thing with the opposite day? If you're pinching your ear, then you can talk every, any way you want. You pinch your nose to your purple, then you can say anything. Pinch your nose, anything goes. Pinch your ear, move your ear, get out of here. Yep. Big Sue, I got to, before we get into anything, yeah. the carpet you sold me. Okay, yeah. I was worried you were going to bring this up. Working great. Oh, good. No, I wasn't oh, going to say. Do you get that a lot where people say, the copy you sold me, oh boy, Dot, sucks. dot, dot, something bad. Yes, absolutely, all the time. But this is a relief. So you love the carpet. Love it. It fits in the RV, just so, just so everyone knows. Mm-hmm. Bought a, some carpet for Big Sue. A nice, uh, nice brown. Yeah, oh, good. It was a sort of a tannish brown with a little uh, teal highlights through it. I would say it was the old M&M plus the new M&M. <laughs> That's what I remember looking through the catalog and saying, hey, this yeah. is pretty neat. I'm yeah. going to get down there. This is, seems like a forward-thinking person. Yeah, I like to kind of categorize in ways that are interesting, but you got to mix and match. Mm. You know, artists know how to blend color. It's not either of our jobs, so we don't really know. No, and I'm not going to sit here and pretend, oh, sure, uh, you know, colors, I know how to mix them together. Mm-hmm. Put them in. The, I'll put them on the canvas for you. I'll paint no. your picture. No, I'm not going to pretend I'm that type of guy. Well, like, I'm going to say orange plus red equals blank. I don't know. No, orange plus, oh, I thought you said black. <laughs> <laughs> it might as well. I, 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 who knows? Who knows? I'm who not knows an artist. how the colors come about. And I don't claim to be. Hey, who invented colors? That's a good one. Pocahontas. She did. She invented them because she was the first person to paint with them. Is that so? The colors of the wind. Now, back in the old days, a uh, paintbrush was a twig. It was a twig with a little bit of hair on it. From either an animal or a person. Now, Pocahontas said beautiful hair. She could use her hair for a paintbrush easily. 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 Now, John Smith, her lover, still has good hair, kind of feathery, kind of a different kind of blonde. Right. I guess color doesn't matter when you're painting with it. That's true. Yeah, the, yeah, the hair, the, if, if your hair, color of your hair is coming off on the canvas, you've got, you know, hair dye problems. Oh, you do. you got big and problems. And you know, I got to tell you, my hair is, my hair is so coarse that it would honestly make every painting look like a, like a line drawing. Do you know what I mean? Like just lines. Each, I'm looking at your head here. Each strand of hair is a th- about a, the size of a thick spaghetti. Yeah, and 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 kind of sticking straight back. You've yeah. got it in a. You've gotten in a. What is that? A scrunchie, and it's going straight back. I I used some gel and I stuck it straight back. And because of the thickness of each strand, right, it's basically a ruler. The whole hair, it's like straight out of the back. And you're leaning back in your chair because it seems pretty heavy. The weight of it, it's keeping me back. Yeah, good thing these mics move. Yeah, God, th- thank God. Hey, to anyone making mic stands out there, we just want to. Give you a shout out and uh, raise the roof a little bit for thanks. Thanks for making those things move around. We love the movement. So where were you born? Well, I was born. Um, well, city or or place? But planet. Let's start. Let's start Earth, big. First of <laughs> Thank all, God. Zoom in a little more. United States of America. Zoom in yet again. New York State. Zoom in one more time. Bed for New York, baby. Moved to New York City, though, when I was a child. Brooklyn. Raised in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. Now, were you doing the thing where it would be a hot day, and it's, you know, we can't afford a pool. There's no room for a pool. Let's knock open the fire hydrant and get sprayed all around. Yeah, and, you know, I was a small child. uh, Very long, but small. You know, I opened the fire hydrant. Blasted me back completely. That's what fucked up my hair. Is that <laughs> it changed the texture completely. That strong water pressure. Mm. Is that how you moved to Bedford? That it is. It shot me straight to Bedford. Ooh, I'm in the country. No, I my family lived in Bedford. My dad had a company there, but the company was run out of town, right. and so we moved to Brooklyn. Oh, I did, now that I did not know. Okay, I'm yeah. glad I asked. Yeah, yeah. He had a company that people just hated. Right. It was a hot ice cream company. And people were mad, and they ran us out of town. Well, you know, it's tough to sell hot ice cream. I guess it would work in the wintertime, but ice cream shops aren't open in the winter. Even in the winter, people were mad. Yep, they were very mad. So you were, you were a tiny kid, but you're a big but adult. Long, I was a long child, but tiny. Right. And I'm also a long adult, but um, still tiny. <laughs> I mean, you know, how do you define a person? You can't. How do you define height? How would you describe yourself? You would say you're average height? Or? I'm of average height. I wear a white suit. I have a beard and long hair. You know, That's any, what I see. Anything else that people want to know, they, you got to ask me. It's pretty specific. How many teeth you got? I've got the you know, normal number, 48. That's too many. What are you talking about? That's too many. Well, I, I will say, you know, I made a lot of money with the Beatle, the rock band I was in. Oh, 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 wait. Stop. I'm him. 
Okay. I'm that guy. This is so stupid. Oh, God, I'm that guy. That guy who no. at a party says, oh, you know, I'm in the Beatles. Well, I actually was in the Beatles. Look, do people at parties say they were in the Beatles? Some people, you know, you go out and it's like, oh, God, I don't want to go to Joan and Rick's uh, party because Tom's going to be there. He's always saying he's in the Beatles. We never had a Tom in our Beatles. No, there was no Tom. I do know the the band, the Beatles. Um, I know the film, The Hard Day's Night. Oh, yep. And I, I, Which we wanted, uh, the first was supposed to be in Claymation. It would have been better. Hot day, all the clay melted, and they said, hey, boys, get in the makeup chair. You got to do it. Oh, no, well, really I don't know is. the lines. You got to figure it out. Well, you were just going to read them off a of paper when you were clay? That was the plan. Right. We were going to have the clay figures holding up little pieces of clay paper, reading them. Oh, so many layers. It was, it was really meta. Yeah. And then I it like all that. fell apart, and it just became a great movie. Well, let me tell you, I hate your music. <laughs> I think it's very bad. Here, it's overplayed. You know, it's played out. I think that we all have heard every song so many times. Some of our songs were a little long. You know, yeah. three, there's no such thing anymore as a three-minute song. No. Cut that down. 15 seconds is all you need. We get it. We get it. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to hold this person's hand. Great. You want Your friends with the Sergeant Pepper. Great. I can repeat it in my head later. I don't need to hear it 20 times now. What is this? Yeah, when I'm later in the shower and I'm by myself, I'll just rattle off the songs <laughs> in my head. I'll do that by myself. We'll get to the news, news. News, news, news. I need the news. Give uh, me the news. Who won? Who won the game? Who won the Who's big game? Who's playing tomorrow? You know I'm what? Stressing. What are they doing about the new freeway entrance? This is not going well. I'm freaking out about the news. You know, the, the fact is, the news not coming fast enough. I'm on Twitter. I'm refreshing. It's not giving me more. I want more, more, more. Make Who up did news. what? Here's a news story. Amber Alert. Uh, a grown man dressed as a baby has disappeared, and no one's upset. In the thin air? See, that? then we need another news story. Can people disappear in the thin air? What's your take? Yes. My take is, this is a hot take. No, you know, baby-sized men are not going to, and and men-sized babies. Here's my take. No, because I think that basically what happened was when someone disappears in the thin air, they wandered off, but no one saw. So here we say they disappeared in the thin air. No, you just weren't looking. No, you, because you were the response, you were not the responsible one. Oh yeah, I think he just disappeared. No, you were bending down, tying your shoes for a half an hour, and the baby scooted away. slow idiot. That's why I, I, I will say this until the day I die. Velcro shoes need to come back into fashion. Here's what I'll say to the day I die. If I don't get a sailor hat on my head right now, I'm calling the whole life off. <laughs> gun in your mouth, you're going to do it. I, oh, I love a gun in my mouth. You're that person at a party. <laughs> yeah, I am that person at a party. I walk into a party, I say, if I don't get a sailor hat on my head, this party's over because I'm going to die here. <laughs> I'm going to die and, you're, and I'll foot the bill for the cleanup. But it's going to be here oh, yeah. in your home. Send me the bill. Oh. You'll be holding your breath till I respond. Don't invite Sue. She's always, or at least if you invite her, have a sailor hat yeah, nearby. Yeah, I have a sailor hat. I always put that in my RSVP, though. I need the sailor hat present. Oh, um, okay. So it usually works out for oh, you. Oh, yeah. And then they put it right on my head. <laughs> so and you we have a fun time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I keep them all. Yep. Just to show myself how many parties I've been to. It's kind of like a, it's a log. It's a log more than anything. Right. I, well, I'll usually keep, uh, you know, a drinking glass from each party I've oh, been to. Oh, you steal. I'll huh? steal things. Yeah, anything. So now at home, my cupboards are filled with drinking glasses. I say, how many parties I've been to over the years? One, two, three. You know, 15 parties. It's oh, amazing. Re- I would have guessed John Lennon would have been to way more parties. No, yeah, I don't like to go to too pa- many parties because, like I said, there are people there who claim they've been in the Beatles. That's no fun. you got to fight them. <laughs> You got to fight him. Do you ever get in a fist fight? I got in a fist fight once. Well, I got in a fist fight, you know, on the way here. <gasps> my, With who? My Lyft driver. I I'm, I'm, was singing the 100 Bottles of Beer song, oh. which is a great song. Anyone can sing it. I wasn't doing it just for me, you know, don't join. I kept singing, would you join in, please? The 98 Bottles of Beer. Please, come on, keep going. The 97 <laughs> Bottles of Beer. I'm just sort of dying back here. Now you take one down. Why aren't you helping me? And he turned around and he said, listen... I, I'm just driving you around. I'm not much of a singer. I don't want to sing in front of you because my voice isn't great. I said, this is not a competition. It's this not about giving a good voice to that song. No, it's about having a little fun and passing the time. Because, you know, you just want to pass the time when you're in the car. Honest, it's Oh, I'm trying to pass the time all day, every day. I'm just like, can we get to the point? What's the point of it all? I don't know. I don't know. And I haven't figured it out. I'm just like, how many minutes till sleep? Ugh. But you take short, very, you, you only sleep about five hours a night. Yep, got to get back to work. <laughs> I love my store. I love my store. And I'm not going to be, I'm not going to apologize for that. Cop of the world. Cop of the world. <laughs> so he's a, cop it. <laughs> cop of the world. Cop of the world. Cop of the morning to you. That's what a cop says every time he wakes up. <laughs>
<laughs> he turns to his wife and says, cop of the morning to you. Cop of the morning. And she says, you know, uh, social worker of the morning to you. And she says, get me out of this marriage. I what, want out. what did I sign to get into this? I want out. I want out stat. Speaking of passing the time, you ever just look at your watch? Yep. And just, well, there we go. Watch those seconds. W- one more goes minute. my life right before my very eyes. Oof. Another minute and nobody put a specific hat on my head. <laughs> oh, no. I'm clicking the gun. Good night. Click, click. Getting it cocked and ready. Oof. Is that what? Do they call it? No, this is dirty. I'm going to say something dirty. <laughs> okay. No, <laughs> I'll get the bleep button ready. Oh, my God. My sound effects. I should say my sound effects machine is not working on my phone okay, right well, now. Okay, well, watch out. Do they call it cocking a gun because you put both in your mouth, a cock and a gun? <laughs> Let me, uh, I don't, now here's what I want to say. Okay. I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> I feel like maybe it is a stretch. Because no, both I'm... things, the the initial use is not to be put in your mouth. Whatever, skis. So what'd you have for lunch today? I had a big pizza. I, I had could, a big. I'm seeing a lot of this. That's what I was going to say. It was either pizza or spaghetti because the sauce is all over your shit. <laughs> I had a, uh, I call that my trophy. I had a big pizza. I had a big round pizza. It was a big pie. It was, okay, so I had, so it, this pizza was unique. I started with a crust uh, base, a dough base, put some red sauce on it, kind of like a uh, big sloppy red. Right. And not I, too much. It's not flowing over the crust. No, sure, no, sure. no, 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 but just enough to give it some texture right. and flavor. And then you put in the cheese. And on top of that, I was feeling like pepperoni today. So I put pepperoni on top, which is unconventional, but what I did. That now way. the cheese, let me ask you this, you're putting it, you're stuffing it into the crust? No! Okay. I put it on top. I'm, what am I, what am I, Domino's? No. Domino's, hey, Domino's Delivery. This is an unsponsored show, but I do want to say Domino's Delivery. I'd gladly have Domino's Delivery right now if somebody called it. I still remember the phone number from my hometown for Domino's Delivery. It's 847-328-1800. Give them a call and order a pizza. Actually, that might be Pop Bellies, but hold on. <laughs> It's one of those. I did order a lot of those, a lot. You ever give a Domino's a call? Because I love the way they deliver pizza. Yeah. I call them up and say, hey, look, I need a pizza delivered to my home. Easy enough. Here's the, here's the wrinkle. It's got to be a Pizza Hut pizza because I like that pizza better. So you got to do what you can to get that pizza. But I like you guys. I'm going to still pay you. So you pay them, but they pay Pizza Hut. Right. And what they have to do is sneak into the back of the Pizza Hut and make the pizza themselves. Because they don't want to buy it. They wouldn't make any money. No, that's true. So they have to. Okay. So they don't pay Pizza Hut. So they're getting all the profits. Right. Good, I like this. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's great for them. And you watch the pizza tracker, and the pizza tracker's coming uh, down, and all yo, of a sudden the pizza tracker, and then your house. Do you put a filter on it? I put, the, I put the romance filter on my pizza tracker. Now, what's that? It's where it shows like a picture of a Fabio kind of guy. Oh! <laughs> and he's waiting for the pizza to come, and he's got some babe, or maybe it's a pizza in his arms. You know what I would do is running back, a football player holding a football. I like that, because you know they'd get it there fast. It's a job. Oh, I skipped over a question I wanted to ask you about the pizza you had. Yeah. Around a square. It was around a pie, but I cut into triangles. Right. Oh, okay, sometimes, I was Sometimes, though, I will take a round pie, and I will grab the whole thing, not cut it. Right. And I will just bite around the edges until I reach the end, and then that is gone. But it still remains a circle. It, well, in our minds. Ooh. Hey, whoa, hey, man, you're blowing my mind. There we go. Oh, what? It finally happened. Yep. After all these years, my mind has been blown. There you go. You're gone. You're gone. Thank God. Yep. Bye-bye. <laughs> you ever have a pizza, a round pizza, cut in the circles? Yes. There's a lot to waste, but it's, it's interesting. <laughs> you know what I like, though? A bagel bite. Pizza in the morning, pizza in the evening, pizza at supper time. Hey ho! When pizza's on a bagel, you can eat pizza anytime. You can eat pizza pretty much anytime. <laughs> it might be weird at certain times. But I don't want it at eight a.m. necessarily. No, I, you know I don't want to eat it while I'm you know in a screaming match with my Lyft driver. I don't want to eat it when I'm fighting a raccoon to get out of my trash can because they're constantly biting holes in my trash can and getting at my food. Ugh. No. I don't want to eat a pizza bagel right then. I don't want to be eating it while I'm taking my swim lessons. No, I don't want to be eating it while I'm on the patty, because this is gross. That's just gross. That's just gross. Who suggested that? Because what's going to happen, you're going to drop one of them in the toilet. (laughs) One of them. Pull it out and eat it. So either you're saying you might accidentally eat a poop? (laughs) No, no, no. A bagel bite. You're going to drop one of them in the toilet. Right. 
pull it out, right, and then eat it. Well, that's you don't want to waste it. Well, when I heard one of them, I thought you meant out of more than one. So two things are dropping in the toilet: one, my poop; two, the bagel. And I'm gonna pull one out and eat it. That's why I got confused. You got to work on your storytelling. That well, well, that's an old story. That's that's an old classic story. I'm not, I'm not one to tinker with the old. Is classics. that an Aesop fable? Mm-hmm. The poop or the pizza? <laughs> It was originally, it's a crane <laughs> with a of long course. beak. Of course it was a crane. God. And the rabbit, stories. you know, the rabbit in the window said, you have to make a decision. <laughs> and he said, well, I don't want to eat the shit. I just want to eat the bagel bite. Why is it always like that? Always these animals with their conundrums. It's a simple, the moral of the story is eat food, not excrement. The, the moral of the story is don't eat where you poo. It's like what they say about sleeping with a coworker. Right. You know? Don't sleep where you eat. Don't shit where you eat. Now, if you're a snowman maker, now don't, don't fuck where you don't, s- don't fuck where you bathe. Don't fuck what you made. <laughs> All right, Sue. Should we get in a few questions? I'd love it. There are people out there who need some advice. They're desperate. All right. Now here we go. Here's one. Good evening, jo- Good evening. Oh, well, uh, he- sorry. It's morning where we are. <laughs> it's bright, brand new morning. <laughs> I just woke up. Now, good evening, John and guest. That's you, Big Sue. You're the mm-hmm. guest. Is it possible to look mm-hmm. tough while drinking through a straw? Thank you for your help. Crane. Crane. <gasps> How weird. Oh, the Aesop fable himself. He's right Is that a, a, ma- a male or female name, Crane? I think, well, like, um, Nigel Crane. Uh, is that from Fraser? Fraser Crane. Fraser Crane. Nigel. Well, this is fun to be talking to someone who has their own fictional advice. <laughs> Radio show. Yeah, this is a very meta moment. You must like this as, oh, well. yeah. as the most meta beetle. <laughs> you got a bone and eggs and toss salads and scrambled eggs. The call it again. Boop, boop, boop. You know, I would love to you know, be in the recording session for that song, to see that bass play. So smug. Oh, so I'm sure, I'm sure he was wearing a ridiculous outfit. Clown shoes, no doubt. Clown shoes, Santa Claus hat, <laughs> a big... Uh, Oversized sunglasses. Snickers costume. <laughs> he looks like a big Snickers. <laughs> I don't know what we do when my does a little scrambled eggs. I'm just like a Snickers boo boo. <laughs> They're calling again. Oh, boom, ah, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> so is it, is it, is it uh, possible to look tough while sipping yeah. through a straw? Here's how you do it. And I got the only answer. <laughs> So don't even cue one up, Lennon. I was just about to get my tongue into speaking position. The br- the ideas were coming from my brain well, to tongue. Slow I'll, it down. I'll put the brakes on that put right pump now. Pump them brakes. Because, okay, here's what you do. You get in a fist fight with someone at a bar. You have them knock out your front tooth. Right. You put the straw right through there, and you suck away. Because, you know, everyone's going to know you were a badass who was just fighting. You were a badass dude with a bad attitude. Oh, put that on a shirt. Put that on your gravestone. And smoke it. So, okay, that's my advice. I mean, really, I just think it's all about having a missing tooth because it, it, it brings in so many questions. Who are you? Why don't you care about your hygiene? Why don't you care about— Do you about, hate your dentist? Do you hate your dentist? Are you avoiding it? Was it your dentist not going to do that? Did you have a dead tooth from drinking too much soda so your straw pushed right through and, and, uh, and made its own hole? Yeah, people might think you've been drinking soda through a straw all these years going directly to that one tooth. <laughs> yep. And say, God, geez, we, the research is in. Sugar. Soda is killing our teeth. Oh, it's killing you from the inside out. Don't drink this stuff. Bad, 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 bad. Don't bad, drink bad. this stuff except uh, you take one sip because you love to hear that <laughs> right when you open it up. Okay, don't drink it except do take one sip after opening like that and do make it orange soda. Yeah, and drink the whole thing. Jesus and Christ, if it's an orange it off, soda. Don't waste it. And buy another one. God, that stuff is so good. Have a bunch. Get a 12 pack. Get a 12 pack of two liters. Oh, yeah. Drink them all in one day. Well, you got to because they get really, they lose the combination. Right, and you got to drink them quick. You got to drink them fast. Get it. You need a big crazy straw. Here's what you need. A two liter bottle, a crazy straw as thick as your arm. Right. And you need to stand on the top of the highest point in your building of your apartment or your house. And then you just suck, 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 suck. You know, a lot of people say the highest point of my, my house. Well, the roof. Wrong. The chimney. Yep. <laughs> you go up a few more feet. I'd argue the bird on top of your chimney. Yep. If you can get on that bird's shoulders, yeah, you're, you're the highest. But be yeah. careful. He flies away. You're going with oh, him. Oh, he'll be gone. Then you're going to, now you live in a nest. Uh-oh. Now you're a bird. Now you're Horton. Here's a who. <laughs> Here's an elephant. Thought he was a bird. Well, that's a great idea. I mean, to look tough with a drinking a straw. I think that's great. 
Uh, to go further on that, I'd say wear a leather coat oh. ar- around your head. Okay, yep, got a lot of questions about that guy. I would say wear a leather coat around your head, put on some big, big black Doc Martens that are like ass-kicking boots. Right. And uh, put on a, uh, a, uh, a hat backwards that's a baby's cap, a bonnet. So it's actually covering part of your face. Yeah, that's the big thing. You know, everyone, how do I look tough? How do I look cool? Don't worry about it. I think a lot of people are trying to, worrying so much yeah. about looking cool. And I, I know tough and cool aren't the same thing, but I think it's probably They're pretty, close. Pre- pretty close. You know, does my hat need to be on backwards? Am I wearing the, the coolest Ed Hardy t-shirt? Oh, yeah. geez, you can't even keep up with it. Get over yourself. Just be you. Just be you and wear your straws with pride. The coolest people just wear whatever they want. That's true. You know, there was a long time ago, I got, I met a fashion designer. You, who? The, well, I'm not. Yoo-hoo. <laughs> it was, it was uh, the guy who invented you. Who? Oh. He he said, okay, I've invented, I've done all my work with chocolate drinks. Now I'm gonna invent, I'm gonna invent clothing. Well, he was, so he was the first to do it. Right. We were all nude until then. He just released the Yoo-Hoo a little later, so it seemed out of order. Yeah. Well, I met him at a party, and he said he, I was kind of talking with him, saying, "You get this is Tom over there. He's talking. He used to be in the Beatles. I used to actually be in the Beatles. Oh. You know." He said, "Yeah, I've heard just some of your work. It's okay. It's a little long, but what can you do?" I said, "Yeah, it's already been recorded. So thanks a lot for the critique." Now, anyway, he tells me. I would love, I'm designing clothing, I'd love you to wear it if you really want to be cool. And I've said, I sure, I want to be cool, because nobody's remembering me from yep. the Beatles anymore. He, he says, come on down to the studio, and I'll put you in something, you wear it around town, you'll be a hit. I go down there, he puts me in a, basically a Halloween costume, Yoo-Hoo, a Yoo-Hoo bottle. And for, from your perception, that was the invention of clothing. Right. The invention, I'll, no, I'll say this. The invention of funny clothing. Okay. See, there's a distinction. Now, as we know, I enjoy funny clothes. As you can see, I have on a Daffy Duck uh, jean jacket uh, with a Taz Taz tail poking out of the back, just sewn in from underneath. Is that a custom? That's a custom design. That's custom. I actually did do this myself. I I printed out the the tail is paper. I printed it out online. I'm just looking, uh, noticing the Daffy Duck needlepoint. It's it's terrible. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's it's bad. bad. Okay, thank you. I I have been working on it for a while, but it is still bad. I do appreciate an honest criticism. Sure. Always. Sure. It's the only way you're going to do anything. I'll never get better. All right, uh, Crane, the last thing I can say is probably have a little tiny motorcycle driving around your mouth. Yep. That's, those little, are tough. With a little guy on it. Right. Yeah. A, little t- a guy who's tougher than you. Oh, he better be. Oh. Uh, like a badass uh, badass dude, like a, the devil. Like he, he looks like Satan. Yeah, the type of guy who'll go inside your mouth and beat up your teeth. <laughs> he looks like yep. Satan. Yeah, he's a little devil on a motorcycle. Watch him go. Zoom, zoom, zoom. All right, I hope that helped. I bet it did. Good luck. Good luck collecting all the <laughs> objects you need. I want to I want to introduce my guest. I'm looking at right at him. You know what? I'm going to let him introduce himself. Nick, I think that will be a lot of fun. We'll explain how I know him, but go ahead, go ahead, introduce yourself. My name's Hedwig, and I'm nine years old. And I know that you were in the Beatles, and that means you're a famous singer. That's right, Hedwig. He was in the Beatles, a rock band from the country that I'm from. Right, right. Oh, I love your fashion sense. That white suit you wore is, I mean, it's iconic. I love it. Yes, but what if you got a stain on it? I mean, you have to throw it away then, right? You can't keep a white suit that's got a stain on it. That's right, folks. It's me, Split. All right, Split's in the house today. Yeah, it's me, Split. God, we love. I love Split. You know how, how did I meet you, Split? I met you. You came over. You were fixing my countertops. That's right. I was fixing your countertops. I started splitting in front of you. You uh-huh. know, were wondering what that was all about. I, said, I got multiple personalities. You got, I can't help it. They're always popping out. They're and always they're, popping out. They're all pretty, pretty nice. For the uh, most of the ones I've met are nice. Oh, sure. Some are nice. Some are evil, though. But, you (laughs) know. Yeah. Oh, that's terrible. No, they do bad things. Yeah. But each one, you know, pops up or takes the light, as I like to say. And uh, you never know what uh, one of my many personalities might serve us. Right. I remember you were over doing my counters uh, because they they were cracked. One of them got cracked. That's not important. I dropped a a bowling ball in it because I was showing a friend of mine a bowling move in the kitchen. It doesn't matter. And that's the number one uh, most common call we get. Uh, counter repair. That's what I wanted to ask. Yeah. Mostly and it's bowling, bowling ball, balls. Bowling ball boast 
injury. <laughs> yeah, I've got to get to, you know, you probably said to your boss, I've got to get over the Dakota. I've got a BB. Yeah, uh, we got a bowling ball boast. He's boasting about his bowling ball. He drops it. We got to fix it. Is that why, is that why the, the robot in a F- a Force Awakens is called a BB? Is he a bowling ball? BB-8. That's uh, the number one theory on a fan site that I've been keeping uh, on some <laughs> construction paper in my house. Wait, when are you going to upload that? you got to scan it and upload it. That just seems like a lot of work. It is a lot of work. To, to try to get something up on the internet is, God, you've got to be a computer scientist, it seems. I'm not allowed to use the internet unless it has the child protection on. <laughs> oh, Hedwig. That's right. I wish I could get on the line and look at the pictures of the pretty ladies, but I'm not allowed. Oh, that's okay. But that's now. this is interesting. So Hedwig is not... Who am I talking to now? Now it's back to me. Split! All right, Split. I love I love Split. Oh, Split, it's so good to have it's you here. It's good to be here. It's been too long. You, you get you get a bang for your buck when you have Split on your show. Yeah. You get... Uh, how many how many uh, uh, personalities are you dealing with these days? I got 24, baby. Oof. You could split them up hours of the day. That's true. Uh, maybe, maybe I'll try that one day. Maybe when you're sleeping, maybe that's when the evil ones come out so nothing happens. Yeah, well, Dennis is a bad one, and he pops out when I'm uh, sleeping sometimes. Yeah, I do. Oh, De- Hello, Dennis. Hello. When you wrote your song, uh, Helter Skelter, did you know it was going to inspire Charles Manson? No, I had no idea. Uh, nobody can really uh, tell what that guy was going to do. We met him once. You met him? Yeah. He wanted to, uh, he wanted to borrow, uh, you know, some tape recording equipment. Oh, yeah, he's like a, uh, he's like a, an idol of mine. Okay, because you're an evil guy, Dennis. Uh, yeah, that, that was Dennis, and he is evil. He's a bad guy. He's a bad one. <laughs> I try not to let him take the light too much. Oh, and I, what I was going to ask before about Hedwig, you know, you're not to go, uh, he's not allowed to go on the internet. Right, because he's a kid. But, but you can. Oh, sure. Split Me, head. Split? Yeah, Split can get on the internet. But if I sort of, if Hedwig gets on, uh, you know, the computer is allowed, it <laughs> goes to the uh, child protection sort of. It's so, not a real computer anyway, as we <laughs> established. They don't have one. That's true. <laughs> yeah. But it is, it is responsible of you to, on your fake computer, put a, you know, an a, a, a age range yeah, uh, child capability. Child safety yeah, exactly. thing. Yeah. That's very responsible of you to do, Split. Thank you. I try to, you know, I try to take care of my personalities. Now, are you, are you excited or angry about this, the movie? I love the movie. Okay. Yeah. The, the I think they did a great Shyamalan. job. They captured my, I sold them my life rights. They made the movie about me. And that's why also if... You happen if if the voices that you're hearing me do don't match up exactly with how they sound in the movie. Right. Well, that's because James McAvoy's a better actor than me. <laughs> oh, oh, interesting. He's he's able to do different voices in a very distinct and committed way. Me, I'm a real life case of multiple personality disorder. Right. It's not they all. Just, yeah, they kind of come out. Sometimes they sound similar or inconsistent. That's just right. that's how it actually works. Right. Right. I I, I remember when you, again when you came into Dubai. My countertops. Yeah. I was in the other room. I was in the bathroom uh, looking at, uh, uh, I was going to start shaving, I remember. Oh, yeah. And I heard a couple different people talking. That's right. I believe you heard me, Miss Patricia. Oh, but, yeah, I heard a, an English woman. And I said, I, what, what is Split doing out there? I thought he, he's bringing people over now. I, all right, maybe he needs some help. I don't know. And then I heard Hedwig and I heard Dennis. And, I, and I'm thinking, you know, he's having a party out there. I'm in here about to shave. And then I come out and I said, okay. You got to send all your friends home. You said it was just you. And yeah, and then, and then you know, you came out, and I explained the whole thing. I said, look, I, there were no friends here. I am just different uh, personality. You're your only friend. I'm my only friend, but it's, it's great fun. It's a lot of work. It's work, but it pays off. Do you, can you ever, do you, do you ever talk between them, or is it only one person takes? Sure, sure, they'll talk to each other. Oh, in your head or out loud? Sometimes we talk out loud to each other. Oh, my God, that's right. I can't even believe what I'm wearing today. (laughs) You see, now who's this? Barry. Barry seems like he can't believe anything. I just, uh, I am so ashamed of my look today. It's like, please, can I just wake up and it's tomorrow already? Barry, I think you look great. Oh, you are too kind. You're too kind, John Lennon. You're... (laughs) 
Yeah, thank you. Well, thank you. You're, you're, so, Barry, you're just kind of a sleepy sort of I'm a waste just, of a guy. I'm, I, I am just uh, – I have high expectations for myself, and I never meet them. Like – I want to be a fashion designer and I, you know, try to, I pride myself on my appearance and then just, you roll out of bed and you put on, you know, just, I mean, what even is this? A hoodie? Oh my God. I think it looks fine. It's Uh, a nice, uh, you are too nice. Casual, relaxed thing to wear. I wish you are way too kind. Barry, let me ask you this. You seem like the guy who would say, I can't even a lot. I I can't uh, even. (laughs) I I think it. Yeah. Uh, it's, It's true. It's something I say. Now, Barry, did you get to go on set well, when they were shooting the, the Split movie? Oh, yeah. They let me meet with the wardrobe designer. That's exciting. It was. I love fashion. And they really captured in the movie how it's the only thing I ever talk about. Yeah, your thing is you're sleepy and you like fashion. Yeah. But you can't, you can't do it because you're too sleepy and, and yeah, it's too much. It's I can't even. No, I do it. Ah. Well, you, oh, did you did you talk to James McAvoy at all? Oh, yeah, yeah, he was great. Split did, okay. Split, good. yeah, me. Split, well, we all talked to him. Okay. Do you consider, when you talk to someone yeah. as Split, do you consider everyone is there as well with you, sort of standing behind you, getting yeah, all the yeah. information? Yeah, I, Split is kind of like everyone's voice all adding up at once. They're all going, hey, hey, let me get it. And it just sort of all blends together, and it becomes me, Split. So I, I wouldn't, you know, if I if I uh, made a, an appointment with you to lunch date, let's say. Sure. And I'd say, okay, Split, let's go out to lunch. Yeah. And you'd say, okay, I be, we'll be there at 2 o'clock. We'll agree on 2 o'clock. Mm-hmm. And let's say, you know, Hedwig shows up. Yes. Would he not? Was Edwig's late? Did he not know about the meeting? No, he'd have heard. He, He's they, just a kid. Yeah, we all share an iCal, so we could just we just get out and we go. Oh, I see. It's we we're meeting John Lennon at two o'clock. So let's let's go over there. Let's all be responsible and yeah, do it. let's fo- follow through on you this. You know, Barry doesn't want to. Dennis has other plans. Maybe yeah, yeah, Edwig exactly. is you know in a sandbox. Right, right. Mentally, mentally, mentally. Yeah, sometimes literally as well. Oh, that's good. Uh, does everyone get in the sandbox? Oh, Hedwig's pretty much the only one who does. I see. Oh, sometimes Bonzi does. <laughs> oh, no, who's Bonzi? I don't know him. Hey, it's me, Bonzi, the surfer dude. Oh, I like Bonzi. Well, he he spends some time, you know, in the sand and the yeah. beach. Sometimes, though, when I'm not near the beach, I see a sandbox, and I'm like, <laughs> might as well hang tin in that. In the sand? Yeah, I just oh. love walking in the sand. It reminds me of being by the waves, man. I love it. I love Bonzi. Yeah. I'm glad to have met Bonzi. Yeah. I'm well, still talking to Bonzi. Okay. You're talking to Bonzi. Hakalikimaka. <laughs> ah, he's from Hawaii. Well, I know the language of the Hawaiians. That's very good. Thank you. Wow. Well, so did you meet McAvoy? Me? Bonzi? Yeah, yeah Bonzi. <laughs> yeah, man. So uh, I have a question about, did he talk about Professor X at all? Yeah. Because I, I never knew how he got his legs hurt. Well, I missed that cartoon, the comic. Yeah. That one issue. I guess it was a nickel or a coin of some kind went into his spine. Wow. Yeah. Probably from Magneto. I think so, (laughs) man. All right. Well, that takes care of that. I just never knew. And I'm so happy to finally meet some. That's the biggest thrill for me is meeting someone who met James McAvoy. So I can then ask them about Professor X. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was happy to talk Professor X. He talked... Wanted. He talked Last King of Scotland. He talked Atonement. It was great. It cool. Was a great conversation. He really liked talking about his roles. Yeah. That's so cool. You know who doesn't but also likes to talk about their roles? Hmm. A baker. Oh, yes. <laughs> I actually have encountered that. Yeah. And they'll talk about if you ask them, but you have to ask them. I went into a bakery. I said, look, lay it on me. Is there anything you want to talk about? He went, yeah, my, my roles, of course. <laughs> So, and then you probably said, oh, I didn't know you were an actor as well. He said, no, no, no. No, no, right. My baking. My, it was baking rolls. I said, well, I'm glad I walked into this bakery and asked if there's anything you want to talk about. I had all this excess butter. Yeah. I needed someone to put it. Flour, he said, yeah. He asked me, he's like, well, is there anything you want to talk about? I said, yeah, I'm split. I got a bunch of personalities. That's what I want to talk about. It's my main thing, dude. No, I'm split. <laughs> I'm split. That was Bonzi popped up at that dude. <laughs> He just came in and out. Oh, real quick. Sentence to sentence sometimes. It'll be different words yeah, for me. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'd love to see that at some point. At, at some, some point. At some point. Yes, you will. I can't, you know, I'm not going to try to pull personalities out of it, but it would be neat at some point to see, you know, one word from each person in a sentence. We, could try, we can do that improv game, a one-word story. Right. We'll do that, but 
Maybe later. Maybe okay. Do you just say the word at any moment? Say do it, and I'll get into it. When I if I shout out Rip Tappy, Rip Tappy, that means we're doing the improv game. Okay, and you don't me, know when it's gonna come. Let me write down the word Rip Tappy because I don't want to confuse that for another word and launch into it. Okay. You know, hopefully we don't have a, a, a question about somebody who says, oh, you know, I really want to get into the candy-making world. Uh, where can I start? And I have to say, well, you know, you can start by ripping taffy. You'd rip taffy and right. you jump into I it. I'd say, into, yeah, but, I'd say, no, you're not, we're not doing that Like uh, With the context clues, even right then I understood not to do it. Good, so. good, good, good. Oh. oh, and I'll give you a big hand motion and start waving oh, around. Oh, great, and, great. Even though yeah, I see you got like a big uh, yellow flag in the corner, maybe just like flip that'll that. be okay. Yeah, good. Because uh, I was going to use that for uh, uh, to tell you when the show's over. Oh, okay. It looks like one of those flags, like on a kid's soccer field. That's at the like where you do the corner kick from. Yeah. So f- so if I wave, if I wave it once, yeah, we're doing the improv game. Great. If I wave it in a figure eight motion, mm-hmm. that means the show is ending in thirty seconds. Okay. Figure eight in 30 seconds. Now, is there an infinity motion also? Uh, no, I think it would be too confusing. I would agree. <laughs> That's one thing we can, you and I split can agree on, and hopefully all the rest of your personalities can agree on. Yeah, I don't. Well, why am I not surprised that Dennis doesn't uh, agree with uh, something very simple? I just worry it's going to make a stain. The flag? Yes. Oh, you mean by knocking over a coffee? Uh, yeah, waving a flag around. Maybe it knocks over some coffee and spills on your pants. Oh, yeah, I, I can only tell you, Dennis, I'm going to be as, as careful as I can. Keeping this studio clean is my first priority here. Not even doing the podcast. My first priority here when I walk in is I'm going to leave it like I saw it. My first priority is finding a new victim. A victim for what? To kill? To kidnap. Okay, but you don't kill them. I like it when the girls dance for me. All right. I, you know, I, 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 I can't complain with that. I, watching someone dance is very nice. Now, now, Dennis, you be kind. We're guests on Mr. Lennon's program. You're Mrs. Patricia. Patricia. Oh, and I'm also from England, Mr. Lennon. And oh. I am a big fan of yours. Fantastic. I, I'm sure you've been by Buckingham Palace. The, oh, yes, The biggest yes. house in London, as oh, I call it. Yes, yes. I keep uh, checking my real estate listings to see if it will come on to the oh. market, but it hasn't yet. It hasn't indeed. No. Well, that would be, you'd have to put up a pretty penny to buy that place. Oh, yes, I imagine I could possibly, but perhaps they have an open house. Wouldn't that be lovely? Uh, you could go on a tour. Yes, yes. Oh, can I do that right now? <laughs> no, no, not right now. Oh. I need you to, well, you could, but Split has to stay. But I think you'll be with Split, so you just have to stay here. Oh, okay, well, I'm off to Buckingham Palace. Then. <laughs> no, no, wait a minute. <laughs> hey, where'd she go? <laughs> I don't know. She wanted to go to Buckingham Palace. Oh, that's going to be tough. <laughs> She's in my body still. <laughs> right. That's what I tried to explain to her. Yeah, I, that's if, Miss Patricia for you. If I talk to her ever again, I'll tell her, you know, go on a tour and try to sneak away, and you could probably live there in secrecy in Buckingham Palace. You probably heard the whole thing. Yeah, well, I heard. Yeah, I'll pass it along to her. Okay. Hold cool. on. Let me just get someone in. Hey, someone in there. Yeah. I told Miss Patricia about, uh, she came up with Buckingham Palace at her own time. Is that what she wanted to say? That it, right, she wanted to go to the, she wanted she, to buy Buckingham Palace. Oh, right, okay. But and then but she, she said she just wanted to take a look it, at it. Gotcha. As like an open house. But I'm saying go on a tour. Did you get all that? Yeah. Okay, well, thanks. Well, is he going to tell Patricia? Oh. Yeah, I'll tell Patricia. Who are you? Wormy. Uh, uh, and you're a? Um, a sketch comedian. Oh, have you done any work over at uh, Second City? No. Where, where do you perform? House house teams? <laughs> I perform at the Glass Bottle Improv Theater. Oh, because you are a worm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all right. I'm a worm. <laughs> You're a worm who goes into a little glass bottle. Oh, a glass bottle someone dropped in the park, and I go inside it and perform. To anyone? Does anyone come in and join you? A spider. <laughs> hey, sorry, was Wormy out here talking? <laughs> yeah, I was talking to Wormy. Uh, he had to be going there. You know, he said he uh, performs to a spider. Yeah, well, he's a sketch comedian who's a worm. What do you want? <laughs> I don't know what I want. That's interesting. I I agree. It's very interesting. I was trying to get to, you know where where he did he ever take classes. That was that's what I wanted to know. Oh, uh, 
well, maybe he'll come back someday. We'll find out. But, you know, I can't help it. He, the, it's tough. He doesn't always take the light. What a sad little life. He performs in a dirty bottle that fell on the ground to one spider. Oh, uh, well, you know, you got to start somewhere. Yeah, that's true. I guess, you know, George Carlin, he did uh, shows to nobody. That's, yeah. I mean, you've seen Maybe. La, La, La Land, I assume. <laughs> yeah, so oh, yeah, I like so, La La Land. Someone in the crowd, you know? You can put together your one-person show. Right. Gosling doesn't even show up for it. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, but uh, Amy Brandt or whoever, <laughs> the casting director was there. Which was advantageous for I agree. that character. That's right. Now, what if, yeah, maybe Little Wormy's doing one of his shows. I'm sure he does a lot of prop stuff. Uh, maybe a Caterpillar agent is walking by and says, what is this? I've never seen this bottle before. Oh, they're doing a show in there. Why not? I'm, I'm, I left work early today. I've got time. I'll pop in and see if I can sign anyone. That That's... The dream. It's for Wormy. For Wormy. <laughs> now, would you like that? I would like Wormy to be happy. That's, that's so important that your I personalities agree. are happy. I just want them all to be happy. And they're often at odds with each other. It's impossible to have them all be happy. But, you know, you give it a shot. Well, you know what? I hope we can make some people happy here. Why don't we answer some questions? Yeah, let's do it. All right, Bonzi. <laughs> Sorry, bud. <laughs> okay. Here's a good one. <clears throat> Hello, John, and special guest Alfred E. Newman. I, let me explain what's going on here. Uh, I got angry who because... That? Who wrote that? This is from uh, someone named Brian. But I met... I, I would often... People would just say, Dear John. And I'd have to explain to my guest, you know, they mean you too. You as well, not the band. I've never had the band in here. Mm. And I'd say, it's, it, I hope you don't, don't find it offensive or rude that they didn't include you. So now people... I said, just put any name down. People are doing... People want to say, you know, John, and they'll name someone. And that's a mistake, too, mm. because now it makes you think, oh, was Alfred E. Newman supposed to be on the, the show? Of course he wasn't. He's uh, just a fictional drawing. But it's, it's this sort of the bed I made, and mm. now I've got to lie down in it. Well, it seems like you got a clever little group of listeners. That's true. They're, they're fun, and I like to help them out. So here we go. The, hello, John, and special guest Alfred E. Newman. As we know, it's split. My wife and I have a three-year-old dog, and we think it's time to get him a friend. However, he is a little crazy sometimes, and we're worried two dogs would be too hard to manage. What do you think? Should we get another dog? Sincerely, Brian in Barktown, USA. I assume Barktown is a joke, Hmm? because he's talking about dogs. Seems possible. Which I like. I like to, you know, I I like dogs, and I like to to imagine how they talk. Yeah. It's like, you know, if, if I was from Talktown... Because that's how I talk. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, I, I have found in my life very few people are from a town that sort of describes their life or situation or personality. Right. Now, if you would come from a town called Splitsburg, that would be... Splitsburg. No, in fact, Splitsburg sounds like Pittsburgh, and that's a rival mine from Philadelphia. Oh. So you have brotherly love. Right, right. I, I knew that about you. Yes. That you were from Philadelphia. I'm from Philly. I remember when you came in to fix my counter, you said, I'm split from Philly. What can I do for you? Yeah. I said, that's an odd way of, oh, I said, first of all, split is your name? Yeah. And you jumped out with where you're from. I said, I'm split. I'm from Philly. What can I do for you? I heard it's a BB situation. Well, you heard right. And you did a great job, I should say. Thank you. Now, here we've got a guy and his wife. They, they've got a dog. A crazy dog at times. I wish I had a dog. Oh, Hedwig, how come you, you, do you think you can take care of a dog? Yeah, dog would be real fun to play with. Oh, they're, fun, they're a lot of fun, but they're a lot of responsibility, Hedwig. Yeah, what if the dog was bad? And then you'd have to probably put him in his cage for a little bit. Oh. I don't know, actually, if that's a mean thing to do to a dog. They don't like being in there, well, whatever. Hey, I, I can't, I, I don't know, I think this sounds about right to me. Put him in a little cage. <laughs> you yeah, have the dog, you know, you give him a timeout. Yeah, I guess. Here's my advice for this guy. If for, you know, he started saying that the dog wants a friend. Right. And uh, look, the best friend you can have is yourself. If there's any way they can split this dog's personalities up, that's going to be the best thing they can do. Did you have your personalities split? Yes. Oh. Uh, I was abused by my mom. And okay. she would put nails in my fingers and stuff. And oh, so, right. Yeah. So, so that's how it's... I created different personalities to accommodate uh, her different moods. I see. Yeah. I see. So that, this is not something... Sometimes you... she was said, I wish I was laughing at... A worm, and so I created Wormy, the personality. Right, right. Some uh, she probably wanted. You know, I wish I was uh, planning something evil. Yep. With Dennis, well, she had one time. She said, "Watched Bill and Ted." She said, "I wish you were more like that." So, all right, I'll create Bonzi. 
As long as it keeps the nails out of my fingers. Yes, yes. Oh. I like having 10 nails in my fingers, typically, but these were the bad kind of nails. Uh, oh, these were... The, the, yeah. These were like nails like a hammer and nail. Normally, I have one nail in each finger, and I'm okay with that. You're right, okay with it. I'm the same way. Yeah, my body grew it for me. Right. But then you... To help the, you, you know, peel stickers off of things. Sure, yeah, and, and scratch the loved ones back. Have you found? Are you finding romance out there, Split? Uh, well, I'm finding f- romance within. Oh, so well, okay. Oh, don't bring that up, Split. <laughs> oh, oh, Patricia, come on. We can we can uh, talk a little bit about some of the uh, romantic uh, <laughs> things. Yeah, well, I, I wish suppose, I could find that word. I suppose we could talk about the romances I've been having. Are, we, are you just the only female in there, Patricia? No, no, there's a few others. Okay, well, maybe we'll meet them later. Yes, they're not British like I am. All right, all right. Well, so so you're dating. Who are you dating in there? Well, it's a bit of a talk word. I used to be going out with Wormy. <laughs> what, what happened? Oh, we, we were just two different people. <laughs> He's not even a person at that all. That was what I said. <laughs> what did he say? He said, I know. He gives up to it. No easy. one wants to be with old Wormy anyway. Oh, no, no, Wormy, please. Wormy, well, you're, you seem like a great guy. No, I hate myself. Well, you put that type of negative energy out there, people are going to give it right back to you. You know, I tried to fix him, and I tried to fix him, and eventually I said, this isn't my job to fix him. He's <laughs> his own person, he's got to fix himself, and I can't let him bring me down. That's very astute, and that is uh, very mature of you, uh, Patricia. Thank you. To you, When you find love... It's because you don't, you can't change someone into loving you. Yeah, and now she's going out with me, Seb. Seb! Seb, yeah. Hey, well, who are you? I'm Seb. I'm a jazz guy. Oh. I love <laughs> jazz, and my name is Seb. And, and, and I, love, I love that about you, Seb. Thank you, yeah. So now I'm going out. I'm going out with Miss Patricia. Where do, you, where do you go? Do you guys, you know, do dating around the body? You know, you, you meet each other at the neck and go down to the elbow for something to eat? Oh, well... Sometimes I just jack him off. <laughs> oh, I use it's... my ha- it'll be waist up me and then waist down it's him. You do you do a Netflix and chill. Yes, indeed. Yeah, chill out. Oh, sorry. I, I sounded like Bonzi a little bit there. <laughs> He's quite a cut up that one. When when Seb came out, I thought it was Bonzi. <laughs> yeah, I like I said, some of us sound similar. <laughs> But always, but always consistent or never consistent. I forget. <laughs> the inconsistency is what is consistent. <laughs> Very good. Very good. All right. Well, now wait a minute. We're getting off topic. <laughs> oh yes, I'm sorry. I'll bring back Split. Hey, it's me, Split. All right. Split. I also sound like Seb a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I think you've got the same uh, sort of attitude as Seb, but your voice yeah. is different. That's true. And th- there's more to you, Split. Yeah. A, a lot more. Thank you. I mean, uh, Seb, we learned that he's dating Patricia. Yeah, and, and he likes jazz. J- he loves jazz. Yeah. I guess he loves it. He doesn't he loves like it. it. He's, yeah, he's a jazz guy. He loves jazz and, and would not give us any examples <laughs> no. of how or what exactly. No. Well, he was in a rush, I think. I don't think he expected to show up, and then he was there, and then now he's gone. <laughs> yeah, there was a moment when Seb was talking and he said his name and there was sort of a look on his face like, wow, I came up with that name quickly. Yes, and then he felt committed to it. <laughs> what came well, yeah, he sort of thought Maybe I don't really sound like another Seb out there, so. I'll give him props for that. Thank you. Um, tell, tell Seb I say hello. <laughs> okay. Hey, Seb. <laughs> yeah. John Lennon says hello. <laughs> Throw that right back at him. I'm going to get to some jazz now. Well, you probably heard that. Yeah, I, I heard he wanted to do some jazz. Here's what I would say to these two people. Yes. These two, you get two dogs in your house. Mm. They're going to team up against you. Mm-hmm. They're going to steal your money. Oh, yeah. Because now they've got a t- little team network happening. Sure, they'll dig a hole. They'll become a whole kind of right. jailbreak kind of system. They'll start funneling things out of the house. And, until eventually they're going to funnel you right out of the house. Yeah. You're going to live in the yard yeah. like them, mm-hmm. and they're going to live in your home, sleep in your bed, You know, go through your mail. Uh, You'll be the one sleeping on top of the doghouse. Right. Nose to the sky. Hey. Right, right. Your, your new friend will be a little uh, yellow bird. Yes, and, and, and that's that's not fun, and it's yeah. not fair. You don't want to be you know, a little bird, probably named Bonnaroo or something, and you're gonna have to be friends with him. And... Right? And you're gonna 
You're going to go off. The only help you can get is from a therapist who works out of a cardboard box. Yeah. For if, uh, Who will trick you. Yeah. Who may be in love with you, too. Was that happening? I think maybe more in love with uh, Schroeder. Oh, Schroeder. Yes. The piano player. Mm. I wonder if he, I wonder if Seb likes Schroeder. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love Schroeder. I love anyone who plays jazz. Oh, I knew it. Yeah. <laughs> like the messengers. Actually, they suck. Well, hey. <laughs> well, we're not going to get into that. <laughs> no, I, I don't even want to open up who the messengers are. Yeah, let's what ignore that it. Is. Let's not. Let's not talk about the messengers for once on this podcast. For um, once. You know, my advice also is don't get a dog, have a kid. Oh, so take the existing dog. Take the, he, he says he wants company for the dog, and then he, uh, after that, it's like, we think he, uh, what do you write? He said something like, I think he should have a little friend. Right, they, they, is it, it's right. time a to get a little friend, friend doesn't need to be a dog. A little friend That's could true. be a multitude of things. That's have true. Have a kid, let the kid be the dog's friend. Right, and, and let the dog raise the kid. Yeah, for it's, sure. Essentially. Uh, but, you know, you'd have to buy the kid a collar and some dog food, but the, the, yeah. <laughs> the dog would then raise the child. A <laughs> human child. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a good idea. <laughs> okay, who we got? My name is Mr. Bones. And let me guess, your favorite food is? Bones! <laughs> yeah, I knew it. <laughs> I think there's a good, uh, a new poodle for this dog. <laughs> Get a poodle, a real sexy poodle that oh, All right, are you just talking? Hold on a second, Mr. Bones. <laughs> yes? Sounds like you yes. just want to have these people get a poodle. Yes. Because you like poodles. You find them attractive. <whistles> all right. <laughs> hum on, hum on. Hey, stop humping that uh, leg, uh, chair leg. Sorry, I was thinking of poodles, I know, I know, I know. They're sexy. <laughs> so are you, are you, do you have an owner? <laughs> You split to your owner? Split my owner, oh. yeah. I love it. I love Mr. Bones. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, Mr. Bones, do you want to move on? I think so. I'll just go back out of the light now. Come play with me, Mr. Bones. Oh, yeah, Hedwig, this is perfect for you because you wanted a dog. Yeah. So you can play with Mr. Bones, but you don't own him. Sometimes he doesn't want to play with me, though. How come? He says that I have too much energy. Oh, you, do you pull his tail? Yeah. yeah and I try to ride him. It seems like it would be fun to ride a dog. <laughs> it would be. Yeah. You know what you should look into? What? You should ask Split if he'll take you to a, a horse riding uh, camp. Okay. Hey, Split, Split, can I go to a horse riding camp someday? Yes. Hey, see? That was easy. Yeah. Ask, ask and ye shall receive. Split, that's great. Because One of my he... favorite books wrote that. Split, it's, it's so nice to, to promise little Hedwig <laughs> yeah, that we'll, take him. Well, you know what? We're, uh, we'll just head down to, there must be some pony encampment near here. We'll just get right after the show. I'm sure there is. And, but you got to stick to it. You can't give those little kids or any of your personalities uh, promises and not keep them. I know, I know. I'll, I'll, I'll do it. I'll battling. bring them there. I don't think I have any other plans the rest of the day. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, you, Miss Patricia. Yes, you said we could have a scone later. Okay, we'll have a scone, Miss Patricia. We can go horse riding and get scones. It, a, a scone doesn't need to be its own event, Miss Patricia. Oh, very well. Yeah. Well, we don't mean to. No, now I feel like we were mean to it. <laughs> no, don't cry, Miss Patricia. Don't cry. I'm just, I'm just saying. Hey, what's going on, <laughs> Mr. Bones? Not now. Oh, okay. Just please, thank you, Mr. Bones. Oh, Patricia, we just say uh, you got to think about Split. You got to think about Split for a minute. No one ever thinks about me. Worm, we think about you. We're all gonna. We were just talking, Worm. We were thinking about going to see one of your shows, weren't we, everyone? Okay. I uh, hope you give me a good suggestion for my organic opening. All right. Well, we'll think of one. Thanks. Maybe it's scone. Could you do anything with that? Who did you bring up scones again? Yes, Miss Patricia. How delightful, how utterly delightful. <laughs> have I'll, you ever been to Lancashire? Yeah, of course I have. Oh, what's a lovely town, isn't it? It's fantastic. You know, if the sun's out, it's great. Oof, but that's a rare occurrence. <laughs> You're not having a good time. Mm. Rip tappy. And, and now I'm currently waving <laughs> a big flag <laughs> just back and forth. There was once a... Fonzie. Jazz <laughs> Club.
That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a sentence. That, that was a sentence. Yeah, that was some of them. They didn't really tell a story. No, I did. We didn't want it. We just wanted one sentence. <laughs> yeah. Once there was a jazz club. Yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> Subject predicate. Yeah. Verb. Yeah. I love it. Well, well done. Thanks. <laughs> Just gonna talk about how Twist and Shout is the worst Beatles song. I'm your host, Matt Besser. I have some special guests here, Brett Morris. Uh, thank you. An expertise on Beatles skills. Thanks for having me. Uh, also, I wanted to get on the show a music critic, like a, a legit one, dude. Whoa. David Frick from Rolling Stone magazine, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Huge pleasure, my friend. It is, it's my pleasure to be here. I, I got to say, you're in every rock and roll documentary ever, given your opinion, and I don't really respect a rock doc unless you are in it. I, I call you the rock doc, the <laughs> rock doctor. Well, thank you, man. Thank you so much. And welcome to Screw It. We're just going to talk about how Twist and Shout is the worst Beatles song and who... Really, I can't believe I got this guy <laughs> I, on no, the first I, episode. I figured like this will be our g guy we get the hundredth episode. I know if we're I, lucky. I feel bad. Will isn't here to to meet him a little bit, but this is incredible. Uh, I had to go when I saw who was going to be here. I had to go downstairs and uh, and take a lewd. <laughs> Because just to calm down, to calm down. Because just one. His, I mean, first off, this is like magic. I don't know what's going on, but he. This it's, man, a, it's not magic. It's a. He has. I didn't understand. Okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, John Lennon. Oh, thank oh you so God. much. Wow. Yeah, I've, honor, I've been on man. podcasts before. I know you know you don't speak until your name is said. <laughs> right. You try exactly. not to. <laughs> yeah. It's that's the. Uh, I'm sorry. I said just one when you mentioned Ludes there, Doctor Documentary Doctor Frick. <laughs> <laughs> the rock Such doc. a pleasure, man. It's amazing to be pleasure. in here with you, both of you, all three of you. This well, is fantastic. Well, John really? and Doctor Frick, uh, David. Uh, why am I call the doc? The doc. We call you Doctor Doc. I'm Doctor of Rock and Roll. Uh, <laughs> uh, self and self proclaimed. But still. I only rock knew this. Wrong. You could call me Rock Doctor. I'm embarrassed that I thought you were dead, like you were dead, but for a time, sure. Yeah, and. I didn't do a deep dive on Wikipedia to find out how you came back to life. I but scrub that just... stuff out. You know, I go on Wikipedia to sort of scrub it out so people don't bother me about it. But basically what happened, I've told this story before. Right. I got shot in 1980. Yeah, you probably were terrible. watching yeah. football. It got announced when people were watching Monday Night Football. And I was on the ground bleeding and all the blood left my body. And I died. And I had to, you know, be buried and be dead. About four years later, when you're in the ground in a coffin, you say, this is pretty boring. I, you know, woke up and I got out of there. Okay, and we most could people do. Can't do that. Anyone can do it. A lot of people choose not to. I, when I deep dived wow. on this, it was like a lot of them do it, but they're just not as famous, so you don't hear about it. Oh, that's a good point. Right? People do it all the time. Um, so, oh, my mailman died. Now he's back. It's fine. Good for him. Just give me the mail. Right. I, well, I, I. Yeah. He's still delivering the mail. Yeah, I was gonna <laughs> say. Um, it's better than being in the ground. And thank you for being on Screw. We're just going to talk about how Twist and Shout is the worst Beatles song. Thanks it's, for it's having my, me. This is my first episode, so I'm a little nervous, even besides the fact that you're here. Don't be. I, I'm easy to get along with. Yeah, that's what I've heard, except for with certain people. Well, <laughs> are you Paul. Talking? well Paul and I, we had our problems. <laughs> he wouldn't let me touch that bass ever. Um, anyway, anyway uh, also, you used to slap your girlfriends around <laughs> uh, when what? you were younger. Wasn't that right? 
Let's oh, not get into that. That's not the care of guys. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, let's, it's part of my journalism the, background. That I get every get detail. Don't worry about this that. It's historical <laughs> fact, right? Yeah. Basically, let's just talk let's, to let's about, choose to forget that. Because that's going to have your son everybody not listening to the ignoring that he was your son. Uh, sort of the anyway. fun version of this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Tried to be fun. I, I think we need to get our third guest on the our fourth guest, really, Brett. Okay, let's call him up. Hello. Hi, Will Hines. You're on... Screw it. We're just going to talk about Twist and Shout is the worst Beatles song. Uh, hey, buddy. It's, oh, it's weird to have oh you on a God. different podcast. And uh, we also and have... What? Let me just introduce you as yeah. the former host of Screw It. We're just going to talk about the Beatles. That's correct. Great. And uh, let me introduce yep, the other guests yep, that are right. here. Uh, David Frick, uh, rock expert from Rolling Stone magazine. How are you, Will? <laughs> And uh, David Sprint, yeah, I, I love I love your work, David. I've I read it. I, you wrote great stuff about Nirvana in the day. I'm a huge fan. Oh yeah, were you around then? <laughs> it was such yeah, a trip. I was around, I was around when Nirvana. <laughs> that was yeah, only the '90s. Do you get yeah. your uh, <laughs> decades mixed up, Frick? Since you reported on so many of them. No, man. When you. The 90s was a magical time where grunge mm -hmm. and coffee met rock and roll and mm -hmm. flannel. Mm -hmm. And the result was an explosion. It, it took sounds over like a the sentence world, from right? one of your reviews. This is amazing. You're like Bill Walton. <laughs> well, I try to be flowery with yeah. my language a little bit. But yeah, Will Hines, uh, <laughs> great to hear from you, man. Um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan. So far. But okay, and Will, this next guy... Uh, like Brett just said, you might be mad that you're not here to meet him, but uh, fucking John Lennon's here. Hello, Will. How are you doing? That's, that's incredible, John. It, yeah, I, well, thank you. Know, I'm an oh, enormous fan. I'm a huge, huge fan. Sure. Okay. Well, I'll let you know. We're all really restraining ourselves uh, to attacking you right now. This is unbelievable what you think. <laughs> all right, John. Let's, ah, not, let's not jump into it. Ah, you, you son okay. of a bitch. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, well, that's. Well, what's going on? Whoa, whoa. Sorry, Will. I'm I'm trying to hold him back. Yeah, no, I mean, I, well, I, let, let's do let's do some background uh, for yeah, okay, improper for humans listeners who may not know your podcast. Will um, may not know why I just said that. Right. Right. Exactly. So, uh, and they're expecting where's the improv? Well, so let me just back up a little bit. I was on okay. Will's podcast, Screw It, we're just going to talk about the Beatles, and I was inspired. It, it could be about 60s music yeah. or psychedelic music or a much larger umbrella, mm -hmm. but he mm -hmm. focused on this one thing, and he brought other lovers of this one thing. And when I was on that podcast, I, was, I, I started to question my own podcast. I was like, how much do I still love improv? Have I... I've been doing it for de you know literally over two decades now. Do I still do I still have the passion? Do I love it? The, I lo I look I was looking at Will and he gets he gets red in the face. He starts to his he gets beads of, you know su sweat on his forehead and he starts talking about the Beatles. He gets so riled up and I was looking at him like I don't know if I get this same passion from improv anymore. And I, I was real upset for a couple of weeks. And Danielle, my wife, she always know, you know, she know, she's like, you seem down lately. And I told her about it. She's like, well, find what you're passionate about. And I thought about maybe I could do, you know, a tennis a serving. I like to serve the tennis ball. Maybe that could be a podcast or uh, just, just like serving the tennis ball. Look, Will, I didn't judge the fact that you found a small niche like okay, Beatles. Okay. A lot of people serve the tennis ball. No, that's why we were a pretty big band. We were a big band. <laughs> You'd ask almost anyone they know about the Beatles. Yeah, the Beatles are pretty big. The yeah. Beatles are a bigger niche than serving it. Oh, but okay, I, I don't see know. I don't You're know. I don't know. That people are big. still serving the tennis ball. That You guys aren't still putting out songs. Uh, that's well, it's, I think we've done enough. <laughs> All right, I, it's, neither, <laughs> it's neither here nor there. But because that's not where I landed, the passion I felt okay. was for my hatred of the song "Twist and Shout." We were in a green yeah, room at true. the that's Upright true. Citizens Brigade, that. and we were talking about yes. the Paste Magazine, or maybe it's the Vulture. Uh, dot com uh, top yeah. two hundred seventy three. 
Beatles songs and they ranked yeah. them. And I think you were talking about it, how you're going to talk about yeah. it on your show. And I said, well, the worst, I haven't seen the list, but the yeah. worst one must be Twist and Shout. And I said it, and I Which think you thought I was joking. Yeah. Right? Because we're in an improv theater. Yeah, I, I thought that was a joke. Yes. Yeah, you were doing a bit or something. Well, I wasn't doing a bit. Not everything I do is a bit. And it was my opinion. And you said, are you joking? And I was, I was, I took a front at that. I'm like, no. We're all talking seriously about the Beatles back here in the green room, hanging out. That's my opinion. And yeah. you were like, I'm paraphrasing, yeah. but you were like, surely you must be joking. And I'm like, no, I'm not. And then yeah, everyone else kind of shut up. And we yeah. basically had an argument about Twist and Shout. And then I, I, We got into it a little bit. That's true. Yeah. And, and then I said, well... Let's let's you know we're about to do some comedy on stage. So let's talk about stop talking about this serious thing. How about we take this up on your podcast? And I offered, how about you and I on your Beatles podcast talk about Twist and Shout being the worst song? And yeah, and, and I thought that would be a good idea. I did think that would be. A, I thought that would be a good idea. I agreed. You did agree, and there were but and there were witnesses. Then, well, I, Go ahead. I agree, but that, then when it came time to actually do the Beatles podcast, mm -hmm. I had this other thing I wanted to do about stolen song ideas, and I was like, let's just focus on that. And okay, I'm this not is not true. This is not thing. true. Guess, this is fake news. This is revisionist. <laughs> I said I wanted to be on the show, and you were well, like, it's, I, this is not a big enough topic. We'll think of something else. And I was like, surely this is definitely a big enough topic, and I didn't even think we needed other guests. But you're like, that's my format. And I'm like, whatever. Right. I got plenty to say. I but mean, are we, are we going to just like start yeah. right now and just kind of like, <laughs> because if we're going to talk about the song, you have to, we have to talk about Shake It Up Wait Baby, Twist Matt, and you... Shout, <laughs> a completely inappropriate topic to ask a woman to go just Wait, twist and David shout Frick? around. We're just David going right into it. Uh -huh. Exactly. David they want to dive into you're, this. You're, wait a minute. All right, all right, but David, you're against the song "Twist and Shout." You? Oh yeah, I feel it's uh, it's it's of the 307 classic Beatles songs, it's definitely the worst. Um, I, I agree. That's Just, thanks for being on the show. Well, well, this is a uh, European rock and roll guitarist, John Lennon. Can you hear me clearly? <laughs> no, I. Yes, I know. You don't have to describe who you are. I oh, know some who some you of the are, listeners so. might yes, not I know. I, okay, you do. Uh, I want to just let I, you know. <laughs> Twist and Shout is my, you know, most hated song. Not of the Beatles, of all songs. What? That's so Do you hear that, Will? That Not just of his uh, own repertoire, I, of all songs. And I'm talking about rock and roll, rap, classical, gospel, everything. It's the West. I didn't know you did rap. I didn't know you did rap. So I mean, he's I, I'm listening. Not talking, or I'm classical. not doing, not even songs I've done. Songs I've heard or that exist. Just of all the songs. What of about, songs? like, white power skinhead right, music? Look. No, that is... <laughs> Well, that I don't really consider that music. That's a, okay. It's more of a, an argument. I forget your fun times, John. <laughs> I'm more of a good guy. I, Go I, ahead, I Will. Guess I really have trouble believing that, John. John, this is a great... It's, first of all, I think it's a terrific song. It's one of my absolute favorite Beatles tracks. Oh, my God. And no, I, you don't have to suck up to me him. like that. I, I'll send you an autograph. You don't have to. That's not how we have to do this. You don't have to suck up to me. And before we even get I, I'm into... I'm not going to ask for an autograph. I'm not... <laughs> oh, oh, you don't want an autograph from John Lennon. All right. Will, before we even go further with no, the I guy who say... sang the song and the, one of the greatest rock experts of all time, let's talk to your co-host of your show. Screw it. We're just going to talk about the Beatles, uh, Brett Morris. And let's yeah. talk about his true feelings yes, about Brett. this. Yeah. True um... feelings. Brett, what is going on? Well, actually, I'm, I was surprised to hear Besser say that that was supposed to be a one-on-one -on -one debate at first, because then when I was brought into that episode, yeah, I did feel a little bit pressured, I guess, to take your side, Will. Um, about did you hear the that? Song about twist and shout. Um, Wait, you felt pressured just because it's my podcast? You felt pressured to take my side? Well, yeah, and you know, I didn't want you to not invite me on it again. Right, you could have him axed like um, that. So yeah, I'm not Thanks, gonna... John. Um, 
Brett, what have, what I, have, what I'm what trying have to they say done is, to you, Brett? We, no, you, nothing. What have you, do, what have what you, have you done, done to you? Brett that he was so gun-shy that he couldn't give his real opinion? That's why I have you on the phone, Will. It's because I want these guys to be able to give their own real opinion without by, being intimidated by you being in the room. It's a Me Too situation Look, over it's here. Not that, like that's you, right. We're all going to just now come out and say what we really feel and what really makes us angry now. I don't know if we want to jump on the hat. Ha <laughs> me too, me hashtag too about this. But me too no likey should be the other hashtag. Me too no likey? Me, me too. Yeah. Hashtag That's no likey. Fair. We won't hashtag use me too. Guys, <laughs> hashtag honestly, me no likey. Not that I, hate, I hate it. I hate look, the song. If somebody... Go ahead, Will. I can't believe that. I can't believe that. It's it's not if somebody was like, you know, if it's not their favorite song or Bester, you were talking about how it, it's very overplayed because it's like at every wedding and and people are sick of it. That I totally understand. No, or if it's yesterday like, would be the like worst song. Then, a, if that was my theory. Yeah, or hey Jude. I mean, yeah. let's talk about the I gross yesterday. cultural appropriation. I love me too. Uh, me too. Uh, of twist and shout, you know. Go ahead. That the medley inside it, it is an a Mexican brother's song. It's a Mexican banda song. Go ahead. Uh, originally, it is. Yes, it is. yes. It's the metal melody inside it is a Mexican banda song that was taken okay, by yeah, Phil I Medley mean, and Brett Burns. I didn't Burns. know that. Like La Bamba. Uh, that type it is, of La Bamba. Yeah. That. It is that type of music. John, banda were you music. aware of that? That you guys stole it from a Mexican song? We, we knew the whole time, but you know, George Martin was a gun to your head. You've got to record. <laughs> We've got to sell our records, boy. George owns. Martin made you. George Martin made you record Twist and Shout. He would come into the. He it's, would not push. Even, it's not even that. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I, it's not. Even, I don't even care if it's your favorite song. I just think it's insane to say that it's the worst Beatles song. The song is a health it's, risk. It's, it's at, well, let's get into that. What? Will, do you, do you even know the history of the recording of the song? And uh, dear listener, you can look this up yourself. It was a one take song. Oh uh, yeah, the story of John. I mean, go ahead. Yeah, it's the first take. That's right. Go ahead. What else? Yeah, it's the, it was the. They were recording their first album, "Please Please Me." Mm -hmm. They had recorded all day, young. so John was very tired, and his voice was. He had a cold, so his voice was kind of worn. Uh -huh. You didn't want to record, right? I didn't want to record. I let everyone in the room know. I, uh, yeah, as, I you know, as independent person, do not want to record this song. I was ice skating early in the week. I fell through the but, ice. I got a cold. My throat was scratchy. I said, please whoa, do not make me sing this did not know about song. The ice skating, but he I knew was you, trapped under the ice and, and lost but, consciousness. Yeah. He's gone through that kind of trauma. I and woke now, up in the recording studio with a microphone in front of my face. And let's remember, John Lennon's mother was his aunt and his grandmother. And so when you grow up that way, I, you're, the anger yeah. that you have is almost unfathomable, the amount of anger that you put into a song. And I think he really just... You shit hear out his anger on Twist and Shout in a way you that literally I literally scream. Like. I was told George Martin hit the record button and then said to me exactly what you just said, Dr. Frick. And I, that's when I found out about that. <laughs> Wait, is that, that's, is that true? I, had, I, I, I don't think that's true. What's true? That his mom was also his aunt and his grandmother? <laughs> I thought that, that was very no, confusing. No, 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 I don't want to question David Frick. I mean, it's... It's kind of complicated, no, he, and I don't want he, to go into it, like the whole lineage of John Lennon. But he was, his sister was his mother and his grandmother. He was raised raised by <laughs> his aunt, his right. sister, who was right. his mother and his aunt. It sounds right? like a British thing. Right? Imagine someone I mean, I telling that exactly. to you before you got to recall. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people in England uh, were raised by their grandmother and their aunts, right. and no one knew who their real mother was. Oftentimes, the only thing we were sure of is who the prime minister <laughs> I mean, was. Now, John, I, I read uh, once okay, again in I, Wikipedia that you gargled milk ugh. before you sang the song. My Why throat, would you gargle milk? My throat was uh, was sandpaper. You right. know, uh, carpenters would come in between takes and, you know, file down some wood in my throat. It was that scratchy. Oh, my Lord. And, uh, yeah, I was drinking a lot <laughs> yeah, of milk but and eating just throat lozenges for, you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Go ahead, Will. Are you going to well, argue with John's well, if I history? Just say, I mean... Well, I just would ha I have a different interpretation of it, John. I mean, I think this is what makes the song so great. Your performance, it's, 
it's one of your best performances of the the Beatles' entire career. I appreciate like your, your opinion. Your vocal performance, it's how you so? Did because he had the a original, cold. The, the original by the. Anytime I think we would he do... was he was giving it his all. I think the passion in his voice. I had so to. Strong. I could barely speak. Look, I mean, I'm, not, I'm not alone in this opinion. Listen, Will. Opinion. Listen to what All you're people. saying. This would be like saying uh, so-and-so can't improvise tonight, and you would be the coach and go, well, get him out of bed because <laughs> I want to see their finest performance. Make them gobble by making milk. Them, yeah, strain their voice. And when they should be recovering and taking their health seriously, I want to get them on stage for my own sadistic – Fucking! I, I don't even know how to define this. I don't know how, where it comes from your head that you need to well, torture a performer I, to get the best performance and then out of them. To reproduce that sound, you know, at all, all live shows, I had to go skating a week before, <laughs> fall on the ice, come to the you know Shea Stadium, a big concert, <laughs> with a messed up throat, and sing that one song. I read about that because you. I did one time. I you, didn't know you went through all that. That sounds that sounds well, terrible. It's not something people want to hear about. They just want to hear the hits. That's why you stopped touring? It's part of it. Part of it. Yeah, because you know you, we couldn't tour in the summertime. Well, I heard, uh, yeah, that that, and that's why the women were screaming all the time. Is right. they were trying to mimic your screaming on that song. We heard a lot of people hurt their voices. It was known as the twist and shout scream that right. kept you guys from being able to be heard. Uh, right. Well, look, I, this is going to be a more controversial opinion than I expected, but I think a lot of bands, if you told them, hey. If you sing while you're sick, you're going to sound as good as John Lennon sounds on Twist and Shout. They would happily do it. I, I, I think, I, I know you're trying to set me up to look like the bad guy here in this particular just, example. Not, you're being about. defensive. You're being yeah. way defensive. You're being way I, I, I defensive. Think if I, was, I think if I was the manager of the band and I was like, hey, you got a cold? You go sing today, you're going to sound like John Lennon. The guy would be like, let's give it a shit. People would be excited to sound like How would the manager that know that? I'd be like, fuck you. Are you trying to brainwash well, me? Well, it, it just doesn't sound like that bad a trade off because I think the song is that good. I think the song is worth it. But he just told you he but was tortured I, by singing it. And, yeah, and from what I've I, read from reading was, it, you I couldn't was, sing. I was unaware of that backstory. Well, look it up. I mean, if I you're going to have I didn't a Beatles know that backstory, podcast, like, look it up. Let's let's talk okay, about the history. Find, I thought I did pretty good research. Well, they said his voice. It says so. online that his voice was ragged for weeks after I'm that. I'm still you drinking could, tea because of that because one song. Of that. Do you yeah. think you sang better before that recording? I used to. Right. I used to be. I was an opera singer <laughs> before that. Really? Yes. Well, I thought you were amazing without doing not, opera. Did not I'm, know that. <laughs> that was I your original goal was that's, to be an opera. Really I wanted to be a live but... opera singer only. Never recorded. Because that's just what I felt passionate about. Am I, am I voice? Your voice. It was your passion. It was my passion. But you know, George Martin got a hold of me and said, get in there and Your voice singing. sounded... That's I really didn't know that George Martin was that aggressive a person. I did not know that George Martin was that aggressive a person. But your voice sounded great after that recording. I mean, Happiness is a Warm Gun, which you did years later. That's mm -hmm. an amazing performance. Mm -hmm. I regret doing that um, <laughs> I can't I believe really you brought it. up the one song oh, well. that the NRA uses to start every meeting. I, uh, it's like they're possibly their second worst song just based on bad moral, moral girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it puts well, the wrong John, idea in a kid's John was singing it. Weren't you singing it? I guess I can just ask you, John. Weren't you singing it ironically? I mean, I, I don't think that you were pro gun in that song. Oh, look, we got Sam Cedar on the phone. You look, I, I, you're throwing a lot of words around here. What I did ironically or for real or what I meant by having this one gun. The point is, it was a song It was supposed to be about heroin. <laughs> and then people took it the wrong way. <laughs> All right, Will. You okay, also said that the Isley look, Brothers did the original just, version. Let's get back to the history of this song, Twist and Shout, because this is what this podcast is ultimately about. Okay. No offense to you, John, because other bands did Twist and Shout. It's not just a Beatles Twist and Shout show. It's really focused on yes, Twist and Shout. It's it. a terrible... Well, <clears throat> even the Isley Brothers didn't write it. It was written by some songwriters. A lot of songs were in the 50s. But uh, it was a follow-up yeah. to... A uh, an as big of hit by the Isley Brothers, Shout. Shout came out uh, before Twist and Shout, and then due to the popularity, people loving to shout, 
they uh, went and found some songwriters that had. Uh, well, you probably know more about this, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Doctor Frick here. Uh, yeah, the song was originally done by the Top Notes mm-hmm. in 1961, and then covered by the Isley Brothers, and then later covered by the Beatles. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, and uh, so. Now, it was in an era where there was a lot of songs about twisting. There was Do the Twist and the follow-up to that, uh, Let's Twist Again. Again. Yeah, Chubby Checker. Yeah. Um, why was twisting let's so... Twist, let's Twist to the, Into the Ground. Yeah. Which later came and then became like, Let's Twist in the Grave. Yeah. And Chubby Checker's final uh, song is I'm Twisting I, I... In, in Hell. Oh, I haven't heard that. Mm-hmm. I, didn't, I didn't know those yeah. songs. So, yeah, so Twist and Shot, songs. like the... It, Why was everyone was writing so about popular. twisting and shouting? Yeah, but then they just combined the two. Yes, yeah, someone like cynical. Was, someone said, "There's there's a hundred top ten songs about twisting, and there's a hundred top ten songs about shouting." Shout it, shout uh-huh. I like to put it together, and twist and shout was the first song that came out of that thought process. Now, from what I understand, reading into the uh, reading about this, is that they wrote the lyrics first are the original writers of it without testing it out, without actually doing what they were saying people should do. And then when doctors studied it, it's proven to be very unhealthy to twist and shout at the same time. It's, it's terrible on your neck muscles and, and, and your vertebrae. When uh, you shout, you should be looking straight forward and, not and moving hopefully your body. not moving. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just do one or the other. But, guys, but really, but guys, doing both together well, you is have to, terrible. Guys, you have to think about where the money was here? coming from. Uh, you're going to have to wait a second. Uh, <laughs> it's John Lennon's talking, dude. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Bill. <no. laughs> you got to think That's about fair. where the That's money totally was coming fair, from. Yeah. From all the record companies, we're getting a lot of money from chiropractors, you know, right. who needed business. Right. Let's start having the kids Follow start the off money. at an early, exactly, at an early age. Let's get their backs screwed up. So that's why all the twist twisting was going Twisting, on. Twisting, yeah, exactly right about the shouting. That, rever- and, that and reverberates the sh- through your whole body and it screws you up. Right. You remember there was a song called Let's Twist and Kiss Our Own Belly Buttons, which caused so severe damage to a lot of the kids that were mm-hmm. singing it. And that was censored. That but didn't guys, get by, yeah. but Twist and Shout did. Interesting. And Go ahead, Will. Well, I've seen people dance to Twist and Shout. Twist and Shout is played at like every wedding and everybody comes out and dances. And I've watched people dance. They're not dancing that aggressively. Okay. Like, then, they dance pretty... It's a kind of a kind of a good time, laid-back moment of the wedding. You know, people aren't, like, throwing their bodies around. Sure. And then what like, happens at the end of every actually, single wedding it's pretty, reception? It's pretty easy on... John's making a good point. What happens? What do at you the always end? see at the, at the end of every single wedding? A line of ambulances lining up to take people to the hospital. You always see it. I've never noticed that. I've never. Uh, you've probably been uh, taking advantage never of that. Seen a line open of bar. Ambulance. The, uh, Will no, sounds no. like the people who uh, watch the NFL and they don't think concussions are a problem. Right. Yeah, he's they mitig- see, he's they mitigating see. the dangers of, 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 yeah. of, of lyrics and songs and the, the, the truly just reckless way that the Beatles wielded their lyrics back in the day. Mm-hmm. Uh, and in this case, in the worst. Most irresponsible way, asking right. people to twist and shout. It's like having a song say, jump in the bathtub and, with and a it, toaster. And it got so crazy that we cut to Laos, and now mm-hmm. priests are twisting and shouting, <laughs> mm-hmm. and they're like, how do we twist and shout more than ever? Let's set ourselves on fire. Right, because some of these songs, they get misinterpreted across uh, cultures. And yeah. uh, like, like Will's making this very white-centric. He's thinking yeah. of the Caucasian weddings that he goes to and the way they yes. yeah. Caucasians dance to this I, kind yeah, of music. I've gone to a lot of white, I've gone to a lot of Caucasian weddings, it's true. I've gone to a lot of Caucasian weddings. Yes, that's true. But I'm saying you're, you're, I, I, you're approaching this from, a, from your bubble of being in this bubble of the way white people dance, twist, and shout, not thinking about even the way uh, lower class white people who uh, you probably don't go to their weddings, like they take lyrics to songs a lot more <laughs> seriously than uh, the privileged. That's uh, why if you go to a Vietnamese singers. wedding, you'll never hear twist and shout because people are always inclined to want to go get lighter fluid and do something, you know? Yeah. Because uh, why so are you shouting song, songs, unless you're song protesting banned. something? Exactly. That song's banned at most Vietnamese weddings. Right. <laughs> well, I, I don't I, – I said I, this yeah, – go ahead. There's other – there's other – every 
single reason that you don't like Twist and Shout. Yeah. I feel like there's other Beatles songs that are more egregious. Go and ahead. I'm sorry to bring this up in front Go of John. Go ahead. I'm not like, let's hear it. another song that 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 this harms people's bodies by instructing it what, what them what to do. Go ahead. Uh, I can't offhand. All right. Um, another song where they tell you what to do is um, "I'll Get You in the End." It's a it's a not very well known Beatles song. It's a B side. Oh, it's a B side. It's not how Pat far Masters he has to reach one. to make his point. Nobody but go knows ahead. that song. Was this released well, uh, on a piece of plastic you know in a magazine? Song, John? I'm even trying to rack my brain to think of it. <laughs> we threw so many songs; they were called wax fillers, just to fill up the back of a, a record. Right. <laughs> a wax um, filler. How about? Well, okay, I'll do a more popular one. How about "Run for Your Life"? Think, yeah, okay, that's good advice. "Run for Your Life" on Rubber that's a Soul. Pink Floyd song. <laughs> Very Run, no, Run Life, Your Life is a little John girl. Lennon song at the end of... Yeah, it's one of my songs. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's, that's a, great advice. That's great advice. Run for your life. Yeah. You know, danger's coming. You Do know. you yeah. not see the difference? Are you willfully misunderstanding this? Protecting the girl in it. Right. Yeah. It was an earthquake song. He's saying run. Right, exactly. Yeah. I think you're you. threatening. I think you're you're threatening to kill the girl. And I mean, this is okay. famous. This is like but one of the most warning. problematic Beatles songs. Whereas you are shaking they, it up, baby. You are shaking it I mean, up, if you had baby. Calling her baby. And calling her baby. Twist little girl. That's disrespectful. I'm not going to go there. Little, little girl. Little girl has eight. Gross. Yeah, that sounds kind of dated. I, I admit it. But the song overall is very happy and joyous and is telling you to dance. Run for your life. He's threatening to kill somebody for not loving him. Okay, I can go I back mean, to my well, white power her, skinhead he music. He gives they her a have. fair break by telling her what he's going to do. Yes, that's he's what saying. I'm saying. Run, get out of here. Then I'll go get you. <laughs> he's he's said, not yeah. saying twist around, <laughs> kiss your own belly button. Now yeah, do yeah. a shake. You well, know, hurting her that way. Yeah, yeah he's giving things her that are physically total? impossible to do. Okay. Was right. Was so the kiss your own belly button? Was that implying what I thought it was? Like in the fifties, they in the used 50s, to uh, yeah. cover up what they uh, really meant. Yeah, what, Haley, what, what, let's Haley get into that. What, that. what does "twist and shout" really mean? Like, let's get into the subtext of the lyrics. Besides what it says on the surface, physically, is it referring to anything? I else? think I think it means to like go nuts, to like express yourself, to like be to be passionate while you dance. You know, to like oh let let yourself God. really feel Listen the power of the music underneath a, a, a cloud At of napalm. No, that's no, there's no war imagery in Twist and Shout. It's, I don't know. It's there's some shouting a lot songs, on a wellscape. Like, yeah. I mean, if you, look, if you date back to when the song was released, 1963, America already had advisors in Vietnam. Right. And oh, right. It, in, you could argue Gulf that a lot of the... I don't think... It, there's a lot of twisting and shouting getting out of those trenches, getting through the jungles now. And, I don't think the Beatles were thinking about the war. I mean, you can tell me, well, John. Well, let's ask. Every day we thought about the war. It was a constant threat. <laughs> that was on our minds day. constantly. The threat of war. This reminds me. But uh, in regards to that song? Uh, let me think. Uh, yes. Now, oh. David, I know you've written a few articles on Charlie Manson, and he just passed away. And uh, he obviously and the Beatles have, have a history and I, I did some deep research. Now, Helter Skelter's the, the song everyone knows was scrawled across the walls in blood. But I also understand Twist and Shout was uh, written under a chair. That's right. In lipstick. Yep. He, the, his, one of his, uh, you know, lackeys. I've never heard that. I've never heard that before. Again, you weren't around. This was the type of thing we were th thinking about and talking about every single day. Yeah. Do you know anything about this, uh, David? The twist and, yes, Twist and Shot was um, was uh, written underneath Roman Polanski's reading chair, <laughs> and um, Roman was not at the house at the time right. and could not defend his beautiful pregnant wife mm -hmm. as the Manson family descended upon Benedict Canyon. Mm -hmm. Blood was on their minds. This is beautiful. And Even though it's horrible, shout, the way you're saying it is beautiful. Twisting and shouting was happening a lot. 
I, uh, are you I, I, I so never like they used to inspire their torture. Abigail Forger. Abigail Folger, coffee heiress, was twisting and shouting on the front lawn as she was being stabbed 40 times and said, uh, we're done here. I'm dead already. Uh, as she said, so, <laughs> so coolly to her murderer, Tex Watson. Coolly? <laughs> she said, uh, enough already. We're done here. As he was stabbing her, she knew she had, she was dead. Um, so, I mean, there a lot of the reckless lyrics from the Beatles were being used by the Madison family as That's kind terrible. of like a, their, their chant to attack. Now, that doesn't sound like a fun wedding to me. How did you feel about that, John? When that, Awful. When that happened and you read, they're using that song, Twist and Shot, that you didn't even like to inspire how Just, they tortured. The, I felt used. I felt put upon, like, I, you know, I wanted that uh, song scratched from the record altogether. I didn't want to do it. Mm -hmm. And I told George but, at the end of it, George, about... But, nice John, and, what, what? you sang it in so many concerts. Like, almost every single TV appearance, you sang Twist and Shout. Every single show. Look, when but they... you when didn't they, like it, why did you keep singing it? When they, you know, uh, drive a truck full of money up to your house, tell me how you're going to behave. Right, and Sammy Davis was abused by Frank Sinatra over and over again. But do you think he wanted that racist abuse, Will? That's a, that's I, I don't know. Take, I mean, it, having John Lennon here, having John Lennon in the room really takes the sales out of my arguing position, I have to admit. Um, I mean, if John Lennon is telling me he, he doesn't hated the own song, the, the, it's a subjective what, what? opinion. I mean, it's, it's an opinion of the world, but go ahead. But when I, but when I listen to it, it's just a, it's a good song. Like, just, I mean, I know that everything is subjective, but. Shouldn't yeah. the worst Beatles song at least be something that Ringo sang? Like no, Ringo couldn't even yourself. sing that well. Three chords. Yourself. Go it's ahead, Brett. Let's hear from a, someone who actually knows I mean, how to play guitar. The historic arguments are really interesting and the health arguments, but it's three chords. Mm -hmm. It's by Simple far chords. the easiest, sort of dumbest DGA. Song. It's like it's like beginner chords. Yeah, anybody, I can teach that on guitar in one day. Somebody who's never played guitar before. I, I can play it with. Just by the by the simplicity. How about, how about uh, I should have known better? Isn't that just two chords? No. There's well, a whole bridge. <laughs> I'm going to borrow that. What okay. are we talking about? No. <laughs> uh, here you go. How here about, you go. Um, isn't I've Got a Feeling really simple? Here you go. No, because that has the, uh, uh, the like, that chord's hard. And then it goes, Ooh, oh, i got a feeling. There's more emotion to the motion is the I difficult part. you couldn't part. sing, man. That was pretty cool. That was really good, David Frick. <laughs> Dude, thanks. Man. You know, I'm a big fan of the music. <laughs> Other than this twist and shout nonsense. Right. Yeah, tw tw twist so and shout. It's, How about... It, which is... La, 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 bumba. La, bamba, you see, we, that was a... La, 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 We stole it twice. La, 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 Twisting and shouting. If I could say with respect, <laughs> David, with respect to man. you, John, and, John. And, and and the Beatles, and respect right back to like, you. The, uh, I mean, I'm a huge Beatles fan. I, I really, I, I don't really think there's any truly bad songs. Oh, thank you very but much. There are a handful that are sort of that are sort of just fillers where they just sounded like they didn't spend too much time on them, especially in the early days. I'm curious to and hear gonna which pick a song. song. John, I don't think you had any fillers. Uh, thank you. I, I and just also, twist, twist and shout. He just it's, said they did not one take. It's I not mean, even this is song. one of the fillers. I don't feel bad saying that because it's not your song. Thank you. But you had zero fillers. Thank you very much. Will thinks you have a bunch last, of Last week, Pitchfork well, named number nine the best Beatles song ever. I don't know if you read nine. that. <laughs> number Revol <laughs> Revolution number nine. Revolution number nine was number voted nine? by critics, music critics all song. across the board. They were saying that of all their songs, Revolution number nine is the best song, and a lot of us agree with that. Mm -hmm. That's my opinion. No, that's I like, insane. That is just, you can put that out at any wedding, and it'll be great. It is. It's way more. We than played three it chorus. at my wedding. Revolution? No, I don't think so. I want to talk about the wedding aspect. Let's go back to this, and it's something I brought up on your show. I don't like. These songs 
that are purporting to make you happy, but what they're insidiously doing is telling you how to dance. Now, I don't mean a song like the Macarena, where they say, do the Macarena, because they don't tell you how to do the Macarena, unless I'm forgetting something. In the lyrics of the song, they don't tell you how to do the Macarena, I don't do believe they? so. No, they just say, do it. I that think you watch the video as more of an instructional Right, but video. the song is not telling you what to do. Twist and Shout's telling you what to do. Shout is telling you what to do. Do the twist. Some more modern examples. Uh, shake it like a Polaroid picture and hey ya. Uh, what else do we find? Uh, the dip. People. The dip. Uh, do the Dougie. Uh, Tootsie Roll. To the Tootsie left, to Roll. The left. These are all, this is the class of song that you are involved with here. I believe the curly shuffle might instruct yeah. people uh, what to do. Uh, I've been I'm told, not, do the bar I'm not man. Insulted. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm not insulted to be associated with this. I'm not insulted to be associated with this category of stuff. I think people like him. It is people literally kind of like these it is mild instructions. They've been brainwashed. They exactly, exactly, John. You they're love mind. That. They are literally mindless. They're right. saying we're taking away the freedom to let you dance and enjoy life right. the way it is mentioned in the Bible. Yeah, if exactly. You want to go there? A, which was you one of be, my one of my songs I wanted to do and said twist and shout. <laughs> They, in the Bible, from the beginning of time when dancing was talked about, there are not supposed to be rules. From the time that Native Americans danced around a fire to conjure water from the sky, there wasn't a precise way to go around the fire. You're supposed to be, to, to, to have the spirit right. envelop you right. and just go with it. Right. Organically find your dance moves. And then rock and roll came around and said, you... Right there with free will. I'm going to take that, tell you what to do, make you contort your body right. in ways that you don't want to. You're not prepared for it. And the guy on stage is doing this. Right. The guy instructing people, he's not doing what he's telling Pointing. the people to do. No. And he's not going to be there. Oh, it's all fine tonight when you're on alcohol. But days later when right. you're at your blue-collar job at right. the factory and you've been twisting and shouting on the weekend. Exactly. And your fucking disc in your back goes off. Because mm -hmm. some asshole, some Isley brother, or some Beatle, in all respect, was forced I to... Take it. I'll take the responsibility. Back to oppression. And these, uh, you know what I did at my wedding? I said, no chicken song. No cha-cha slide. No, no uh, twist and shout. No shout. I, nothing. Silence. I don't even know what Hava Nagila means. So I said... None of that, because in, in Hebrew, that might mean twist and shout or lift a Jew up on a chair. It might mean that. Lift a Jew up on a chair might be what Hava Nagila means. And I did not want that. Bester. What? Go ahead. When, when you told the DJ that was your request, did he look at you strange? Well, first off, I'm paying him. Was it wasn't confused? a request. It was a demand. He was my That's employee. That's how business is done, Will. I mean... <laughs> That's how business is done. You demand something and you give him money. <laughs> okay. Yeah. There's a negotiation also. Okay, yeah. I mean, it's not just one... Okay, that's fine. It's not one person... How about I want to hold your hand? Is, is I want to hold your hand I want one of these to. songs where you have... I want to. Not I demand you hold my hand. Thank you for showing, proving the difference. Right. I we, we want about, to hold you. We weren't imagine. all forced to live in a yellow so We wanted to live down there. As the song sort of goes. How about Go ahead, imagine? Be, you're attacking imagine? Oh. Imagination, one of the most imagine special things human no beings people. can have. Can but you you're, imagine you're singing, I want to hold your hand imagine to someone on the no subway? <laughs> Go ahead, David. I mean, imagine the fear that you're going to invoke it's into creepy. anyone if you say, hey, I want to hold let's, your hand. Let's do that scenario right now. Okay, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, per, a young woman on, a, on the subway in New York City. Okay, um, I'll be a homeless man. <laughs> Go ahead. I want to hold your hand. Please leave me alone. I want to hold your hand. Please, can you leave me alone? Please! <laughs> Say to me! Hey, you better, you better to run be for your man. life if you can, little girl. Oh, see? see? Oh, you better oh, run for your life. That's a good song. Nice. John that's a better song. Scenario. Does that scare you? Yeah, but that whole time she had agency and choice, and right, exactly. You were never right. It would have been worse to say "twist and shout." She would have screamed, or and or if the song was called 
Give me your hand. Right. Right. Exactly. Give me Give your, me your hand. hand. That's much worse. I demand to grab your hand. I or I'm grabbing your hand. Yeah. I'm holding your hand or down. Else. Well, unfortunately, a lot of these songs don't age well in this political climate of Me Too hashtags and whatnot and sexual harassment and Weinstein's. Yeah. Hashtag me no likey. Yeah. Hashtag me no likey Weinstein, me no likey. Twist and shout. Uh, and so are you about, going um, to are you gonna tell me that now all that. these songs are are less inappropriate now? I, I would argue they're ten times more inappropriate yeah. now. I, I would hate to be at the weddings that all I'm uh, saying, Will's going to. All I'm saying is that if you're telling me what the worst Beatles song is, Twist and Shout, Twist and Shout is how many how many Beatles songs are there total? Like they did like three hundred and three songs or something like that? Oh, or three hundred and seven. Okay, three hundred seven. I thought so it was two were covers. He, seventy were covers. Two hundred thirty-seven right, original. I mean, you know, seventy were covers. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And well, this thing, this includes the BBC anthology where they did like all the covers oh, on BBC and stuff okay, like that. So that's okay, like okay, okay. That's like a ton count, of them. I don't count that. But um, go ahead. Well, then they probably only did like twenty covers. But I would say <laughs> the the lowest. I would accept Twist and Shout being ranked is dead center, like 150. That's the lowest I would accept Twist and Shout being ranked. Well, what is your... So there's you, over 150 every, worst songs? Wow, that's the crazy uh, Yes, at most, at most. Well, what's your... Let's just like, go to extremes put, here. Every what, every what, other, what's your worst two? My, the worst Beatles song, I think, is Mr. Moonlight. I think that's the worst track they ever did. How do you and feel I'm sorry, about that, John, John, you sang that one. I'm scrambling. I'm, again, reaching to, to the back pages of my mind. To sort Hold of... on, here we go. Oh. Yeah, you don't remember it because it's a... Because it didn't torture him. Yeah, something like that. That's a great song. Go, sing it. That's nice. Uh, Mr. You sing your ass off in that one without <laughs> any ice... I mean, there was right. no uh, tragedy on the no. ice before that. No, because I wanted to sing it. I wanted it, to be there. It's a really impressive. Um, and then, and if I'm going to oh, pick the worst oh, song that awesome. John Lennon and Paul McCartney. That's a beautiful song. Oh, oh, nice. oh, that's awesome. That's Chord change. Listen to that. Awesome. All get in the back. Oh, this is fun. Oh, that's sweet. And no I one's could, being told to do anything. I could see this at a wedding. Already more than three chords. Oh, great harmonies. Everyone's having fun. It's not... Well, are you taking muscle relaxants right now? Because <laughs> I don't know where you're coming from, brother. <laughs> I, okay, I got to say... Worst, he's on lewds uh, and he's right. asking you that. I'll, I'll, I'll throw that away. The worst Beatles song that was written by John Lennon and Paul McCartney. Uh -oh. Yeah. And I think that's a harder one to pick. Go ahead. I think John and Paul didn't write bad songs, but okay. if I had to pick the worst Lennon-McCartney song that they recorded, it would be Thank You, Girl. How's that go? I want to thank you, girl. That one? Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. It's like one of the... Thank it's very, it's like a side you, too. girl. I want to thank... That's, yeah. That's, thank you that's for nice. being I want to thank you so for nice. putting up with me, making you twist and shout, girl. That's, I don't think that's David, what... David, that's thank you for being a friend. I, I don't... <laughs> Isn't it the right same tune? Thank no. you for being a girl. I hate to, I hate dum, to dum, correct dum, you. Dum, dum. <laughs> no, it, it doesn't go like that. Okay, and if I had to pick the worst song that's like that people know, or if I say the go song ahead. and they actually know it, go ahead. I, I think I would say Maxwell Silver Hammer is the worst. Oh, oh my God! Oh my God! One Come of the most on. original, that's fun great. songs. It's a story song. You're following the character through Maxwell. a couple different situations. <laughs> I love that song. Fun. That's an I, epitome that's fun, right? of, we like, know. going to the next level, if I can say so, yeah, John. It's, it's got a sound effect in there of a sort of a hammer-hitting uh, metal at one point. That's, that's fun. Great. That's like a Radiohead thing right there. Oh, that's fun. Right there. I have to disagree with you. And it's yeah. informing a new generation of the dangers of serial killers. Yeah. Right. It's like pre-Columbine. Right. Sure. He Warning. was warning us against Columbine. And Instead of encouraging the next Columbine with songs like Twist, Twist and, and Shout. Shout. Hmm. Interesting. How what about, was Yoko's favorite how about, song? Uh, baby Hold on, Will. What was Yoko's favorite song? Oddly enough, okay. she liked uh, she liked. Uh, Why don't we do it in the road? <laughs> she, you know, a good it was, one. It was a, a Courtney yeah, one. It was a sexual thing. All right. <laughs> That's fine. She liked it. That's fine. I still played guitar on it. <laughs> <laughs> She's busting your. You were jealous of that song. I, I, I don't. 
Speaking of I, Yoko, I don't think you were involved in that track at all, John. You don't think so, do you? <laughs> That doesn't mean he can't I, like I it. That's so I weird of you. So. Is your favorite improv something you were in? Well. No, no, that's not my, no. Okay. My favorite now, improv is, is other, other themes, yeah. And here's another point I want to make. Twist and Shout is the short form improv of, uh, of, of the Beatles. Because, and follow me on this. Short form improv, the structure is already there. You don't come up with anything. The game is already there for you. It tells you what to do. It's going to be about emotion. It's going to be about changing movie genres, about singing your way through a scene. The joke is already there. It tells you what to do. Exactly what I was saying about Twist and Shout. You can't, you can't organically come up with your own dance. You're, you're falling into a short-form structure. So why do you like long-form and improv but short-form in Beatles? Will. <laughs> I don't see it as short form. Yeah, the I don't, game's I don't already there. The, 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 the singer's form. telling you how to dance. The short form tells you how to improvise. And the, just to shout, it's the beat and the melody that make it work. Maybe, maybe the lyrics are short form, but the, the beat and the melody, are, are they are long form. They are, like, passionate and, and organic and, and lovely. Like, I... Uh, the feel of that song is long form, even if even if the words are, as you now, say, you're, short form. You say this is subjective, but even uh, the famous uh, scene in Ferris Bueller's Day Off, where uh, Matthew Broderick... Yeah. Where he interrupts the parade. He interrupts the parade, right. he jumps up on a float, right. and he lip syncs says, Look to at Twist me. and Shout. Now... Pauline Kael, it was her last interview, mm -hmm. or not interview, review, okay. uh, uh, and she said she loved the movie, hated that scene. Mm -hmm. Roger <clears throat> Ebert said the same thing. It was He thought it was the worst part of the movie. It comes out of nowhere. Uh, 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 Siskel agreed with him. Mm -hmm. It was one of the only times they ever agreed so passionately. Uh, Matthew Broderick on the DVD commentary said he wished that they had edited that seen out of the movie or replaced it with another song. He wanted to be my remember. generation. He Guys, wanted to sing my generation. That should have been more appropriate. That song, that song, that is a great scene in that movie. Everybody loves that scene. Everybody hates that, that scene. That was a hugely popular movie. It was a hugely popular ending whoa, 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 scene. Whoa, 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 Everybody whoa, whoa, in the movie whoa, whoa. loves That's it. like the Stripes. It's like Stripes was great, but we don't like the RV scene, right? <laughs> right, half that movie works. Yeah, but that's, those right. are, that's the only part yeah, of Ferris that doesn't are, work. Birth of a Nation was popular. Exactly. He keeps saying popular. Yeah, like that, that doesn't that mean explains it's good. Everything. And besides, it okay, wasn't. Fair, people but I mean, like, loved the I, movie I, so much but hated that scene. That's when people would – they put it in – and I, I read about that they put it in there so people would take bathroom breaks during that scene. It's like halfway through the movie. Go buy some popcorn during the twist and shout. They should have had him come back and play on that uh, sneezing keyboard that he had in his bedroom at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> now, that would be fun. That would have been fun, John Lennon. You introduced that at the beginning. You want to see it again, and they just never brought right. it back. Right. I think there's an expectation built right. up, and all of a sudden we're seeing this old fucking 50s torture song. <laughs> right. Going Placed. through a very the, racially the, the divided Chicago, by the way. Right. Go ahead, right. David. <laughs> Go the ahead, parade David. is going through a <laughs> tragically diverse, uh, not diverse, divided Chicago. Right, starting on the north side, heading towards the south side. It started with Mayor Harold Washington coming to power in a Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. And he kind of was shifting politics over to a more diversified right. uh, platform. Right. And certainly all the people that were in that scene were being affected by the fact that Whites hated blacks. Right. Blacks hated whites. Mm -hmm. Puerto Ricans hated blacks. Mm -hmm. Whites and blacks hated Puerto Ricans. Mm -hmm. Puerto Ricans and whites hated black. Well, you mm -hmm. get the idea. Mm -hmm. And so Healer. to shoot that scene in Chicago is very irresponsible. I think even you need to understand that, Will, mm -hmm. that you're asking people to twist and shout. You got one section of the park is black men dancing together. You mm -hmm. have Polish people on the float because mm -hmm. black people aren't allowed on the float. Mm -hmm. It's all very indicative of of the racial tensions that were going on in Chicago. And John Hughes put that scene in there, and he used the ugly song Twist and Shout mm -hmm. 
to kind of throw caution into the wind and the juxtaposition of really what was going on. Ooh. Right. I Far think this, from a this party. This is indicative of white privilege in the bubble that Will lives in, that he sees that movie and he sees that as a joyous scene. And he sees this, yeah, he sees how black people are put in one section and Polish people are put in another. And he's like, oh, I like That's that. That's great. That's like my Oreo cookies that mommy gives me. Yeah, and a lot of people don't I, have I mommies to give them cookies. I did not register anymore. that as. I didn't register that as part of the scene. I, di I didn't notice that it was a segregated Yeah, I think, crowd. I think consciously did, but your subconscious uh, was smiling wide on that one. Well, it's, it's a luxury to not notice that. All right, exactly. It's privilege. That's yeah, exactly what privilege know, is, I guess. You see these beautiful I just Aryan, think, you know, dancers on this song, float which showing their beautiful white like legs. Doing it. And then you have the black people, you know, walking downstairs like they're in a thriller video. <laughs> It's very rare. Ferris racist. Bueller's Day Off is not an Aryan movie. It's not an Aryan movie. You watch, you look just, at that slow. There's a lot of movies name, in that time Name one black person in Ferris Bueller's Day, Day Off. I can't. I can't. <laughs> Case closed. Uh, Del Close was in Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Wasn't Del Close in Ferris Bueller's Day Off? He was a professor. And I, uh, I, he was didn't, my director. I, I heard this you first love that? He did not know. You don't know as an actor every other fucking scene in the movie. This is this pisses me off a little bit because Dell isn't here to defend himself. Yeah, this dude he, passed he, away. Yeah, man. I guess he didn't get bored. Come back, okay? And he's not here to defend himself, okay? And he didn't get to see the full script. A lot of times, actors are only handed the scene that they're in. John, the sides, right? Exactly. You get the sides when you show up. Sure. And then you don't get the whole movie. Right. So he didn't know this kind of scene was in the movie. He didn't have the context. And maybe to not piss off the actors, they withheld what song was being played right. until it was edited. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. don't blame the other actors in the movie. Yeah, I mean, was, if you want, Will, if you want to do a podcast shitting on Dell Close, I mean, you can get, a, I guess, a handful of people to show up. <laughs> but for someone who's written countless improv books... You should have a little more respect for the man who kind of helped guide us into the 20th century. I, I don't have, I'm not trying to disrespect him. I'm just saying the movie is a positive, happy movie for many reasons. For many white people. For many white people, great song. Sure. The privilege to skip school all day and go hang out with your friends. For black people, cities. they're like, oh, I guess I should quit my job and just go dance on a, right. on a daily, yeah. daily plaza. Black there. people the lower, okay. can't take the day off. <laughs> And they're not wearing jackets. It's a pretty either. white movie. The black people true. don't have jackets. It's just people on the float that have jackets and nice warm clothing. Black people, again, dance down the stairs like a thriller video. It was, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty white suburban movie. That's true. Um, that, that, that's maybe just a product of a time. I don't think it was like also, aggressively trying to leave out. Let's bring in the Latino. Mm -hmm. uh the Latinos are viewed as car thieves. Right. The only Latino in the movie takes takes the Ferrari um, for a joyride. Okay. Uh, steals a car. Puerto Rican is a thief, a car thief. Right. And th these are just hackneyed, you know, old racist ideas that somehow, you know, Twist and Shout plays perfectly into. Right. It's so in a way, part, just the part of that I love like when, the they, when, they, when those guys steal the car in Ferris Bueller's, when they steal the car and they're going on a joyride, I love that they play the music from Star Wars, <laughs> like they're taking a huge jump, they catch some air in the car and they play Star Wars music. I like that too. Yeah, yeah, and we like can that all that agree, stuff. that's pretty fun. We all oh, can cool. agree that's great. that Star Wars music was fun. <laughs> yeah, Star Wars is a great movie. Now and that's actually, what should actually, be played at weddings. I, I think... What, Star Wars? Yeah. Star Wars music. That's something that everyone, that, that inspires people instead people, of hurting people them. People would be, people would be confused, music is confused, bored, and I think eventually upset. If, if you, you play the Star Wars? Part of the Star Wars score. That's an exciting, you know, it's an exciting yeah. score. I'm, and date, you know, when you see. I think it would confuse people. I you'd think, explain it to them. Yeah, listen to how he's talking. It'll confuse them. He's talking about people like they're sheep, and this is probably a sociopathic tendency, if you ask me. I've done, this no, is I'm, just saying, I'm just saying that this is not a great song. Like, it is at... I started dancing. Like, you I didn't think, see us, but I started dancing when I heard that. 
Play that again. I, I want to yeah. really love that Star Wars? groove. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's... Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't think of the Star Wars yeah. theme as that groove. It's not that groove. See, I'm naturally it's kind of twisting of... here without being told to is the weird thing. Well, there's a lot of great shimmying and shaking going on here that you're not seeing. Actually, it's really a, wonderful. Interestingly enough, there's a black guy in this scene. John. In the oh, car. See? Yeah, see? Yes, Will. Okay, let me see. Black guy and a Puerto Rican guy are both thieves. <laughs> <laughs> All right. John. Yes, Will. I'm your, with you. What's your favorite Beatles song? My favorite Beatles what's your song? your favorite Beatles? Yellow Submarine. Really? Yep. I like that, and Octopus is gone. I like the idea of being underwater. It's fun. <laughs> See? It's fun. Those were fun. It's yeah. a mystery spot. Being underwater. Being under the I ocean. Yeah. You like I Magical the Mystery prime... Tour, right? I love it. I, what I want to do is have that whole Magical Mystery Tour bus go underwater. Oh, See? But when I was on his podcast, he said he hated that song, Magical Mystery you Tour. You hate the well. song. It's coming to take you away. I don't really love Magical Mystery Tour as a song. Oh, oh that's all right. I love it, but uh, that's Jeez, okay that you don't. I love it. It's interesting that I, you I, always I, love I, Paul it, songs. I love Paul yeah. songs. <laughs> <laughs> I try to be modest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like almost all the ones you've mentioned have been All right, Paul guys, it's, it's time to, to end this. It? Go ahead. I got a ticket to okay. ride. No, I was, it doesn't matter. I was going to. Yeah, Ticket to Ride, I love that. That's like one of my favorite John songs. One of my favorite songs of all of, of anybody. I, I got to I mean, say, now that I, the, you're kind of sullying my opinion of these songs, because now that I know your opinion of Twist and Shout, it makes me feel guilty to like Ticket to Ride now. So I do think we need to end this. Did, I'm like, uh, uh, man, I'm going to have to take a Beatles break myself after yeah, talking to Will. I'm depressed all of a sudden. I'm going to do a Rolling Stones week, I think. <laughs> Did we change your mind at all? I mean, can you bend no. even a little bit? Or you can Let's twist. everybody I, give their final statements. I honestly Never. cannot. Okay, Will, I'm going to let you go. I'll let okay. you go last. Okay, go ahead, David. Okay. Your final statement on Twist and I'm going to make an argument that Twist and Shout, which was released in 1963 caused the assassination of President John F. Kennedy five months <laughs> after it was released. Listen to this sociopath and that, tackle. And that kind of jump-started the 60s into a cabal of change right. that it would never recover from. Right. The country would never recover from. Mm -hmm. So in a way, Twist and Shout kind of did irreversible damage to this country and the world. That's that was beautiful. an innocence lost. I think you're right. <laughs> innocence I think lost. you're right after the twisting. Uh, just lyrically, you think about it. I'm a musician. Uh, everyone, just to remind the audience, I'm a musician uh, by trade. Lyrically, that's an awful song. There's a mm -hmm. lot of call and response. Mm -hmm. Very repetitive. Mm -hmm. you know, shake fascist. Up baby. The call and response is it's, fascist, Yeah, I'll say it? this. You say exactly what I said. Mm -hmm. You Let's mel my, meld our minds together and you do what I say. Yeah, not, not let's build on it like in long form. It's but dangerous. let's repeat. Yeah, like not like form. let's kiss our belly buttons and try to twist, you know? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I'd like to say my, my final is that... We're entering an age now where we fear artificial intelligence taking over. Uh, oh computers, computers and robots doing our work for us, doing everything for us. And I point to, in the analog era of Twist and Shout, that was the beginning of the end. That's the beginning of the hell that we're entering right now telling people what to do artificial intelligence yeah so, uh literally that's all music is is numbers just, just, just to build on dr frick ai because <laughs> i want to build on what he was saying artificial intelligence ai that's all music like this is i'm sorry john and i'm glad you could be here in the studio for this because i feel your pain and Will couldn't see you tearing up and stuff when you were taking us through all that. I, I, I I'm going to take a selfie us. and send it over to my crying eyes and send it over to Will. Mm -hmm. So glad you're undead. Yeah, I'm, I'm well, glad thank you're you. undead too. Thanks, I appreciate that. Will? You I'm, really, I'm excited you're going to have my phone number. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, me too. <laughs> okay, uh, Brett. Yeah, I mean, I just 
I think the song sucks. I, I, Will, I respect you. I, I, I agree with you on. Oh my god! I, I agree with you on the 150 songs. This is songs. the most painful thing for me to hear. I agree with you on the hundreds of songs you think are better than this song, but I don't agree with you on the other 150. I mean, this is by far the worst song. Three yeah. chords. My hands get my God. fall asleep playing it. Yeah, even I can play it, and if I can play it, it's like the only Beatles song I can play. No solo. Yeah, I mean, it's just crap. the solo is 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 John torturing his throat. Right. Yeah. Okay, Will. Your final statement. I'm gonna say that Twist and Shout is a Twist and Shout is a extraordinarily happy transcendent song. It is at worst an okay song. At worst, an okay song. That's my final statement. I don't think the Beatles thing. have okay songs. I don't think so. <laughs> We've got great yeah. songs and one bad song. <laughs> The Beatles podcast will be back. We're going to bring it back and do the solo album. That's all. Mm, I thought I killed it. It's good to hear. Okay, let's <laughs> no, say goodbye to Will. Goodbye, Will. See goodbye, Will. Will. Goodbye, Will. Bye, bye, everybody. Bye. And John Lennon, you have a podcast on Earwolf yourself. That's right. It's on Earwolf. Howl. It's uh, Questions for Lennon. It's an advice podcast. People okay. email in questions and... Uh, me and a guest answered. But I haven't done music lately because, as some of you know, my guitar is missing. It's not missing. I know exactly where it is. It's in my best friend Ringo's closet underneath. Oh, let's see. What other hobbies does he have stacked on top of it that he doesn't do anymore? Racquetball, squash, and tennis. He tried all three. It took him a, he did a week of each and said, oh, you know, I don't think I'm ready to do a squash. I, I think I better go play racquetball. I said, it's all the same thing. Just please try it. You know, ping pong might be more my speed. All right, fine, do it. While you're doing these racket sports, please, can I have my guitar back? No, I'm going to play. I want to learn, you know, I want to learn spells like Teen Spirit. I'm almost there. All right, Ringo. You're not, you're, you're, you're quickly losing a friend. Now, that is, of course, is not true. I would never, you know, want to not be friends with Ringo. But it's, I'll say this, it's, Testing my patience. All right. Okay, let's get to my guest. Look, this guy, he's a great guy. I know him. I met him in my, where did we meet? In our cooking class, didn't Yeah, we? we were making pho. That's right. We were making yeah. pho. I couldn't, I, I read, the, you know, the, the curriculum of the day, what we were doing. And I said, I'm not making pho. What is this? Pho. pho. Oh, I, could, I couldn't do it. Yeah, it's, a, it's just, um... What is it? It's just uh, it's a bunch of noodles and some bean sprouts. Yeah, and some sort of uh, very flavorful water. Yeah, yeah, and some uh, and some just straight up pork. It was straight up. Well, all right. Well, hold on. I can't just talk to you without saying who you are. Ah, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my partner in cooking class, DJ Khalid. DJ Khalid, we the best music. Khalid, you know, I ne I couldn't pronounce fa, and I couldn't pronounce your yeah. name. Hey, it's the major keys. You know what I'm saying? Taking that cooking class, making sure that I'm making and making dope recipes every single day, making new rhymes and new sounds every single minute. I love it. It all. It, it just the 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 rhythm springs forth from your mouth so it's great hey listen every once in a while you need dumplings every once in a while you need pho and every once in a while you need a little bit of that low main low main joe main make it all happen down the streets <laughs> well I, I, let me tell you the story about how we met in class i'm sitting there our stations are next to each other we're making it was it was it was it far that day it was the first day and uh, the first day was uh was uh, it was another asian dish I think it was pad thai, or uh, or uh, pad thai. That's right. And I, you know, I, you mentioned was sitting next to each other cooking, you know, chopping up sprouts and everything. And you mentioned you're allergic to peanuts. Yeah. So, so I said, well, if you're not going to use your peanuts, can I? I particularly like them, so can I use yours for mine? And you came out with what seemed like. A freestyle rap that well, wouldn't end. Ch check it out. The thing about it is, if you're going to take my nuts, that means that we're part of the same family. You know what I'm saying? Because your nuts and my nuts, if we're combining nuts, this is not kind of like, you know, I'm not talking about any way of uh, sexualities. No. I'm talking about the fact that, you know, when you share nuts, especially if somebody's allergic to nuts, then you're giving them a chance. You're, you're, you're like telling Superman that it's all right to take his kryptonite. You feel me? That I, I do feel you, and I do want to say I appreciate the non-sexuality of what you just said and that you pointed it out because we had a problem in class 
one of our, another uh, lady, Linda, you know, a couple stations over from us. Linda she, loves, she has herself a little champagne when she's taking these classes. She's on, she's currently on two strikes. You get three strikes and you're out because she was a little, she, we were doing a carrot, you know, cake and you had to cut up the carrots. Before she did that, she put them, uh, you know, as her penis, you know. Yeah, she and we had, said, Linda, that's not really appropriate. Nobody has a carrot penis. Oh, no. <laughs> that's exactly right. That's what, I, that's what I tried to tell tell her but she you know she kept she kept you know uh tossing it around yeah. you know i mean it's good it was a banana bread that's that's true but it just it felt inappropriate and usually you know some type of uh, humor like that sometimes it's funny hey it can be funny hey if it makes you smile it makes you wild sure sure if it does if it makes you wild it makes you smile that's right DJ Khaled, we the best music. Oh, you were, so DJ Khaled, you were telling me about uh, what you do. You make, because I don't, we didn't know. I didn't know you. Yeah, I make beats. I make music. I make everybody say, you know my boy Drake. You know my big, big Sean. Right. You know uh, Nicki Minaj. You know all them. Now, they all start part of the major keys. They, they get into the label. They make good music with me because I make everything pop. I'm like, I'm like, um, Oro Redenbacher. Popcorn. Yeah. Let me, I, here's what I wanted to show you, because you, you make, you know, uh, pop music. I've got my, oh. I've, got, I've got the sound effects board. Yeah. So if you want to, any time to borrow this. Okay. 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 <laughs> That's correct. Yes. Yeah. Oh. That that one's called Witch. Oh, that was it. Wipeout? No, no, that was Witch. <laughs> Wait, and, try it again, though. Wipeout, DJ Khaled doing a remix of Wipeout. Here's an idea. This is a free idea for you, DJ. You could, around Halloween time, do a, a, a Halloween version of Wipeout and use a witch. You know, maybe it's all about the witches surfing on their brooms down at, uh, you know, Big Sur or something like that. Coming 2017, the Halloween album by DJ Khaled and John Lennon. Yo, it's going to be called The Bewitching Hour, Making Bewitching Sandwiches. That would be great. You know, it could be songs about us uh, going uh, out to parties and clubs and drinking booze out of a pumpkin or something. Yeah, we'll even invite Linda. I, uh, Linda, I have a little bit of a problem. Got she's it. just so loud. She's always... Yeah, 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 yeah. And she wants to show everyone every step she's doing. We're all doing the same steps here, Linda. Yeah, she also loves wearing those moo-moos. That and is, she's skinny. She, she's the whole thing. She's got so much room in those things. <laughs> yeah. She'll sometimes take her hands inside of and do her cooking inside the moo moo and then pop her hands back. I think that. I what think, are you doing? I think it's a ratatouille situation. I think there's somebody else in the moo moo making all the food. I had the same thought. I and I, I voiced it to our teacher, uh, Mr. Kel. Hey, Kel, Coach Kel. I call him Coach because he's really making sure that we're doing it correctly. And then we eat oranges afterwards every time. Well, that's just a palate cleanser. Yeah. And, and I said, you know, I think she's, I think Linda's got someone, uh, someone or some, p several people underneath her moo, moo <laughs> making her food. And he said, don't worry about it. It's not, nobody's getting graded here. She, if she makes what? something better than you, it doesn't matter. Nobody's getting graded. Coach Cal. Hey, every day you get graded, but every day you walk out of the day saying that you gave yourself an A. You feel me? DJ Khaled, Major Keys, we the best music. Hey, I meant to ask you, DJ, what, we were talking about my favorite foods. What are yours? Uh, hot dogs, but only the Applegate organic ones. Uh, the reason why I like no nitrates, you know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. Um, I used to do whippets when I was a kid, so I'm trying to stay away from any kind of nitrates now, and I feel good about it. Good. Do you do you boil hot dogs? I do boil hot dogs. It's a weird thing, the boiling hot dogs. I boil them, but then I throw them on the grill. <laughs> it's like twice cooked. Good. Uh, bake them, why not? <laughs> woo, woo! Triple cooked. Hopefully Coach Cal will get to triple cooked hot dogs. Those just take so long. Yeah, that'd it's be like 45 minutes for something that's already cooked. Right. You can eat them. All you need to do is microwave it and eat it. Yeah. Here's my problem with boiling hot dogs is this. The, bo the hot dog water when you're done. I've never smelled a worse smelling <laughs> water in my life. Nah, that's in true. In my life. And I, I've had experiences almost, almost every time I've boiled hot dogs. Hey, uh, the only other smell that's even close to it is a jacuzzi after a lot of people have been in it. Oof. Have you ever been in a jacuzzi with a couple hot dogs? Hey, I don't remember my life without a jacuzzi.
<laughs> it does. Well, you you you've you've had a jacuzzi since you were two years old. Yeah, yeah, two and and cousin. That was the name of my first album, Two a Cousin. Hey, how about this for uh, the Halloween album, A Cousin for a Bruisin? <laughs> Love it. We'd have to figure out how to get, maybe that's a song about Wolfman, because, you know, he's got such a rage problem. Ah, yeah, Cousin for a Bruisin. DJ Khaled, Wolfman. Wolfman, if you're out there, if you exist, you know, write in. We want to see if you want to do any uh, type of uh, uh, songs on a new Halloween album. Write in, Wolfman. We want to try to get you in there. Now, wait a minute. What, what is, whoa, that was a mistake. Whoa. Loser. Well, that would be a good... If you ever had Beck, you know, Beck, the musician, yeah, yeah. into one of your songs, you use this. Loser. He'd say, yeah, you know, I haven't heard that since my Mellow Gold days. Is that even from his song? Uh, yes. I'll or lose. just the word is in it. <laughs> but that's not him. No, that's not him. Right. He would, you'd probably have to pay out the nose to get him to say oh, that right, word. right, right, right. Ooh. Oh, leave a message leave at a the me- beep. Leave a message, you <laughs> idiot. Oh. That's, uh, you, know, when, you know when the radio stations call, and you can borrow this anytime you want. Got to, it. When the radio stations call you and say, we need a clean version of your songs, come on over, I'll give you the thing. You can put all the bleeps in that you need. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I try not to edit myself. Really? Yeah, I try to go straight forward at every moment. You want to be, you want the, the audience to say, hey, I'm, I'm hearing this guy. Hey, if they need to bleep me. That's, that means they need to meet me. And next time they meet me, then they'll hear the real words. You know what I'm saying? Now, uh, let me ask you this. Do your concerts ever have cr- uh, crowd surfing? Um, yes. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. There's uh, usually a lot of people just going all over the place, uh, climbing on top of each other, fights break out, because everybody's having a popping good time. Right. So why not, you know, have your friends move around the crowd on top yeah. of it? Yeah, sometimes people are trying to get to the bathroom faster than others. And they say, hey, let's, this guy's got to go. Yeah. If we don't help him, there's going to be a huge mess down here. Take him, by the, take him to the top. Take him to the top and, t- and t- pass him back. Pack him back. Pass him back like a, like a, like a um, standardized test. That's right. Take one, pass the rest. Take one, pass him back. DJ Khaled, we the best. All right, Khaled, let's get into it. Let's let's answer a question. Let's see what these you hey. know people out there need our help. Yeah. Okay. Here's one. Hey, John. As someone who has worn a lot of cool suits in your time, do you prefer white suits or dark suits? Any occasions where you might choose one over the other? Regards, Dan. Ooh. A suit question. I've seen you in a suit. I'm always in a suit. If it's a sweatsuit or a real suit, it's always filled with patterns. What I try to do is find some curtains and then make a suit out of it. Right. You, you, I've seen you I've, uh, down in the lobby of where we take our classes. Yeah. At the, at the uh, YMCA. I change. Adjacent. Yeah. I wear, I wear my chef's um, uh, sweatsuit and suit, depending right. on what kind of food we're making. If we're making appetizers, I do a full-on suit. Right. If we're doing a main course, I usually put on a sweat, a track suit. Right, because on a main course, you're usually running around the yeah, kitchen a little yeah, bit. You've got to be able to move. There's a lot more to do. And if it's a dessert, I usually just use a bathing suit. But always in a suit. Right. I will, you've seen me, I pretty much only wear the white suit. So to answer your question, Dan, white suit for me pretty much all the time. Perfect. But there are occasions, different occasions, you need a different color suit. Like what? You know, white suit for me is any time. Black suit, I hate to say it, funeral. You hate to say it, funeral? I have to wear a black suit at the oh, funeral. Oh, I thought you were calling me funeral like that was my nickname. <laughs> that would be a good a yeah. D- a DJ funeral. Hey, DJ funeral making things die May- after you're done. Okay, good idea for the Halloween Ooh. album. Ooh. Maybe you change your name just for that one. Done. Okay, thank God. This is a great album. DJ funeral, and I'm keeping my name, John Lennon. Yeah, Bringing you, you know, uh, the surfing witches. Yeah. Sandwiches. Surfing witches, sandwiches. Yeah. Oh, DJ that's, Khaled. That's interesting. A.K.A. DJ Funeral, John Lennon. And the witch. And, and the witch. And, 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 you know, a bank of sound effects that can't be beat. Ooh, loser. Loser. We'll get Beck to we'll come get, in. Hey, we'll see if we can afford them. But there are other suits, you know, uh, other color suits. Uh, uh, you get a green suit. If you're going to a bar mitzvah, everyone knows that. That's yep. pretty standard. Uh, red suit on the 4th of July because you want to look like the fireworks. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, and the hot dogs. B- blue suit for anything ocean or sky related. Right. If you're ever going to, uh, uh, you know, when the a ship is brand new and they break the bottle on it. Uh-huh. Blue suit. Always. Or, or uh, any of those Air Force air shows. Right. Even if you're watching one on TV, you have to wear blue. Blue suit. Or you're going to find yourself on page six. Yeah. Yeah. You got to look like the sky if you're reaching for the sky. That's right. Now, of course, a birthday suit for the shower. You always want to be... In a birthday suit always, for the shower. Or always else, for the shower. Or else you're, you're cleaning your clothes. Yeah. I mean, you can be in a washing machine. Let me ask you, let me ask you your t- yeah. uh, advice on this. Better way to wash your clothes, putting them in the washing machine alone or putting as many clothes on yourself as you can and getting in the washing machine with it. Hey, if it's time to rumble... And move your body around. That's the only time you get to do it in that day. You got to get in that washing machine. I think you're right. Because this goes for suit cleaning. This goes for any type of clothing. Put your clothing on and go in. Because you can really take a little brush and really get some detailed work yeah, in there while the whole thing sort of be. And you don't washed. need to use the dryer. You just go, you just pop out of that washing machine and go for a run. Go for a run in the sun and your clothes. Shake it off. I mean, Taylor Swift said it best. I hate to quote the best. But Taylor Swift said it. Shake it off. Her, she gets a lot of... Uh, people don't understand that song very well. They think it's... I'm shaking off these all the pl- uh, haters. Yeah. And nah. the, the debaters. Nah. It's about washing your clothes with Let's them on you. Let's stay clean. Let's stay clean. Let's put it on. Whirlpool. Whirlpool should have done it. Once Halloween hits, I'll be I'll be screaming some, some new madness. You know what I'm saying? And madness in a good way. Monster madness. Monster mashness, monster um, uh, readiness, um, some ready whipness, some ready witness, something new and fresh with some witches. You feel me? DJ Khaled, we the best. I feel you. Yeah. We the scariest, hopefully at Halloween time. Dan, I hope that helps. Uh, uh, you it know, definitely will. Any occasion you have coming up, you're probably uh, going to, I don't know, uh, let's say a car wash soon to get your car cleaned. Hey, if you go to a car wash soon, you got to put a suit on. A brown suit. Brown suit. Because you want to pay you know, respect to the dirt that you're getting rid of. But then of. you also need to leave your, your white suit in the trunk so then after the car is clean, you put the white suit on. Right. You have to switch suits. Uh, same can be said for if you're ever out, you know, uh, uh, in the jungle. Yeah. You have to wear a, a slightly different green suit than you wore at the uh, bar mitzvah. Yeah, yeah. More forest green. That's right. That's right. And b- also have a blue one handy because there could be some water there. If there is water, there will be a ship. Hey, if you hit a creek, you got to put your blue suit on. How about this for a, 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 a rhyme? You give it to one of you, anyone you're producing. If you hit a creek, you gotta you gotta get on fleek. We'll use it. Who's on? Who's on? The, who's the creek fleek? Who's the creek freak these days? Who uh, probably uh, is the swamp man? Yeah. Oof. You know, I'm just kind of coming. I'm I'm doing. I'm freestyling. If, it, if this is a ho- if it is a Halloween album, I mean, we're gonna have to use the swamp man. So he's probably gonna be the 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 freak on the on the creek. Thanks for saying that, but I do want to say we're not promising anything about the Swamp Man right now. No. We just came up with this idea. So when the Halloween album comes out, I don't want to get a lot of people on the street, you know, shoving me as I'm walking by and say, what is that for? You didn't put a Swamp Man on the album. Well, we we were just coming up with the idea. It's a possibility that the rapper on that um, one track, uh, uh, Creek on Fleek, could be Salmon Man. Uh, He's the guy for it, man. I, I, I heard some of his, listen to me, man. What is this? Hey, man, you're living into it. <laughs> wow, I'm getting really uh, funky when we're talking about the new album, man. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I, I'll, okay, so no guarantees about Swamp Man, but a guarantee I'm going to keep it as funky as I just did. Done. Oh, Halloween funk. <laughs> All right, I hope that helped, Dan. It definitely helped, Dan. <laughs> I have not checked in with this old friend since uh, uh, er- everything in the world went crazy, and we want to know exactly what's been going down with him. Uh, he is, uh, look, his resume is impeccable, uh, practically spotless, other than a few lost years. Uh, started off as a teenager in the uh, r- rock and roll combination, the, uh, uh, the, the Beatles, spelled with an A, instead of two E's. That was a, uh, That was a misspelling, by the way. That really, that was a mistake. Sorry, finish your thought, but 
That I, that still kills me. Oh, so, so anytime you see a Beatles record, and we'll introduce you in a second, right? You get that that pain in your stomach. Like, how did they mess this up? I get a migraine headache that is so bad I have to lie down for the rest of the day. <laughs> okay, so it's you awful. haven't you haven't seen a Beatles record today then, because you're. From what I can tell, just looking at you, you I seem saw to be one, uh, erect. I, I saw one last night. Don't you dare. I saw <laughs> one last night, and I right, at, uh, right before it struck midnight. So I said, God, I've got this terrible headache. I'm laying so down just, for the rest of You laid down the, for one minute? For a minute. And then you were fine? I was fine. It just has to be the rest <laughs> so, of the day. It just is the rest of the day until. Right. It's like the Cinderella of headaches. The rest of the calendar day. That's right. Okay, fantastic. And uh, Am I he, shouting? Should I shout? I, yeah, please. Sh- I mean, I know you didn't sing the song "Shout." Uh, as far as you you sang "Twist" and "Shout," I believe. I sang the twist part. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you don't like to shout. You only like to twist. I like to twist. You don't need to shout. How did that go? I mean, I know Chubby Checker. Of course, he introduced the twist, and I'm sure you were jealous. But uh, how did it go during the actual jealous. recording sessions? I was jealous of the last name. Well, he came. He had us. So we went over to his house for dinner. You were jealous of his last name. What'd you right. say? Ch- Chubby Checker. Checker. You you would prefer to have his last name. John Checker? Sure. Come on. That would be fantastic. Okay. John Checker of the Beatles, of the B-E-E-T-L. Oh, throw th- three E's. That's what I wanted to do. If uh, Before we continue, if you haven't guessed, uh, our old friend John Lennon is here. Hello, John. Oh, God. We've got, hello. We've got on, off on a tangent. We certainly did. But you, okay, so you, how did the recording sessions go for Twist and Shout? Well, we went over to Chubby Checker's house. And okay. we made him dinner at his home. You ever heard of that? That is so strange. It so was what, very is, strange. what was the process like? He had, he did he invite you over first of all, or did you well, arrive we, unannounced? We had you know a management get in contact with him and say the boys they want to come over and cook. Did your he food. need it to be a little more specific after that? Like who are the boys? Yeah, because he thought the Beach Boys were coming by. <laughs> okay, was and he disappointed when suddenly those four lovable lads from Liverpool with their topped mots? Or oh wait, God, he he mops, was tops. furious. He was furious. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, tops will mop. <laughs> he was furious he, t- that we showed up. because he how, said, did, you know, how did that make you feel, by the way, that everyone was likening your haircuts to mops? The, uh, one of the dirtiest of the household cleaning accessories. Well, that's you could look at it that way. We always thought of it as a brand new mops, that, right out of oh, the okay. factory. So it's clean, clean. Uh, yeah. Clean I guess maybe it, it pertained to the shape of your hair more than the cleanliness of it. Right. Although we never showered. We, oh, really? we didn't have time. We were moving all over the you know the country, back to Germany, playing music, moving this way and that. <laughs> the Germany part uh, that was very early on in your career, <laughs> that was the impediment to showering. I showered right before we started our first gig, you know, at the whatever the hell that place was called. It's been so the long. The Cavern, I believe, was the Stuart Cavern Stuck Club. Cliff. Yeah. Right, right. We showered the day before that. And then the la- second time I showered was after we played on the roof. With the rest of the Beatles. <laughs> wow, so a good 10 <laughs> years. A good long time, we like to call it. Yeah, okay. So you go over to Chubby Checker's house. He's exactly. disappointed. He sees uh, the, the four Beatles instead of the, I don't even know how many Beach Boys there are, presumably 10 or 12 or 20. It, it, who knows? You know, who knows? Uh, and, and he gets a look of uh, disappointment on his face. Yeah, he opens the door and he's wearing a Hawaiian shirt and he's holding a surfboard and he said... Hey, let's catch some waves, you seven bitches. <laughs> yeah. Okay, he said, let's catch some waves, you seven bitches. Expecting okay. the Beach Boys. Okay. And we said, well, we have no idea what you're talking about, about or why you dress like that, but I'm sure you've got some food in there that we can cook for you because we want to talk about it. Oh, so you offered to yeah. cook the food, like, right off the second sentence. <laughs> second sentence. The first why are you complaining, to... then, well, if, why if you... Yeah, if you're the one, you know, like, you, you were saying, God, he made us cook. You offered to do it, like, presumably on his doorstep. Right, and then he agreed to it. <laughs> so you think he shouldn't have agreed. You think he said he should have said, I'll cook the food. Yes, this is Chubby no, Checker's No, no, don't be ridiculous. I don't know who you are, but I, I'm willing to have you in my house, and I'll cook the food. So not only was he disappointed that you weren't the Beach Boys, he didn't even know who you were. Right. Okay, so uh, the uh, the Beach Boys were more famous at this point, I guess. Up to him, at least. I don't know. Sure. Was he disappointed, <laughs> uh, uh, so disappointed that he uh, ended up working with the Fat Boys many decades later? After we, the food we made him, we all could have been the Fat Boys. We made such <laughs> huge amounts of... <laughs> what of, did you make? What was made, on the menu? Something we called fudgy chicken. 
is fudgy ch- chicken? What is fudgy chicken? Well, I'll tell you, Scott. You take your deep fry chicken, a whole chicken, and a one whole e- chicken. Right, one chicken w- each. One one per person at the table. Right, one per p- one pp. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you if you want to be quick about it. Sure. Uh, so one chicken per person. You fry that up and you dip it in fudge, in melted fudge. So like a, a chocolate fountain type situation, or or like a pot of fudge that no, you pot, prepare. A big pot of it. Big pot. Okay, right. and then it it dries. Is it like uh, uh, when you dip ice cream in fudge? Does it uh, it make that crackle on top? Or? Uh, you could do it, it. It could dry, but we was in such a hurry that we ate it right. You know, still wet. And then there's uh, uh is, is there some sort of a, a stick in the bottom of the the chicken? And or do you again? We didn't have time for it. We just reached mm. in with our bare hands. All of us. Oh jeez. Yeah. We, into hot fudge. Into hot blazing hot fudge. And then did we you all si- burn your hands? Yes, terribly. Is that why the Beatles broke up? No, this was way early, way early. Oh, okay. How early are we talking? When we were uh, about seven (laughs) a.m. When we were. (laughs) Oh wait, so the Beatles didn't break up till what? Ten p.m. that day? (laughs) You're right. Right. (laughs) Okay. That's when we decided to break up. We started the conversation at seven. It ended with, "Well, hey, you were the one who told us to put our hands in all that hot fudge. I'm done with this." Got it, got it. Wow, what a day. So this you is 1969. It, see, right, right. Uh, 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 and uh, you, you all had uh, fudgy chicken over at Chubby Checker's house. And then, yeah, that's right. And then talk about the twist and shout part of it, because you had already uh, recorded this uh, eight years earlier. Yep. Uh, yeah, if, if my timeline serves me, that's, that's about what happened. <laughs> this was going to be a new Beatles record, right. uh, a cover of the twist. Right, and because you were so interested in singing the the twist part of Twist and Shout, right, which kind of went. Did someone else sing every other word, and you just said twist? Or I just yelled the twist part. If you yeah. yell, what, when you say the twist part, what do you mean by that? Just twist the word twist. Just the word twist. Okay, so Paul, I guess, would be singing there, going, "Come on, baby, right. baby, twist and shout." <laughs> right. No, you okay. got it. Did it make it onto the recording? Because I don't recall anyone uh, yelling. It did. It had to be remastered, and my levels brought way down and sort of uh, <laughs> to zero. To, to zero, and then uh, who was it? Oh yeah, I guess Paul went in and sang the twist part. Oh okay, so he had to redub. Right, he had to punch in, as they call it. He had to punch in. So I and I punched out. Oh my gosh! Well, speaking of punching out, uh, for those of you who haven't heard John on the program, John, you punched out of life uh, back in uh, uh, December of 1980. 80, that's and, right. And uh, then you Shot. decided, if you're wondering why uh, uh, he is on this program alive, uh, uh, he decided to come back to life in 1985. Was it 84? 84. I spent, you're right. I spent the four years on the ground reading books. And uh, that was enough for me. I Wait a minute, you, you can read books while you're dead? This is something <laughs> right. we haven't talked about. Because you, the, this the is, story, I, as I recall, you uh, were dead for four years, and then you decided to come back to life four years later. Okay, that's interesting. For some reason, I have it in my head that we talked once about me reading books. Maybe that didn't happen on this but did podcast. Well, sure, maybe we talked about it, maybe we didn't, but did you read books? I guess you know, is the question. Now that we're clearing the air, no, I never read books down there. <laughs> okay. But I thought maybe I were you just saying that to seem smart? To seem smart, to sound smart. Sure. So in 1984, uh, Wham's "Make It Big" record is big on the charts. Uh Um, It it, uh, uh, they foretold their own prophecy. Yep. And uh, you decide to come back to life. Come back out of the ground and come to life and uh, dust myself off and go home. And then uh, you started doing this podcast probably 25 years later. Something like that, yeah. Because I was keeping, you know, keeping mum pretty low I, profile, right? Keeping a low profile. Yeah, I'm, I again, I say hi to people on the street. You can stop me. I'll write you a song. I'll sing it for you. But just don't spread the. You'll word that write them a full song and I've got sing time. it. I've got the time. Sure, because you're sure. not dead anymore, and you won't be dead, right? Right. If, or if I am dead again, I'll come back alive. <laughs> sure, anyone can do it. Is the is the tip for anyone who dies? That's what I like. You're to just say. one of the few people who actually decided to. Right. Who else? Uh, we've talked about this, right? Who else has decided not to be uh, dead anymore? I think, uh, you know, I, uh, who else did? Roseanne Barr. <laughs> so she, did she die since she was fired from Roseanne and come back to life? Or, or, or was this a long time ago? This was during the, Rose, the first run of the Roseanne show. Really? Which right. season? Do you remember? Oh, God, I want to say four. <laughs> 
Do you remember which episode around? No, it wasn't. I think it was the off season, you know, during the summertime when they weren't shooting. Oh, sure. You're right. She went. She got in some para hang gliding accident or something. Oh, really? Oh, okay. was that with Tom? Did Tom die as well? Uh, no. He 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 was on the ground. I'm talking about Tom from MySpace, by the way. <laughs> Looking over his shoulder. I wonder if he has some some crazy wound on his chest that he won't show anyone. Well, he's probably, you know, in that position for this many years. He's probably got a terrible neck. Yeah, that's true. Um, speaking of terrible things, uh, uh, of course, we're all in the middle of a worldwide pandemic. And I oh, wanted to, to uh, check in with you, John, because uh, you're out there in New York, uh, yep. sort of uh, one of the epicenters of one of the uh, uh, yeah, yeah. big outbreaks there. And uh, uh, you're staying there at the, at the, is it the Waldorf or where, uh, where the do Dakota. you stay? The, the Dakota, Dakota is, right. Yes, you're my, back in the Dakota. Apartment. Uh, right now I'm in the RV, if you can believe it. Oh, you are. So you're I've not in the New RV. You're the not RV in New York. Parked in the front. I'm I'm in New York, but I'm oh. at the front of my building in my RV. Why not go into the Dakota? It's here's I was started. I started in the Dakota. It was comfortable. It was nice. And I ordered Scott online. I got so many damn jigsaw puzzles. I can't <laughs> fit in my apartment anymore. Oh, I wait. So the puzzles are in your apartment, and the so you stay in, in the RV. Yeah. I'm, so you I go got... up. You go up to the apartment. Work on the puzzles. Then come down to sleep in the RV. Why That's not right. reverse that? Keep the puzzles in the RV. Uh, well, I don't know how much how big you think RVs are, but they're not as big as apartment buildings. Oh, okay, I see. And plus, I guess if you're going to be asleep, why not sleep in the shittier place and then be awake in the nice place? Right. That's one way of putting it. I, I think the RV is not that shitty. <laughs> it's pretty nice. <laughs> okay, I apologize. I'm sure That's it's a right. wonderful RV. Although even you were saying it's smaller than your apartment. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Small does not mean bad. You ever seen a, a diamond ring? That's pretty That's small. what she said. Uh, okay, well, do you... Okay. <laughs> I'm talking about the diamond ring part, not the <laughs> earlier part of your sentence. I wasn't listening. I see. Oh, good. That's fine. I wasn't so, saying much of anything. Before. Oh, okay. So you are in the RV during the night, the nighttime, which is the right time. R- right. And uh, you're doing puzzles during the day. What else are you up to during the quark? Well, I'm sort of, it's funny you mentioned me being in bed, uh, you know, at nighttime. That's, I'm doing sort of a, a, a bed in. Remember I did that bed in a long time ago? Oh, yeah, sure. You were uh, naked in a bed and that was supposed to, to do something. I can't remember. Supposed to hear the world and just get some more eyes on me to sell some records. But, sure. but now I'm doing it at night. I'm doing a bed in every night until this damn government gets us safe. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So you're just going to sleep every night? Is that what you're saying? I'm sleeping. I'm betting in. And if they don't, you know, if we don't get a vaccine soon, I'm staying in bed. What, all day or just the yeah, till, approximately eight hours, seven, eight hours? Seven, eight hours. Like, you know, these days I'm getting more like 12 because there's nothing to do other than puzzles. Oh, really? Yeah. So are you napping a lot or are you taking 12 in a row? 12 in a row. And then I, you know, go up to the apartment and puzzle until I get, kind of puzzle my way out of the room. Oh, wait. So these puzzles are all up in your apartment and impeding the flow of traffic throughout the apartment so you have to solve them in order to open up what doors or yeah well no no i've got to, i build you know i make the puzzles and i make them wait you you make the puzzles you don't just buy them no i put them together that's you know oh okay to make well, a puzzle is... god if i could be a puzzle maker i would be that i had one on the job. show recently and uh he was very very true? interesting <laughs> i did yes <laughs> so you buy the puzzles and then you put them right. together. Put them together, and I do them, you know, on the ground because they're pretty big puzzles. And oh, okay. They, as I put them together, I run out of space, and it runs me right out of the apartment. So I got to go do my best. Because you don't want to step on the puzzles. Have you left some sort of a uh, uh, a maze like uh, area for you to traverse on the ground? Uh, no. The next day, I'll just come in and shovel them up. Oh, okay. So once you're done with a puzzle, yep, shovel them up and right out the window. <laughs> what do they land on? It's a, you know, what? I don't care. How high all up are you in the Dakota? I, well, I was I was once on the top floor, but I. How many floors is is the top? Uh, I want to say thirty. Third. Okay, so that's a lot. I I, I, I remember I read when I was a kid uh, that if you dropped a penny off the Empire State Building, mm. it would achieve such velocity that it would go right through a person if it were. Uh, Whoa. Uh, uh, and I don't know whether that's true, but I've always just then had a, a fear of high, of walking under high buildings that some weirdo is just going to be like, hey, it'd be so funny to drop a penny off this building well, and then it'll just like go right through my skull. I'm now wondering if I've been killing. Well, it's uh, if I'm killing people with these jigsaw puzzle pieces. 
Well, I mean, jigsaws are light, I guess. They're Good. one of the lightest, flattest things that uh, oh, we have here on right, planet right. Earth. <laughs> I guess a sheet of paper would be slightly uh, lighter and maybe even slightly flatter. These, uh, what I've gotten, they're all paper thin. Uh, <laughs> oh, really? These puzzles are that thin. Pa- a that slice thin. of paper thin. But they're all made of copper. It's paper thin oh, pieces okay. of copper. So it, it all evens out. Yeah, okay. So, um, anything else going on during the core? Uh, I'm trying to get my book written, finally. What book is this? I don't know that we've Did ever Did I not tell about you about this? Have I, I don't think so, you no. about this? It's no. been a while. I'm doing my, uh, my Larry Potter book. Le- Larry Potter? Larry Potter, and I know what you're going to say. Well, those Harry Potter. Yeah, well, my book, it says clearly on the front, inspired by the books Harry Potter. <laughs> well, I don't think you can do th- That's, see... I was. I thought you were going to go the other way of like anyone can have the last name of Potter. I mean, you're not going to sue everyone in the phone book, but instead, no. you think your legal culpability ends because you say it's inspired by Harry Potter. It ends and begins. I think. I think once this book hits the shelves, I'm going to have a lot of uh, legal trouble. Oh, but I look forward. <laughs> well, to then why book. put it out? Why not change the because guy's name? Because this is the story I want to tell. I, it's a, it's about little Larry Potter who goes to a magician school. Okay, but why not change the name and and change some of the details and maybe change magic into, uh, I don't know, accounting? That doesn't seem as fun. I mean, those Harry Potter books are so fun because there's magic all over the place. I guess, but accounting is kind of fun. I mean, have you Mm. ever tried it out? I have not. (laughs) I have not. I will not. (laughs) I don't what do you what do you go to TurboTax or something? I have Ringo come over. He he helped. When, when you're dead and now suddenly you're alive, do you have to pay taxes? Because you know, I, I believe it was Benjamin Franklin once said that there are what two certainties in life: death and taxes. And, right. and you so far have eschewed one of them. I would imagine that you could maybe uh, do without the other. Uh, well, you know what's funny about that? When I did do my taxes, I leveled with the guy when I came back in eighty. Four. So it was right. Uh, yeah, no. I, so I said to my my tax uh, person, I said, uh, you know, I've been dead. I've been dead, and I haven't been paying taxes. He said, you know what? Let's not just let's not worry about it. Okay, you did make money during 1984. Yes, and I, and you you did have to pay taxes then. Uh, yeah, but I didn't pay him. Oh, okay. So you haven't paid taxes in now t- 36 years or right, so? Right, because I, I just got the, uh, I, the, good, the good feeling of not paying taxes. So I said, hey, I'm not going to do that anymore. Keep well, the money. They, say, they say that it's, it's actually not illegal not to pay your taxes. Now, I know this is a conspiracy theory. <laughs> really? They, they say that, that no one can be prosecuted for not paying taxes because there's nothing in the Constitution about it or something okay. like that. And so they, a lot of people are of the opinion that, uh, that no one can legally make you pay taxes if you don't want to. What do you think Perfect. about that? Perfect. I think that's great. And the, what you just showed me there, Scott, that you've, you know a lot about the law. Is this true? Uh, I mean, I know my fair share. There are the seven deadly sins, and those usually, I would say about three of them pertain to the law. Okay. Great, because uh, I'm going to need you. I don't when think this you could be uh, prosecuted for gluttony. I'm going to be calling upon you when we when we do this when this book comes out. Oh, okay, for what? Uh, for uh, uh, well, the a inevitable lawyer? legal the, the, the oh, lawsuits okay. I'm going to be facing by J.K. Rowling. Well, you could go to Legal Zoom where legal meets Zoom, which should be their catchphrase instead of where life meets legal, as far as I'm concerned. Um, and maybe they could help you out. Uh, but uh, uh, w- what's the plot of Larry Potter? And by the way, is that the title, just Larry Potter? The, the, no, that's a very good guess. The, the title of the book is the plot. <laughs> that's of the Larry only Potter. thing that I have to go on is the character's name and the fact that he goes to a wizard school. It's called, yeah, it's called The Plot of Larry Potter. <laughs> The plot of Larry Plotter. Right, the title is <laughs> so, Plotter. Wait, so he he plots his own book? Right. That's what's so magical about it. Mm. And he, he go he's in his, he's writing his book as it's happening and he's plotting away. And a lot of people say, Well, you should go by Plotter, and he says, But my name is Potter. And they said, So he's just, just writing trouble. in a diary. He's just writing in a diary, but Snape okay. is there, you know, Snape, <laughs> Snape is there. So right. Snape from the Harry Potter universe, yeah, he's he a lot in. like Detective Munch. He, like, <laughs> comes over to the Plotterverse, or, right. or right. Larryverse, he, I don't know. He, com- he comes in, and he's always out of breath because he's saying, you know, Larry, I just had to run away from my own stories going on. <laughs> to pop sure. in here and hang out with this you. This is pre his death in the final book, spoiler alert. 
I guess yeah, I should right. say that beforehand. He comes uh, back to life too. They he, do. Oh, he decides to come back to life. So Snape yeah, why and you. Not? It's easy in a book. Sure. Oh, how? But it's hard in life. I thought. Uh, that yeah, because you, you got to okay. crawl out of the ground. That's the part that they don't talk about. How did you get out of that coffin? I mean, there's like six feet of dirt on you. I told him. I said, "Bury me in a cof- coffin, but keep the lid off of it." Oh, wait. So all that dirt was on you the minute you decided to come back to life. That's right. <laughs> and, and, and then in a ha- white suit, no doubt. Ha- well, I'm not worried about the cleanliness of the suit. I, I'm more. I was sure, sure, but I'm wondering how you got that several metric tons. I would imagine <laughs> of dirt that uh, was residing upon you. Just you just work out a little bit at a time. You just you move this grain over here, and this grain okay. goes here, and put a. I also would it. worry about you being suffocated. But I guess every time you're suffocated, you just decide to come back to life, <laughs> yeah. right? That you sort of beat the system that way. So how many times did you co- decide to come back to life just getting out of the grave? Uh, let's see, ten. <laughs> it only took you ten. Only, only ten, because I could hold my breath for a long time. Oh, how long can you hold your breath? Uh, the last I it, it checked this, because I check this every year. Uh, oh, sure, yeah. Well, well, uh, is checked... that on de- January 1st or December tw- uh, 31st? J- January 1st. I give my, sort of the, myself the New Year's okay. Eve to party out. And then... So what are you at in 2020? Uh, 20, uh, six, uh, six minutes. Six minutes? That's, six I mean, minutes that's pretty that's And pretty it's up healthy. from last year. was was 450. 450, really? But I stopped vaping. Oh, that's it. Okay. <laughs> Why That's it. You, why were you vaping so much? <laughs> to look cool, you know. I wanted to be yeah. cool. Did it ever explode on you? You, ever, you hear about those vapes that explode? No, it exploded in my back pocket once at a dinner party. Re- oh, <laughs> who, who's, whose dinner party were you at? Hopefully not Chubby Checkers. No, it was uh, the guy who, um, who directed um, the movie with all the blue people. The blue. Uh, uh, yeah, Na- I mean, Navi. you're going to have to. I mean, the Blue Man Group probably put out a. The uh, Navi. Oh, bo- the Navi uh, oh, okay. Avatar is what I'm thinking of. Jam- James Cameron. Yes, I had dinner with him. And my uh, my ep- my pen blew up in my pocket. He said, oh, you know, you can do that outside. I said, you know, because he thought I fought it in my pen. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, it was in your back pocket or? It was my back pocket. Okay. And so we heard just it. like a. Yeah, and it shot me across the room. <laughs> And so he said, you can do this outside. <laughs> I said, what do you think? You jump around and... Uh, so I shot me across the room and I landed into the uh, arms of a Navi. <laughs> <laughs> he has Navi there? Yeah, he has a Navi statue. Does he? Uh, did he obtain any of that unobtainium? I asked him that and he told me straight face, why do you think I called it unobtainium? <laughs> and what did you say? I said, uh, you know, I didn't get through the first movie. Can we just eat now, please? <laughs> <laughs> and give me a goddamn new pair of pants. Were you upset when you came back to life in 84 that you weren't asked to be part of uh, Band-Aids, Do They Know It's Christmas, nor We Are the World's uh, USA? No, I guess I, I transpose that. USA for Africa's We Are the World. Uh, I wasn't mad because they let me play uh, a backup bass on it. Backup bass? Backup I don't bass. know that I've ever heard of backup bass. If 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 somebody, uh, you know, if someone's bass, cord comes unplugged, you're there to I'm take there. over. I just flip on in, my switch. So and in the boom. succession, it was who I don't know who played bass on it. Presumably Randy Jackson. I think uh, so. You're second in line in the succession of bass players. Right, right. It's an understudy situation. Okay, wonderful. And they never uh, needed me, but I was there, and I was happy to be there. And I got to meet Michael Jackson, and that was fun. <laughs> well, wonderful, John. I'm I'm glad you're okay. Uh, it seems like you're keeping yourself uh, busy through a combination of sleep and puzzles <laughs> and, and book writing. And book writing, yeah, that's right. The Larry Potter. Let's how far, not forget that. Uh, how Larry... far in uh, are you in the in the book? Uh, uh, more, more. How far is he into the book? You see, and how oh, because he's plotting the book. Yeah, he, okay. he's sort of doing the book. Uh, how I far is he? A page ten. Mm. And and Snape's come in already three times, so I think that might be a rewrite. <laughs> He's just what entered the dorm room, or sort of like Kramer, or what? What does he do? Well, they're not even at the dorm rooms yet. They're on the, you know, the train that Harry Potter uses. Sure, they use the same train. They're on that train. Wait, is this just summer school at Hogwarts? What is this? <laughs> that would be a good idea. No, this is a this is a different. This actually is not a bad idea when you think this about is... it. I mean, just kidding. Rowling is like searching for stuff to talk about i mean she's just like now talking about wizards you know shitting all over the ground it's right. like, like try summer school before you get to this wizard shitting good. on the ground no i i should actually if if we do go to court over this i'm gonna say hey why don't we team up that'll be the first thing i say to us i mean th- that kind of a, a star power john lennon and 
just kidding Rowling team up to Come write on. a book together. I mean, Come on. First, first, same first initial, that's for sure. I mean, that's a, that's like you uh, uh, 2 and Spider-Man coming together. I mean, that can't <laughs> lose. That's right. All right. Well, uh, John, it's great to have you here. You can stick around during the show. I'm, I'm so happy to, to I be, will, yep. uh, I uh, be seeing your friendly face. You stayed uh, uh, 40 years old, right? You you don't age. Is that right? I try, you know, well, well, with some of the, the plastic surgeons I know, yeah, they can keep me young forever. <laughs> okay. Um, well, uh, we have a wonderful guest we're getting to now. He is a, uh, uh, do you like stand-up comedy, John? I love it. Sinbad, everybody. <laughs> well, I'm not sure where he falls in the echelon. Uh, he may be directly under Sinbad, I'm not sure, but uh, I'm going to guess we're welcoming him back to the show, because I cannot imagine he has never been on. Uh, please welcome to the show MYQ on the MIC. That's right, Mike Kaplan is here. Hello, Mike. Hello. Thank you so much for welcoming me back and forth to the show. <laughs> I. That's right. You're just I, pacing right now. <laughs> I, I like that you can't remember if I've been on zero times or non-zero times. I know that I've been on once, but it may also be twice. We have to get to the fourth person on the team of uh, people who are on this episode. Uh, she has been on the show a non-zero number of times, uh, as I recall. She is an acrobat. Uh, please welcome back to the show, Dagmar the Small. Hello. Hello. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, what a privilege and an honor. Thank you. And I is, do it, is, that, that is that like a compliment to you, me mentioning how small you are? Of course. Why would I be ashamed? I am very small. It is in my name, Dagmar the Small. And I have hollow bones, so I'm very good at floating and doing my tricks and my flips and my tricks. Mm -hmm. And so I've, I have a suspicion that I will live a very long time. Now, I don't know the year I was born. You don't. My birth certificate was lost to a goat. But I... I suspect lost, wait, I, lost like by a, a goat or, a or oh it was lost to a goat in a wager thank you so much whoever oh. said that it was a bet between not my parents but my great uncle who stored all the paperwork of the family oh okay. he got into an unfortunate betting trend with a goat so he just pushed he pushed your gift certificate or a, it's not a gift certificate although I would imagine <laughs> maybe there were some gift certificates in there but all of the certificates he owned he just he just pushed them all in well, I was sort of one of the, uh, it was uh, my birth certificate, my cousin's car registration, and uh, my Aunt Trudy and Uncle Carl's marriage certificate. Oh, no. So he only had three things to keep, to keep track of. What, what was oh, the well, bet? At that point, at that point, the bet was who could eat more cans. And <laughs> oh, no. Why would he bet on that? Did he? I, I gotta know. ask. I gotta ask because I'm just one of these guys who got to know everything. You did got he, to ask. Did he even eat one can? Here's the thing. He did manage to get one tuna fish can down. Okay. But the goat, the goat could do cans of beans. Oh, uh, okay. So they were judging not only on number of cans but size of cans. Size of cans, Scott, because everyone knows the tuna is the disc of cans, and you can <laughs> sort of get that down a little quicker than a the, bean. The can. tuna is the paper thin puzzle of cans. That's right. You could oh, drop a tuna. <laughs> you could drop a tuna fish can off the Empire State Building, and it would be bad, but less bad than a bean can. Wow. Hey, um, now Dagmar, have you ever thought about jumping off that Empire State Building? That oh. would be quite an acrobatic feat. And I speaking goodness. of feet, you do have feet, by the way. I, I, I promised to ask about that earlier. Well, you can see Thank him right you. there in the Zoom frame. He's standing, <laughs> That's right. She's, she's, she's you're she's you're standing one of the on only the guests that I've ever had on Zoom where I can see your entire body. Well, and I like that, and it's a good reminder that I am, yes, very small. And I do have feet, although I find that I use more of my upper body in my acrobatics, much more of my pecs, my tries, my lats. Boy, you use a lot of lats when you're doing tricks, um, especially if I'm boinging off of something. It's nice to have those feet, but I think I could boing without feet if technical I Technical term? To. Is that a sort of an acrobatic technical term? Oh, yes. Uh, I think okay. if you're not part of the business, you would say jump. But if you are an acrobat, mm. you know It's like a carny going. term, you know, like rubes and stuff that's like right. that. I would that's say right. opposite fall. Oh, look at that's very nice. So that's Thank me. You. you know, I, that's what I would do. I mean, Thank you. I'll spring take that. is an opposite fall when you think about it. You yes. know, I mean, it's, is that what that's all about? I think so. <laughs> wow, Scott, you've been sitting on that, I feel. I feel like that is maybe one of your best works. Now, that's <laughs> crazy you. because that makes me want to remind myself, always call it fall, never autumn. Because autumn is the opposite of nothing, but fall is that's the right. opposite. Well, a lot of people don't know this, uh, but autumn is actually French for fall. 
in French as the opposite of a good time. Am I right? Well, that's, you know, <laughs> that's one of your patented Dagmar slams, of course. I knew we would you get know, to these. You know how Slovenia, Slovenians and the French, they do not get along. They no. do not get along uh, for, for uh, as long as I've known them to. Uh, so where have you been not only uh, in the past couple of years, but uh, uh, what's been going on with you in the last couple of months? Thank you, Scott. Well, you know, I feel like... By the way, you don't have to thank me every for everything I say. Well, I don't know, Scott. Thank you for saying that, but I feel like thank you for also letting me. I I like it because sometimes things get a little... uh, Dicey is the wrong word, but people... It gets pretty filthy on this show. It has before. Sure. It's we're we're uh, this is the blue show. We have uh, comedy bang bang, the regular shows, and this is of course the blue show. I don't know, Mike, if you knew you were on the blue show. Wait, this is the blue show. What <laughs> what has been said that's blue? John, you ever get your guitar back? I mean, I, I can only imagine during quarantine not having that guitar, the the no, one with I, the, no, the skeleton finger whammy bar. Yeah, the skeleton finger whammy ball. Uh, I'm told. Well, Ringo still has the guitar. He tells me it's all intact. The whammy bar, the finger's doing great. But I don't want to talk to him or see him. He's not been taking care of himself during quarantine. What's been going on with Ringo? Ringo, he spends most of his time going to, you know, these underground rave type things. He's hugging no. everybody and kissing everybody and doing all drugs and everything. Doing the peace signs and He's saying doing lots most of love. Of from what he tells me. Oh, no. Is he yeah, signing think... autographs? Because he said he wouldn't do that anymore. <laughs> He's doing that and, and then some. Oh, no. He's taking selfies with people. He told no. me. No. <laughs> oh, so you're mad at him. I'm still mad at it. Always mad at him. Love him to death. Hate him all the time. Yeah. Ringo Starr, best friend, worst enemy. Those I sound like them. good lyrics. Love him to death, hate him all the time. <laughs> Those are good lyrics. If only I had my goddamn guitar with me to... Oh. To... So, ladies and gentlemen, I've got a guest today. He's, he's, a, he's a janitor. His name is Ronnie. And he used to work in my building. He used to work at the Dakota. That's right. Good to see you, John. You look good. Thank buddy. you very much. You look, really look good. good. Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah I you appreciate look great. That. And it was oh, what happens then? You know, bumping into you on the road. That was that was crazy. I couldn't believe it. I haven't seen you in so long. I was there getting a dog. Uh, I was just grabbing a quick dog, and I turn around, and you're there. That was that hot dog you had was fantastic, wasn't it? Good. It was. I, I, how do you, I can never get them to give it to me without the bun. Yeah, no, I I get it with bun, and I get and I just I turn it while I'm putting the ketchup on it, and it's just like a little kind of like a a churro, but it's meaty. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> that's what a lot of people will call uh, hot dogs churro, meat <laughs> yeah. churros. Yeah, they, it, I'm just tired of the. Uh, sometimes I'll put a hot dog in a cone. I just like I'm tired of it always being in the bun. Right. Know? I'll sometimes I'll just say, give me a hot dog and a napkin. <laughs> And and hold the hot dog because you know I just need a napkin. You love to eat I just like, a napkin. I well, I have a little fun with the guys. I want to see who does it. Who will just give it to me? Well, um, where, where, what have you been up to? Geez, I well, haven't seen you in probably ten years. Yeah, has it been? it's been like ten years. I mean, I've been working all over the city. I don't work at the Dakota anymore. That's right. Um, but you know, we I, miss you. Oh, I I I miss the Dakota. What a beautiful the bones in that building. <laughs> Un. Unbelievable! That little courtyard in the middle. Unbelievable! Yeah, unbelievable is the way to put it. It's really, it's a beautiful, beautiful building. I mean, a lot of, uh, it's always breaking down, though, isn't it? There's heaters, and it's a mess in there. I kept t- telling, uh, you know, um, what the hell, Mister uh, uh, Ronzo. Mr. Ronzo, yeah. He's still there. He's still there, yeah. And he's still, you know, wearing his pants seemingly up to his nipples. And, seemingly, yeah. And, uh, is everything fine with the apartment, John? Yeah. No, okay, not exactly. The heat is broken, and uh, there's yeah. a chip in some of the tiling. And Okay, well, we'll get on that. I don't see him for three weeks. And, yeah. Did you do anything about the heater? No, you know, it's a, it's a big job. Mr. Well, that's not my problem. I just recently found out Mr. Ronzo does not work there. He doesn't. He doesn't work there. He just goes around taking complaints from from people and then never passes them along to the people. He's like that's a, the way to do it. Yeah, he's just a he. He's a busybody. <laughs> he's paid to walk around. Well, that's a tough job. Yeah, it's tough. If all day you're listening to complaints, that's got to do something to you. Yeah, I mean, he's you know he he's not doing well. You know more about Mr. <laughs> Ronzo than that. You do, do. What are you? Oh, you guys are on that bowling team together. Yeah, yeah, we bowl all the time. Well, it's just a two man team. There's supposed to be four of us, but we both. <laughs> That's how that works, right? Right. It's, it's usually a four-man four four team. team. So we get worn out, 
right. me and Mr. Rosso. Just all the time, we're worn out. We're, we're using the same ball. We got to wait for the ball to come back. We, we're, yeah, we're not the best bowlers. So, do you, if you're playing against a team of four, mm-hmm. then do you two just, for the, these, I guess the ghost members of your team, yes. do you just roll two gutter balls for them? Yeah, we immediately just roll two gutter balls for them. Um, because, you know, you, you have to, Follow the rules. Right, I know it. So, yeah, and you can't put any talent into it. Um, so we never win. We bowl really uh, bad scores. But you just, you love being there. That's so, that's why you do it. Yeah, we've tried out other members and it's just, it, me and, me and Mr. Raza, we are, we are only two. The rest of, we get in fight with the boys. I mean, you remember Ben and Bonnie. I do remember that, that weird couple who lived, they were in the basement. Yes. Right. Ben and Bonnie were, yeah, they paid basement very little. Bonnie, basement Bonnie, we called Bonnie, them. Yeah. And, and Basement Ben. <laughs> Both of them had the basement, uh, first name. Uh, and yeah, they were, they would just always fight on the bowling team, mm-hmm. yell at each other and stuff. So we had to kick them off, and we just bowl uh, just me, just me and Mr. Ronzo. Now, well, that's so. nothing new. Those two were always fighting. They were always fighting down there in the basement. I mean, I can't believe uh, the owner of the Dakota would let them live there. That is not a. That's not a good place to live. No, that's not a good. For a brief time, I thought they owned the G- Dakota. You did for just for a brief. For I was on an elevator once, and I mm-hmm. said, "Well, geez, wouldn't it be just so you know ironic and a short story poetic? Yeah, if they owned the place." And then the doors opened up, and I went to my apartment. I never thought of it. Since, you never thought of it since. No, I don't care. Yeah, really. no. But yeah, they definitely don't own the building, and they were. Get, I mean, they were only paying uh, forty four dollars a month there in the early eighties for that basement. Spot. Wow, right in uh, you know the Upper West Side. <laughs> That's a good deal. That's there. a good deal because uh, on the a, Lower East Side. Yeah, I mean, you're right there by the park. You're right there by um, that 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 place that was named after your band, um, Strawberry Circle. Well, the song was Strawberry Circle, but did we? No, that was no. not the name of the. What the hell was the name of that song? Strawberry, uh, you know, Fields Forever. Strawberry Field was the name of the song. I think Thank there's you. a little uh, knoll out there called Strawberry Field, right near the Dakota. People lay down. Yeah, that was a. That's a. You know, a mistake. Yeah, it's you know when I was shot and died, mm-hmm. people put that up right away, and then geez, I'm not going to go there and say you can clean this up because it's nice to see. Yeah, I'll put on a pair of glasses and a trench coat. You'll, you know, pair you'll of, disguise yourself. Disguise, exactly. Yes, it's a right. <laughs> that's the way to put it. And I'll walk over there and see who's you know liking me mm-hmm. and putting flowers down. And, of course. And every once in a while, I'll lean into you know if a little kid is putting flowers down, I'll lean in and say. You know, I bet he really appreciates it. And thank you. <laughs> and he'll say, Oh my God, you're John Lennon. I said, I'll say, Yes, but don't tell anyone. Yeah, I and was. Come, I'm off to FAO Schwartz. <laughs> I come to think of it, I was, I was there buying a dog in a slice of bread there the other day. You always is, get me with that because I think he's talking about a furry dog, you know, no, an animal. No, 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 no. Um, I, I cannot take care of an animal, but a dog, that is something I can wrap my hands around and I, I am an owner of that dog for sure. Until you uh, pass it. Until I pass it out. Um, but I, yeah, I was getting a dog there the other day and I did see a man in a clown costume. Oh, really? You don't see them often. <laughs> yeah, but it, it had your walk. And I thought for sh- I said, is that is that John? No, that's not John. And he was screaming, uh, step right up, step right up. I'll make a balloon. What do you want? A balloon of John Lennon? No, you know, that wasn't me. That wasn't you? That was not me. <laughs> but I know that clown you're talking about. John Lennon balloon clown? It seemed a lot like it was you trying to just like kind of uh, get yourself out there. But that's interesting. Well, you know, it's funny. He, you know, he's got that little... Uh, the the cardboard that says you know John Lennon Balloon Clown dot com. <laughs> yes. You ever yeah. go to that site? I ha- I didn't even go to the site because I was Era four oh four. It's been really? like that for months. You've been trying to get the you've been trying to book him? I just want to see what he's up to other than because I want to see what other balloons he makes. Yeah, I mean like how many I feel like you in a New York City shirt, he would do that. He would do you Jamming on the guitar, and what else does he do? You—that's the only one I've seen him do. 
you jamming on a guitar? Right, the one he's, he does that in the park. Yeah. But I'm always wondering, you know, is he doing the, the dog? Is he doing the worm? You know, yeah. that's an easy one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a fun one when you see a magician do, you know, I'm going to do balloon animals. I'll start with easy with a worm. Okay, <laughs> enough of that. And you're in the audience thinking, okay, he never knew how to make balloon animals in the first place, but they're all showmen, you know, magicians. Yeah, they're, they're, they have to be. Yeah, they, they're funny. I mean, I love the Jungle Cruise at Disney World is hilarious. They are so funny on that. Wait a minute. That, that, you, you've had a magician on there? Oh, no, I was saying just showman, touristy. Oh, oh I see what you you're know, saying. You know, like, uh, don't look at those alligators too hard. You might fall in. I mean, they usually do more puns. Something like that. They do have a script they go off of. Yes, they do, but it's funny. And when people are, are not paying attention, I hush them. I say, hey, this guy's working up here. He's killing. And I make sure everybody, people on the boat don't love it, but I make sure everybody's paying attention to the to the driver and letting him do his material. Right, because, you know, he, he worked on it. He worked on it. There was a time at a Beatles concert mm -hmm. I was playing uh, guitar for one of the songs that yeah, we were doing. Yeah, of course. And I saw someone in the front uh, whispering to the, you know, it was a guy talking to a girl, like his mm -hmm. girlfriend. And he and I, I said, stop the show. <laughs> I st we stopped everything. I took my guitar, put it in its case. I took, you know, Paul's bass, yeah. put that in his case. George's guitar, case. case. Drumsticks for Ringo, case. case. <laughs> then I said, all right, put the lights up, spotlight on these two. What's so, you know, you got to be talking. Maybe yeah. you can do that after the concert. And he says, hey, John, I, I just want to tell you. I said, come up here. I can't hear you. I gave him a microphone. What are you talking about? He said, I just want to tell my girlfriend here that, I'm having a great time with it. I think you're singing great. <laughs> I said, my God, I feel like an idiot. Spotlight off. You go to your seat. Out of the case. Reverse. <laughs> reverse everything I just said. Yeah. And then, but stop the reverse when it comes to the music, because you don't want to listen to music backwards. No, no. You want to keep playing the music in forward. So we said, forward as we go, boys. And is it true, uh, speaking of music backwards, I heard, you know, how sometimes you play this trippy song backwards and you can hear the devil talking. Is that true with the Beatles stuff? Well, Did you guys think about that? You know, the Beatles, we tried to put a few messages in. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we tried to... Um, Sometimes we would say, you know, if you want to play like us, practice every day and, and, and learn the songs. Yeah. And, you know, don't try to scream sing right away because you're going to hurt your throat. Oh, so it was just musical tips. A lot of tips Nothing's and a lot of health tips, you know, for throats. Oh, yeah, because one time I was uh, uh, playing Here Comes the Sun on my record player. Okay. And it now, was... Now, hold on. I have to ask. <laughs> and this is just me being probably stupid. <laughs> You, you, the what, what, you're playing it on your record player. Yeah. Meaning you're standing on top of a record player playing it on a guitar. No, 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 no. No, simp classic mistake. Right. No, I'm pl I've am i put a record onto my record Simplest player. Simplest solution. Yeah. I should have, yep. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm playing it on my record player, and the Here Comes the Sun comes on, and it's around the time where people are scratching records, you know, right. in the late 80s, hip-hop's coming in, and I'm really into that. So I'm trying to scratch, and I scratch it backwards, and it says... Stay away from butter. It's bad for your cholesterol. That's right. Ain't that was a point. health kick. <laughs> that was your health kick. That was a health kick song. Mm -hmm. For a long time, it was called health kick song. <laughs> and, the you know, the producer, whoever was putting out the, whoever was typing up the song titles on the back of the album, mm -hmm. said, what health kick song? You know, you, I listened to it. And at first I got mad because I so, said, you don't listen to the music until <laughs> you purchase it. I said, no, we listened to it. And... Here comes the sun. You say it a lot. <laughs> Why don't you? I said, all right, you're such a hot shot. You do it. So the guy who checks just simply enters the the info on the back of the records at a very late stage in the record. He has a lot of say. On that song. <laughs> Usually it's just, you know, me or Paul or George or Ringo mm -hmm. pacing back and forth, kind of coming up with whatever we want for the song. <laughs> then usually it would work out. You have to remember what you sang, you know, in the in the studio yeah 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 okay yeah 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 well that i'm glad he caught that because that's that's the title for that song for you sure know, here comes the song if there ever was a fifth beetle he would be it he would be it did he look like you guys no he was uh, he was uh, as short as could be <laughs> my god he, i lost him under the couch once really right i was walking into some a uh, room with him once uh 
And he went right underneath the couch. He because he wasn't looking where he was going. He had him under the couch. That is very small. That's a very small man. Teeny tiny. You should have seen him type. He'd hop from one key to the other. <laughs> this, this is this is even like smaller than like a small rodent. I mean, this That's is right. like a little lego man he was he was the impetus for a lego man <laughs> really no that's a lie you everything until then was true <laughs> that last when legos had already started we knew that way before that yeah when did legos start jeez i, mean, I want to say then 1600s i mean it depends on yeah i mean i would say there were cavemen were doing legos that's true they didn't have the they didn't brand them but you know, no, they, because there was no money then to sell anything. Yeah, you didn't. You didn't have to brand things because you couldn't sell them. Yeah, but it's, then the the almighty dollar came and it was put a la, put a logo on put it. Put a logo, yeah. But the cavemen, yeah, they had a lot of cool like unnamed, unbrand named stuff that we are very familiar That's with. That's true. Mm-hmm. They used to, you know, first people to have sneakers. It's true. No swoosh on those sneakers nope. though. Very plain. They're actually, very stylish caveman shoes. <laughs> I like them a lot. I, I like a, less branding for me. Um, you know, I used to have a friend who would buy Oakley sunglasses, mm-hmm. and, and she would shave off the Oakley branding on the side. Yeah. And I said, why do you do that? She said, because then I put them down somewhere. No one's going to steal them because they don't see their Oakleys. That's very smart. I said, that takes – so you just love the, the craftsmanship. You don't yes. care about getting the brand out. Yeah. I, always, I always respected her for she that. She sounds like a keeper. She, well, she, she was a keeper. Somebody you kept else. Her? No, somebody else buried her. Oh, somebody you kept her. Good. Somebody, Good. Yeah, somebody else. When kept you her. find a keeper, you got to make sure somebody keeps it. Yeah, I say you're a keeper. <laughs> she said, "Well, well, do you want to you go on a first date? Not for me. I don't like no, it. For my friend, I'm not going to date you just because you do a cool thing with your sunglasses." <laughs> yeah, we hook up our friends with a lot of stuff. So, R- Ronnie, where are you working these days? Well, you know, uh, I am currently at the Empire State Building. Oh, um, my God. Yeah, it's, a, I mean. You've I'm gotten so, over your fear of heights, then. Yes, I did. You know me, I, w- I would not fix any of these third story no. or above anything at no. the Dakota. Um, that's why that penthouse was in terrible shape. You know, it's, it's they're just now getting around to renting it out. Yeah, I mean, like, I still avoid the windows. Because, you know, when I'm up there in the Empire State Building and I look out, I freak out right. for sure. Looney for sure. Tune vision. So, yeah. So I like to, uh, you know, I put my horse kind of horse glasses on. You know, those they uh, keep them going straight. Yeah. Blinders. Oh, yeah, blinders, yes. Yeah, like the ones in Central Park. You've seen That's those. right. Yeah. Uh, I put those on when I get up there so I can stay focused on the pipe or whatever. But I'm actually, I'm doing pretty good. I've moved up. Um, I am the not too I, far up. <laughs> no, 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 not too far. That's good. Uh, I I moved up. Um, to I am now the CEO of a paper company inside, inside the uh, uh Empire State. You're building. kidding me. Yeah, I mean you got to start at the bottom, Come and on. I, and I didn't realize you could move from janitor into a company. Because I was thinking right. you start as an intern at a company and you move in. But if you start at literally the bottom, right. janitorial work in a building, and you work hard enough, people will notice how good you take out the trash, how quick you fix that light. And I am now the CEO That's of a fantastic. paper company. That's yeah. fantastic. You know, I was in the uh, emergency room just a couple months ago. For, uh-huh. I cut my finger uh-huh. on a, not important, but a screen in my window. <laughs> And I, you know, the, the doctor is stitching me. I was fine. I wasn't crying or anything. It was very easily taken care of. You, okay, yeah, because you used to cry a lot. When I never liked seeing dings. my own blood. Yeah, no. I never liked that. Mm-mm. I will say it right here. I don't make any bones about it. I don't like seeing my own bu- blood outside my body. Of course. So he's stitching me up, and I said, hey, that's great. You know, I haven't seen you here before, because I know some of the doctors that work down there, because I do charity work for right, them. Right, yeah. And he said, oh, no, I was, you know, I was the janitor here for a long time, and wow. I just put in the time. He did a good job? He did a great job. Well, you know, yeah, he did a great job. Oh, yeah, I see. It's, it's very, you know, it's not, it's not healed. It's not healed. I don't think it's going to heal ever the same way. That's, uh, uh, yeah, well, I mean, like, yeah, you, sometimes, I mean, that's a, that's a real leap, because you would think he would have to go to med school. Um, at some point in there, but he just put the time in as the janitor. And I wonder what the leap was. I wonder if he went from nurse into, you know, big nurse. Right. Well, you mean he he grew? (laughs) Yeah. 
I wondered if he was a small nurse first, and then he grew and was a bigger nurse. Oh, and some do, do they have to do a shift in the ambulance? Yeah, then the ambulance. And yeah, because I mean, I don't know if you know this, but if you see a nurse who's skinny, that's a new nurse. If you see a nurse that's got a lot of weight on, that is a that is an older nurse who is ready to be a doctor. But ready to be, yeah. Ready to just pop right into doctor. Yes, yes. And, you know, quick, usually if you see a very heavy doctor, that's a new doctor. But then the more you work as a doctor, the more weight you lose. So you're, the skinnier you are, that means you got a good doctor. You so want your doctor real thin. If you see two skinny people in a, in a <laughs> hospital, then you got to start looking at the coat length. Exactly. Who's wearing the long white coat? Yes, and who is in just the blue scrubs? Right. Yeah, because you got a you got a senior doctor there and a new nurse. <laughs> that makes plenty of sense. That makes perfect sense. The, the, the way you think uh, of it, when you think of it, it actually makes sense. All right, Roddy, what do you think? Should we get to some of the the letters? Yeah, let's let's read some. We'll of We'll dole out some advice. Okay. Here we go. This is a homework question. It seems. Hey, John. Hey, John and Ronnie. I have a test next week on our solar system, and I can't seem to be able to memorize the order of the planets for the life of me. Mm. Do you have any tips or tricks that could help me out? Love, Connor. Well, Connor, I don't usually like to give people tips and tricks for tests because you're not learning information, you're learning a trick. Mm -hmm. And... You're not, unless you're in magician school, you're not there to trick yourself. You're not there to dick around. <laughs> you're there to learn and to advance yourself as a human. But the fact that you want to do a trick makes very upset. Ronnie, take over, Rob. I'm sorry. <laughs> you are trying to, you did that a lot on stage. You would try to talk while inhaling. And then you eventually you get you, you, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, that's a good that's a good <sighs> trick though for singers. <laughs> that's, that's a good trick for singers, but it, it peters out. <laughs> it does. My god, it's a really amazing feat. Um, uh, let's see. I don't know. I don't even know what's. I know Pluto's last, and I don't even know if it's a a planet anymore. Is, yeah, is Pluto even out? Ask your teacher about that one, Connor. Because I had heard it was gone, but then I heard it's back in. Like Really? A, less than a year ago. I feel like I read something and it said it was back in. Okay, well, check the internet for Pluto, but we'll put Pluto down. That's one. Pluto's down. Um, uh, Jupiter? Jupiter's somewhere in there. Yeah. Is that next? Uh, that's, is it next to last? As far as I know, that's the first one I can think of. It's first in the order. Okay, so it's close. Right. Is Mars... Uh, Mars is Mars. after the sun, so it's Jupiter, sun, Mars. <laughs> oh, so we're saying if they're in orbit, we're going out from if the sun. If they're just whirling around. Okay. Uh, there's, a, there's a spaceship, too. There's a spaceship. Right. Put a meteor on the other side of the sun. Uh, before or J. Ju yeah, before, before Jupiter. J, there's a meteor. We're writing there. these out for you, Connor, so we can know. So that's um, a, what was that? A meteor. A meteor. <laughs> yeah. Meteors there. And those things are always flying around. Yeah, and that by the time we answer this, it can be somewhere else, so we'll have to regroup. So, yeah, get yourself a piece of paper with a moving sticker on it <laughs> that sort of orbits the piece of paper. Yeah. So, I mean, Earth is in there, but we're not going to count Earth. Earth, that's, you don't count because don't that's count your it. own planet. Yeah. You don't that's, have to do that one. That's typical sort of Earth people. <laughs> Assuming they have to be on a list, yeah, this yeah, buzz, exactly. you know, the Buzzfeed culture that we're part of now. Yeah, is, I want to be on the list too. Yeah. All right, so we've got in order: mm -hmm. Media, Jupiter, Sun, Mars, Spaceship, and Pluto. <laughs> yes. So, so uh, what's a mnemonic device? Yeah, uh, more juice. Should. Uh, what's an S word? Should more juice? Should should more juice? Should Make, make spaceships <laughs> pee. You know, if what? a spaceship yes. was a human and yes. it ate, drank more juice, yes. it should make it pee. Yeah, more juice should make spaceships pee. There you go. So uh, next, uh, so get ready to ace your test. Yeah, you're going to be, you, your teacher is going to look at you and say, I had no idea you were this smart. This is a really, this is a real change. He or she is going to take the, uh, 
chalk, place it in your little hand, and say, I'm going to take your seat, you go to the front, <laughs> you teach the class, you're so damn smart. Yeah. All right, Connor, I hope that helped. Good luck on your test. Good luck. Please welcome back to the show, John Lennon. Hello, Scott. How are you doing? Doing real good. Real good. Great to see you. It's great to see you, too. God, it, it hasn't been long. I think I saw you two months ago. Yeah, I believe we did. Andy, uh, if you don't know, and the Sloppy Boys, if you don't know, I think you were on with John Lennon once before, so yeah, you guys do know. But Andy, you yeah. probably don't know. John Lennon, uh, was uh, he's a singer-songwriter. He was in a band once. I was uh, in a European rock and roll band. Called the... Uh, Oh, the Beatles. The, I don't know if, if, if but not would, spelled the way that you not the not spelled the way I wanted to. We we accidentally right. swapped out an E with an A as a joke, and it it stuck. And I don't. Yeah, I'm Sounds still like kind of mad about joke. that. I, I don't think it's that off color. <laughs> um, but yeah. Anyway, so he you you may not remember this, but in 1980 he was shot to death and Got right then, in the body, bled all over the place. Right in the body, yeah. Right. Which is the last place you want to get shot. Uh, yeah, is your body? It's and either then, head or um, body. And then. Um, Came back to life four years four later. Four years after that, I lived in my grave for a little while. I was dead, and I decided to come back to life because it was boring down there, and that's it. And has been living in New York City right. ever since. In the Dakotas. Maybe you, maybe you came across him. I don't know, Andy. You lived in New York City for quite a spell. Um, no, I don't. No, I, I wasn't. Either. I wasn't doing much uh, of uh, in the way of going out back then. Back then, really, oh. during the 2005 through what was that? 2011. Yeah, you didn't swing by us. I, I, I'd pop in just, uh, but you guys were already wrapped up and gone. I would get there late. You'd way, get there, late wait, one ten? Yeah, I'd get by and everyone, oh, they went to the, the after party. I said, well, geez, now I'm driving all around the whole city trying to find this party. Right. Uh, oh. I figured I'll just, you know, talk with Don Pardo for a minute and then head home. Oh, he talks your ear off, right? Yeah, he just, all he did was he would just say that the, he'd repeat the cast over and over to me. Nazim Padrad. Right, okay, Don. Yes, good. You you have you don't know what bar they went to for the party, you know. Why doesn't he decide to come back to life? You know that would be great. Oh, right, it would be great. Yeah, no, I, I, he can do. It. Everyone can do it. <laughs> Everyone can do it. Just John is one of the few people who has. Who else has? You said uh, Roseanne and Tom Arnold. They both came back to life. Did I say that? I think on our last show you said that. Yes. Uh, I was crazy on that last show. I was so drunk. <laughs> really? So nothing you said was true? <laughs> no, and I had a little buzz going, but I, I a lot of it was true. All right. Well, well, what's been going on, John? It's great to see you. Uh, well, this is Barry Sam's from Hell, by the way, right, a place hello, you Barry. did not go. No, not I did not go. Uh, you just you were laying in the ground. You didn't. I stuck in the ground. I didn't go anywhere. I was just sitting there on the ground. I see. Is that uh, the mistake people normally make as they go up to either heaven or hell? Yeah, they, they get going too quick. Yeah, and you don't need to. You can just. It's uh, like relax, stay a while. You right. bought this coffin. Why not enjoy it? I enjoy it for a minute, four years, and then pop out if you want. And and the last time we were on, we did talk about how. You were when you decided to claw out of your coffin. You were being crushed by the earth. So you actually have come back to life nine or ten times because you kept being suff- suffocated, <laughs> right, by right. the earth. That's how. Yeah, that's how it happened. Right. Okay. <laughs> Wonderful. So what's up uh, with me? Uh, just sort of sure uh, with you. Yeah. With I'll take anyone though. <laughs> I've I've sort of stopped. Uh, last time we talked, I was writing that uh, that Larry Plata book. Oh, that's right. Yeah, uh, which is sort of a takeoff on yeah, those it was about Larry... books written by that notorious turf J.K. Rowling. Right, right. right. It was uh, inspired by the whole thing. It was Larry Plata was he's a, a magician who went to magician school, and Snape was there, and uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the Snape from Harry Potter. Snape he from would Harry wander Potter in. Went, he went to Hogwarts. Uh, he you know from Hogwarts over to magician school. He would he would come over and he'd say, "Boy, that Harry Potter's giving me a lot of trouble." Right, and so I'm writing all these conversations about Snape <laughs> complaining about. Larry Plata, you know, to Larry Plata about Harry Potter. And the whole thing is just getting long and long and long. And, and then, you were saying you were on page like 15 and Snape had come in eight times. Right? Right? He wouldn't leave. <laughs> Snape won't leave this damn book I'm writing. So, so speaking of Plotter, you had a problem with the plotting of your book. From, from page one. Yeah. Uh, so as we discussed, I did get into some legal uh Eh, not trouble, just people saying, you know, I probably shouldn't be writing this book because it's too close to the characters. Yeah, well, so I'm I, one of the people who said that. Yeah, like, well, that's definitely right. Definitely you were going to get sued. Well, somebody listened to your podcast and came right to my you know, house and said, you got to stop. And oh. uh, I, I said, fine, let me just rework it. And I was reworking it. And then all of a sudden I've got a lot of the Matrix characters in there. <laughs> Which ones? What do we got? Neo? Neo, Tank, Doza. Tank uh, is in there? No. <laughs> yep. 
<laughs> so uh, wait, the Nebuchadnezzar are, flies through. Was Larry Plotter being red pilled? We haven't even gotten there yet because it's just Snape filling everyone in on what's happening with <laughs> Harry Potter. Oh no! Detail by detail to all the people. Yeah. Uh, so I decided, you know, to put that down for just a minute. Good, good. Well, yeah. you know, so, sometimes it can be great to focus on other things, and and you know, it was. So what are you what are you working on now? Uh, now I'm doing a lot of volunteer work. Uh, oh great! I go down to the there's a there's a uh, science lab here in town where they're trying to figure out the vaccine, you know, for the COVID nineteen vaccine. Oh. And I went down and I said, I'll I'll do anything you want. Maybe I get in that uh you know smart room, the the think tank type thing, and help you out. <laughs> the smart room. The smart room. I I was fumbling over my words because you know I can't. I got to mess around with my mask. Are you wearing the mask, Scott? Yeah, I uh, not currently, of course, because we're on Zoom. But if you if you can't even think of the term think tank, then you're probably not smart enough to be in it. Yeah, you sound like a, a worker in a think tank, Scott. That's exactly what <laughs> sure. they said to me. <laughs> sure. So you you've been trying to get in there. Uh, what do you think you have to offer when it comes to the vaccine? Just positive positivity. You know, people can get down on these types of projects and you just got to say, yeah, to keep going. Uh, get so this like thing a cheerleader done. in a sense. In a way, in a, in a sense. And, uh, you know, so they didn't want they didn't go for that. So I'm just cleaning uh, pipettes and things in the lab. Um, so, John, what are you up to now? I mean, that's all in the past. It sounds like what are you doing now? Uh, I'm just sort of hanging around these days. I'm doing the do as much as possible. Doing the do. What does that mean? Drinking Mountain Drinking Dew? Drinking Mountain Dew. Why? Uh, well, because I, when this whole thing's over, I I want to do uh, more motocross. <laughs> so you're prepping at this point. Yeah, I'm just sort of getting do going in me all the time. Every when day. you say you want to do more motocross, so you've right. been doing some? No, I want to do motocross. So okay, so you want to do more than zero motocross? Yes, right, exactly. I just, even is it one motocross day, or motocross? I say motor. You do? Yes. Okay. Motorbike crossing. Motorbike crossing. Right, yeah. I've been so watching you... it on ESPN2 because there's nothing, no sports to play. So they was, oh, they was yeah? showing that a lot. What's your favorite move that they do? What, uh, what, do you, what do you think? Oh, the one where they sort of get up on the bike and sit down and look at hmm. uh, the audience and wave. This is before the race starts? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I don't like the jumping through the air. I like to see the, the guy, the stats. And sure. It sounds like you could buy a bike and get on it, sit down and wave at people if I've you been, wanted. I've been doing it around my neighborhood. If I see a motorcycle parked, I'll get. I'll May I ask a possibly personal question? And oh. I apologize if this is too intrusive. Oh, that's Have fine. you ever seen the people when they're riding bicycles? They they're they're It's hands free. They're not touching the handlebars and they're able to just bicycle forward. Have you ever seen that? Uh, yeah, I don't think that's too personal. Yeah. I've, can I've you that. can you do that? Uh, I've, I've been known to. Sure. OK, that's my question. OK. Well, I'm glad it got out there. Um, so, uh, hold on, St Scott. I gotta uh, just set something right with the the fellow who just asked me the question. Uh, I was yeah, lying. Barry. I, I've never Barry. I've never seen that before. Okay, okay. I wanted to sound. You like never, a you've never shot. seen it before. Oh, I appreciate you no, going along. With I, well, John, look. I gotta say, out of all of your appearances, yeah. <laughs> this is my favorite. Really? <laughs> sure, but <laughs> I don't see why. Hey, but John, we're running out of time. John, yes. John <laughs> you have a question. A song? How about a song? Oh God, geez! I would love to do a song for you, but of course my gu my guitar is not around with me. Yeah, ah, your guitar—it's it's with shame. Ringo. It's at Ringo's house. He borrowed just, it. You know? I feel bad if every I didn't single have. time you say you're going to come back and have the guitar, the one with the I, the skeleton finger hey, whammy bar. I'll send you. I'll send you his uh, Ringo's email and text. He text him. Can we get him on the show at some point? If you can get him, if you can pin him down, he's he's awful, especially in COVID. What, is, uh, what do you mean? It seems like it's easier to pin everyone down during COVID. No, he's everyone's out, just in he's their out house. and about. I, I did I mention this last time I was on the show? I thought maybe I did. I don't think so. He broke core. He goes out and courting all the time. He goes to underground dance clubs and he's hugging and kissing everybody. It's terrible. Oh no! <laughs> is he signing autographs? Because he said he would never do that he's again. Signing out of everything. He sends me his videos of what he's up to down those underground. Oh places. my it's god! It's crazy. It's, I keep telling him this. This is bad news, and I'm. I shouldn't. Even, I, I'm probably going to get kicked out of the lab I'm working at. Oh. And you know, I'm in a bit of a weird mood. No. My mood is fine. I just feel very uncomfortable. I woke up this morning. And I put on, you know, my usual white suit, and my my shirt, my button-up shirt, my collar shirt. It's on inside out, and I didn't realize it until I was on the way here, and I started feeling, you know, the cool buttons on my stomach, and I said, "This can't be right." And you got to you got to think, how did I even get into this situation? Because you got, you button the buttons yourself, you know. Must have been one of those mornings where I was, you know, before my coffee. I can't be trusted to get myself dressed before coffee. Well, but uh, but you know what I'm excited about today's show? 
But I'm putting all that aside. All my discomfort, my shirt, my vacala especially, is very, feels very strange. It, it, you know, it, if you don't believe me, go home when you're done listening to this, or maybe you're home right now. Get a college shirt and put it on inside out. It doesn't. It feels funky, and, and not the, not the good kind of funky. It isn't. You know, it's not that uh, uh, Parliament funkadelic feel that I love so much. All right, well, well, let's get to the show. We got, I've got a guest here. This is Wisteria Romance. She's a radio host. I'm sure you've heard a program. Wisteria, welcome to the show. Oh, my gosh. Hi, you got This is just amazing. Wow. Isn't this fun? I never thought I'd get you on the program. Well, I'm, I am busy with my uh, Cottage 106.3 love songs from the cozy cottage by the fireside. That's true. <laughs> that's, a great, that's a great program. You take requests. I, I take requests. I do. I have live calls. Call in. They want love advice from me, so right. I think I'm ready to answer some questions. Do you do? Do you do? Uh, uh, not request dedications. Oh, I I do. I take dedications because you know people people have things to say to their loved ones, right? And they can't say it to them, right? You they know, can't talk to their eyes. This is, you know, this one's going out to Reese. Do you ever get that one? Oh, people call about Reese Witherspoon all the time because they just don't know how to say, Reese, I'm in love with you. I wish that we had ever met. They don't know how to get to her is really the thing. So they dedicate songs to Reese Witherspoon. Right. And, you know, you, you don't just know Reese Witherspoon's phone number or, or email address. So you have to do it the oh. best way you can by going on the radio. Isn't that the truth? If I had Reese Witherspoon's phone number, I tell you what, I would never go to work. I'd just call her all day. Just call and chit chat with her. Call her, say, wait, send me some free Draper James. I love that line of clothing. Now, what is that? What is Draper James? Well, that's Reese Witherspoon's line of Southern style clothing. They say things like, "What would Dolly do?" You know, really, Dolly right Park. on the, you, you know, know Dolly. Park. I love Dolly Parton. Of course you do. No, she, she's spunky. Sure, and and it'll say things like, "Hey, y'all." On a tote bag. I just think it's so That's cute. fun. Because I, so many times, you know, I'm carrying a backpack or a briefcase, and people want to say, hello, wh- wh- what do you think? What do you think of things? I want a saying right on it. I just hold it up. Hey, y'all. Yeah. I just want to say hello this way. Save my voice. Exactly. Exactly. It, save, it saves time. It says, I'm approachable, but I don't want to say anything to right. you. Right. I'm, I'm a good guy. I've got a, a positive attitude, but don't talk to me. Exactly. And leave me alone. Exactly. I have, I have a shirt that says, feeling fine. Really? And I tell you what, I wear it on bad days when I'm not feeling fine, and people are tricked. They to think, throw people off. Yeah, they think, oh, she's doing fine. I don't need to ask. You know, I could use, if, if my button-up shirt on the inside said, feeling fine right now, I, do, I wish that was happening because oh, my, my shirt feels oh, so uncomfortable. God. But I wish it said feeling fine so I wouldn't have to answer these questions. How I'll is your shirt you feeling? I'll tell you what, though. If I had cool buttons on my stomach right now, I'd be feeling fine. <laughs> that sounds pretty well, that sounds, nice. Yeah, you put, that's a good way of putting it. Especially but, in these, you know, this room is so warm. It, it's nice to have the cool buttons. Sure. It's probably like having a lady with cold lips just kiss right up your chest. Do you... <laughs> yeah, you know... It, <laughs> If I embarrassed you, no, like, just look how shy you're. The getting. thought of cool lips is funny to me because it, it makes me think of a dead person. Oh sure, well you know corpses. Corpses probably need love too, right? Corpses I mean, need love too. We're here for everybody. Now, you, do you ever have people come on the show, call into the show, and say, "I'm dead. Uh, I want to, you know, dedicate this song to my living." A partner. I all the time. And how does that go over? Yeah, well, uh, the living partner often calls in after just really angry, feeling like maybe I set it up somehow, and I didn't. You didn't. You don't do pranks on your show. I don't do pranks. You're not a prank show. I don't do that. You're Those not the are... morning zoo. Look at no, us. Let's go and uh, tell no. you know the person at Dunkin' Donuts they're an idiot and get it all on tape. Oh gosh, no. I'd feel I'd feel uncomfortable if I were at Dunkin' Donuts and that. Ha- you know, everyone's just there for their little donut holes. Right. Their coffee regular. You Sure. You don't want to prank. In no, here. don't. Because yeah. that's when mistakes, that's when the coffee spills. <laughs> that's when the coffee spills. That's when I want my tote that says, not before my coffee. Yeah, hey. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Are you a little, a little gassy? I'm a little, you know, I had, to, you know I, I had a few Dunkin' Donut holes on the way here. Did you? Yeah, well, I had about, well, I'd say 18 of them. I'll tell you what, I had a warm cup of tea by my fireside, and I thought about love. That's how I start every day. So you're just kind of always by the fire. Yeah, well, can I tell you a secret? Here, quick, turn it off so that nobody knows. I don't, well, you know, I don't know how to work the buttons on this thing. so it's off? Okay. Okay, I'm really, I'm telling you, it's not, I I wish I could figure it out. So uh, I'll I'll ask him. It's it's off, right? Yeah, it's off. Great, okay. So, um... 
I don't live in a cottage. What? I live in an apartment in Burbank. I really, I, I just, I hate it. I, the whole radio thing, it's a, you know, it's to make people think I have a romantic life and I know things, but I, I, I live alone. My husband left years ago. Well, what happened? He said he was going on a business trip, but that was three years ago. And you know what? I'm not fucking dumb. I'm on to Hold it. Hold on. Maybe business is booming. Oh, my God. Maybe business is booming. I, I, you know, I'm just trying to put a, a silver lining on it. Probably not. It seems like no. you, you'd come back. He That's probably, right. if he hasn't called you or anything. No, he hasn't called. He no, no texts. No, no. And I called hospitals and, and nothing, you know, and he does post occasionally on Facebook. So it seems like he's with, uh, yeah. With, uh, but is he with himself? No, he has a, it seems like there's a woman and a baby in the picture. Oh, okay. Do you ever wonder if maybe uh, you were the other woman? Oh, my God. No, I don't. I don't mean to oh say that. I just. God. Geez, I, I shouldn't have brought that up. I had never thought about that before. Um, let's just go back to the show. Oh. Hi, hi. I'm Wisteria Romance. Okay, I'm you're screaming so into the microphone. Happy. Oh, well, that's good. We're, well, you're anyway. wink. You're winking at me a lot, saying you're, you're happy. Like, you're, now, is this a prank? <laughs> I don't do pranks. I'm just. So happy That's with true. life. I think you're very talented, and I think some young thing is going to be just so excited to put her cold lips on your <laughs> stomach and just and just peck her up like buttons. No, I you see yeah, that that doesn't appeal to me. This cold touch you're talking about. <laughs> the, the, the woman I want to date has to be uh, alive and warm to the touch. Is that all? Pretty much. And and that we, you know, we like the same baseball team and that we, uh, you know, like the same restaurants. What baseball team do you like? Uh, the, the New York Dodgers. Okay, me too. Oh, okay, God. me too. What restaurant do you like? McDonald's. Okay, me too. Okay. Oh, I, you know what? And I, I'm not an expert. Oh, no, wait, I am. I host a show about it. It seems like there's a love connection here. Now I'm just going to put now, it out wait there. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Don't say anything yet. We'll let it grow. All right. Let we'll, it grow. The we'll let it grow. The in the yard. This is, uh, this is not why I brought you on the show. Well, okay. And, and what you <laughs> what just told word. me about your husband is, uh, okay, well, that, that was well, off No, air. we didn't talk about anything about my exactly, husband. Exactly. Right. Everything's right, great. Right. So we met at that podcasting festival because you wanted to. Where was that? That was in Cleveland, I think. Why were you there? Because we are not a podcaster. But I was thinking about you wanted maybe to just check getting, it out. A, check out what us knuckleheads are up to. Everyone has a podcast now. You right, know? right, it's right. Like everyone used to have a blog, and now blogs are over. Right. Thank now God everyone's I got a phone and a podcast. Everyone. Oh dear! Everyone has a phone. You have to have a phone. Well, I have an old-fashioned rotary because people just call into my show. I don't really call I out. see you have it with you. I didn't know. That's not connected to anything. I take it everywhere. Just in case you want to plug in. Well, it's part of my brand. <laughs> yeah, what is your brand? How would you describe your brand? Uh, you know, phone, cord phone. Oh, gosh. Uh, uh, rotary phone. I'd say uh, dripping honeysuckle. A warm, warm embers from a fire from last night, still burning hot in the morning. Maybe a little mist in the grass, and of course me, wet and ready for anything. So your your brand is sort of uh, just ideas, vibes of from these things, honey I, and fires. And I'd things. say my brand is describing things I wish I had. I see. My brand is sort of a guy who f gets up in the morning, doesn't drink coffee, and puts his shirt on inside out. Oh, God. You know what I mean? You're it's kind scoundrel. of that feeling of... You are a scoundrel. Well, yeah, it's, I, I'm more uncomfortable than anything. I mean, imagine if you had someone there to say, John, your shirt's on wrong, and you could have just avoided the whole thing. I'd say, well, I'm late, you know, to get to the coffee. I'll take care of it later, oh. and then all the day goes by and you never do. And then we'd get in a little tiff, and I'd say, let me fix it. I can do it quick. You keep bringing yourself up. What are you talking Oops, about? Oops, did we? I say I? Whoever, whoever she is, you know, let it grow. Let it grow. We're just a sprout right now, don't don't judge it. Okay. Could be a rose bush. Could be a poison ivy. Oh my God! I hope not. Right. Well, then you tear it out. You know. You, you leave tear it out. And throw it away. Yeah. Leave me on the side of the road. You tear it up and you go on vacation for three years. <laughs> True. I. I. I suppose sometimes that happens. Nothing I would personally know about. Okay, yeah, no, no I, I, I forgot that we weren't on the air when we were talking we about... We turned the button off. Right, it was, uh, I, I'm so sure it went from red to no, no color at all. I am too, I got the nod. Yeah, well, you got a very uh, imp impressive nod. That was a very impressive nod, Ryan. Thanks. <laughs> your, your, your neck is fantastic.
Very smooth nod. You know, you see a lot of people nod, and it's very jerky. This nod that Ryan gave us. Oh, uh, engineer, Ryan. Very smooth. A nod is as important as a handshake. You know, that's what I always say. That's true. You know, you don't want a wet noodle of a handshake, and you don't want a bobbing neck. You don't want to put it on the dashboard, do you? <laughs> no, absolutely not. So let me ask you, so what, what would you say the most uh, requested song is? Oh, on, of, on, on my your program. show, on my show. Do you know, and you just call it The Cottage. You know, uh, yeah, love songs from The Cottage. Welcome yeah. to The Cottage. Sit down. Make yourself comfortable. Leave your, leave your Crocs by the door and get those wool socks toasty. It's, it's, it's funny you assume Crocs. I, most of my listeners wear Crocs. We did a study. Yeah. I like to know who my fan base is, and they're pretty much Croc wearers. We haven't done it. I wonder what people are wearing, what types of shoes people are wearing. Who listen to this? Well, you should do a study. I should do a study. I would imagine it's ski boots. Oh. Mostly. Oh. And not on the, they're not on the slopes. They're out in, you know, regular society. Oh, so it's like those men who wear motorcycle jackets, but they've never been on a motorcycle. They've never been. What, they, they're scared of them. What a bold statement. I like the way this looks, but I have no interest in what it means. Right, and I want to just kind of galunk around and... <laughs> Be, you know, make everyone late because they're following me and I'm slow. But I tell you what, if a guy galunks, you're going to notice it. You can't not notice That's a galunker. That's true. That's true. If you have a, here's some advice. We give advice sometimes on the program sure. that before we even get to the questions. Great. If you're going in for a job interview, wear a shoe like a, a ski boot or anything that sort of clanks around. So when you walk into the room, people stop working, look up and say, I'm noticing that person. I don't like it. And I find it annoying, but I've been no I'm noticing. That is right. That is right. And you know, people put too much emphasis on liking what they notice. It's all about just getting yourself out there. Right. It's like those Facebook ads. I hate them the first twenty times, and then I order the product. And you find out you need it. I did. I needed it. I needed those Tom's boots that are half silver in the back. Ugly as fuck, but now I love them. You hate. You hate the. You hate the Tom boots until you got them on. Then I love them. Look. Look. Oh my God! Those are those are nice boots, and you're right. They're all silver, silver bits in the back. <laughs> Here's what I don't understand. You seen the trunks? People order trunks of clothing at a time. <laughs> have you no? Have you no? I, I'm not going to change my question. Have you seen that people order trunks of clothing at a time? Well, when you said that, I thought, God, what are your friends pirates? Who has trunks? It's this thing where. <laughs> And I don't think it's new. It's been going on for a while. Well, sure, since pirate days. Every, every month, they, the company sends you a trunk of clothing. A trunk? Do you get to keep the trunk? How, is this a stowaway trunk? Could I fit in it? You, yes, they're huge trunks. And every month, you get to, and you just stack these empty trunks up in your house. You can keep the clothing and send it back if you want. But it's, the problem is it's the, uh, the trunk business is booming. I have not heard of this but you know what if there's a trunk that i can fit in i'm ordering it because because somebody take me i'm luggage i'm ready to go oh so you want to live in a trunk i want to live in a trunk i don't want to have baggage i want to be baggage that's what i always I say. put that on a t-shirt take me away <laughs> i, I want to be baggage you could probably travel for a lot cheaper i'll tell you that much well sure 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 you just have a friend to put you you know on that conveyor belt oh God, what a what a trip that would be, bonking around, clumping around. Now talk about getting noticed if it popped open. Right. You, you know, the people handling the baggage, you say, hey, you know, be careful with this one. They, what the? Oh. Talking luggage? <laughs> they think I was a Harry Potter relic or something. Oh, God. If, oh, it, boy. You know, my one big regret in life is that I didn't get into one of those Harry Potter movies. Really? I never got in the theater to see one of them. Oh, you know, I, 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 I get what you're saying, because it's a different experience, isn't it? When you're in the theater and you think, I'm one of the first eyes, right. laying eyes. Right, checking it out with all my you know, friends. You, you know, when you sure. go to a theater, you're friends with everyone in the room. Oh, of course. Because Maybe. you all made the agreement, this movie is going to be great. We're here together. Right. Together, not together. We're all shit. But, you know, you have that attitude. I, you probably have that same attitude. Absolutely. Going, I'm always looking for love. <laughs> well, friendship. I'm talking about friendship in the theater. Love. Uh, well, yeah, okay. We'll just su substitute that Sex, word out. Love, friendship. Well, you can't really, you know, I'm talking about being friends with people Even in the theater. Even just humping someone outside the theater door. Okay, now what are we talking about? Well, you know, those movies have some slow parts. Nobody right. really needs to see Christmas morning. We know Voldemort's not showing up on Christmas morning. So you know what you we do? We don't know that. You well, I read the books. He's not showing up on 
<laughs> Christmas morning. So what you do is you pull, you pull somebody out. You go, can I talk to you for a second? And they say, what are you talking about? What yeah, and they go, why are you talking to me? Thing? And I go, just, but I promise you, I'm normal. Just one second outside the door. And you do this long enough and people go, shh. And people get very mad, so the person feels like it's their fault. They're embarrassed. They They're have to get so out. They're so embarrassed. And you take them out, and before they can get mad at you, you just shove them against the wall, and you start dry humping. Oh, my God. That doesn't seem, um, well, that doesn't seem like great advice. And oh. it doesn't seem appropriate. I think it's pretty fun and appropriate. Well, you are the, 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 uh, romance, uh, the romance expert, I guess? I sure am. On my show, I'm the only person and the only expert. <laughs> I see. So it seems like you're making up the rules as you go. Aren't we all, John? Aren't we all? What a great point. Uh, you yeah. know, there's a matinee after this if you want to catch it. Well, after what you just told me, I think I'm going to avoid uh, most interaction with you. You know, I'll say this right now, and I don't want you to take offense. You seem, you know, pretty insane. <laughs> Oh, gosh. You know, love makes us do crazy things, doesn't it? It takes a perfectly sane, probably your soulmate kind of person and makes her act just nuts. I mean, I'm dripping with honeysuckle juices right now. Right, right. And I don't understand what that means. I'm sort of, I'm sort of putting it all together, what happened to the husband here. Well, I... I I mean, nothing, nothing. My husband's at home, satisfied. He's probably by the fire right now. Yeah, well, I don't know. You're talking about... With Coco. Oh, right, right. That, that was off the air, so we can't bring it up. The frost in the grass is just starting to melt. He can't wait for me to come home. A oh. plaid blanket on the sofa so we can snuggle under it. Fleece for our nighttime cuddling. You know, I, I can't argue with the fleece part. They do make a good... Fleece makes a good blanket. Doesn't it, though? It's uh, a great material for blanket. It's the best material, isn't Better it? than cotton. Oh, cotton's not warm. Cotton is cold, cold, cold. Much better than wool. Oh. You ever get under uh, an itchy wool blanket, you'd sl uh, sleep you angry all night. Oh, hives. You wake up with you hives. You wake up with hives and then you got to take another nap right when you wake up. Hi when you have hives, you take a nap. That's yeah. what you do. Have hives, take nap. Have hives, take nap, dry hum, get married. That should, that should replace that stay calm, keep calm poster that everyone loves. Stay calm, keep calm, have hives, take a nap, be the luggage. All right, Wisteria, what do you think we should get so, to one of these questions? Oh, God, I'd love to. Let's hear what they have See to what say. these people are up to out here. All right. Dear Mr. Lennon and guest, that's you. Oh, God. That's nice. Yeah. They, they thought about you. The company I work for recently experienced some undue financial hardship as a result of our former governor, Terry Braindead, deciding to privatize Medicaid. Now, I don't know if that's real or a fake name, Terry Braindead. Terry Braindead. Yeah, wow. Whatever. The, the, the question's to come. We recently had to institute a 10% wage rollback, and my employees' morale is low. Other than telling them to listen to your podcast, what are some ways I can improve our team's morale? Thank you for your suggestions in advance. Tim. That's an idea for you, Tim. Have everyone with the same name in the office get together. Isn't it about Tim? All the Tims, Matt. It's about time, you, t you Tim. Oh, that's what you're going for. <laughs> I thought you maybe were misspeaking. I thought to myself, oh, well, Wisteria doesn't know uh, what an E is. Oh, gosh. Uh, I, what, what Tim do you think it is? It's not, it's not Tim for me to make a mistake. It's, t it's Tim time. <laughs> it's Tim time. That's, uh, Tim, uh, here's some advice for you. Put that on a shirt. It's Tim time. It's Tim time. And people say, oh, you are, you are a you know, big fan of home improvement. And you say, no, I'm fucking Tim. I'm fucking I'm Tim. I'm fucking and you can Tim. Take that several ways. Right, right. Well, it depends how you mean it, but you, you get people to know your name. Yes, you do. You do. Have people at work get their morale up by making T-shirts. Make, have them all make a t-shirt with the person in the office that they have a crush on. Now, how fun would that be? Oh, that seems, you know, something like maybe uh, most people wouldn't want that to happen in the office because it's where they want to work and they don't want to have any other pressure of who likes them or doesn't like them. So to rephrase what you're saying, it seems like most people in the office would really be into this idea and they'd want to find out a fun little fact that could make their day more sunshiny. Did I get it right? Yeah, well, that's an I interesting did. rephrasing yeah. of what I said. Now, what if they had a fun an office party and everyone threw in I think that's a great idea uh, I, I like where this keys. is going what if they threw their keys uh, the keys like you know the hat. fobs to get into the different parts sure, of the office they're fobs well, they, they're office fobs you know the fob for the coffee room and the fob for the copy room hey where's Bob's fob 
<laughs> you might hit Bob's Fob. And then that could be Bob's shirt. Bob's Fob. <laughs> Bob's Fob and, a, and an arrow pointing to his front pocket. <laughs> yeah, and, then, and that says Cobb. You know, like his dick's a cob. Oh, well, you know, maybe he doesn't want to talk. Maybe this guy, Bob, doesn't want to talk about his dick. Is that a cob in Bob's pocket or is he just sobbing? I think it's Bob's fob. Is that a cob in Bob or is that Bob's fob? Must be Bob's cob. That's a long t-shirt at this point. It really is. Also, a knob would have made more sense. Anyway. Frosty the Snowman had a corn cob knob. All right, that's that's part of an X-rated. I'm sort of doing a funny, you know, lounge act uh, coming up this Christmas. I'm doing uh, sort of X-rated oh, dirty uh, themes Christmas on yeah, dirty Christmas songs, and that's one just one idea I have. That's brilliant. Now uh, I I want to hear all of them. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what. I, I'll tell you. I'll I'll admit something. I just thought of this idea a couple days ago, and I've got a couple notebooks all set up. And that's the only thing I have written in it so far. Oh, my God. Well, we can do better than that. You and me, both music experts. I mean, right. come on. Come on. This is, That would be great. Well, the weather outside is frightful, but I want to marry you. Okay. Well, that, that doesn't seem as fun. You know, people want sort of a, a funny X-rated thing, like, you know, Frosty the Snowman's dick they wanted to hear about. Well, the weather outside is frightful, but my pussy is delightful. Oh, now wait a minute. Let's keep it on Frosty. Oh. Frosty the snowman was a snowman. He was a man of snow. <laughs> I kind of like the jazz poetry thing you went into. He was a man of snow. He was a man of snow, and snow was a man. If you uncover the snow, you get a man. But if you take the man, you just have snow, because he was just a snowman. With a cob, for With a knob. And a hat that made him dance. No, oh, wait, how about this? A hat that made him screw. Hey! That would be the X-rated version of it. Yeah, it was kind of fun. <laughs> It's kind of fun. I'm, I'm out there now talking to record producers. Anyone, a lot of people don't want to touch this idea. Well, I'll tell you what. I'd produce it. I'd, I'd produce it if I had any money. <laughs> so that, that brings up an interesting question. You don't, you don't make money. Well, I make, I make enough to keep my, my apartment, my cottage. Right, right. My cottage, yeah. It's, you know, I, for all the vines I should we have Should we have stopped recording for that one word? Oh, no, I whispered it. Oh, Nobody yeah, my hear. listeners can't hear a whisper. No, no, no. Of course, the microphones don't pick up whispers, as everyone knows. Everyone knows that. I would say, getting back to the question, Tim. Oh, yes. I think the, I think the, I think the fuck party's the way to go. <laughs> oh, oh, you would get it. That's right. That's what the keys, I could sort of see where you're going with that. Uh, I don't think that might be appropriate. Okay, try this on for size. Sure. What if instead of a fuck party, everyone put in a picture of their wife and then you went home to that person's family instead? Or husband. I'm sure there's women who work at the office. Right, I, I bet there are. Um, Switch it up. Have not everyone's family. married. I, that's, I'll just say, not everyone's oh, married. you're right. Well, I was being very sexist against singles. I'm a singlist. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't mean to be. You know, yeah, yeah, single a, people are humans. Thank you for apologizing so quickly. We have a lot of people on this show who will, you know, say something off color, uh, offensive, and then wait, you know, a month before they apologize. No, no, no. I like to. I like to really mend wounds as they right as they happen. Spurt. <laughs> good, good, good. Yeah, stitch it right up. Stitch you know? it up because you know it's it, you hurt someone's feelings. You don't want it to linger because then the hurt just grows and grows. The hurt grows the way love grows. And, but hurt becomes a rock, a big rock that's hard to move out of your yard without hiring a handyman, and you don't know if you can trust those people. Oh, you might want to apologize for that. I'm sorry about rocks. <laughs> you're not all bad, and I bet I could push some of you if I just worked out a little. And you're not all heavy. That's a that's a thing about rocks. People say, oh, oh, rocks, I hate them. They're so heavy. Well, not all of them. Not all rocks. You know, there's fake rocks that people have that have keys under them, and they're light as a feather. Right. right. And most rocks, you know, if you can fit it in your hand, you can probably lift it up. If you're talking about a boulder, I'll give you that. 
True. Well, boulders are heavy. Well, boulders are heavy. That's, it's just, I'm sorry, it's just the way it is. You know what? Everyone knows it. I, I don't, don't understand why we're dancing around I it. Wish, I wish people would stop. It's such a crazy debate. Are boulders heavy or are they not? Are women funny? Are they, it's, you know, it's not the women thing I get, but boulders are definitely heavy. Boulders are heavy. Have you been on the Indiana Jones ride at Disneyland? I was sweating the whole time. That boulder almost hit Good me. Good God, it's the biggest one you could ever imagine. Did that happen to you on the ride, too? It almost hit me. Uh, almost hit me, too? Right. We are so made for each other. Uh, now, now, wait a minute. You're talking about just because we went on a ride at different times. And had the same experience. I think the mechanism and the story of the ride make it so everyone is exactly the same. Oh, you might have other matches you. that you... Mr. Scientist, I don't believe in love. The, the mechanisms did it. I don't know. I think the mechanisms in your heart might be going a little faster right now. I don't know. I, my, I'm t checking my pulses as I've been doing the whole show. <laughs> you have <laughs> been doing that the whole... Now, do you, do you find that your heart rate goes up when you're podcasting? Is that something I should be worried it about? It goes down. Oh, down. You know, a lot of people, a lot of performers say, I'm mother, my most alive when I'm on stage, when I'm entertaining, when I'm doing a podcast. For me, less. Less so. I'm more alive when really? I'm off. Well, you've been doing it so many years. Oh, All and it's taken a toll. screaming teen fans, that must have just killed you. Killed my eardrums, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> here's, here's, a, here's a bit of advice, just more of a uh, sort of a manners thing. If you go to a concert... And you're in the audience, you're listening. Don't scream. Don't scream. It's not fair, you know, to the people next to you, it's to the not people performing. Music. It's music. You're not singing along. No. Be as quiet as possible. Do not make any movement. Don't dance. No facial movement. Sit stone-faced. Watch. Leave. Do you know I almost got sexed with at my first concert? I, I did not know that. There I was. I was seeing Dog Star. It's a Keanu Reeves band. It was my very first concert. I'm, I'm very aware of them. I auditioned for them. Did you really? Yeah. Look at you. They said I was hack. Well, they were jealous. I clearly. said, you're a hacky sack. Oh, look at you. And that was around the time that they came out. They must have loved that pun. Hacky sacks it. were big time. They said, thank you. I said, that's not what I meant. Oh, God, it's, I'm out of here. Oh, that's Keanu. Not quite getting that anybody could insult him. He's such a nice guy. He's a nice dude. Well, uh, there I was in the mosh pit, and let me tell you, it was all women. Okay, okay, all women, wow. all girls. They are all there to see Keanu. Meanwhile, I was there for the music. And suddenly, when Keanu came on, all the women just started thrusting in the audience. Okay. And I had cunts up against every part of my body. Interesting. Every part. Underwear thrown on stage, which I always thought was a myth. <laughs> That people threw it up there? There's so much underwear. But I've had, when I've been on stage, I've had no underwear thrown at me. I've had glasses. Gla oh. Uh, uh, it's very uh, appropriate for you. Shoes. <laughs> I'll, get, I'll get ladies' shoes thrown at me on stage all the time. Crocs? I used to. Are they shoe Crocs shoes or are they ski boots? They're, I either get shoes or socks. Oh. Well. One time I got a shoe inside of a sock. I said, how that work? <laughs> You know, a shoe inside of a sock, that's a, that's a great way to make a weapon. You just swing it around. You got a shoe. You can kick somebody from any angle. Right. If you're ever in a mosh pit, you say, this is getting a little too intense for me. Take off your shoe. Take off your sock. One and the other. Shoe in your sock. Get yourself out of there. Just swing it around. Just get yourself out. Stay out of the pit, by the way. That's another bit of advice. You're going to get hurt. You never there. need to be in Don't the pit. Don't be in the pit. No, the music will come to you. Right, right, right. Uh, crowd surf as much as you can. Watch out for the pit. Well, I'm so glad that we agree on that, because guess what? That's the hundredth thing we've agreed on. Oh, boy. Oh, if we were taking a test online, I think it would just be those, those heart emojis everywhere. Right, right, right. Bing, bing, bing. Cupid says, go for it. <laughs> That's well, a shirt. Cupid says, go for it. Oh, that brings me back to what I want to say to Tim. Make sure you're doing the shirt thing. <laughs> you can't go wrong with a shirt that has your brand. Right. And that's a good place, you know, at work just to, to talk about your brand. Sure, they could even just get a shirt that has the company brand on it. Right, get everyone together and say, what's the company brand? And, and design a brand. And then have a brand. Right. Maybe they don't have a brand. That sounds like the real problem. You probably don't have a brand, Tim. Yeah, Tim, you said you work at a place, but it sounds like you don't know where you work. Yeah, what is this place? What's the brand? What does the logo look like? I so mean, get your friends together at work and come up with a brand. And don't hire Mr. Braindead to figure it out. <laughs> and is that real or not? Terry brain dead. Terry Am I missing brain. something there? I mean, I would think if it were fake, you'd have Terry be fake too. But Terry sounds like a perfectly respectable name. 
Terry cloth. Oh, love terry cloth. Oh, and it's, it's a great way to keep yourself dry after a shower. It sure is. I've got a terry cloth ball gown I wear at events. Is that true? It really is. That's not, yeah, you, people get very sweaty at events. It's true, and if you brush up against me, you're dry. <laughs> that's what I, that's another brand of mine. You brush up against me, you're, you're dry. dry. <laughs> Put that on a, uh, that would be a good slogan for a towel. It would. What a cute towel. All right, well, I hope that helped, Tim. And Tim. At the end of the day, you want to follow your heart. You know, when you're on the road, it can seem like you have a map and points that you're supposed to stop. But life has a plan for you. And even if there's someone out there that left you once, know that she wants to come back to you. And there's probably a song in her heart that's going to play on the radio in your car. And you two will get back together. Because she really does love you. She didn't forget about you. She's just thinking about things. She just has other things to do, but she didn't. But All right, well, Steve, i got to bring you back here. Well, you, you are really tearing up there. I'm fine. My God. I, I, know, so... I know you're right under the vent, so it's maybe the, it's the... It is. Like my eyeballs got so dry. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, you were talking about staying on a path or something. But, you know, I will say, to plug your show... When does it come on? He can listen to it while he's in the car. Well, you can listen to Cottage 106.3 from 4 a.m. to 7 a.m. every weekday. Oh, my God, every weekday. Every weekday. Oh, so you got the weekends off. I have weekends off and most of my day. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty, that's true. Yeah. That's a, that's a funny shift. That's very late. Well, yeah, I was the only one they'd give me. <laughs> you would think that people that late are sleeping while they're driving, but you never know. All right. Tim, I hope that helped. <laughs> Dear Mr. Lennon and guest, hopefully Mr. Paul F. Tompkins. Well, well gosh, <laughs> what well, a disappointment. <laughs> well, I hope you're not disappointed. Okay, here's this question. I am a 22-year-old virgin, and I'm okay with that. Okay. Also, how can I keep my room cleaner? It's getting out of hand. HTR. All right, HTR. We'll just call you H for this. Sure. Uh, doesn't seem like you need to bring up the uh, 22-year-old version. You have that no did, question about that. That did seem extraneous to the issue. I think he's maybe trying to have a f little fun with Steve Carell. Sure. But... Because he was a 40-year-old version. Right. Which is a little more, uh, I guess, interesting than a 22-year-old version. I mean, it seems about... It is. That's not out of the ordinary, I don't it's think. It's not crazy. No, that's... Yeah. Sure, you haven't met the right one. That's right. Sure. Good yeah, for you. That's scary. Sex can be... The idea of sex can be scary before you have it for the first time. That's true. But then, once you have it for the first time, it's not scary anymore. Most people enjoy the feeling of it. That's right. And the companionship. I think it is the feeling that people like the most. I think it's a physical feeling people enjoy. That's right. It's emotional attachment to someone that people like that, too. That helps. That helps. That helps. Yeah, so it's not such a bad thing. It's really not. It's great. Gets a bad rap. The smooth criminal, Al A. Peterson. We, last time I saw you was at that uh, Rangers game. That's right. You were, you were, we both kind of were going through the security line together. That's right. I, I was in an elaborate disguise. And, of course, uh, I had to remove all that to go through the metal detectors. Right. I was disguised as the Tin Man from The Wizard of Oz. And why not? You know, people dress up at sporting events all the time. They d Exactly. I thought this is a perfect place to hide in plain sight and also enjoy a sporting event. Sure. Sure. Be the, be the guy you want to get on the Jumbotron. Who doesn't? I would love to get on the Jumbotron. I've never been. I thought they were going to do a character cam, and so I dressed up as a character, and I thought this would be my opportunity. Was it at all close to Halloween? Not at all. This was, game, I don't it think was it was Easter. Right. <laughs> I, a rare Easter Rangers game. I remember because I just uh, my pockets were full. That's what I was pulling out of my pockets for the uh, security, full of Easter eggs that I just found at a hunt. That's right. And you know, um, Easter eggs have trace amounts of mercury. That's why they set off the metal detectors. I don't know. I'll take everything out of my pockets. I'll take my, sh my glasses off, my coat off. I'm standing there in my socks and, you know, just sort of long, long johns. I walk through and they say, you don't need to do this. I say, I'm so taking you, you remove your clothes entirely down to your Old West underwear. That's right. That's right. My union suit, if it's cold, I'll have a full union suit. That's on. right. Which Easter famously freezing time of year. It can be. These New York winters well, can be tough. At a hockey rink. Sure. Yeah. Well, you, you, you can always say about the hockey rink, the water has to be frozen or we're not playing. That was the game where I believe the, uh, the cooling system shut off halfway through. Right. And then the ice started to get very slushy. Right. And uh, it became very difficult for the players to play. I they, remember I remember goalie Heinrich Lundqvist said, I can't, <laughs> st I can't tend to goal in these conditions. Well, I didn't have, you know, my seats weren't quite as good as you were. I couldn't hear him say that. But uh, I do remember that the moment where they, I think it was in the fourth period, where they... 
I think it was. Uh, uh, that would be yes. It was an overtime. You're right. It was an overtime, and they just took their skates off. Right. And they just played in their stocking feet, which wet, wet socks. What's worse, right? How how slow can you move? Hey, you, if here's some free advice for you. If you want to move slow, put on wet socks. You'll go very slow. If you find yourself in a situation where I can't be rushing around. Yeah. My whole life is rushing around. Yes. If you feel like you're going too fast, right. put on some wet socks. Slow down and yeah. enjoy your life. Exactly. Sure, you'll probably catch a cold. I wouldn't blame you if you did. You can't blame someone if they catch a cold. Well, sometimes you can. Well, in, what, in what sense? What well, instance? Like, do you remember when uh, Ben Franklin in, uh, invented electricity? <laughs> I remember the nation was he, saying, we need was, something yes, to, was, we got was, all these light bulbs, we need something to light them up. He was a real, that's right, that's right, the founding fathers were, well, we've invented light bulbs, so what a fool's errand this was, we got nothing to do. To right, light we've made with. glass into a circle. We know these are supposed to light up. Right. Um, and then Put the holes before the car on that one. Ben Franklin, the famous inventor, invented electricity, and he did so by going out in a rainstorm and uh, flying a kite with a key to attract the electricity down to earth. That's right. That's right. Well, he caught a cold because he didn't wear a raincoat. Is that true? That's entirely 100% true. They had raincoats back then? Yeah, he invented them. That's why. That's what makes it so infuriating. The guy invented raincoats. Before this instance? Before this instance. And he just said, I'm so busy. I'm, my brain is shooting off. I think he was trying to play at being the eccentric inventor. Oh, and then it God. comes back to bite him in the ass. Yeah, just to, forgive my language. Th- that's fine. But I, I hope it goes further, the language. <laughs> I, I hope we have to dust off the, the bleep button. It's just me. I, I consider myself a gentleman. I try not to express myself in vulgar terms, but every once in a while I like to get down in the mud. Al, your voice. Yes. It's a low voice. Well, do, you I, ever recall, so. do you ever record any uh, soul songs? I'm not much of a singer. I don't really have I, – I, I suppose I can carry a tune a little bit, but uh, I don't really know uh, if I could – you know, record a song that anyone would want to hear. Well, you're being very humble, but I, I'm sure you could come up with something. Well, we'll see. Maybe I'll sing later in the show. Well, maybe one of these questions are, hey, could you two sing a song? <laughs> we'll, we'll certainly see. And then you. the answer to that is a yes or no question. We could say, yes, we can, or no, we cannot. That's right. Should we, should we decide right now, each question, we will offer the question, can this be answered with a soul song? Sure. Yes or no? Sure. All right. We can say, yeah, if, if, we, if it can be. If it can be, we will. We will. We if definitely it, will. If it can't be, we won't. <laughs> we won't. Because we, we can't. Because, yes. That's why. So now we don't have to say every time we can't do that. We'll just say yes or no. <laughs> right. Because we've established here that those are the parameters. And if you're skipping ahead. Which I hope you're not. You missed it. Why would people skip ahead, do you think? I think sometimes people download these and just skip all the way in to the end and they say— They just want to hear the question. Yeah. Oh, you're saying pass the questions. Pass the, the question right end. to the end and say, okay, I technically went through that episode. You think it's people have compulsions? People want to be, you know, I've listened to every single thing. But they haven't, really, if they skipped ahead. That's what I'm saying. Hmm. If they say— I've made it through every episode of Questions for Lennon. Right. That's people, technicality. People just like to build up in their little iPod uh, folders, I guess, That's the right. checked off listen to. Yeah. They don't care. It's a shame. It is a shame. That's no way to live. It's not fair to the listeners. It's not fair to yourself because you're losing, missing out on some valuable advice. If I've learned anything in my life and all the years that I've spent on this planet, you have to take care Which is of how many years? Oh, I don't like to say. You, and I should, a gentleman shouldn't ask. That's right. And, well, it's fine. Under normal circumstances, of course, I'd tell you. But I am on the lam, and I'm, I'm hiding. I am a criminal. You are still a, uh, on the lam. I'm still a wanted man, yes. Okay. Well, I want to get in that in just a second. Yes. Well, I'm being tracked by my ex fiance Carlifer, who uh, is on the hunt for me and the hoodie that I stole from her. Color hoodie? What, sorry? What color hoodie? Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a sort of – it's a peacock blue Oh, very nice. Do you know what I mean? Uh, it's kind of, you know, kind of blends from green to blue. Exactly, but more on the blue side than the green. I see. Yes. Very good. Does it have, you see so many sweatshirts are doing these days. Does it have feathers that stick out the back? I can't tell you how many times I'll be walking down the street and I'm brushed off to the side. What is going on here? Peacock feathers coming out of everyone's, you know, clothing. Is that so? I find it happens all the time. I haven't noticed that trend. Have you been walking down streets? Well, I skulk down streets. Right, I, I don't you, want to be seen. You have to sort of take back alleys and exactly, that sort of thing. Yeah, so, so maybe that's what I'm missing out on. You're not missing out on much. I might start taking your routes. 
You're, you're missing out on being annoyed. <laughs> I think you're doing the right thing. So you got. So you you stole the sweatshirt. You admit to that? Well, yes. I I had faked my own death to get out of my engagement to Carla for because uh, I thought things were getting too serious. I got cold feet. Right. And, uh, That's tough. It turns out I didn't need to do that. It, you know, I could have just ended the relationship in a normal way. But uh, right. the you talked about done. the differences you guys had yes. between you. And- well, here's what happened: is that uh, first I faked alopecia. I thought that she would be shallow enough that she would end the relationship. She didn't. So then I had to fake my own death. Had she ever, you know, displayed signs of being a shallow person before? No, she's actually a wonderful woman. <laughs> she's almost the type of person you'd want to get married to, it sounds like. That, oh, for sure. And that, that definitely is a, a failing of mine you that I that. did not give her nearly enough credit. That's okay. Yeah. How did you fake the alopecia? Oh, thank you. <laughs> it feels good to be absolved of that after all this time. Hey, I'm here to help people. <laughs> I don't. I don't just I help mean, the listeners. I, the guests too. I mean, John, that weighed heavily on me for quite some time. <laughs> and me saying it's okay, yeah, it's fine. Never heard that before. It's great, <laughs> great news. Oh, how many times have you told that story? <laughs> it's it's one. It's probably my most often told story. Yeah, well, you'll find, you'll probably some, find yourself in situations like this I in probably, front microphones. I should probably stop telling that story since right. I am a wanted criminal. I'm surprised I haven't got – you know, uh, probably a lot of uh, investigators and detectives aren't listening to these podcasts. Mm, I pray you're right. <laughs> you can never know. They probably should. I mean, I bet people reveal secrets on these things all the time. <laughs> it's true. I know I have every single time. So to fake alopecia – I should probably stop appearing on podcasts. <laughs> right. Or, or play a character. Oh, what would that be like? Let me try that. Let me try to be a character. Sure. For this episode of the show. Very. That would be great. All right. So, uh, what are what are characters like? Now, a character is you know when you you're yourself. Yes. And well, you look in the mirror and that's me. I'm talking the way I talk. My opinions are the ones I have. Yes. The, 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 the feelings I have about things right. are very, my very own. Standard looking in the mirror stuff. Sure. Every time you pass a mirror, you kind of take <laughs> that few that's moments. That's me. This is who I am. <laughs> the checklist. I, I think the things I think. I right. say the things I say. Yes. And you don't even need to hold the checklist with you in your pockets anymore because you do it so often. I remember one time uh, doing that when I caught my reflection in a spoon. Uh, was it an ice cream spoon? It was a coffee spoon. Oh, People are, okay. I was stirring my coffee, pulled the spoon out. Oop, there's me. This is what I look like. This is who I am. These are the thoughts I think, and these are the things I say. My voice and sounds like this. Right back. My voice sounds like this. Right back into the coffee. One final stir. <laughs> One final stir. Then you closed your eyes and threw away the spoon because you don't want to go through that again. <laughs> That's right. So, yeah, you, you go through that. A character sort of is, you know, on the... Is, Show no wait I, now. I, now that I think of it, we've never had a character on the show. Everyone really? who's been on the show has been a real person. So we're breaking ground here. Right, this will be exciting. What if we, John? What if we both did characters? Oh, well, that would be great. We don't have to do the whole time, but we could do it for a little bit. Just for a little bit. Yes. Okay. Uh, let me think of who. What I'm going to do. Got it. You've already got it. I mean, I said that. I'm thinking of it still. All right. I... <laughs> what? Why did you lie? Because I wanted to sort of keep things moving along, and then I would last second come up with something. Let's go to hosting. All right, I think I think I have an idea of what I'd like to do, and I think it would be fun. Okay, great. Yeah. Well, let's uh, well let's uh, start the show again. Oh, oh here right. we go. Question. You'll get by with a little help from Dale Dylan. Murphy. It's questions <laughs> for Lennon. Hey, how's it going? I'm Dale Murphy. We are gonna we're gonna uh, you know do what we do every time on this show. Uh, listen to uh, read questions and answer them. Uh, hopefully, give some people some advice. I've got a great uh, guest for you here today. His uh, name. Well, I'm gonna let him say his name. Because, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to be so presumptive to say, uh, you know, I know this person's name and I want to tell you everything about him. Uh, I'm Mr. Know-it-all. I got to be the hotshot guy around town who just names people. I'm not going to be that guy. So say your name and we can get going with this episode. Hi, my name is Sven. I'm a farmer from Sweden. Your name is Phil? Sven. <laughs> Where did you get Phil from? <laughs> I thought, yeah, I'm uh, sorry, as as Dale, I'm one of these guys who hears the name Sven as Phil. 
that's, that's all right. I don't mind. It's a very common uh, disease. Uh, it's called uh, it's it's called Sven Filfla flip flop. Sven Phil Sven flip flop. That's right. And you know we're trying to raise money to to have this thing corrected. All a, a doctor really needs to do it's a brain very simple, very quick brain surgery that you just poke one of the nodes in your brain and you're fine. Is it a manageable condition? Uh, it's manageable. Uh, the only drawbacks is if you're ever doing a podcast and you got a guy named Sven coming on. And you hear Phil, you, you all really the drawback is just wasting time talking about it. How, how is it treated, this condition? I'm sorry? How is it treated, this condition? The brain surgery. <laughs> it's the brain surgery where you go and you poke the node. But this is, this is how the condition is managed, but there's no cure? No, nope, there is no cure. There's no magic pill. I'm so sorry. There's no magic pill that us who suffer from this flip-flop disease can just take. Oh, I'm so sorry. So you get very mad at me, but I'm not just asking a good question. I'm not mad at you. I'm frustrated with this condition. It's killing me. Oh, that's the other drawback is uh, early death. <laughs> so... This condition where you hear the name Sven as Phil, it is incurable and also fatal. It's fatal. Uh, most uh, havers of the disease die at age 20. Most most havers? Most havers but of not, the disease. But not all havers. Not all. I'm, I'm lucky to made it to 21. Dale, tell me, where are you from? I am from Boston, Mass. I was born on that river. We revived from Sweden, so I don't know. I was born on a Charles River, on a uh, a uh, rowing skull. <laughs> from you know the MIT students, you know they have those rowing skulls. On That's it. right. And I was born on one of them, and I, I grew up on one. <laughs> I grew up on one. I went, I went to high school on a uh, rowing skull. Okay. I went to college on a skiff, and uh, now I do my podcast here from this. Boathouse. Have you ever been on a boat cruise? No, I'm, I just turned 21. Happy birthday to you. Thank you very much. You know, I've been 21 now for, you know, 12 hours. No one said happy birthday to me. <laughs> Sven, I want to talk to you about something. D yeah. You say you're a farmer? That's right, from Sweden. Now, what are you, what are you farming these days? Uh, These days, I don't want to know about a past or future plans for what you're farming. I just started farming a different thing. Uh, do I, um, I gotta, I gotta break this for one second. Yeah, what's the problem? I no, I'll, I'll break it yeah, too. Would you mind? Sure. I guess I didn't have anything prepared. I thought that's fine. i I guess I didn't realize what, how much of a world. A character needs to have. Usually, when I put on a disguise, it's just to get in some place or out of some place. Sure, you don't want to talk to anyone. That's right. So I don't. So when I do have to talk to people, I don't have to have that much of a backstory. Exactly. You know, it's just like I'm. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm lost. I, I'm, I'm lost. I'm a farmer. Get I don't out of know. my way. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm lost. I'm a farmer. Get out of my way. No more questions. Uh, no, I know what you mean. I mean the the, the Dale character I was just playing was. Ah, oh God, I probably been working shop in that good. for seven months. It was very good. I'm slipping back into the... the <laughs> You're not ready to let go of Dale yet. I gotta get... <laughs> drums, drums. <laughs> I got to get back into it. No, I, you know, I understand what you mean. That Dale character I've been working on. Has been, geez, I'm seven months. What was the inspiration for Dale? For Dale? Yeah, that's what I just asked. It was rowing. I was rowing. You were rowing. I was rowing. And if, if were you, you on a rowing machine or are you actually out in the water? I was on the water, but I was considering myself a rowing machine. I was going so fast. And I thought to myself, because <clears throat> you got nothing to do out there. You're just thinking of things. I well, thought to you, myself. I mean, you you do. You have the rowing to do. You th well, the the couple thoughts that go through your head are: hold on to the oars, right? Push them forward. Got it. Dig into the water. Pull them back. Again, hold on to row oars. Push them forward. Dig it. Pull them back. 
That's all you can think. You can kind of do that sort of on autopilot. But you can you can stop occasionally and just kind of float, right? Yeah, you can, but you wouldn't be considered a rowing machine. True. And I want true. you I, wanted to be considered a rowing. I machine. want people on the shore, on the banks of the whatever river I'm on, to say, "God, God, look at him! Look at him go! He's a, he's a machine. Yeah. He's, he's a you know." To be quite honest, he's a rowing machine. Now, based on the way you phrase that, are you not? Are you hoping to do this on the banks of many rivers, or you're not sure what? river you are on i want to do this on many rivers i sort of want to do a world world tour of showing people showing off i want to show off as a rower right what about a lake would you ever row on a lake i could do a lake but you you can't you know a river's kind of like a street you know that's right there's more people more people can line up on the side the streets of water um sure oh yes yeah okay yes yes i I think you're right and a lake is uh, like what a roundabout (laughs) A lake is a cul-de-sac. <laughs> if if we're getting technical. In terms of uh, streets, what is the ocean then? Highway. Hold on, you got to give me a minute. The, the autobahn. <laughs> if you can go, can you go pretty fast on the ocean? You can. I well, what you, you have more room? Well, I guess I guess a well, let's, let's let's go backwards a little bit. Sure. A tidal wave. You know, there's huge waves in the ocean. Yes. I guess a tidal wave of a street would be. A truck. Because <laughs> they're huge and they're coming at you. Sure. So, yeah, I'd say I think you're right. You know, the- what about a, uh, like a stretch on my limo, the kind you have a, a, like a party bus, you know? Those are, those are kind of like, you know, freights, <laughs> freighters. Well, wait a minute. So now they're just a different vehicle? <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Okay, so tidal waves a truck. <laughs> yeah, that's right. A freighter is a party. A hummer limousine. A hummer limousine. Right. Okay, I, I'm having a little trouble following. Well, I, I've got it all written down. I don't have any of the copies with me. Oh, so this is something you've talked about before. This is something I talk about, I would say, almost endlessly. <laughs> well, I'm not on this podcast. I see. So, you know, making comparisons to water and streets right. and what's on them and who's in them. I'm like that with the hoodies. I love them. That's why. Let's get back to that. So that's why sure. you you took it from your your, your fiance's my ex fiance Carlifer. Carlifer is her first name. Yes, that's her name, Carlifer. It's a it's a combination of uh, her parents' first names. It's a in my mind a clumsy portmanteau. It's, it's a what? A clumsy portmanteau. No, uh, d- define. <laughs> You're gonna need to help me out here because you know I. I, I <laughs> I'm a, I'm the type of guy who hears word. I used to be this type of person. I hear a word I didn't know and say, "Got it," and then, and now I'm lost. But I've turned into a person who's the type of person now who I I hear a word I say I say stop everything. Right. Define. Sure. Give me the Webster's de- definition. You, you talk as if you're on the Starship Enterprise talking to the computer. <laughs> right. Right. Well, a uh, a poor man toe. Are you familiar with that term? Have you heard that before? No. You've never heard that word. It sounds like you're saying poor man. Toe. Uh, I'm not. I'm saying portmanteau. Uh, a portmanteau, it's, there's two definitions of portmanteau, and that's what's wonderful about the English language. And if, if no one said this to you, an English person, on behalf of America, thank you for the English language. It's, I think it's wonderful. Hey, I get that all the time. I had nothing to do with it. I'm just borrowing it, you know. But a portmanteau is a, it's a word that's made up of two different words. Okay. Uh, if that makes sense, you, you you take the sounds and meanings of two different words, you put them together. I get what you're saying. So Carlifer right. is a portmanteau of Carla and Jennifer. Oh, I'm I get sorry, it. Carl and Jennifer. Got it. Carlifer. Carlifer. It, it doesn't work. I don't like it. I, I loved Carlifer with all my heart, but I always thought her name was a clumsy portmanteau. Uh, also a portmanteau is a, is a large valise of sorts, a, 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 like a large leather suitcase. It's also called a portmanteau. Oh, now that I do know. Yes. Okay, I'm, I'm with it. So you've seen those bags and you didn't know what to call them. I, I would, uh, you know, I'd have one that I'd take on a trip with me and it would come around at the, the baggage claim. And I'd say, excuse me, can you, can you pass me my, didn't know what it was called. Just keeps going, I'm done. I'm not going to admit not you, knowing. You wouldn't even try to come up with a... Another word to no. indicate what you were talking no, about. No, because I knew it wasn't a suitcase exactly. Right. And I'm not going to go around saying— What about the word bag? <laughs> it's, it's not a bag. It's a palmetto. It's— <laughs> Very close. 
<laughs> what am I saying wrong? Port Mento? Por- portmanteau. Portmanteau. You almost said palmetto. <laughs> Would you blame me? I wouldn't at all. It's another wonderful word. It means little palm. So you, you hated the name. I hated the name Carlifer. And every time you'd have to introduce, you'd be out at a party or something. Hey, I, you know, I'm Al and this is, well, this is this person. You say your name. I don't she want to ins- even say it. She insisted. She was very proud of it. Even though she agreed with me that it was a clumsy portmanteau, she was still proud of it because she was very close with her parents. She loved them. Okay. And she would insist. People are doing that. People love their parents. They are doing that. They're doing it. I think they're doing it more and more these days. It's a trend, you know, the trend, which I don't mind. It's a real trend. It's great. Yeah, parent love. But she insisted that I would introduce her using her full name. She she forbade me to use any sort of pet name, nickname. She wouldn't have it. It was Carlifer or Bust. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Al, and this is uh, my friend Stretch. (laughs) Was she tall? (laughs) She was advertised. Oh, okay. Well, so st- still, is, as far as I know, people have people have been having a, a late in life uh, uh, growth spurts. Really? Uh, that's what I've come to believe. Post puberty. Right. Right. Exactly. Like what are we talking? Twenties, thirties. Twenties, thirties. Some people will be sixty years old. Shoot up. Can you imagine? Could you imagine growing to be sixty? Well, I mean, you you're certainly uh, you're you're no spring chicken. You you've been around for a while. Chill. Uh, Thanks for reminding have, me. Have you? <laughs> It's always nice to hear that you're old. Well, you should you should wear it like a badge of honor. You beat death uh, in, in a literal way that I that I haven't been able. I faked my own death. You, you've been you, avoiding it. You actually were dead, right? And then decided you had, had enough of that. I've had enough of it because it's 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 dreadfully boring. I can't imagine. It's a deadly bore. Pretending to be dead is actually quite exciting. I can imagine. You sneak. You're skulking around. That's right. You're sneaking around. Sneaking, skulking. And going That's through it. all any- you seem to do. Was so, that one of yours? So no, <laughs> no, not one of mine. <laughs> uh, that's not one of mine. I'll do that whenever I'm in a, you know, a club where music is being played or a, a concert. <laughs> You'll point out. That's not one of mine. Uh, that's not one of mine. Because uh, I think people want to hear that from me. They don't. I've come to realize. But <laughs> I'll be sitting at a concert elbowing people. Because I usually go to concerts alone because no one wants right. to go with me anymore. And I'll hit because who- of this behavior? Pretty much. And I'm always trying to start a mosh pit. And I'll elbow whoever's next to me and say, not one of mine. And they said, we know, we, okay, what you're not it? on stage singing. We know it's not one of yours. What is it that made you feel that you had to say this? Were you uh, afraid that people would not know? The need sort of to be the center of attention to sort of... Uh, Very upfront about this. Yeah, you know, it's something I'm working on. Right. And there have been times when I've gone to concerts and, you, you know, I find myself paying off lighting, people who rig the lighting and say, you know, put one of those lights on me. Right. And, I, you know, I'm, you're wasting going through money for what? It's almost like a, an in-the-air tonight situation where uh, you actually want the light to be shown on you during the song. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And I got to the point where I said, I just, I'm pulling focus away from other people. I'm right. not focused on what's important to me. Exactly. Which is, you know, getting out and do my photography. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to take the best pictures I can. At the, at the concert? Uh, just in general. Oh, I see. <laughs> right. I've done, oh, I should mention this. I'm now into photography. <laughs> and I love it. That's good information to have. <laughs> for, for anyone. No. <laughs> Oh, uh, this is what I wanted to ask. Sure. Where were we? So well, you, 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 we you, tried doing those characters, and that you know. Uh, you know, I think I wasn't as good at it as, as you were. Oh come on! You got lost in that character. <laughs> I could barely get out of it. <laughs> you, you, you get so deep into these. You're talking like them for the That's rest right. of the day. That's right. I'm probably slipping back into a little That's bit right. of Dale. Like, it's like you're sending uh, uh, text messages to Sally Field as President Lincoln. That's right. That's exactly right. <laughs> So you're on the run. Where you, where you hold up these days? And, and yeah. how do you do that? Okay, okay. Good. I've got, Good on you. I've got a few safe houses around. Right. Uh, various places. And these are places boarded up windows, or are they nice places? They're, I'll say this. They're nice inside. Oh, very nice. They're nice inside. Okay, because yes. I'm, you know, I'm picturing you're out in the woods, a shack that's leaned over. You're saying on the inside. It's, <laughs> it's leaned over. It's sort of <laughs> leaning. It's about to go. Were you thinking of the word lean to? I am now. <laughs> uh, you've probably 
walk past one of my safe houses and not even realize. You're it. kidding me. Come on. You're not holed up in the in the Statue of Liberty, are you? Am I? Are you? Do you think that I am? I do now. It's not for me to say. Okay, that's smart of you because you, the minute you say where your safe house is, it's no longer safe. Boom. It's a danger house. You're done. And and so you think you get caught, the charges are a theft. Well, I think Probably fraud is in there because I did fake my own death. And how did that go down? As far as I know, it did not go down that well because Carliford does know that I'm alive and is and is hunting me. So, do you have regular contact with her? No, I do not have regular contact with her. But every once in a while, I one of my operatives will let me know that she's getting close, and so I have to pick up and move on. Okay, and again, don't tell me too much because I don't want you to put yourself in danger. But you've got operatives out there. You're sort of running a whole a network of people. I have friends. This is very I've interesting. I've got friends in low places. <laughs> don't get me going. What, what do you mean? Oh, that song. What song? I'm trying not to think of the rest of the words. <laughs> I've got friends in what, low places. In low places. So you just, you hear a thing that I say and you make it into a song. This is marvelous. This is why I admire musicians so much. We take any, we'll take a word, whatever word, uh, shoe. name, name, shoe. shoe. Uh, you know, give me a shoe. Don't have to be new. Give me a hat and I'm ready for the ball. They don't always, they always have to rhyme these well, songs. Well, that one certainly didn't. This seemed more like a poem than a song. Poem, songs just, are just poems. You just, you, then you put the, a beat to it and some guitars and a piano. I never thought of it that way, but you're right. Songs are sort of of poems on the move. So yeah, you don't have kind. Con- you know, I've I've got a situation uh, myself <laughs> where I'm sort of. I used to be uh, uh, married to a woman named uh, Yoko. Yoko Ono. Right, and then I died, right. and now she doesn't want to have anything. Well, she doesn't know I'm alive. You have managed to keep this a secret. I've kept it a secret because I've, like you, I've borrowed something from her, her, her beret. Oh, sure. The and it black, looks fantastic on me. The Black Ray. And it yeah. looks so great on me. Everyone says it. Everyone knows it. And I'm not giving that thing back. You know when you have a piece of uh, uh, something in your closet? That's right. And you know, I can always go to that. Absolutely. I can always go to that one. I'll be the hit. It's my go-to. Yep, that's my go-to. Yes. I'm the, when I wear that thing, I get, I'm the guy. You know, it's really a shame because I can't wear that hoodie in public. That's right. I can wear it in my safe houses. Right. Which I do. It's the first, as soon as I walk through the transom of that safe house, the first thing I do is put on that hoodie. Good. And um, Keep yourself warm. Well, even if, it's, even if it's very warm, I'll put the hoodie on. I just feel comfortable. just feel the most me. Now, have you ever tried explaining this to, to Carl with her? I never felt that she could understand, you know. She sounds like a very understanding person. She's more understanding than I gave her credit for, yes, but maybe I'm doing the same thing again. Maybe I'm just assuming that she won't be able to understand how much I love that hoodie because it belonged to her, but I didn't give her credit for accepting me with alopecia, and now look where we are. We're here on the podcast, but we've gone way off topic here. You want to know how to keep your room cleaner. This is a difficult question to answer because... Shouldn't be a question, I guess. How can I keep my room cleaner? Right. Try cleaning it up and then keep it that way. Yes. Uh, or, and also, it, it's, it's a question of, you know, are we talking about a scrub clean? Or do you have dirt everywhere? Or is it just clothing all That's over right, the place? That's right, because there's clean and then there's also neat. Straightening up, right. Yes. Yes. Ne- neat and clean are not necessarily the same thing. Right. If you want to be neat, straighten up. If you want to be clean, get a brush. If you want to be neat, be neat. Cat Stevens. If you, That's not one of yours. Uh, no, no, I should have jumped on. That is not one of mine. <laughs> I would say that, uh, you know, you got to you gotta just, there's, there's a place for everything and everything in its place. And if you get in the habit of putting things away after you're done with them, that goes a long way towards keeping one's room clean. That's true. So neat. But clean is a different thing. You should vacuum if you have a rug. You should sweep if you have a hardwood floor. Scrub the walls. <sighs> scrub. You should scrub the walls. I don't. This is a thing that people don't do enough: is scrub their walls. Scrub the walls. Scrub the ceiling. That's really not gonna. Most people don't do that because the drips get all over the place. Also, and this is from my personal experience: uh, wear latex gloves. 
uh, whenever you're in the house, so you don't leave fingerprints anywhere. Yeah, I was going to ask about that because some people, some criminals, they shave down the, uh, they burn off the fingerprints. Yes, that you like to have a good grip on things. Well, I don't want to burn my fingers. I guess just you don't want the, the pain. main reason I didn't do it. You I, don't I, like I physical pain. pain. Of course, I because mean that's that's a feeling as well. Much like sex, there's a positive feeling. Sure, uh, burning your fingertips. Not good. Uh, or using acid, whatever it is that you're doing to destroy those fingerprints, it's not worth it. Right. I mean, one day they'll they'll uh, there'll be a home kit that you can safely and pain free remove for your fingerprints. For sure. One, one day, day. That affordable. Will, that will be a reality for sure. Right. And it'll any, be affordable. <laughs> the ones they have on the market now, are, you know, it'll probably be expensive at first, but then once the generic version comes out, the generic's just as good as the other ones. It's just as good. It's just as good. You know, the store brand peanut butter. There's no difference between that and Jif. Right. It's still smooth peanuts as far as I'm concerned. Still smooth peanuts. I do want to say uh, we didn't answer this question that we set up for ourselves. Uh, uh, no, we can't do a sole version of this uh, answering oh, this question. Oh, that's right. That's right. No, this, this one you this just doesn't can't. lend itself well. It, it can't. No. It can't. Well, I'm sorry, uh, HTR. Sorry, HTR. So y- your room's getting out of hand. That's your own fault. This is entirely HDR's own fault. Uh, I would assume you're 22. Maybe you don't live with your parents anymore. But if you do, it's on them too. Your parents got to, they got to say, clean it up. That's exactly right. You can't, if you're a parent, you cannot allow a child to just wallow in bad habits. It's your job to instruct them and there must be severe punishments if uh, your will is not respected. Right. The video games have to be taken away. Oh, I was thinking like burning the fingertips. Oh, I see. We'll remove your fingerprints if you don't clean your room. If you don't clean your room. I would say if you're a parent, don't start with that penalty. Don't, you, you build up to it. Right. First, take, take away the video games first. First is the video game stuff, yes. And make sure the homework is done. Man, that's right. That's make right. sure the homework is done. And take out the garbage. You know, the, now, now we're just talking about the chore wheel. Take out the papers and the trash. Or we'll cut off your fucking hands. Is that what he is? <laughs> That is not one of mine. John, you're slipping. <laughs> I feel like this is a place where if you can't indulge this habit of yours on your own podcast, I don't know where you can do it. I'm trying to. Yeah, that's true. But I'm trying to get you know get it out of my system. Oh, I understand. I'm trying not well, to then do it. What I'm doing isn't helpful. Or is it? It is helpful because I'm, I'm abstaining from what I— resisting the urge. Right. All right. I'll, I'll keep drop. I'll keep up with these drops and see how we do. Please do. And I, I enjoy hearing a sentence and then having that worked into a song. Always have. Sure. Always have. Uh, so uh, I hope that helped, HTR. <laughs> Dear John, an esteemed mystery guest who I will guess will be hockey legend Wayne Gretzky. Bad guess. Although we did mention hockey earlier. That's true. So if this person was listening live and wrote this in, it's, not, it's impossible. It's not possible. It's not Listen possible. Live. I have this printed out already. Uh, we're the only ones who are listening live. That's true. Also, Ryan. Oh. Wait, whoa. Ryan's falling asleep over there. <laughs> yeah, he's always falling asleep. He, fi- you know, Ryan told me once, he said he was drunk as hell. He was so drunk when he told me this. What was he drunk on? He was drunk on uh, a tall bottles of beer. Came in a green. It came in green glass. He told me he would only drink out of green glass. I said, "Why?" He said, "You know, I'm, I'm such an amphibian head. I love frogs." I said, "We're getting. What are we talking about here, Ryan?" I know this is a little Pepe pin. I told him not to wear that anymore. Anyway, he he said to me he was drunk. I was sober as a judge. I was gonna say church mouse, but you're right. It is judge. <laughs> I was so I was sober as a judge. And I was quiet as a church That's mouse. That's right. Yeah, keeping to myself. It was at a you know a party we have here for the the podcast, the Christmas party. Right. And Ryan came up to me. He said, "You know what's wrong with your podcast?" I said, "I, I don't want to know." He said, "It stinks. <laughs> it's boring and it makes me sleepy." That's pretty direct. That was, I said, "Maybe the maybe the bottles of green beer are making you sleepy." <laughs> That's also a fair point. Uh, we never resolved it. <laughs> we never resolved the whole situation. It's the first time I've actually brought it up. No. And, and I'm glad you don't have a uh, microphone by Orion because I don't want you to, to try to defend yourself here. I got to say this is uh, very uncomfortable, but I'm also enjoying the sensation. Hey, what do you mean? You're into the rush. It feels a little voyeuristic, you know. To, You're uh, sitting back. Watching your personal business. Now that that makes me wonder about you. 
Oh, what are you wondering? Do you like reality TV? Love it. <laughs> you watch the show The Bachelor? Yes, I do. Me every, too. Every I incarnation. See. Bachelorette? Yes, of course. Bachelor in Paradise? Absolutely. Lost? <laughs> yep. Oh! <laughs> I, watched, I watched Lost to see if any of the unattached characters would hook up. And so, so did. Sometimes the Bachelorette people cruise onto Lost and That's start right. making out with people. That's right. Cut! Get out of here! <laughs> and why do they leave that in? I don't understand. Have you ever dressed up, speaking of Wayne Gretzky here, have you ever dressed up as someone famous? Other I, than the Tin Man. I mean, that's a costume. I used to attempt it because I figured that was the best way to go about my business. Mm. You know, people would see me. They definitely wouldn't think it was Al A. Peterson. Right. I remember, but I chose poorly. Um, one time I dressed up as <laughs> Nikola Tesla. And so I'm wearing very old-fashioned clothing. People are saying, who are you supposed to be? And I thought it was obvious. But it attracted more attention than it diverted. So That's got to sting a little bit, bad. too. If, even if you don't want people around, you know, noticing you, and they say, who are you supposed to be? Yes. But the, also, you don't just walk up to someone and say, who are you supposed to it's, be? I, I thought it was very rude. But then, in retrospect, I can see why they were saying that. Right. Because I was, I was truly wearing a costume. Uh, let's see. One of my other costumes was Santa Claus. That was a mistake. Everyone wants to talk to you when you're dressed as Santa Claus. It's during a certain time of the year, especially. Yes. Was it around Christmas time? It was Easter. <laughs> well, you know, you, an easy one either say, hey, this is my season. Go look for the bunny. You talk to him about what you want. That's right. I can't just be giving you toys at <laughs> any time of year. That makes me just some sort of a philanthropist, which Santa Claus is not. You he's a toy delivery mechanism. You don't think he's a, but he's, you don't think that he's a philanthropist of a kind? No, I think he is doing his job. He, there's nothing out of his heart that's saying, this is, this is me, this is me being a good guy. I'm just, no. I run a business. What's the business, though? The business is a, it's kind of a philanthropic business, but it, <laughs> <laughs> it's a business where he gets his friends together to make toys, the elves. That's right. They make toys and... <laughs> and what do they get in return? They, they get a place to live. The, with the elves. Yeah. The, and also, let me just say this. A place to live. Oh, oh, great. A place to live? The coldest place in the world? How dare you? But I imagine that, you know, the, the, the toy shop in the North Pole is climate controlled. <laughs> and presumably the living quarters are as well. And, and we also don't know much about the, the physiognomy of elves. If maybe not, they like the cold. That's very true. Yeah. Maybe maybe Santa's making the sacrifice for them because in all of the depictions, he's certainly wearing more layers than they are. He's he's dressed for the winter and they exactly. seem to just be – they're wearing tights. <laughs> I mean, either they're freezing or he's sweating his balls off. <laughs> yeah, hi, Candy ass. You've taught me a valuable lesson here today, Al, which is – yeah, I'll go off on a rant like this all the time. One of your signature rants. Yes, it, uh, Santa Claus is a bad guy. The elves <laughs> are treated poorly. It's not a, he's not a philanthropist. It's a business business. And, you know, I don't know the facts. I think I enjoy hearing my own voice. It does seem that I have poked holes in every single point you've made about this. <laughs> and, and, you know, I, I should say this. I've never had this rant with anyone else in the room. It's oh, just been me. Not even Ryan. Not even right. It's just been me. I've looked in the mirror. Right. You say, this is me. who I am. That's who I look like. Uh, this is what I sound like. These are my opinions. These are my opinions and thoughts. And then I say, okay, that's great. I go off on Santa that's Claus right. just to hear myself talk. Absolutely. <laughs> a little bit of advice. Eat breakfast every single day. Grab a cotton eggs. Take two of them out. If you have, if you have, a, if you have an egg carton in your refrigerator. Although, of course, for you, you wouldn't... In, England, they don't put they don't put them in the fridge like we do here. No, we keep them out in the sun. That's right. That's <laughs> keep out in the sun all day long. <laughs> out in the sun, yeah, you, you you know when you've had a good egg breakfast when your stomach is killing you afterwards. That's right. Like you gotta throw up. <laughs> then you know these are, hey, these eggs have been out for a while. That's right. Good for you. Good for you. Good for me. Good for all of us. <laughs> good for all of us who's eat, who's eating breakfast. Uh, yeah, every doesn't day. matter what time it's of day, the but make sure you, meal of make the sure you're getting breakfast food. That's right. Eat eggs at dinner. You know, people think you're crazy, but you're getting your breakfast. That's right. That's right. Eat breakfast every day. doesn't matter what time of day. No. Doesn't, it doesn't matter where. You don't have to be in your kitchenette. If you know you're going to be in a coma for a while, eat as many breakfasts as you can before you go in that coma. If you know you're going to be in a coma, you're one of the lucky ones because a lot of these comas take people 
like that. Do we get that snap? There we go. I wanted to snap too. It's cool. fun. Fun to do it on mic. Uh, I'm I'm just going to do a couple more because I'm I'm making an album of um, uh, found found sounds that I've given to movie producers. Right. Okay, that's good. Well, you didn't find this one. You made it happen. Yeah, they don't need to know that. Add a little, add a little secret. <laughs> well, I hope they're not listening. I hope the movie producers who are buying these sound effects albums off of me are not listening to this. Comedy and Bang we're Bang. back from break. Uh, comedy. <sighs> Gino, and we're God back. Damn it. Sorry, you do this one. Co- yes, we're back. That's a good segue. Yes. You yes. Do this comedy one. Bang Bang. Comedy Bang Bang. We're back here from the break. We have Gino, the intern. Back from the break, baby. We have the Sloppy Boys here. Hey. Uh, lifelong Vacation in stores tomorrow. Uh, we heard uh, we're here for the... Beer? Beer, that's right. Yeah, okay, very good. That's and uh, awesome. Gino, before the break, you said you wanted to re-ask a question. <laughs> what are you talking about? Uh, oh, God. <laughs> Everyone's been on pins and needles during this break. They wanted to hear <laughs> Oh, right, right, right. I had that question before break. Yeah. yeah. My question <laughs> is, what are you guys going to do during the break? <laughs> that was never asked. That's never asked. <laughs> that was okay, never well, asked. Well, well, right, oh, I wanted to re-ask a question. <laughs> yeah. So I hear that you have one song called Pass a Doobie, one song called Here for the Beer. Oh, yeah. And my question was, just to reiterate one of Scott's questions, this is a serious band. You guys are serious about this. This is real. That, that yeah, song we're serious about that song Dead we serious. heard was a, like a real song, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, real as it comes. The album is a documentary. Basically. I mean, if you look at the <laughs> audio frequency waves, it's music. You that's what I was looking not, at the yeah. whole time. Okay, so it's music. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> an artist's objective. Anyway, so what for ninety nine percent of the people maybe just yeah. you know complete amateurish shit. Mm-hmm. Like bullshit, there's a one shit if I get correct. <laughs> yeah, okay, bullshit. Sorry, there's yeah, a one percent out there who is going to really love it. Look, it's like oh, pornography. Yeah. I don't necessarily know how to describe music, but I'll know it when I see it. And you boys, you're doing it. <laughs> pornography? You. You're doing pornography. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I was fully erect that whole time. <laughs> I, see. I have pre cum. Oh come on! <laughs> In a jar, if anyone wants. No, what type <laughs> of show is this? You were, you were saying this is not that type of show, but what type of show? I, I don't know anymore. I see. <laughs> but look, we need to get to our next guest. And Mike, do you have to leave or at some point, you were saying? Uh, oh, I do have to. Yeah, I was going to scoot out a little bit. Okay, but the, you can stay for a little bit, right? Yeah, I was uh, going to move my car around for a bit. Okay. <laughs> so you're going to drive somewhere? Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm so close I'm so close to having an oil change that I just want to get it. Just get to the just mileage. Get to that you're gonna, mileage and yeah. get you're going to move your car down they don't the like, street. I, I want go in there with a, you know, just under. He's like, e- okay, so we'll do it. You're going to move your car down to the gas station and get an oil change. That's what you're I'll saying? I'll probably go, let me think about this, probably down, back, and then down. It's probably, okay, probably because of the, yeah, okay, got it. So All right, but you can stay here for a second. Yeah, for a second. Uh, we need to get to our next guest. He's an author, and this is exciting because uh, you were saying that you've read two books or so I and we found books. out you read uh, Lord of the Flies as well. I never read that but uh, like it turns out I accidentally had what to about Lord it? of the Rings Lord of the Flies like crossover oh shit that I like that amazing. yeah, yeah. Um, and we'll talk to him about that maybe that's the book that he's re- uh, written uh, please it, sure, it sure ain't it's not it sure is not okay Scott. but you use some of the same words I would imagine well I would have to double check, but so, I'm pretty sure yes. So it's almost like you're Eskimo brothers with a lot of the words. <laughs> you know that, what, Scott? That the book that I'm talking about is Scott. This is sorry, serious. but Devin O'Shea is here. Hello, Hi, Scott. Devin. Hello. Devin O'Shea. I need Welcome to get to the this show. out. I need to get you're this coming out of the way. in so I'm coming hot. In hot, Scott. I need to get this out of the way right, right away, Scott. Okay. Welcome Hi. to the show. This is Gino, the Hello, Sloppy Gino. Boys. Hi, Gino. Hi. How you doing? Mike's going to be moving his car. Mike, I do want. I want to hear what you're up to. Listen to me. I saw Alien in 1993. The first one. An alien or the film or, alien? Or Alien 3. Un alien. You saw an alien. A you, human? <laughs> I didn't see the movie Alien in nineteen ninety three. When did you see that? I don't think I've ever seen it. Oh, you gotta wait, see wait, it. It's Sigur- that's great. No, no, that's, that's one of those things. I think you would really I know like when it. I see it. <laughs> Sigourney Weaver, Ridley Scott directed, John Burke. No, you're gonna love it. I see gonna, Prometheus. <laughs> I have not seen Alien <laughs> one. Well, you know, uh, like the bursting out of the chest yeah. stuff that's sort of yeah, riffed on in space balls. Yeah, they riff on that in space balls. Well, yeah, what did you think was it. happening in Spaceballs? When I he said thought it was just a fun riff. Mel Brooks is funny as hell. <laughs> hey, man, look. True. What's your favorite Mel Brooks film? <laughs> My favorite Mel Brooks. Robin Hood Man of Tice, baby. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't know that you're a real fan. <laughs> That's my favorite, too. I got to go with Devin on this one. Yeah, me too. It's a great film. <laughs> a, a sneak? God bless you. <laughs> Come on, man. They got a character name but you. All right, listen. <laughs> now, Scott, I saw Alien in 1993. You and- saw an alien. <laughs> yes, Scott. Okay. All right. Do you know what this show is? Yes, I don't because think the sloppy boy. Or I know what this show I is. I just anymore. want to make sure because Alien 3, directed yes. by David yes. Fincher, yes. came yes. out in 1993. Now, so this is very confusing. I guess, Scott, it is a funny coincidence. 
<laughs> but I did not see do, Alien do you, 3. Do you think this alien was drawn to the earth by the movie coming out? Scott, I, I don't have the answers. All I know is that in the year 1993, I was walking through Griffith Park. Okay, the, in Los Angeles. In Los a famous Angeles, park. Famous park. There's a bear outside. There's a bear outside. There's like a bear statue. Outside this building. Oh, 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 oh I see. Okay. And I was walking. I was walking with my little brother. I volunteered for the Big Brothers Big Sisters program. Okay. I so was with my little brother. Okay. How and old? is she a real little brother? No, this is – it's a program where you volunteer. I'll explain that to you yeah, in a second. Right. How old are you uh, in 1993? 93, I was 40. You were 40. Yeah. Okay. So uh, currently you're in the – you're six, old. Your 60s. <laughs> yeah, I'll be in my 60s. Yeah, okay. Um, to be honest, Scott, I've been – 65 years old. So uh, eligible mm-hmm. for Social Security. Are you I taking just, advantage oh, of that? Nice. I just filed yesterday. Oh, you did? You. Okay. Was it your birthday yesterday? It sure was. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. Thank you. Uh, uh, Happy uh, birthday uh, The Slappy Boys are here. You. Scott with the law. Oh, you can sing that song. You can sing that now. now. Happy birthday to you. Thank you, guys. I really do appreciate that. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, But um, another trip around the sun. Another trip around the sun. But that brings me to this alien thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. (laughs) Scott, I saw. So you're 40. (laughs) You're you're volunteering. You have how old is your? These seem like the least important facts of the story. (laughs) To be honest, I want to hear the alien. No, I like Scott. He wants to paint a picture for everybody. (laughs) Yeah. It's a six year old. Six year old. Little black boy. Okay. Okay. I love this story. I don't know why that's. I like it even more. I don't know why that's important. You want every detail. I don't know but as soon as I say he's black, everybody's uncomfortable. Well, I just don't know, you know that, how Scott, that's I'm important to the story. Black. I'm uncomfortable with the three words, little black boy, back to back. back. <laughs> You're right. You are right. I should have said Do it. you call him boy? No. I call him Frank. Okay. Now, that's Scott, all right. Is that his name? I think it is. <laughs> Perfect. Now, Scott, we were walking through Griffin Park. It was becoming dusk, which is a time of day when the sun is... No, I know what that is. <laughs> okay, <I'm> like, <laughs> okay. I thought you needed an explanation. We might borrow that for an album title, yeah. album two. <laughs> it, it was becoming dusk, and um, I saw a little green man, Scott. Huh. I saw a little green man. In Griffith Park? In Griffith Park. What was, was, what was the green little man doing? He just scurried into the woods. He just scurried into the woods. No interaction. That's it. And then, Lock, did you lock eyes or whatever no, the alien had? I kind of just saw like the back of him running into the woods. Okay. And what made you want to tell this story thirty something years later? <laughs> no, twenty five. Twenty five. From the second something. I left Griffith Park, I've been trying to write this book. Okay, I saw alien. Aliens are real, guys. Okay. okay. And nobody believed. I feel like people don't believe me. Okay, so you've you've written this. book I've written about a book. It. The book is called "I Saw Alien in 1993." <laughs> Okay. <laughs> By Devin O'Shea. By Devin O'Shea. Uh, it's called I'm Saw Alien in 1993, colon, Aliens Are Real by Devin O'Shea. Right. And um, and by the way, you, you wrote out colon. I you did. Didn't, you didn't put a colon. You said, what is a colon? I've always just heard it. Right. <laughs> Only ever heard colon. I think it's an older black boy who works in politics. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see how it sounds now when you say it. <laughs> <laughs> Why does it sound different when I say it? <laughs> yeah, you're right. I don't know either. So... So you wrote a book about. I wrote a book. It seems like it was too brief an encounter no, no, to write a, an entire tome on. Scott, this entire book is about the struggle of a man. Okay. Who has not been believed. Okay, you're hooking me into the emotional part okay. of this story. Okay, good. Me, I want to walk you through some parts of the book. Scott. Okay, great. Yeah. W- will you read passages from it? I will read a passage. Okay. Um, this is from chapter one. Okay. Thick pages. Chapter yeah, so Chapter on. 1. Chapter 1, you got to believe me. You got to believe me. And th- is this the start of chapter 1 or I'll start from the very beginning. Very beginning. Okay. Okay, this is just the beginning of the book. Yeah. <laughs> you could have just said I'm going to start from the beginning. I looked through I'm going to read chapter- a passage from chapter 1, <laughs> the beginning of it. <laughs> I looked through the chapter for the most the like best passage and it really was just the it, beginning. It really grips uh, you from the selling, beginning. Yeah. You 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 go downhill from right. sentence 1. Yeah, right. no zizig zebras you know, at the end here. Here, here we go. All right. Chapter one, you got to believe me. Hey, um, look, guys. <laughs> okay, can I stop you? <laughs> why? I already have notes. <laughs> why, why? I mean. Uh... This book was directly dictated from, <laughs> from a recording that okay. I. Okay. So uh, a okay, lot of it is going to sound By whom? Spoken. By a professional transcriber? Or? Uh, yeah, yeah, I did a little bit of it. <laughs> I will How say I did most of it. Scott. We barely gave him a chance. <laughs> yeah, you really. He we said, started. "Hey, um," and we said, "No, not my, not like a book I've ever read." This before. is the best passage in the book. He says, <laughs> okay. "Well, in chapter one, <laughs> let's give you, let's give you a little more. Here we go. Let's give you at least t- chapter one. Oh, <laughs> at least the ten words that Gino can memorize. <laughs> sure. Chapter one, you got to believe me. Hey, um, uh, 
My name is Devin hey, O'Shea. Hey, um, ah. <laughs> My name is Devin O'Shea. And in 1993, I saw me an alien. And ever since then, I've been <laughs> trying to write this book. Let me, let me take a look at this book. Now, it says, it says parentheses, laughs. It's mostly that's, ellipses. Yeah. That's, that's what happens? It's a lot of well, dots. How do you transcribe I'm not so many ellipses? I'm not a professional transcriber. I was just typing sort of stream of consciousness. Yeah, but when you read a out. book, you see that it doesn't have stuff like that in there, right? Wait, you were typing stream of consciousness. <laughs> yeah. But you were transcribing. I thought you were saying stream of consciousness and yeah. typing it I word for word. I definitely was saying stream of consciousness, but... But then as I was typing, I went into a Zen state where I was just able to capture what, whatever was coming from the recording. Okay, great. So, let me so just, this is not transcribed. This is actually written. I feel like you guys don't – this part of the book is throwing you. Maybe if I jump into the middle of the book. Oh, okay. That there sounds – There might be something that's – Yeah, you chose, you chose the great. passage, so you can okay. choose a yeah. different one if you let's, like. Let's, do, let's start uh, chapter two. That's the middle of the book. There's three chapters. It's a heavy yes. book. This thing is there's three, this thing feels there's heavy. Three, and this is the this is the longest chapter. Okay. This, this is I, to me to be this is sorry I'm getting emotional. This is the part that is mo the struggle. This is about the struggle. The struggle is real. Here we go. Chapter two. I'm not crazy. Um. <laughs> slurp 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 slurp. I'm sitting here eating soup and um. I'm thinking to myself, people must think I'm crazy because I wrote a full chapter about how I saw an alien and, um, hold, ding dong, hold on, there's something at the door. Hello? Yes, you've been served. I've been served? This is terrible. All right, Turk, where Turk, was Turk. I? Okay, hold on. Let me look at this book. <laughs> it's all I, I see in here it says, Turk, does Turk, sound Turk. effect and also mimes it. <laughs> Yeah, Scott. Have you never read a book before? Gino, you've read two books, right? I read two books and apparently accidentally wrote one. As okay, well, well <laughs> I mean, Scott, I, I feel like is this is there something wrong with the book? I mean, are you not well, connecting with it? Well, I mean, I, I have to say, chapter one, mm -hmm. the story is so brief. You gotta believe. You saw, you saw the back of uh, of what you assumed to be a little a green little man. green man. How I little? I he think was, before you started reading passages, you told us the story of the book. Yeah, you told us chapter one. <laughs> you, you told us I the guess, whole thing. I <laughs> guess right. I gave you a lot of the info. I did a lot. Dude, can you put up a spoiler warning for the beginning? Of the <laughs> oh yeah, it, it, we'll spoiler do a retro, alert. Retroactive. Yeah. Spoiler, spoiler alert. alert. Note to point. editor. Note to editor. Note to editor. It, mm -hmm. That way, it'll come up on yep. the thing. Yeah, That's great. great. I'll be doing the editing. Let me I, I, let me read. Please you, don't. Let me read you something from the final chapter. Oh, okay. Chapter three. Chapter three. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, I've been to prison, but what does that have to do with aliens? <sighs> <laughs> Heavy sigh. Okay, great. Who's the narrator responding to? In <laughs> I can't. Sometimes I'm just. This criminal justice system in this country is um, built to keep people like me down, and um, nobody's gonna ever know aliens exist because. Um, Ronald Reagan. Well, I better take a nap. <laughs> okay, so the event happened in 93. <coughs> Reagan was out of this? office. Yeah, when did you write this? <laughs> Hold on, I'm still reading. It says right sure in enough. here, <laughs> it says uh, Three Stooges Snore. Yes, and, and that is the end of the book. And that's the end of the book. Oh, okay, I can't so believe I interrupted <laughs> before the snoring and the end. Well, that's the end of the book, Scott. This book is approximately three pages. Yes, they're thick pages. They're though. thick, yeah. And they're, the book they're, looks big. Great but they're like, you, you wrote this font. on sponges, it I looks did. like? Scott, I don't, listen, guys, I feel like you guys should be freaking out right now. Aliens I'm, exist. I, I'm sort of bummed about the Justice system, you know that. that, can, yeah, that yeah, I'll Ronnie, say yeah. that really fucks. Me. That'll fuck you up. Yeah, you yeah. think about that too hard. Ronnie Ray Gun. Ronnie Ray Gun for real. He'll fuck you up. Um, he like an alien himself with the ray gun. Yeah, that's true. This book uh, stinks. <laughs> whoa. whoa. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, Holy you shit. got some water in those sponges. He didn't wow. even say that for yeah, we're here for beer. It smells. Oh, it just smells. It smells, oh, yeah, it smells okay, like dirty, dirty. You uh, sure it isn't the shit smell you guys carry around with you? Hey. No, that's a strictly that's a different, different smell. smell. I'm used to that one. This All is right. new and PU. But you know, 
You know, Scott, I, did. I have a mason jar full of pre cum over here. No, yeah, this peri- is the or stinkiest studio all, yeah. that we've ever had. <laughs> wow, this is sloshing around. Well, I feel embarrassed because I thought I was going to come here and drop some sort of bombshell, and everyone's just sort of well, doesn't care. Uh, yeah, I mean, okay, yeah, aliens uh, might exist. This is not the most uh, realistic nor harrowing account I've ever heard about uh, aliens. Have you heard a more harrowing account? Uh, certainly. I mean, have you read the book Communion, perhaps? No. It's all about uh, uh, Christopher Walken was uh, in the movie of it. and uh, Communion. There you go. See? Yeah. Th- this is approximately 1989 or oh. so, about four years before your account. And four years. Uh, actually, I believe uh, Aliens came out. Uh, uh, and we're not even getting – don't even get me started on Fire in the Sky. Right, okay. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, so what you're saying is all these other depictions of aliens are a lot more exciting and they have fun more detail. And it's detail. not maybe not fun so much unless you like anal rape mm-hmm. uh, and mm-hmm. probing, mm-hmm. but uh, mm-hmm. definitely more detailed. Uh, mm-hmm. more, I'll say more it now. believable. If an alien does anything to me, it's consensual. I give blanket consent to aliens. To but I thought humans were the only. Yeah, thing what if the alien's do? fat? What? Oh, don't, don't. I know fucking. Who wants to risk no gun on your ass? No dumpy aliens. They ain't no right? fat aliens. They're little tiny aliens. Okay, you know what? Here's the thing. How big are they? Yeah, Did you yeah, say yeah. how Go tall? Ahead. Go ahead. Well, Devin, I have a question for you. I feel like your story is very interesting. Mm-hmm. It's your book that doesn't live up to your actual story. Agree. Because I, mm-hmm. I think seeing the alien okay. is a very interesting story, but that's but literally. All that you've written is, I saw an alien. Right. Yeah. Like I want to get more into that. Yeah, how, would, okay, so, how did it make you feel? What did the little boy do? Okay, let's say, okay, let's do sort of a rewrite. Chapter okay, one. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, free work. All right, chapter one, <laughs> you got to believe me. More free Is work. the WGA <laughs> listening to this? Because I could get in trouble. I hope not. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Because you wrote on birthday boys, right? Yeah, yeah among other things. <laughs> It was Were you nominated for a WGA award? I was nominated. I'm kind of like a Hollywood script doctor. You bring me in, I punch it up, well, I get out of there. Well, what would you have me start with if I was starting? I mean, I would say lose the soup stuff. Okay. It, it was kind of dragging around that spot. Okay. And no I, soup for Devin. See, that's good. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's a sign for reference. So keep the soup. So if I'm going to do that, keep that part. If keep I could add it. something, I, I enjoyed the soup. Oh, oh my God. Oh my Wait, God. Oh, what, what the, the hell? hell? Holy shit. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry to take Mike's it. Mike's gone? <laughs> no, I'm still here. I'm Where the fuck is Mike? Oh, oh, I'm, oh. I'm, I'm right behind John Lennon. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm not going to go yet. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're right behind Same profile. Yeah. Same glasses, too. Well, I like to borrow them every once in a while. John Lennon is here. Oh, that, yeah. John I know this guy. John, we've met before. You haven't been here in months and months. Where have you you been? I've just been, well, I went, uh, went to Mom Talk. You guys I saw him out there. Yeah, we went to the body bar together. Quarter beers, you could pour them on your head. <laughs> Wait, I just want to say, because this is, I never it's saw these It's a strange two- place. I don't understand why they do it. Wait, I've never seen these two guys together. Yeah, you could pour any beer on your head, but they're cheap enough that it's okay to pour on your head. You, you know? You've never seen Mike Hanford and John Lennon together? I've never seen these two guys together. I just want to say, Lennon, isn't it crazy to meet someone who has Paul McCartney's haircut? Yeah, his current one, his current old lady one. Sure, I, it's, I think it's great. <laughs> I said, no, hey, come on, I think it's a good look on Paul. Hey. <laughs> hey, hey. Scott, wow. you bring me in here to get made fun of the dialogue Lennon? between these two. Uh, Mr. Lennon? You kind of stole the focus from Devin. He was, we were yeah, doing well, I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Well, no, no, Mr. Hey, Lennon, gonna, this I is just, Devin O'Shea. While we got author. things shut down, I'm going to go... Uh, Move my car around. For oh, okay, great. Okay. But um, uh, John, you can stay. I can stay all day. All right, John, all night. I, I'm sitting here in shock because um, that voice um, it reminds me of that fateful day in 1993. Yeah, were you and Griffith Paul? Yeah, Griffith Paul, when that alien came around. Yes, yes. And wait, was, was that there? when was that when the Beatles anthology one was released? <laughs> It might have been. Right, I had just come from Amoeba Music. I picked it up. <laughs> so you have to buy it? <laughs> of course you have to buy it. Oh, well, I want to keep. You should it. get a free advanced copy of your own anthology. That's what I said. Wait, you were there, John? At, at, now we're talking about Amoeba? Yes, I was at you Amoeba. You were at Amoeba. I was at Amoeba. But why did it remind you well, of. Well, because. John, I don't know. Are you an alien, John? No, I'm not an alien at all. I'm English. Okay. I mean. Okay, that checks out, what? I guess, I thought. Right. Well, well, no, what are you about what, to say? But wait, did, did the alien have his voice? Yeah, or? the alien walked into the woods, and before he walked into the wood, he said, Drums. That could have been me. You know who it could have been? That could have been a good friend of mine. Who? My, well, <laughs> that's you. That's your catchphrase. <laughs> sure, but I, you know where I got it from. From your friend Ringo. That's from my best friend Ringo. <laughs> so wait, he has that catchphrase too? You, you, Only one person can use a catchphrase at a time. I don't think that's well, true. I, I, I show, to, what are you talking about? I had to give mine to, to, to Weirdo Al. 
What, what's what up, it? Hot Dog? What's up? Oh, Jesus Christ, yeah, you got I, rid of that? I, I pray uh, you that, got shafted in the deal. I pray that he's been using it on tour. If what he's you, not, I'm going to be very, very What upset. are you using now? Uh, I don't, I mean, I, I've been looking for one, and none none have stuck. You've, well, been, you've been using Leica Surgeon, right, in part of a trade? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, I tried. So, but, okay, so, now, this is very interesting. You were in Griffith Park. I was in Griffith Park. In 1993. Right. And did you see a little black boy? <laughs> Did See, you? I didn't even like it when Devin said it. It's even weirder when you say it. Sorry, I, I, just, I saw a boy. I don't know if it was black or white. Well, sorry, it's <laughs> really? It's been normalized. <laughs> well, it was dusk. It might have been hard to see. Hey. I, knew he was, I knew he was black, but I couldn't tell if he was little or big. So, so you walked into... He's not little, nor is he green. Well, you're right, but... I, I mean, he's sort voice. of little, but not as little well, as come Paul. on. Let's go back to back. Stand you next and me? to me, back to back. I, I don't know. I feel like this is a trick. <laughs> no, well, why this would it be a like trick? Are you going to pick my pocket or something? Uh, it's like right you got for a dream. <laughs> I was going to do that. I was going to take yourself. You're going to bend down behind him and then I push him. So wait, now that's part of your story that you you totally left out. Oh the yeah, fact I didn't that think it was that important. Drums. Yeah, I didn't think that was an important detail. Oh, it's a very important. We detail. heard you get served in the book. <laughs> yeah, and you thought that was an important detail, but not the part where you saw the deceased recording artist John Lennon. Well. Look, we all know. I'm gonna. Right, I was back. I'm back. I'm gonna continue to say that it was just an alien, but it might have just been a crazy coincidence that you were there, John. So you're thinking I'm the alien? I, that was my first instinct when I heard your voice, John. My question's for Dutton. How do you feel about all these people using the drums uh, slogan or whatever? But you're yeah. the one playing the drums. Yeah, oh, you're a drummer. Like I mean. They're right over yeah, here. Those, Be my oh, guest. I thought Ooh. I recognized those things. Yeah, John, this, that, that's is, what you're, this is the Sloppy Boys. They right. uh, are. They have their first album coming out oh, uh, on Tuesday. Uh, do you remember your first album? Uh, the first album I ever bought was Beatles 1. <laughs> <laughs> Did wow. you buy all the Beatles albums? <laughs> I did. I was well, going to the was best on, of because so it's got the best two. stuff. Right. It's got the number ones. Yeah, right. Okay, so you don't the need hell to do the I need to buy, you know. <laughs> you don't want to hear well, like that, honey the pie. Yoko droning. And I said okay to that. That was me. And I uh, so when you put, put it down. Bro. So when you put out your first album, you're like, I'm not going to buy it. I'm going to wait till the best of to then get any of my music. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm not going to buy it. I'm going to sing it. <laughs> oh, that's cool. You can always And you don't want to buy any of the duds. Right, exactly. I don't yeah. need to listen to uh, Yellow Submarine. So, so th- <laughs> you played uh, guitar on these records, and Tim, mm-hmm. he plays the guitar. Oh, really? Yeah, I would record. love to pick your brain about the strings. I, w- I would like to pick your brain. Do you know, happen to know Ringo, where Ringo lives? Ringo Starr? <laughs> That's right. I mean, uh, England. Ringo borrowed your guitar. He still hasn't given it he back. He hasn't given it back to me, and I know it's in his closet. And I was going to ask if he let you borrow we it. We have but, a guitar uh, here if you want to play some of your new songs that you were talking about. No, I couldn't. My my fingers, you look at these fingers. They're so they're, they're they get cut up on the strings. But the you can play gone. you can play your own guitar? No, that's what I'm saying. I haven't played it in years. It's been at Ringo's house. Okay. What so, do I say every time I come on this podcast? Yeah, I do not have my guitar. I know, but okay. <laughs> so uh well, that's okay. I'm getting mean. <laughs> but but uh do you have any words of wisdom here for the sloppy boys? Uh, Minus one. Yeah, sure. Um I don't know. What can I tell you? Tour around the world and have a great concert in Shea Stadium and everything will be fine. Become that's famous. Not, I mean, it's City <laughs> Field now. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's so that's I more guess... of a YP, uh, your problem. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, look, um, Slappy Boys, are, uh, I know Mike's uh, not here, but are you guys ready to play another song? Uh, yeah, we would love you... to. We are itching. Okay, yeah. maybe he'll come in by the middle of the song. Yeah, I saw him out the window moving his car. Okay, if you want, yeah. I can step in and do Mike's part. No. Yeah. Um, okay. You're looking at me. I don't care what you do. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, are you guys prepared to play a, a, another song from the new album, Lifelong Vacation? And John, you can hear uh, the cut of their jib and uh, oh. sort of see what you think of them. Sure, that's, that's great. That's, a, that's yeah. an interesting title. Yeah, and if Mike uh, comes in, then he can just jump in in the middle or something like that. Well, uh, or I could play whatever... You want drums, he's his guitar. What is, what you is can play the bass? I thought you had no calluses. <laughs> I could, I'll try. <laughs> all you gotta all right. do, all you gotta do is slap that bass, so you don't really know. Oh. All right. So you guys ready <laughs> to play I a song? I recognize that line from a movie I've never seen <laughs> yeah. before. What about uh, Leave the Cannoli? <laughs> Uh, no, not not something I practice. I'm a bit of a sweet tooth. <laughs> okay, great. You guys ready to play Sloppy Boys? Yeah. Yes. This is a song that's a little bit autobiographical, ripped from the pages of my diary. It's called I'm One Hell of a Dude. Mind if we ah. go on my count? One, two, three, four. And I mean it with all of my heart. Okay. Oh, wow. Right. Mike, you came back just in time. Yeah, geez. That was, uh, it sounded great. Yeah. Good on it. I, yeah. It sounded great what? 
with John on it. So John was playing, but you came back what? Just in time to see him? <laughs> Jesus, really? He's watching. I, I, you I heard people outside out. say, "You gotta get in here." His John fingers were playing. killing him. You could have helped him. Yeah, out. Yeah, he was. Well, he ran out to the bathroom screaming, "My fingers! My fingers!" I don't do a good. Okay, but John, my fingers hurt. <laughs> Fucking guy, man. John Lennon's lived a life too, technically. Uh, two oh, lives. Yeah, two he's lives ju- matter. He's just lived. Yes. Uh, I'm currently scribbling a new chapter right now. Well, uh, oh. does that mean a new chapter of your book, or you're living more of your life? Uh, you could say, you you say both. Let's ask a okay. more important question. Are we going to have to hear this new chapter? <laughs> <laughs> no. You know what? No. We are not. I want you didn't, to, you didn't do any chapters when I was uh, moving my car, did you? You want me to redo, redo those chapters? No I, heard, no, I heard the chapters when I was here. Oh, okay. No, I didn't read We're okay. all very confused about when you were here and when you were not here. <laughs> <laughs> Describe everything that you saw. I, I'd rather not. <laughs> okay. Uh, who's that rapping at my chamber door? Scott, well, how are you doing? If it isn't John Lennon well, himself. They told, they told me at the front desk. Shut that door behind you if you would. Oh, my goodness. Damn, that's a heavy one. That is. Hello. Welcome. The the Mad Beetle himself. May I sit down? Yeah, please. Thank yes, of course. Thank you so You're much. You're so polite. No, I know. I always need to ask. You've never asked any Haven't time I? you've ever been on this show. Oh, my God. I thought I always have. I've got the, uh, the vampire syndrome with sitting. <laughs> You do, yeah. but you're able to enter people's houses, right? No problem. I get walk in and out of people's houses. Are all you the doing B and E's in people's houses? No, because I'm not. It's all, I'll test the lock, you yeah. know, the front door. Okay, so no B's, just no, E's, just E's, <laughs> easy, E's. and with E's. Uh, John Lennon uh, from the from the uh, uh, most famously well the this podcast well but also These before days. that before that <laughs> before that i did a little acting uh i was in a, a, f- a film about world war ii that's where i got these glasses <laughs> right and a film called help as i recall right that oh right okay that Hard was with a, night. that was with a bunch of musicians i used to pal around with yes the european rock, rock right. group the european rock group the beatles right yes, yeah we were great yes you were that's what people mainly would know you from i think they, from my great album yeah, which album? Uh, the the well, the one that I love now, the Beatles one. <laughs> Your favorite Beatles record is my Beatles favorite one. one. And I, I've told people this, and I know the record companies and whoever owns the rights to it don't want me to say this. It's the only record you need. It's the only Beatles record only you Beatles should pick record up. You need. You're right, 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 because it has all of the Beatles number number one. Right, and singles. only Beatles songs. Right. People will come up to me. Oh, do you have the that Shania Twain song from all way back when? No, we don't really, because we weren't recording music when she was... I don't know how to answer that question. I hate that when you're listening to a band's album and suddenly another band enters and right. does a few songs. You have to, you're checking around the whole uh, sleeve of the CD or the record. Well, this doesn't say anything about Shania Twain. <laughs> how could it? How could it? How could it? I, I assumed I was listening to the Beatles. Well, John, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for dropping by. It's Thanks for having me. Sorry, I, I got to take a sip of water. Oh, I had please, a, yeah. Oh, mm. Did you uh, you brought your own uh, 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 bottle there? I, right. I noticed that's water. That, that is water. H two and O. H two and O in that order. <laughs> well, I guess you could mix up the order a little bit as long um, as there's all right. If you it around, two parts hydrogen and one part oxygen. Yeah, yeah I guess in the in the end it doesn't. It all comes out the same in the end. And in the end, right? And that's what that song was about. <laughs> was it? It was that song was about drinking water and peeing it away. <laughs> The love you give is the equal sure. to the love you get, you know, and it's, we, yeah. the love you give is the water you give yourself. You, why did you say it that way? The love you give, are you talking about, like, ingesting water? Is that right. what you mean? Oh, okay. the, the water you give to your mouth. You said it like it was a huge, uh, you know, euphemism. The love you give, you're just talking about drinking water. That's just my voice. John, thank you so much for coming. How the, how the hell have you been? I've been great. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but we're celebrating the 10th anniversary of the podcast I saw the, the the receptionist told me. Oh, you were here just on uh, other business? Or? Yeah, just to check it out. <laughs> I, I wander by here every once in a while to see if you're around. Just or... do some easy ease? <laughs> <laughs> that was one of my easy ease at the front door. I said, <laughs> and they said, hey, you're Scott's friend. I said, what? Is that how he refers to me? That's great. <laughs> I guess that's one thing you could be known for other than being in the Beatles. Your friend? Yes. Good. Um, so, yes, it's the 10th anniversary of the show. That's I, fantastic. You, you've been on for a good uh, five of those, probably. Five of those uh, t- years, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure, I don't know. You'd have to go back and check it out. Uh, no, thank you. But I, I, I'm not going to do it either. Somebody on Reddit should do a, a thread. Sure. Why when, not? When did this stop? <laughs> a whole thread. Right. When? How many years have you been doing it? Right. And I everyone was, has their own, their own, own opinion. Their own opinion. <laughs> 
Uh, a lot like they're assholes. Uh, right. Mm-hmm. Speaking <laughs> yeah. of assholes, uh, you are not one, and you. you've been a great friend to the show. Thank you very much for saying it. Yeah, 10 years. Can you believe it? I can't believe it. Where, what, what, t- so 2009 this stuff. 2009, yes, of course. God, what were you doing back then? Oh, you doing this podcast. I started this podcast. Right. What were you doing back what then? Was that? Back in 2009, I was, oh, oof, that was Slumdog Millionaire time. Oh, uh, right, they, yes. When they won the Oscar, you know. Did they win the Oscar then? That, okay. Yeah, that was a big one. They won wow. best, uh, best picture, picture, I would imagine. Picture, yeah, yeah, if, if they won the it. big one, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's right. They, don't, they, they should call it the big one. Because <laughs> nobody calls movies Instead of pictures. the Oscars, they should call it the big ones. <laughs> the big gold boy. <laughs> The big gold boys. <laughs> Win a big gold boy if you made a movie. <laughs> and give a, give a gold boy. And they should one. give more, too. Instead of just having one best picture, right. give out about 50. Right, because it's everyone all opinion. Everyone wants one. It's all everyone's opinion. Yeah, exactly. Right. Every, make everyone happy in Hollywood. I'd like to win one. You should win one, too. I, I tried to with that uh, movie I did. Right. I don't remember the movie you're talking about. It the was World the one War. in the World War II. Yeah, somebody I, put me in it. I don't remember it. It was so crazy back then. I don't remember <laughs> yeah. a, a thing of it. Well, yeah, 2000. 2009, I mean, I mean I that was, is, uh, uh, I, I believe that is 40 years after uh, uh, you guys broke up the God. Beatles. Yeah, well, uh, well yeah. we broke them up. We, we had to stop. Yeah, and then it's also, uh, I believe it's uh, because you were dead for uh, five years. Let's see. In 1980, 1980, I was shot. 84, I came out of the ground. 84, you came out. Right. So, so yeah. So five. we're talking 35 years after you came out of the ground. Right. I so. was, I was, yeah, 2009. Right. So what were you doing in 2009? That was a big year for me. I was, I mentioned Slumdog because 2009, I always come, I think, of that movie. Sure. Because I was involved in a lawsuit with them. You were? Well, it, tangentially, I was a witness to a, a certain crime. It's I, all, well, I, I don't remember reading this in the I, They kept it very hush hush. It was hmm. region. This all, this all happened, started at the Oscar uh, party. The Gold Boys. <laughs> the gold, thank you. The Gold Boy party. Mm-hmm. And we're all having fun. Saying, you were there. I was there because, you know. I, I, I don't know why no one takes pictures of you. I, I mean, I know the fact that you're alive is supposed to be a secret. I'm quick. I'm, I'm a nice guy, and I'm always saying, I'm always the guy who says, I'll take it. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So no wonder said, there's no photographic I'll evidence. I'll stop on a red carpet and then go, oh, get out of here. You sit down. I'll take these. So people are like, John, 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 over here, yeah. over here. And well, you're like, no, no, no. Let me take you it to you. Take, yeah, let me take it to you. You've had a long day. Wow. And I've done nothing here. So we're at the party. You know, all, it, free foods. It was a nice, uh, sure. easy E for me. Right. Because it's not really a door on the party. It's no, just kind of an open yeah. area. I'm sure there was a gentleman checking off the list. Yeah, but, but he saw me and said, you can come, come, you can come in. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> yeah, how it You happens. can kindly come in. Yeah. Yeah. So I walked in and uh, Regis Philbin's with uh, Philbin. Yes, Philbin. That? Yeah, Regis Philbin. Uh, Phil- formerly of the Regis and Kathy Lee show. And then right. uh, Regis and uh, uh, Kelly. Uh, yes. Right. Okay. Right. And, you know, he was he did the, the Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, of course. So this is 2009, so Who Wants to Be a Millionaire is still on the air with him, uh, I would imagine? I think so. Maybe. It's tough to... Well, that was part of the trial, which I can't talk about. Oh, that's the part you can't talk about. I can't talk about that. I you can, can talk about this part. Leading up to it. And okay. Regis was... He was drunk as hell. Yeah. And he said, they won this Oscar. I should have something to do with it. It was my show the whole time. They didn't even cast me. They didn't even audition oh, me. Oh, that's right, because Slumdog Millionaire is all based on right, who about, wants to be a millionaire. Oh, okay, right. now I'm seeing the connection. And he, I said, you know, because I'm a rabble rouser, I said, well, why don't you go up to Danny and say something? Danny Boyle, the Danny director. Boyle. Okay. And he did, and it was not nice what he said. Oh, okay. Do you recall exactly? Uh, it's the type of thing, you know, I know you like to cle- keep a clean show. Of course, yeah. It's not and that kind of a show. Of I can uh, say a few words. You, okay. I can't say a lot of the next word, you know, bunch of words, right? Or the preceding word, I, I would imagine, right? Right. And then, uh, and then, did he did get he end- y'all blank hands off me? Is okay. like the only words I can say. All right, great. They fought each other, and uh, you know, Danny Boyle had his nose broken. Uh, really? Re- yeah, right. Regis Philbin snapped the uh, Golden Boy in half. He snapped it in half. Did they replace it? In a He's stronger like than that? you think. Yeah, I mean, Regis, he's strong as an ox, I would imagine. Look at him. Right. So he's stronger than that, because that's what I think. And twice as ugly. <laughs> All right. Whoa. No, I'm friends with him, so I, he's, he's oh, going to hear okay. this and say, I, oh, Well, you know. you're both New Yorkers. <laughs> yeah, we love it. With well, the three of us, me, uh, me and him and David Letterman always get on Oh, each always. Other. Yeah, oh, I we, would imagine. That was most of my ideas for Letterman. But, hey, you know, why don't you go you know, uh, take Throw a bowling ball out of... Out of- <laughs> 
No, no. no. I told him not to do that. <laughs> really? You're going to yeah, break that bowling ball. That's most famous bits. He said he didn't care, I would imagine. Yeah, he didn't care about me. Uh, okay. So, uh, big fight. Big fight. At the Golden Boys. I was a witness. It became a big, uh, you know, a lower level, not lower level, under the radar. Under the radar. Sort of okay. thing. They didn't so want they, us getting they the settled it, or was there a jury trial? It or? was settled. All I can say is uh, money was paid on both sides to me. On both sides to you? To make this thing go away. Okay. I mean, it seems like Regis was at fault. Regis was at fault, but Danny Boyle broke his nose. Danny Boyle broke Regis's nose. R- no. I thought Regis broke Danny Boyle's Regis nose. Regis did it all. He broke the nose and snapped the golden boy. Wait a minute. Why the hell was Danny not awarded money on the spot? <laughs> yeah, why are you getting all this money? <laughs> Jesus Christ. I, I was getting hush money from everybody. Okay, so It they, was the most corrupt case that... Danny Boyle didn't want anyone to know that Regis Philbin... Broke his nose, right? It sounds like you don't want that word getting around, right? So they uh, at the trial they were like, you know what, this is getting too hot, right? Let's just pay John Lennon some money, and, and he made and I made it go away. And Regis Feldman, he doesn't want anyone knowing he's snapping uh, rewards in half, <laughs> rewards. Uh, awards, <laughs> awards, and rewards. <laughs> does, Both. Does he have an Oscars <laughs> rewards card? <laughs> <laughs> if you get enough I on guess, your rewards card, you get one. Yeah. Wow, what a story. What, what a, a life. What a wonderful story. What a life I live. Wow, incredible. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. But it's fantastic. It is crazy and fantastic. Crazy, fantastic. Crastastic. Now, if I was still making music. Right. Which, by the way, you're supposed to bring your guitar Ugh. and sing us your new songs at some point. Did yeah. you do that for the 10th anniversary? Uh, this 10th anniversary? <laughs> yes, this no. one. No. Okay, will you do it on the next 10th anniversary? I will on the next one for sure, but okay. you got to remind me because it takes some time to get the instruments and the equipment okay. together. Okay, yes. I remind you every time you're here. <laughs> the strings, you know, are at one place. You got the, uh, yeah. the body. Is it this is not a difficult time. situation to, to I solve. I know. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be, but I just need the time. So if you were making music again, what now? Uh, uh, crazy, fantastic! Would oh, be a great oh, album okay. title. It would be. Okay, it would be. A fan- it would be crazy, fantastic. What, what a wonderful alleyway to go down with you. What? Uh, that wonderful uh, just supposition of if you were still making music. If I was making music, I wonder what it'd be. This is not bad. Yeah, well, new Beatles song. <laughs> oh, is it okay if we call it Beatles, or should it just uh, be solo? Sure, because I'll get the other guys. You, you know, will. Okay. I'll get the old tracks from the dead ones. Speaking of which, yeah. George Harrison has he decided to come back to life? No, I think he loves it down there. He loves it down. Loves when it. you say down there, you mean in the ground, not in hell. the ground. No, not in hell. No. Okay, yeah. he's probably not in hell. No, he's up he's there. A great guy. Yeah, he's up there with the uh, the Maharishi. Who, that's right. The who do you think who would be the greatest uh, rock and roll band in heaven? Well, uh, I mean, I think one of those fictional bands, you know, uh, uh, Stillwater was that who it was from Almost Famous? <laughs> right, right. They're probably dead. Uh, right, they're probably. If they had to make a second one, it would just be all the deaths. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't think that. I don't think the studios would go for. Everyone that. always talks about John Bonham on drums, Jimmy on guitar. Right. You know, who's on uh, keyboards? Well, that would be, I'm, so Keith Moon, what does he play? He's got to jump over to keyboards. Right. But what about, was wasn't great... there a dude from the Dave Matthews band uh, who's not with us anymore? The right. fiddle player? The, the, he's alive. The sax player. The sax player. Yeah. Get uh, him on Leroy sax. Moore. Leroy Moore. How do you know these things? I, I know music and I love it. <laughs> you barely know you were in the Beatles. Barely? <laughs> It's not that I barely know. It just doesn't really uh, pop to my brain as quickly. Well, John, what have you been up to lately? I haven't seen you in a few, uh, a little while. Lately, let's see. I Well, uh, I tried out for the Mets. For the, the, the New, New York, York Mets. Metropolitans? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My goodness. You know, that you type know, we, of joke does not go over well with the Mets. Right. We have Mr. Met on the show occasionally. You did. Yes. Well, you know him. He's the mascot. The ball. His head is the big ball. His head. He had an unfortunate experiment where he wanted his head to be the size of a regular baseball. Oh, my God. And instead, it got expanded to the size of a comically large baseball. Right. And his whole body's there. Yeah. His whole body, everything. Oof. Yeah. That's yeah. that's terrible. So you tried out for the baseball I, tried, team? I got to try out for the Mets. Wow. Yeah. I mean, you're very spry for an 80-year-old. I'm, I'm good at it. I can I can hit a lot better than anyone ever thought. You can't really. You're a power hitter? I'm not a power hitter, but I can aim it very well. Oh, okay. So I can, you know, shoot, Just split drop it right in? So, yep, yeah, okay. Drop it in, send it away. Really? So how did the tryout go? It went great. I made the team. You made the Mets I did team? very well. I Are made, you I, playing with them right now? I Well, no. I'm a, you know, I'm a Yankees fan through and through. <laughs> Then why try out for the Mets? Because why well, you don't? If somebody comes to you, sees you in the park playing baseball with your friends, oh, and says okay. you want to try out for the Mets, no thanks. <laughs> I'll, I wouldn't want that life experience. So you you made the team, made the team, made a bunch of friends. You turned. Did you ever play one game? I play, well just down in spring training. Some of those, and then you just your conscience got the better of you, saying you. you ah, my conscience, my just my team loyalty. Right. I what? said. 
Did you ever see a, a, a subway series happening where you're like, uh oh, we're going to have to play my favorite team? I, I saw can't a do series this. on a subway. Oh, you did? <laughs> right. Okay. I saw some rats. How'd play. you get a connection? Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah. Pizza Rat isn't the only exciting rat down there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Anything else going on, John? Yeah, I had a, well, I had a, um, a, I got to, well, I've got a new job. I got a new job. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I got, well, I, I Where's got Rudy that. North when you need him? Uh, no, I've got, well, so this whole thing started with, I was going to have a venture, a headphone venture, a new project with Dr. Oh, Dre. A new business. Oh, Dr. Dre, he already the has the Beats headphones. Right. And you were going to do I a was little... going to go in on a project with him. Okay. I got to the meeting. It was a lunch meeting. Mm. Wrong Dr. Dre. I'm meeting with... Dr. Dre from from Yo MTV Raps. Oh, from yeah, the, yeah. one of the co-hosts, Dr. Yeah, Dre. Yeah, the co yeah, for, the, there was a lot of confusion back there in the 80s because there were two Why? Dr. Dre's. What happened there? I don't I think I don't know it's like the uh, the Dust Brothers, you know? I mean, there oh. were two Dust Brothers for a while. Really? They had one had to change their name to the Chemical Brothers. Is that true? That is true. I yeah. did not know that. You and know, I thought I knew everything about the Dust Brothers. Parallel fo- Oh, you you thought <laughs> I thought. Let me test you. Okay. <laughs> Do you remember the song by a band of brothers that they produced? No. It's not the Band of Brothers theme song. Okay. If, you're still, if you still have World War II on the brain. Okay, I don't know much about it's these It's Hanson. Guys. It's Hanson. Oh, Hanson, the, the, the Mbop song. They produce that, yes. Get out of town. I will not. I will stay right here. <laughs> you, you may get out of town. You may get, get, go back to New York if you like. <laughs> I will after this. All right. Uh, I had a meeting with Dr. Dre and sat down and I said, okay, you're not the guy I was thinking of. Hmm. I've but you know, I knew I've known him forever. Mm-hmm. So we were sitting and chatting. Who was his co-host? Ed Lover. Was Ed he Lover. There? Yeah, was right. he there? He was not there. I don't know if they hang out much anymore. Okay, that may have. Well, when we put the show run to, its course. When we put the show together, it was sort of uh, getting when you put. To, what do you mean when you put the show together? When I produced the OMTV Raps. You did. Yeah, I had no idea. You didn't know about that. No. Oh my God! Yes, I was. I was working in New York at the time so, for MTV, and I put the show. I thought. So why did you think it was going to be the other Dr. Dre when Dr. Dre reached out to you, your, your colleague and coworker? This was all through you know representation and stuff okay. and lost in translation and here i am sitting with this oh yeah empty om tv raps so instead of saying oh hey it's dr dre my former colleague right. you said you're not the guy i thought you were. <laughs> I said, yeah, he said that's rude and i said i apologize <laughs> uh but we talked about you know some of the old days for a little while sure. and uh I, you know i put together i you probably didn't know this then and i put together wu-tang clan you assembled the Wu Tang. Some of them were already. Some of the guys were already there, and I introduced them to Method Man. You really? Yeah, he's I, one of the biggest stars. One of the best. I gave him his his name, his his Method Man well, name. Well, he was did, going how did by. You come up with that? He was going by Methodical Man. Oh, okay. And I said, okay. That's it's uh, good, but good is the enemy of yeah, great. The M, the methodical MC. I'm sorry, that's what it the was. The methodical MC. Oh, and okay, I said, yeah. that's not very good. First of all, you're not an MC. You're a man. Right. And and you've got a method to, to this madness. It is madness. They all agree. <laughs> they this, all agree. This Wu Tang Clan is madness. So it's, they hip hop madness. When you brought that up, they said, "Yes, you're right, John Lennon." No, I, they, they you know they ran the ship. They ran the ship. They ran, you they, just assembled them. Wu Tang. I, I assembled just you know Method Man in there. And, and were you just at a party and you said, "Hey, you guys, all standing together, you should rap together." And they said, "We already do. <laughs> we're already doing that." Uh, and this is you know we're on a okay, stage. I don't here. think you can take credit for that. It's not a party. It's a concert. It sounds like. <laughs> well, either way, I, I gave Method Man his name. So what happened with his headphones meeting? Well, that's the other thing too. I'm sitting there with Dr. Dre. We're talking for a little while, eating our lunch, and he says. It's one of those awkward things where you're sitting there, both looking at each other, conversation dies down, and you're waiting for the next person. So, I know the feeling. <laughs> Don't you dare. <laughs> Don't you dare. Continue, please. <laughs> you're sitting there and you say, okay, so what are we here for? And so both of us had, the, well, no, there was no reason for the meeting. So each of you separately thought the other person was going to come Had a in. headphone idea. Oh, okay. And he says, so what? How? what's the headphones you got? I said, what are you talking about? I thought and you thought he had the headphones. Right. I mean, how hard is it? You just... Make some headphones. Yeah, or you go buy good Dr. Dre headphone beats. Thing. And then you put your own name on it. Right, or you don't. You just sell them at the fucking farmer's Whoa! market. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. Can you bleep that? I will not bleep that. I'm so sorry. Wow. Well, John, it's great to see you. Thank you so great much. I mean, it you. wouldn't be, uh, you know, a birthday unless the person who sang birthday uh, I don't know if you sang that, or I guess it I was, was around for it. Yeah, least. it was probably Paul. Yeah, but, uh, uh, think, well, da, 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 I can kind it. of picture it coming out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Can't you? <laughs> Thank you, Chris Tucker. Yeah. <laughs>
all right. Well, John, it's great to see you. Thank you so much for dropping by. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, well, uh, you didn't have me. I came by. <laughs> yeah, you just burst in. <laughs> thanks for allowing me to come in. Well, you're Scott's friend. What else could I do? I'm Scott Free. <laughs> All right. Think about using Scott Free in the next 10 All years right. or so. Some sort of All right, maybe, reason. maybe. Go ahead and uh, easy E exit through that door. Well, if I you will. will. All right, but goodbye. All right, see you, John. Oh, yep. It's a heavy see- door, Scott. Okay, yeah, you got it? Okay, good. Okay, John Lennon. Boy, uh, a show where both John Lennon and Maul McCartney appear on it <laughs> and not together? Wow. That is incredible. Um, But that, you know, hey, maybe those two can get in a room uh, at some point together. Um, So we have a... um, Wait a minute. Who's this? This is exciting. You know him from the album Full Moon Fever. You know him from Wildflowers. You know him from the music video Don't Come Around Here No More. Folks, I'm talking about Tom Petty. Wow, that's the best introduction that I've ever been given. Oh, thank you very much. You know, I take a lot of pride in my introductions. What I like to do for an intro of a guest... When they get here, I like to say, what would you like me to mention? And I told you those three things. Right, and, and, and all I did was write them down and read them. And I, but I appreciate you saying good job. But the thing is, you're a great writer, you know? Someone else could have just mentioned those three things. But, but you put all these wonderful words around it. Well, you get, you get these headstrong people who say, oh, you just tell me and I'll remember, sure, sure, sure. You know, when you, you, the other guy to write it down. Oh, absolutely. I've never, I've never written a song without writing it down. It's a pride thing. It is, you know? It's maybe the stubbornness of my youth. <laughs> and, and the sins of my youth. Now, what are you talking about? Well, actually, I have a song called Sins of My Youth. Oh, I haven't heard it. It's off my latest album. Um, you're not alone in not having heard it. Is that the name of the album? No. <laughs> that would be a good album title. <laughs> Do you want to know the name of the album? Um, let me get back to you on that. You got it. Um, I might ask you a little later if there's a lull in the a show. That's right. It's 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 not really a um, a conversation starter. It's kind of a conversation ender. It, well, at this point, it's sort of a con- just keeping the conversation in the air. Like a like a nice little balloon. You know, I'm a big fan of yours as well. I see uh, your mouth opened to signal a transition to something else, and I didn't mean to jump in there, but I just had to be. <laughs> I don't want you to jump in my mouth, certainly. And we should let everyone know we are st- the same size as we've always been. Tom Petty's not going to jump into my mouth. In case you're wondering. In case it was a shrink machine, there is no shrink machine here. Tom Petty's still, what are you, 5'9"? 5'9", five 5'10". Nine? Five nine, five you know, it varies on the day. I live in the Palisades now. What the, what the, that's a smooth transition from your height to where you live. Yep. I would love to degrow and jump in anyone's mouth, but, you know, it's not going to happen. Especially not with all the coffee that I consume on a daily basis. Yeah, coffee's the only, the only drink that's proven to make someone grow. Ask any, ask any, you know, height scientist. <laughs> you know, I wanted a boy, but I had two girls. You're talking about the dogs, you own? Yes, the dogs. And, um, you know, anytime they're near a height scientist, they just go crazy. They don't trust them. I don't, you, you can't trust them because those are the people who, who you have to listen to them. And, you know, everyone wants to be taller. Everyone likes to say, I'm a six-foot dude. But when you're around a height person, they'll tell you like it is. They'll Absolutely. say, well, actually, no, you're 5'11 and three quarters. God damn, don't, well, I'm, you know, I'm trying to impress people. That's right. This is my stature in life. This is my pride. Here we are again to the pride of my youth when I used to be taller. And I committed far more sins. Did you, why, now, how did you shrink? Oh, Although, just, just a little bit. Just a little, I, so I shrank a little bit. Well, every day I shrink a bit when I take off my shoes. But, that's true. You know, I'm, I'm my, I, I, in the shower, I'm my shortest. No kidding. Now that's a good album title. In the shower, I'm my shortest. Should, mm, boy, if I had my guitar, I'd put a nice B minor under that. Uh, ooh. Oh, that's a chord I don't you know, hear very often. No, you don't. B minor. Ooh, wee. Now, do you, do you have your guitar? You know, everyone knows the story. My guitar's with Ringo right now. He's using it. He's borrowing it. Mm-hmm. It's been going on several years now that he's been, quote, unquote, borrowing it. Do you have your guitar, you know, somewhere safe? It's hanging up on the wall uh, right next to my crossbow. Wow. Yeah. Don't, hey, don't mix those two up. No, absolutely Hey, ladies not. and gentlemen, it's great to be here in Detroit. Yo! Fung. Hi, jeez. Oh, hey, that brings me to, to a good point here. I've got my, you know, sometimes I'll bring on the sound effects box here on the show. Oh, I love it. Well, it's broken. Something's wrong with it, and I'm only getting this one to work. So, 
hopefully we can find a use for it <laughs> because this is, you know, maybe if we have a song about a dope walking around, we can use this, but I, I don't know. The thing's broke. Uh, thankfully, my compass is working on here. My, my only two apps on my phone, one of them's not working correctly. You know when I'd play that song the most? When what? Jackson Brown is approaching from a great distance. You think he's a dope? Oh, a little bit. I mean, he's never going to bring the mood up, you know? He wrote a song called Fountain of Sorrow. Oh, jeez. A fountain of it. Well, that's, you know, a fountain of water, great. A fountain of, I don't know, popcorn would be great, too. Even a fountain of blood, if you're a death metal band. Yeah, that's, you know, rallying the base. Uh, death metal loves blood. Absolutely. It, it seems like every other song, a word, title, anything is blood. But a fountain of sorrow. Oh, thank you. Uh-uh. Sorry. How about a drip? How about a tiny droplet of sorrow? That's right, a small pool of sorrow. Right, a song about a droplet of sorrow on, uh, on your um, windshield. And a wiper of hope sends it away. So long, Mist. Not Jackson Brown. He likes to soak in his sorrow. Yeah, he likes to soak in it all the way to the bank. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. He made a career out of being sad, didn't he? He absolutely did. That and opening for people. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, wow, shots fired. That's going to be the harshest I get, unless we start talking about Don Henley. No, well, well I don't think we're going to, but what do you... <laughs> I, I didn't, in my, the way I saw this podcast going today, when I woke up in the morning, I said, okay, I got Tom Petty coming in. This will be exciting. I'm going to put on my white suit, my glasses, of course, or else I'm bumping into the wall. And now I don't, I didn't, Don Henley never even entered my mind, but you, what do you got to say about him? I've got a great Don Henley story. You do? Okay, so. M Let me know. You just nod when you want me to do this. <laughs> Okay, I got it at the ready. <laughs> All right, so um, <clears throat> I'm over. I'm over at my, you know, the recording studio in my house, and my lead guitarist, Mike Campbell, comes over and he says, "Tom, I've written a song that I think the band should play." And I said, "Hold on, let me, uh, let me ask Jackson Brown to get the hell out of here." So he leaves. <laughs> Yes, exactly. That's With, pretty good. Very good. That's a manual fade by moving this effects machine away from the microphone. Well, Mike Campbell says, "I've got a track I wrote, and I want the uh, I want the uh, I want the band to play it. Will you listen to it?" And I said, "Sure." He said, "Well, it's on." It's very formal. I've got a track. I want the band to play it. Sure. Does everyone agree? We all agree. Let's go back to Mike and say. We want to play the track, but you got to do So that's great. But, so before we get there, he says, I just want to play it for you, Tom. And I said, Mike, I'd love to hear it. So um, I said, what do you have it on? He said, I have it on cassette tape. I said, let's not be inside, right? Let's go to my car and listen to it in my brand new stereo. This is, you know, the late 80s. We go there. He pops it in. And it's a song he's written called Boys of Summer. Oh. And it finishes playing. And We're talking, you know, June to August, roughly. Absolutely. You know, um, maybe maybe late May, depending on how you define the season. Sure. You know, we're, we're talking late May to maybe mid-September, depending Perhaps. where you live. If it's an Indian summer. The boys of Indian summer. Right. And, and ages, we're talking zero to 13. For, Wait, for male, for boys. That's their summer? That's oh, the, the boy. age, oh, the right, boy right. part. Zero, zero to 13, all right. Well, I would go probably so, from four to 13, maybe even 14. But then you're getting into teens, and teens of summer had a terrible ring to it. And so we pop the tape in, it finishes playing, and I turn to Mike and I say, Mike, I want you to take this tape and either burn it or give it to Don Henley because I think it's trash. Wow. Holy, well, then who ended up coming back in? Then slowly I hear a knock at the door preceded by music, and I think, hold on, let me get Jackson Brown away from my goddamn car. So I, I opened the driver car right into his crotch. Oh, oh. And, and anyone knows a crotch hit, that will put you out for, for a moment, at will. least, at the very least. It'll put you out for a summer if it's hard enough. <laughs> it's true. It is. It's absolutely true. Yeah. I, I hit I hit Jackson Brown right in his boys of summer, and he slowly moped off. You know. Sure. Well, I, I hold on. We know yeah. what that sounds Wait, like. Uh, yeah. Okay. Goodbye. Goodbye, to you, Jackson Brown. Jackson Brown. And then Mike didn't burn the tape. He gave it to Don Henley, who had one of the biggest hits of his career. Which you know, I mean, obviously, I feel sorry for him. The boys of summer was that. That's got to be tough to be a, a singing drummer. 
Uh, I know, you know, my old my old pal Ringo was a singing drummer on certain tracks of ours. But it's tough because when you sing, you want to move, you want to dance around and go up and high five some of the people in the audience. You're not doing that on the drums. If if you're lucky, you have a security guard bring someone up and you slap their hand and they go back. Because you can't move the drums. They're too big. Was that a source of shame for Ringo? Did you did you all shame him in the Beatles? No, I, I never did. I said, God, I wish, I wish it all for you, my boy. I wish you could dance and sing and play the guitar just like me up here. If you look at old tapes of me, sometimes I'll, you'll see me look back at him and you come back to, the, you know, facing the audience. You'll see it just tears coming down. Because of his lot in life. You're it's, so proud of him, but but simultaneously embarrassed? Is that what I'm hearing? No, no, I wanted the best for him. I wanted him to be up front. Uh, it, was, it was tears of, you know, it was droplets of sorrow coming off of my eyes. In a small pool, though. You didn't shed enough tears for it to be a fountain, and I want to commend you for that. Thank you. You know, you're the first person who's ever said that to me. Really? Yeah, you know, I would cry, you know, at our concerts because Ringo wouldn't be out front. And then John and George after the show would say, come on, John, you can't cry so much on stage. You, you got to, you were singing our songs and dancing around. The audience wants to see you sort of be happy. I said, all right, well, you just got to remind me not to turn around to look at Ringo anymore. And you'll hear some old bootlegs of ours. You know, she loves you, yeah, yeah, and I'll be turning around, and you're like, she loves you, don't turn around, John! Okay, okay, I'm so sorry. You're right, you're right. I've never heard that. Is that when you slow down the record or play at a, di- uh, a different speed? That's when you speed it up. <laughs> Backwards. Sped up and backwards is how you can hear that. No, you know, I was in a group with one of your former band members. I was in the Traveling Wilburys. Oh, that's George right. Harrison, with know. with with uh, Roy Orbison, too. That's right. God, did he look like he was 60 years old from the start to the finish of his career or what? He really did. He, he did not age, but he already looked old. Roy Orbison. Huh. It's odd that the older he got, the more his voice sounded like a child. <laughs> you know? A child, a boy. Mm-hmm. He was a boy king. At George, they called him the Quiet Beetle. Well, he stood so far away from the microphones. He would have, if he, so we had an early day of our band. We sat in with a, a microphone technician, and he showed us, you know, the science of it. You get closer, you're going to hear yourself. Of better. course, that's get day one of your away, band. You're not going to hear it as well. And George missed it because he had a, you know, it was, it was Turkey Burger Tuesday at the cafeteria near us, and he never liked to miss it because he loved it so much. And uh, yes, they were great tur- turkey burgers. I'll give him that. But he missed microphone tech day, and he will ever, forever be known as the Quiet Beetle because he never got up on the mic. And I would tell him every time, you got to, get, you got to move up, move up. I don't know. He just didn't believe it. It's so odd, too, because in real life, the guy, he stands two inches away from your face when he's talking. And he's screaming. He really does. It's, it's all, it was all positive stuff, but he's just screaming at you. Oh. Well, anyway, a lovely fellow. And, uh, you know, I could regale you with tales from traveling Wilburys all day long. But again, I know that you have a program here to run, and I want to be respectful. <laughs> I appreciate that. But any, any story is welcome. But maybe let's get to a first question, and maybe this story will pop out of it. All right, here's one. Dear John, an esteemed guest. Hey, that's that's fitting for you. Oh, that's a better name than Tom Petty. Oh, this is a bit of a long one, but I'll charge through, and I'll I'll read the whole thing. Dear John, an esteemed guest, I am writing to you and your companion to ask for your advice. Well, you've come to the right place. That's what the show's all about. I work as a regional sales rep and am on the road every other week. I am in my 40s and not attached romantically, nor do I want to be. So other than getting blackout drunk in hotel bars, can you offer advice on activities that I could reasonably expect to enjoy in moderately sized cities of 50 to 100,000 people? I generally travel with my PS4 and game my nights away, but looking for alternatives. Thank you both. Mitch from Canada. Mitch, that's, a, that's quite a, a situation you've got. Wow, that was less of a question and more of a personal essay, trying to get into college or something. But it, it's helpful there because I know is who he is. What he's, some people just say, you know, dear John Lennon, uh, what, what type of cereal should I eat? Bye. That's true. Uh, hold on, what, what's your day job? Well, who, what, uh, are you an adult? Are you a kid? Well, can I take a crack at summarizing that? Sure. What was this gentleman's name? Mitch, from oh, Canada. All right, Well, it's a big area to be living in. <laughs> no kidding. Please specify next time which part of Canada. If I were to summarize that in order to just be a bit more concise and efficient, I would have said, my name is Mitch, I'm single, I'm 40, and I'm Canadian. And I would have inferred the rest of that paragraph. 
I understand. So, You're, when, you spend your time in hotel bars and you travel with a PS4. When you, when you put it that way, yeah, those are the facts. We know exactly where we're going. But uh, nevertheless, my empathy is kicking in, and, and I want to help Mitch right now. Here's my first thought is take the PS4. Bring it to one of the hotel bars. You're getting drunk and playing video games. That's and right. who can that that would be you and you're mashing two of your your passions together on the road. Uh, granted, people behind you'll say, "Hey, put on the game back on." I came here. I, I wanted to get out of my boring room to watch the the game and drink. I don't want to watch you play, you know, Super Smash Brothers. Well, I've got a I've got a compromise for you there. Okay. Then if he gets some kind of game like NBA 2K16 or NBA 2K17 and he puts that on, why some of those games are more entertaining than actual sports games. And the graphics will trick you. They will trick you. I saw I saw a commercial for one of those video games the other day and I said I turned to nobody. I was by myself in my house, but I turned around as if someone was there and said they're, what are they doing? A commercial just for a, a sport? A, and then I watched it again, and I said, "Well, no, it's a Sega game or a PlayStation game." <laughs> so Wait, you know, hold on. Are you leading me to believe that you were fooled into thinking a Sega game <laughs> was real life? <laughs> you know, I say Sega in the sense that you know, any type of parent will just say, "Turn the Nintendo off." And it's, you know, a stand-up arcade game or something. Hold on. Before we get to back to Mitch's question, I have one thing I'd like to ask for you to do. Sure. Will you say the old Sega slogan as yourself? Sure, sure, sure. <clears throat> so, you know, we just, this is, we'll say we're sitting here watching, uh, waiting for Simpsons to start. It's the ni- mid-90s. The commercials are coming on. We just saw a really cool take of something. So, you know, a kid in class uh, gives his teacher a mohawk or something, and then you see the Sega logo come up and you hear, Sega. (laughs) All right. um, (laughs) Is that what you were referring to? (laughs) I I remember it being a bit more quick and forceful. (laughs) Oh, you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking when you turn the game on. Oh, no. Not that one. I'm I'm talking about the commercials where the title card would slap on and then very forcefully it would say, say you know. Yeah. Oh, oh now I remember. Yeah, will you, I, want, I want to hear you say that. Okay. Okay. So the, the, the thing slaps on the screen and you hear, Sega. <laughs> a lot closer. Sega, put the control in your own hand. Because it was a play on controller. That's right. All right. Well, that was a lot closer. God, that tickled me endlessly. I'll be thinking about that on the drive home. I'm not driving myself either. I stopped about 15 years ago. Oh, well, who's who's driving you these days? <clears throat> My wife, Dana. Uh, uh, probably 12, 15 years ago, I got so loaded on marijuana, and I, I crashed at going about 20 miles an hour into a guardrail, and I said, never again. Never again will you smoke? Uh, 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 uh. I know. I'm talking to, you know, Chi Jin Chong's twin brother over here. <laughs> uh, if only I should be so lucky. But no, the truth is I've been I've been plugged into the marijuana pipeline in this city for the last 40 years. You don't say. I'm deeply grateful for it. Wow. Yeah. Do you, you get the munchies from those? Um, from weed? Well, it depends which one, I, which one I'm toking on. Oh, you do with the strains. Mm-hmm. You're That's doing right. several strains. Well, it's just like if you're trying to decide between, you know, um, regular Coors or, you know, Bush Light or an IPA. How, you know, how gassy do you want to get? <laughs> I'll answer that right now. Zero percent. Zero percent gassy. Then I'd go with probably a you know a bush light or something. Like oh, okay, that. good. I'll write that down. Yeah, because oftentimes I'll be at a bar. Well, getting back to this guy's question, Mitch, I'll be at a bar or something, and, and the bar, bartender will say, you know, what do you want, Mac? And I'll say, look, I'm looking not to be gassy, uh, and it's so loud, so he can't gassy. Yeah, what are you talking? About? And, and he'll bring me back, you know, just a water, and say, you got to leave. Don't even drink the water. This is just. Get out of here. And take your PS4 with you. <laughs> yeah, so do I, okay, well, I never even plugged it in. <laughs> Mitch, here's what you can do if you don't want to bring a PS4 down to the bar. Uh, see if there's any sights to be seen at night. You know, most cities kind of close down at night, and it's certainly probably during the week it gets somewhat boring. But yeah, prowl around a little bit. Uh, what do you, What if you go by like a museum and you can kind of poke your head in there while it's closed and 
You could pull a heist on the place if you wanted to. I mean, if you really wanted to, especially in a town of 50 to 100,000 people, a heist is completely possible. You could, that's a good, that's a good point. It, I mean, it, it really is because security is minimal in towns like that, you know. Um, you're, you're less likely to be recognized because in larger urban areas, people are plugged in culturally, you know. Well, I'm just saying that if I were to do something like that because I'm recognizable. Well, so, you know, if you, you, when you do a heist, you know, you're putting on a mask. I'm the same way when any heist I've ever done was, you know, if I'm stealing a jewel or a painting or something, of course I'm wearing a mask. Yeah, of course. And, you know, I mean, in a town of that size, you could probably get away with not wearing a mask. I mean, just hypothetically speaking, if I were in sure. a, a town of 50 to 100,000 people and, and I wanted to pull off a heist, even if there were security involved, I'd walk in as myself. And if someone said, wait a minute, are you Tom Petty? Are you trying to pull off a heist? And I'd say, Tom Petty, pull off a heist, you've got to be yanking my chain. And then I'd pull off the heist and leave. <laughs> well, if you've got a good group, you know, if you've got a good heist team. Oh, it's all about the team, just like a band. Exactly. That's why I was so drawn. Well, I, I should say I, I could be so drawn to a heist. Now, our, you know, I, I'm sure there are a lot of people out there that, uh, that came to music because they loved being on a heist team. And they said, what are some other teams that I could be a part of? Right. They've tried soccer. They've tried heisting. Uh, they've done uh, team leadership at the, where they work. Now I'm going to rob a museum. That's right. Lacrosse, um, uh, corporate improv, sure. uh, you know, just something to make money. Uh, but, you know, a heist is definitely a way to make money, and so is a band. Uh, we're getting off track. I, I think, Mitch, you know, get on Tinder, get on Grinder. you know, try your luck. All these cities. No, he doesn't want to have a, I think he doesn't want to have romantic. He, oh, you think he wants to be single? Oh, that's what he said. Ah. So he's one of the boys of summer. Yeah, he just wants to have a little fun in the city. I will say, too, if you, you're going to be leaving that city so quickly... You, you know, put the diamonds or whatever you're stealing into a duffel bag. It's under your, under your seat on your airplane. You're gone. Absolutely. And I'm sure you're coming back to these cities, so maybe your first trip, you stake it out, get the team together, say, boys, I'll be back in May. Well, we'll, we'll you know, be millionaires by the time we're in June. Here's what I'd also say, you know, Mitch, invest in um, like uh, shoes with secret compartments underneath them. Right? Yeah, ruse. And then, uh, yeah, absolutely, ruse. And then, uh, and then, ruse. Uh, Skechers makes some too. Are uh, they doing that now? Well, Skechers are the easiest one because they have the thickest sole, right? They're the easiest to cut in half and then just glue back together. Uh, and then you just apply to the TSA or, you know, whatever the Canadian equivalent is for a special exemption. A TSA, E E H. <laughs> TSA, TSA, TS, you know, um, for as much as I love denim, I have a terrible Canadian accent, <laughs> and I love denim. I know, the, hat, the denim hat you're wearing is, I've never seen a top hat like that. <laughs> now, let me ask you this, is the top hat that you wore and don't come around here no more, is that the same body and you just reupholstered it with I, denim? I absolutely did. I knew it. I you, can tell, you can't misplace the shape of that hat. Let me ask you something. Sure. This is a personal question. Have you ever Googled pictures of me? I don't want to, you know, I don't want to offend you. Or right, I'm sure that you have, and you've seen all the denim that I wear. Look, at a certain point, denim gets worn out after a couple of decades. And sure. I, you know, I, I don't want to, it's, it's in tatters, so I don't, I can't give it away. I couldn't give it away. I try to give it away, and people refuse me, and so I just repurpose it in hats. Denim and tatters. I, you know, uh, that could be a song. Hey, that could be a, a book that you write about yourself. Denim in tatters. Denim in tatters. Ta tatters might be a British word. Denim in shambles? How about denim in taters? Denim ah, what if you open up a restaurant? Oh, that's nice. All the plates are denim. Right. And just once the gravy is soaked through, you're done. If there's, if there's no more gravy left on your plate, no matter how much you've eaten, you're done. Just <laughs> wring it out and throw it away. Well, we'd probably wash the denim plates. Oh, and you'd have to launder them. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah, all right, well, that's great. I mean, we're not saving anything on water, but we're not, also not polluting, you know, with paper plates or, um, oh, boy. Well, this, this could be a terrible idea, but I think I'm whole hog into it. Well, you know, so many restaurants, you can, as, even the most, uh, uh, even the most, uh, you know, the safest waiters out there, they're going to drop a plate. And you know where those shards go? Into a landfill. Absolutely. It's not environmentally sound. I call, I call any restaurant out there, any restaurateur listening, 
switch away from porcelain plates, you know, glass plates, plastic, anything, anything that can shatter and go with a fabric plate. Or, right, but are you trying to step on my idea right now? Because I'm, you know, this is my idea for a restaurant. Every restaurant needs a hook, you know. Most of them are like, it's a burger joint. And you're yeah. like, oh, I've got to check this out. Yeah, same this- thing could be said for a fishing pole too. Needs a hook. You're not wrong there. <laughs> no, I and I'm not even a fisherman. God, you know, if this entire episode um, is a song, the refrain from me would be. John, you're not wrong there. The absolute I don't think either of us have been wrong about anything here. We're doing a great... Oh, I think, that, uh, Mitch, that's the advice for you, then. You're not wrong there? You're not wrong there, whatever you choose to do. You know, as long as you're having a little bit of fun and uh, not uh, shirking your responsibilities as a sales rep, you're doing great. You know, I've written a lot of songs that have never seen the light of day, and one was about being yourself, you know. Um, <clears throat> everyone's a fly trap. You know, just set yourself out there and you're going to catch whatever is attracted to you, Mitch. You're going to find some 40 year old, um, you know, I don't know, hotel visiting drunk who loves PS4. And you two are going to cream the hell out of each other. I'm I'm telling you, I don't think this, I don't think Mitch wants anything romantic. He said it in his email. All right. You're choosing, you're choosing love, which I think is great. Is he a rope? All right. He's. Look, I'm just saying, everyone has physical needs, even Tom Petty, even John Lennon. Hey, have you ever openly talked about your physical needs? No, I don't think this is the type of place for me to talk about what I need physically. And what I do need physically, as long as we're on the topic, is when I'm at the movies, popcorn. Mm -hmm. When I'm in my car, physically, I need a seatbelt. Right. Sexually. Sexually? I'm not getting into it. No. Oh, so those two things aren't sexual for you? No. Popcorn at the movies? And a seatbelt? No. If y'all think that's sexual, you've got a problem. Ugh, that's, I, those are two, that's a comfort thing and a, and, a, and a safety thing. All right. Well, I've got a handful of theories about how everything is sexual. You oh. know? And every, e- everyone is repressed. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I don't want to get into it. Sorry. I keep, uh, I, keep, I keep needing to warm up the old petty pipes. Do you want to sing? <laughs> Do I ever. <laughs> Do you want me to sing? Because I'll only sing the stuff no one knows. You want to yeah, hear? While I'm looking for the next uh, uh, email to read through, sing anything you want. I, and you're not going to offend me because I'm not listening. All right, here we go. Um, now this one is uh, this was an is an unreleased track that we uh, we were recording in the studio while making um, one of our albums in the late '80s, early '90s. It's called "Waiting for Tonight," and the Bengals happened to be walking around. We said, "Hey, do you want to sing backup on this?" And they said, "Yeah, sure." We never ended up putting it out, but it it goes a little something like this. Okay, we got one here. Oh, sorry. Uh, this one is "Dear John and Guests." I know you enjoyed LSD. At- Hold on a second. Am I reading this right? I know you enjoyed LSD on weed back in the day. But it's a new era, and all the kids are doing new drugs. What are your thoughts on MDMA slash ecstasy? Have you had good experiences on it? Bad experiences? Or are you against it altogether? Thank you, Tim from Chicago. Look, Tim I want from to... Chicago sounds like a great guy, to be honest. <laughs> you know, I've, I've met a few... I've met one Tim from Chicago, and this guy immediately took to him, liked him. And then I got to know him a little bit. And I said, this person is, you know, stealing from me. (laughs) Oh, no. I started noticing my wallet back in my pocket uh, flipped around the way I hadn't done it. Uh, Credit card gone. Uh, Sort of just change in my car because I used to, you know, drive around. We used to drive around the city together. This guy sounds like a petty theft. Ah. Oh, you're just saying that because of your last name. Look, I try to get it in there all the time. <laughs> if there were more ways to use the word Tom, I'd do that too. There aren't. Nope. Nope. You could do peeping Tom, a Tom Tom, drum. Tom Foolery, but I've used that enough. That should be, uh, God damn, that should have been the name of an album. That's my next solo album, Tom Foolery, and it's just me on a bongo. <laughs> no, no lyric, no, no singing? I mean, there will be a lot of spoken word, you know. I'll just kind of talk through which strains of marijuana I think are key for different situations. All right, well, that, that leads us back to this question. First of all, I, I think this was a type, LSD, LSD on weed? I think they meant and weed. 
But LSD, on, here's, I want to say this right now. I've never done weed on LSD. Absolutely not. Why would you do that? Why would you ruin a good LSD trip with some mellow strains of bud? You know, if you're, if you're smoking weed, you get the munchies. If you're on LSD, you see all types of crazy things. So, you know, okay, I'm, I got the munchies. I'll go into the, the cookie jar to get a bowl full of, you know, frogs. No, thanks. I, now I'm, free, I'm officially freaked. Or you're outside in the swampland of a place like, for example, Gainesville, Florida, where I'm from, and you see a gorgeous country. Gorgeous, beautiful. God's country, if God exists. <laughs> I believe he does. But sometimes I don't. Anyway, I'm just trying to be respectful. But you're outside, and you're in the swampland, and you see a ton of frogs, and you say to yourself, because you're tripping on LSD, and Yo. you just smoked a ton of weed, Yo. wow, look at all these cookies lying around. Might as well pop some of these in my mouth. Why right. are they so difficult to catch, these cookies? <laughs> right, well, these hopping cookies, I've never seen these before, so I'll... You know, when you come across something you've never seen before, my first instinct is to eat it. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Get smaller and jump in its mouth. <laughs> right. Put these frogs in a, you know, smallifying machine right in. They hop right in. You know, that's all, you know where that's the trickiest is if, let's say, for example, you were on a heist and you see something you've never seen before and you think, uh-oh, right. time is of the essence and yet I have to put this in my mouth. If you've done it wrong, you've never seen the item before. If you've done it right, you've seen the item you know it backwards and forwards. You know the security system around it. So that you shouldn't be running into things you've never seen before on a heist. You really shouldn't. That, I mean, that's the point of the heist is to do your research. I tell everyone, everyone that asks me, what do I need to know for a heist? And I say, just do your research, right? It's like anything. It's finals week. Right. Everything is, you, hey, I, I got a bad news for you, college kids. Adult life is nothing but one continuous finals week. Sorry. Sorry. And and do you don't cram. You do you're not doing yourself any favor if you're cramming for a heist. Know what's going on. Visit the place back and forth. Have disguises ready. Make sure you're speaking in low tones. And I mean the same applies in music, you know. You have to have a game plan and if the opportunity for improvisation presents itself, well, you better trust the other members of your heist team. And you can only be ready for improvisation if you're, 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 you're ready for everything. That's right. I have some comedian friends that say your comedy is not going to be good unless you're reading and paying attention to the world, you know. But if you're just sitting around making memes, well, you're not going to be sharp. So you're, you're, you're doing, you know, you're getting the laughs. You're getting the likes. But you're not uh, expanding. There should be another Twitter just called Laughs and Likes. There's a laugh button. This one made me lol. This one made me SMH. This one made me uh, delete Twitter, the Twitter app. <laughs> you're doing it wrong. Yeah. If you're getting, if you, if that button comes up in the future of that app, and you get that, you got to rethink your tweets. Absolutely, boy. What if you could track that? How many of my tweets made someone delete Twitter altogether? Well, for, fortunately, Tom Petty is not on Twitter. I'm sure there's some kind of official spokesman on there, but... For you? It's all too short. You know us. We're, we're, we deal in the long form. We're verbose. We're it's too long. It's, it's too short. I know. I want to go long. And I'm not going to do the, the one slash four before each tweet. Because then they're not up there together as if, you know, this is the first of four, second of four. Oh, by that point, I'm, I'm tired. Absolutely. And uh, I'm not going to break it up in word first and then import it into Twitter. Well, that's just adding a step, and the whole point is that we're supposed to be getting more efficient. Right. Boy. Well, Tim from Chicago, I don't want to call that a foolish question, but um, y y please try not to smoke marijuana while you're on an LSD trip. Right, and MDMA and ecstasy, uh, good luck. I think that was, you know, those things were created in a lab somewhere. That's right. Those were made for rats, you know. They wanted to see if, hey, can we make these rats have a better time? Yeah, well, uh, these rats are going off to, you know, little raves in that hole in the wall, and they're coming back sort of bored. And, you know, they're smoking too much weed, and they make sleep. How can we get these rats to have a little more fun at the, uh, you know, Skrillex? <laughs> Rat Skrillex. Hey, have you? Do you remember the dead, dead mouse? <laughs> dead mouse should have yeah. been what I oh, went for. Oh, that's that's great. sort of what I was thinking in my head. But I I saw the big you know mouse ears, the the helmet that he wears in my mind, and I thought Skrillex. Hmm. I thought that's who that was. <laughs> but I know it's Dead Mouse or Danger Mouse. Danger Mouse Two. <laughs> 
hey, do you remember The Secret of Nim? It was, yeah, uh, uh, vaguely. It was about rats. Sure. Yeah. Uh, rats who were trying to find a little glowing crystal, am I right? I think so, yeah. They had a little society. You know, back you know, in the 80s, in the 70s and 80s, it was really easy to anthropomorphize um, animals and just, you know, uh, create a little society for them in order to teach children lessons about, uh, about civilization. And it now— was, It was easy. People don't want to see that, you know. No. They want to see humans acting like humans. Just they uh, Basically, what people want to see on TV these days, this is my opinion, they want to just watch— Someone getting out of bed in the morning, driving to work, sitting in their cubicle, going home, eating dinner, going to bed. That's an episode. That's what people love. I don't want to stop this program in its tracks, but my friend, that was a hot take. That was hot as hell. It just seems to me like there are no TV shows about talking, any, any type of talking animal. Not at Unless all. Unless you go to Cartoon Network. That's right. Or you've got premium cable like HBO. Let's, you know, let's commend the good people at Animals. They're heading. Uh, That's they're, true. They finished their second season, and I believe they've gotten a third, and they deserve it. Right, because they're making animals talk. Even on Game of Thrones, I wish they'd make the dragon talk. That's right, or one of those dire wolves. That's true. What if the dire wolf could be like, you want to know why I'm so strong and agile? It's because of this. And also, my loyalty comes from this. And yet, we'll never know, and we could learn so much. So much. Even if he said that, even if he said, do you want to know, and then didn't give his secrets away, that would be great. Right. And I don't want to ruin what happens to the dire wolves for you. <laughs> don't even, don't even bring them up. There's a couple different colors of them. Okay. All right. Well, I figured, I figured there wasn't just going to be ghost. Do you like colors? Colors, in general, you know, I love colors. I like uh, uh, green, uh, blue, uh, red. I can get on board with. Red. I'd like to see you in a nice pair of red corduroy pants. Just that? Just that. Uh, I could make that happen. Yeah? Sure. Send me an email sometimes, and we'll, and we'll try to figure that out. I'll put on a pair of red corduroys. You can come by, take a look for two, three minutes, and then head out. You can dress me, too. What would you like to see Tom Petty in? Well, we're keeping the denim hat. Yes. And I'd like to see you in sort of a Luigi costume. Absolutely. From, from the... From Nintendo. Ah, yes. <laughs> Luigi. You know, Mario really shits on Luigi for him being his twin brother. Every time they're described, it's like... They're twins? They're twins. Oh, I didn't know it. Didn't you? I know, isn't that bizarre? Not identical. Not identical. No. Well, Luigi's taller. Right, and thinner. Uh-huh. Hmm. Mario, stocky. <laughs> That's right, with the different eating choices. What are you talking about? They eat different things? I thought they both liked... I don't know what they like. Pizza? No, that's the Ninja Turtles. Oh, I guarantee you there have been some Ninja Turtle Mario Brothers dinners where there's pasta on one side and there's pizza on the other, and the turtles go get some pasta and the Mario Brothers go get some pizza. Now, if going back to the memes thing, if you wanted to do a meme, do a meme like that to what the Ninja Turtles and Mario Brothers are eating. Yeah, and, and here's all you need to, here's the only words you need to put on it. Can't we all just fucking get along? Whoa! I like it. I love the sentiment. I, the, the language limits. The language is limiting. Well, so what? Do you take out can't? No. Why can't? No. <laughs> we all why? just fucking get along. <laughs> why we all just get along? Fucking. Uh, so you want to take out the F word, I see. That's right. Well, you know, I, I only put one F word in a song, and it was early in my career. What was it? It was the F word. I, I, I it, what to, oh, what was the, the song? The song was just fuck, and then you're done. Yeah, fuck, 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 fuck. That's a short, no, that's a short one. It was, um, it was, uh, well, it was either Depot Street or In the Street. Oh, anyway, I say, and her lips are so fucking exciting. Whoa. Yeah. Who's who? Your, your wife? No, it was a girl. You know, if you read the un- unauthorized autobiography that Warren Zanes put out about me last year, okay, um, it goes into depth about you know a lot of my life, but. Early in my career, there was someone that I'd been in love with in my teens, and uh, I wrote most of my songs based on her. Yeah, well, you were a teen of summer. <laughs> Boy, that little teen of summer. <laughs> Trying to stop the fountain of my own sorrow so that I could have a productive career and people could enjoy being around me. Jackson Brown, get the hint. Oh, no. Now, he's not here. Thank God. But 
It, you'd almost think he was with that sound effect. He'd show up and be like, can I play a song for you guys? And be like, oh, sorry, I've got a doctor's appointment, Jackson. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been looking forward to this uh, uh, root canal for about uh, a week now, so I really can't reschedule. It's more exciting than seeing you, Jack. Yeah, I'm getting a pedicure. Or, I don't know, something. A pedicure. Pedicure. You know, when you go to the doctor, you're probably looking for a pedicure. <laughs> You could be looking for advice. You could just be asking a question that you have coming, popping into your head. But don't worry, we're going to answer them all. I'm your host, former rock and roll guitarist John Lennon for the European rock band, The Beatles. Okay, I'm just joking. I'm not going to be that serious and slow the whole time. That's not what type of, you know, podcast this is. We don't give out, you know, sensual love advice. We give out fun advice. And I'm John Lennon, your host. All right, yeah. No, the, the, the look on my, you know, the look on my next guest's face, his very little face, was questioning. He was, what? What are we doing? I, I didn't. I didn't know this was that type. No. And now, I should say this. I mentioned his very little face, and it's the furriest one I've ever seen. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome to the program my. He's been my guitar tech for years. He's a little gray mouse, and his name is Squeaks. Hello, Squeaks. Thanks for coming in. Hey, thanks for having me. It's so great to have you here. John, it's always a pleasure to get to see you. How, it's been a, I feel like it's been a, a year. Or it's two been exactly. Since we last saw you. It was exactly a year. That's right, because we were together on your birthday. That's right. right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. and happy birthday. Thank you. Did you get everything you wanted? Um, I did. You know, being a little gray mouse, uh, I don't ask for much. Uh, just a popcorn curdle or two will do me fine. And uh, mom and dad gave it. To, you know, I'm so happy mom and dad are still on this earth with me. <laughs> they they sent me a couple popcorn curdles. <laughs> That's nice of them. You know, I've always wondered how, you know, how does um, how does a mouse mail anything? Because the, the mail is probably that they make is so small. Can you get a small envelope is basically my question. Well, there are mouse stationery stores, but a lot of times right, we don't. Right, mouse stationery stores. A lot of times, and, and they'll have mouse-sized envelopes, mouse-sized stamps, mouse-sized um, erasers. But a lot of times, you know, being a mouse, what we can do is we can just tie something in our little tail. Right. And then run up and down beams of wood. And because every be, you know every beam of wood is always connecting to another beam. <laughs> it's true. If you do the homework and do the math, every beam of wood attaches to another beam. That's and right. And then a lot of times that will attach to a drain, a, or to a pipe, right? Or to a street curb, sure. Or a little box of matches that you use for a, a boat. Well, I just got back from vacation where I... Oh, where did you go? Well, I, I was in a little box of mass, matches in a bathtub. That's wonderful! For me, that's the ocean. Oh, that's, that's great because you know what's so great about that? You don't have to waste your time with sunscreen lotion. That's true. Uh, you know, if you notice, my fur is a little lighter. Right. So when I get it... It looks great. Mm, thank you. <laughs> now you hesitated. You don't think it looks good. Well, I like it darker. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, I'm the little... I, you know, people call me Squeaks, but I often introduce myself as just a little gray mouse. Right. And when my fur gets lighter, people kind of, huh? Yeah, wait, wait a gray? minute. What, are you lying to me right yeah. to my face? Maybe a little light gray mouse. Right. They get upset that the word light right. isn't right. before gray yes. when I introduce myself. People can be real sticklers when it comes to mouse fur color. Do people have that with you, with your name? Do people, when they meet you, they feel like your name doesn't... Match your physical features? Sometimes, you know, because I'll say, hi, I'm John Lennon. And they say, okay, well, that's great. I'll pull down my pants and start urinating in you. I say, I'm not that type of John. Oh, sure. I'm not a bathroom. Yeah. You know, it's short for Jonathan. <laughs> right. Or, or long for Joe. Yeah. Good thing. Um, I, I, I often wonder uh, how W.C. Fields would do over in old England. Oof. He didn't do great. He would. I remember he would show up to Liverpool sometimes because he would always make a stop in Liverpool. For some reason, he wanted to go through that dirty, dingy, dusty town. Uh -huh. And he would step off his plane at the Liverpool airport <laughs> yes. in a brand, you know, crisp, very crisp striped suit. And everyone would say, well, he'd say, we'd say, who are you? We'd all yell. 
and you know, we're grabbing our crotches because we, we drank so much uh, water and ale. And we, who are you? We can't find a bathroom. I'm Jimmy Sheep Field, you would say to us. And it just sounds like a field of water closets. That's right. Just so an entire field. Of we them. would we would almost you know get, uh, our eyes would sort of cartoonishly cha ching into sort of a, a toilet shape, and we'd <laughs> run up to him and urinate all over him. He didn't like that. He he hates it. Yeah. His his trips to Liverpool are always very short. Well, he said his that famous quote, you know, the "Don't work with um, animals and children." Right. I heard he revised that on his deathbed and said, animals, children, and Liverpoolians yeah, well, who have to go to the bathroom. Well, he, he, he had every right to do it. It was disgusting what happened to him. But he kept, he kept coming back. You know, that sort of makes you crazy. If you do something expecting a different result over and over again. That's the definition of cuckoo caca. <laughs> Look it up. Well, now let me, let's go back here, Squeaks. When did I? I met you back in Hamburg, didn't I? Gosh, was it really that long ago? It was that long ago. Are we ago. that old? Ooh, it, well, uh, yes, we're getting old. <laughs> we get, we, it's time to go casket shopping, I think, for the two of us. <laughs> I know. Hey, don't worry, it's okay to get dark here. Well, I really feel like I'm pushing it because the life expectancy of little gray mice is usually three years tops. But I've been around for about 75 years. I think you're doing great. Well, well I, people I, ask me, and I, I say it's real simple. Three glasses of water every day right. that you soak in. Uh, oh! Now, is that what us humans are supposed to be doing with our eight glasses of water? Should we be soaking in them and not drinking them? Yes, don't drink them. Uh, a you lot of times it's good. Uh, you, well, it's uh, that old expression. Three soaks and you're good, bloke. That's right. <laughs> I know. You know, you hear these old expressions and you never know where they came from. That's great. Good thing us old timers are around to yeah. yeah, yeah. Somebody yeah, should we, write these down. We met in uh, Hamburg. I remember I went, uh, I saw, what was the band again? The Beatles? The Beatles, yeah. I went and saw the Beatles. I, I, it slips my mind too. In a, 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 a basement club. I know, the, ca- the Cavern Club, we called it. We, we call- called it that. It was not called that. Yeah, we called it the Basement Club. Right. Uh, for the alliteration. Basement Club. Dude, we wanted to keep going all the way through the end of the alphabet. And I went there because there was just a lot of crumbs on the ground. Well, you know, you never find... If I could generalize, and I hate to do it, but my all mice love crumbs. I don't think you'd meet any mouse that would say, no, hey, wait, no, we well, don't. Well, some nights I feel like it's the crumbs that like us because they we're surrounded by them so much and often. But the club was a good place to go to because um, we refer to humans who drop a lot of crumbs as crumb givers. I remember that. Uh, that is exactly how we met. I remember standing in the... The WC, uh, you know, ad- adjusting my suit because I was going to be on stage. You know, you can't go out with a crumpled, no. wrinkled. My suit was my suit coat was on backwards was the problem. So I turned it around and I heard from down below, "You're looking good, crumb dropper." And I, who, what? I, I and I looked up. I don't know why, but I looked up and I figured a crumb would drop on me. Well, I think it was the acoustics in the bathroom were it was a, were very strange. And it was so a, a lot great, of times stuff from the floor would sound like from the ceiling and vice versa. I would tell the manager, "We got to move this concert into the bathroom. The acoustics are something oh, else." Amazing, yeah, yeah. But he said, "There's not enough room." So <laughs> I was just at the club, purely for the crumbs, right? And then I remember seeing you guys oh. up on stage. Playing La La Looney. Can you believe it? La La Looney, pass me that balloony. And uh, maybe we'll be swept swept away. away. You remember every lyric. Of course. It was the first song I heard. And I was always disappointed that never ended up on one of your um, albums by the, um, shit. The, um. The Rolling Stones? No. Mm. It was your band. Herman's Hermits. Oh, uh, the Beatles. Yes, right. it was never yes. on an album by the Beatles. I'm so humble. I never think anyone's talking about our band. If, if, if you ever listened to them, I, not a lot of people have, I don't think. Uh, I'm a passing fan, even though <laughs> I was your guitar tech and worked on all the albums. Yeah, your, your attitude at work sometimes, we can tell. Well, 
It's also one of those things, do you want a fan hanging out with you all the time? I knew my place. I knew that if I was hanging out, right, just blowing up your skirt the whole time, mm-hmm. you guys would go, you know what, we don't, we want a guitar tech, not a fan. Right, you know, we're wasting so much pen ink here signing autographs for this little gray mouse. What's the point of it? Every little scrap he finds, he wants us to autograph. Yeah. But I hey, didn't do that. Hey, this is the, this is the, you know, guitar pick that broke in half. Can you sign it? Is that your squeaks impression? Well, wow. yeah. Oh, I'm very flattered. We all did one. Really? Yeah. Okay, I remember walking into the room once, and everybody got really quiet, and I couldn't tell. Were you guys doing all your your squeaks impressions? We were doing it, uh, yes, that's exactly right. It was during Let It Be when we were recording that. And I said, well, squeaks, let us be. And you said, let it be? That's a good name for him. I said, fine, whatever stops this. I was the inspiration for uh, a lot of... um Beatles songs. That's right. Well, remember that time we put you inside that banana and put you in the tub? <laughs> you, <laughs> yes. You were in a little yellow it submarine. The, it was the yellow submarine. That's right. <laughs> and you didn't mind it. I mean, you, you came up with half of those lyrics. Yeah, because you boys were partying, hardying too much. Sometimes I felt like I was a... Uh... Did you feel like the school mom who always had to clean up for us? Well, I would have to clean up, and then I would have to say, boys, time to get back into practice. But you loved how I tuned your guitar. Oh, you did it great. Um, no one knew, uh, None of us knew how to tune a guitar. Still don't. I'll just say this. Four words. It takes a mouse. <laughs> it takes a mouse to do those things because the strings are so fine. Right. The knobs that you use to tune the strings are so delicate. A human hand doesn't have the touch for it. You need a tiny mouse hand to really get right into the A-flat that you wanted that stop right there. And I have perfect pitch. My squeaks have perfect pitch. Name a note, and I'll give you the squeak. (sighs) Name a note. Uh, This is always my word. You know, I can never remember the notes. Uh, A lot of times they're just letters. Right. No, I know that. (laughs) I'm a musician. I'm a a world-renowned guitar player. Oh, a note. Uh, R. No, no that I knew it was wrong. It's usually the first seven letters of the alphabet. A B A. Okay. Eep. Well, I'm looking at my auto tuner that I have here in my pot. Yes, that's exactly right. Those it's are amazing. The end of my career. The guitar tuners, the uh, the automatic guitar tuners. Oh my god! It's like I'm the um. I'm the auto mechanic who's been replaced by a um, clear cube that can fix cars. <laughs> a clear gas-filled cube. How, what are the, that's the, you know, I have a lot of mechanic friends, and they've been losing jobs left and right to these gas-filled cubes. I'll see them sometime. I'll go into a bar, and I'll see a bunch of, you know, surly fellows. Hunch hobbled over their drinks. What's wrong with you? I'll say, anytime I see anyone down in the luck, stranger or not, I'll slap them on the back and say, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Hopefully they, you know, spring to life and tell me in a polite manner. That is rarely the case. Yeah, a lot of times there'll be three sheets to the wind. <laughs> That's a nice way of putting it. And they'll say, got replaced by a cube, Macko. Tobacco? Is that what you said? <laughs> I said Macko, but they, <laughs> they they figure my name is Macko Tobacco. <laughs> and then, you know, you have to say what would lead you to think that I'm not smoking a cigarette. I'm, I'm John Lennon. I'm not Paul McCartney. Right. It would make more sense to call Macko. Exactly. And they say, sorry, my brain's a little fried here. My, I've been replaced by a cube. All right, let's get to the first question. It starts off with, I really, really need some advice while you come to the right place. Thank you. I just just moved to a big city. I do want to say right now I'm speaking as this person who wrote it. I didn't move to a big city. I've been living in New York City all my life. So I should. My adult life. You've been living in New York City. Sure. Um, Oh, there's that famous poster of you where you're wearing the shirt that says New York City on it. I believe I've seen that. Hanging up in dorms before, right? It, you can find it in the dorm or a Spencer's. A Spencer's gift. Spencer's gift. Um, uh, I had a friend who told me that once she invited a guy over to her dorm room, okay, after a date, 
for a little hooking up. Mm. And he saw her John Lennon New York City shirt poster, and he said, "That's awesome. I love Howard Stern." <laughs> and she, oh no, and she decided not to <laughs> not make out with him. Yeah. This isn't hookup material. Yeah, she was like, "Not this guy." Oh, good for her. Howard Stern. I wish. I wish I could have Howard Stern's career. I he, think if most people were given the choice between John Lennon's career mm-hmm. or Howard Stern's, right. They the, choose the Stern. What do they go? What does he go by these days? The King of Zing? The King. Well, I there was another King of Zing who uh, sued him, and really? so legally he can't use that name. Oof. So it's Zing with six eyes. The King of Zing. Precisely. That many eyes makes an E. All right, here we go. <laughs> I really need some advice. I just moved to a big city a couple of years ago, and I'm still not acclimated to it. I thought that I would have started to love this place by now, but I don't quite yet. The city is Boston, by the way. I know you're a big NYC guy. Please don't avoid my question because of it. Send Ringo my love. Of course I will. From Gage LaGreca. Oh, that's a, that's a wonderful name, Gage. I like that name. Gage LaGreca. You mind if I use it for a weekend? No, I'm not. I'm. I'm asking really no one. I don't care if squeaks. If you care, if yo, you're not gonna let me and not let me use Gage Lagrega. <laughs> you can do whatever you want, John. <laughs> Thank you. You know, I've always liked that attitude about you. Well, you would say. I remember you'd say, "Hey, I, make this. Can you tune this A string into an F?" Yep. And I'd say anything you want, John. And you went on to have one of the worst concerts of your career. Oh, we tried to play the White Album live with. You know, disrupted instruments. It was a mistake. But to your credit, you you said that was that was me. You as John said that was me, not you saying that was me as in squeaks. Right. Whew. Th- this weekend I'll be saying that was me as Gage LaGreca. All right, let's get to the question. So you you live in this city for a couple you live in Boston now for a couple of years, you feel you aren't acclimated. Bean town. Well, try the beans. That, I think that's what Squeak's trying to say. Yeah, I, I've only been to Boston once, mm-hmm. but I went out of my mind on beans. Did you ever find one so big you could roll on top of it? Yeah, you know how people will do that with logs? It, well, they'll run on the logs and have the log ru- roll underneath their feet. Right, and then eat it. <laughs> I did that with a bean. I went from the edge, one edge of Boston, to the other, <laughs> running on a bead the whole time. That's not easy because the street system is very confusing. There's no grid. Right. Um, there's no grid system in Boston. So it's tough to find your way around, especially when you're rolling on a bean. I but guess, Gage, I, my advice here would be try to find the bean rolling, any type of bean rolling in in Boston and see if that's your thing. Relative to your size, of course. Right. Now, hopefully, I assume this person is the size of a mouse. I assume. I assume that from the beginning. But that's just me. I mean, can you say projection much? Squeaks, come on. You, you got to open up your mind. Not everybody is a mouse like you. I mean, I'm looking at you, John. You're not a mouse. I'm not a mouse. Sometimes I can be mousey. If, you know, I'm in a situation where I feel like, you know, I don't need to be so boisterous. Sure. I'm feeling shy. Yeah. I want to get into a, a hole of Swiss cheese. Well, I've always resented that, um, you know, that use of the word mousy, right. meaning shy right. or a, a wallflower, because a lot of us mice are very uh, outgoing. Right. No, I've noticed that with you and some of your pals. Well, I w- remember when I brought over bricks. Mm-hmm. And he's... A wild man. He, he still owes me money for some of the damage he did in my apartment. Well, he chewed. He, he chewed. He chewed my head right while I was sleeping. But that one I'm willing to let go because that healed itself. But you know what didn't heal? The toaster he chewed on. Yeah, well, he, he paid for that. He, <laughs> yeah, and his crumpled up teeth. Oh, my God. What do you mean, oh, my God, Squeaks? What are you talking about? It's just so sad. It's so sad because, you know, he loved it. He's the only mouse I've ever known that would eat corn on the cob, and those days are over for him. Because he chewed on my metal my metal uh, toaster. God. 
but you know, he he lives his own life. And I'm, you know, again, no judgment. I love Bricks. He's a great friend yeah. of mine. But it's just he makes these choices, and he expects all of us to, right? You know, take him to the dentist. All right. Take him it's like to the Brits, dentist. I can't take you to the dentist every time you have a rendezvous with the toaster, babe. Uh, but yeah, if you're in Boston, I guess, yeah, roll around on a big bean. Uh, when you get to the other side of the city, eat the bean. Um, I went to a little out of the way bar while I was in Boston that might help this uh, man get more acclimated to the city. Oh, well, what is it? It was called Cheese. I went to it because I thought it said cheese. It was Cheers. Oh, oh my! Right from the from uh, the George Went Show. Yes, uh, I think in America people knew it as the George Went Show was the title. But in in my little underground hole that I live with many of my family members, uh-huh. we got it as Cheers. Oh, right, right, right. But I was walking down the street on my hind legs. <laughs> You're surprisingly tall when you get on those hind legs. By the way. It's it's disconcerting for people, I know, because I look very small when I'm on all four legs. Right. And then I get on my back hind legs and I grow to six feet. <laughs> You're just a long mouse. That's all it is. And I saw the sign, cheers. Mm-hmm. Now, you know I have that stigmatism in my eye where I drop R's. Right. You know, I've, taken you, I've taken you to the optometrist many times. You mean the optometrist? Right. Yeah, that's what I meant. Because I dropped the R there. Right, 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 right. I, so, I, you know what I just did? I hadn't listened to the last thing you said very closely. And I didn't think of the spelling of that word. Well, I saw the, the cheer sign, but because there, I didn't see the R, I thought it said it was misspelled as cheese. Right. So I, it, so I said, get, that's, get you, me you, in there. You dr- yes, you have, your astigmatism drops R's and adds E's <laughs> after S's. It's very specific. No, I do. I don't wish for well, your life at all. Well, and the stigmatism. If there was ever a time it was going to get me in a jam, it was looking at this cheer sign because it perfectly made it look like cheese. Right. So I go in there. I march right in on my hind legs, tall as can be, and I say, "Well, let me at it. I'm a mouse, and I'm hungry, and I want some cheese." Mm-hmm. And they said, "The sign says cheers, you." And then I'll never forget. They said. You scumbag. Oh, they call me a no, scumbag. No, that's awful. Uh, that's terrible. <laughs> so don't go to that bar. I don't know why I'm telling this man yeah. to go to that bar. It sounds like a... Gage, stay on the bean. Get out and roll Just around stay on, on the bean. bean. Yeah. Stay on, on the, the bean. bean. Give it a few more years. I, I say live there until you're 60 years old, and then if you want to move, move. All right, hope that helped, Gage. <laughs> Thing with Spraggy, baby. Here's the thing, baby, with Spraggy, baby. Wild, wild west. I used to live downtown. <laughs> now, Good. now I've, of course, because my turtles project is down the drain. I've been no pun home, intended, no pun intended. Drain, I've been talking I'll about. I'll declare this pun accidentally said. Thank you. <laughs> and now I've been watching a lot of Survivor. Really, old Survivor episodes. I've been watching a lot of Survivor, Scott, All and right. that is what brings me to my. Proposal for Gino. <gasps> Ooh, this is unprecedented. This is exciting. You want me to no, get naked? And, no, 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 okay. Gino. No, no, no. no. Roll right. around. We, get, some we can money talk on about that later. We can talk about that later. Nope. That can be the indecent side of the proposal. But oh. right now, Gino, I want to propose an alliance between our two characters. <gasps> Oh, interesting. I don't have any characters. No, I know I know what you mean. Our, he our, he our means your character. Who your, we are. Oh, like, yes. The way yes, you are yeah. as a person. If, yeah. if, if I think if Sprague and Gino form an unlikely alliance here, we might be able to win the best ofs this year. Oh, Ooh. this is a, this I like is a good that. idea because usually it's every person for it's themselves. Every, but if, here's what we do: we just do other episodes and just totally throw them. Like we get the, we get there, we start on do, it. You I already other, started. I already yeah, started yeah, this yeah, plan. Yeah, yeah, I enacted yeah, yeah. it big time. Any other episode you're on, you just throw the episode. You make it a little weird. You maybe say something that throws someone else's character off. You know, and then that way, when the voting comes up, it's me and Gino strong in the end. You know what I mean? Wait, or, but we can oh. just make a big campaign for this episode. No, we we got to do that as well. Oh, okay. But we've so also the ones you're on together, you yes. do really well on. But the and then you appear mm-hmm. on other people's episodes separately, and you tank. Them. Listen, uh, but what's to stop you from making this same deal with some of these other okay, fucking no, people? No, so listen to me, Gino. Know, Gino, right John now, Lennon or Gino, listen. We got the numbers, okay? Right now, I've got Rudy North. 
Whoa! I've got I've got Mike Ruby, the no state. Oh plumber. yeah, the no state plumber. <laughs> I've he got was them a huge in my back hit. pocket. They're two goats. We're gonna take them to the finals. Me and you, Gino. But Trust then me. it'll just be the two of you in the yeah, end. It'll just be the- <laughs> so, Gino. Historically, your episodes don't get as many votes as they should because you split the vote. You're in so many. Episodes, yes, you're in so many great episodes that people don't know what to vote for. Plus, everything you say kind of runs together. Right, and right, so right. Yeah, like- and a huge part of it is that I don't give a shit. <laughs> right, <laughs> well, no, the you're not voting our podcast but, listeners but see, who are arguably worse than. TV that's extras. the thing, Gino. That's the best thing. No one will ever suspect it. Okay? Yeah. So if you're a dark you, horse, me and you make an alliance right Ooh, now. Oh, Palomino. Okay? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Me and you make an alliance. We just get those two Sully Sullenberger guys out of the fucking. Yeah, you got to get them out first because, because they're, they're the biggest yeah. threat right now. Okay. What do we'll you think? Do that. Can I trust are, you, Gino? Are, is the voting open? No, no. no the no, it won't be open until November. No, no, no. Yeah. If we can okay. get through, you got to lay the groundwork. So this is just a five month heads up. Yes. But but what we've got to do today is we've got to vote one of these characters out of the episode at the end of the episode. Uh, oh, so, at, the, at the end of this episode, yeah, so we're add voting plugs, someone out? Add plugs, me and you, Gino, we just got to hold strong. Any of these other guys come in, these new characters. So this is the survivor part. This is the <laughs> at the end of your fucking spiel. I get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so at the end of this episode, Gino, as long as we vote, and Scott, you're obviously playing all the sides. Well, I'm you're probes. You're probes. In this of situation, of course. As long as we stay strong. Greg we, Proops? We're great. <laughs> Greg Proops, of course. He does. He, you know, but this is, a, this is a good idea, right, Gino? This is a fucking wonderful idea. Sprague it was? Yeah. That's, uh, uh, I'm super fucking pumped. The best ideas are the ones where you have to say, this is a good idea, isn't it? <laughs> so right. the very I'm really pumped about it. To really try to save I'm it. I'm not sure which one of the six parts is my favorite part of the idea, <laughs> but they all There's connect a lot of parts. pretty smoothly. There's and a lot I, of parts. Hey, Scott, can I... Go, can we go get some water for a second? Uh, yeah, over here. Yeah, yeah let sure. me talk okay. to you for a second. All right, yeah, you can you, you can hold down the fort, yeah, right, Gino? Yeah, I usually right. get hey, the Scott, water. Scott, mm, yes, yeah, I want to I want to blindside Gino. Yeah, I yeah, know because yeah. he's strong. He's too. He's strong. too strong. We'll he's, never beat him in the end. Did you hear that that fun zinger about your name Sprague or whatever? Like, that's yeah, too good. he's too good. He's too funny. He's too good, and you're not. You're not. I'm never going to be that funny. You're in not doing end, that well on this episode in particular. I, I so it's like, like, hey, I don't know what you guys are saying over there, but I agree wholeheartedly. <laughs> cool, Gino. <laughs> cool, Gino. Good to hear from good you. Good shit. So I think okay. So as long yeah, as what we do we hold do? Strong at the end. So I'm going to make an alliance with all these new characters at the end. Okay. We vote out Gino. We vote out Gino, and he'll never see it coming. Okay, this is great. Hashtag blindside. Hashtag blindside. Okay. All right. Oh, this episode. Oh, so what should we talk hey, about? What yeah, should what we should we talk about? about? Um, Gina. Um, I was recently Gina. adopted by Sandra Bullock, and I'm going to play offensive line for a high school football team. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's very a, cool. That's very an cool. incredible Gina. Gina, story. Come here. <laughs> that's I talk right over here. Story. Yeah, sure. Okay. Oh, hey, Sprague. Uh, yeah. I got to help him get the waters. For oh, everybody. yeah. No, yeah, he does right. get waters. We're going to take a swim probably in this water. All right. Tight, tight. I'll just keep hosting the show. So anyways, call me back. Gino. You're going to be blindsided. What? You're going to be blindsided Again? at the end of the show. I was already blindsided when Sandra Bullock adopted me and forced me to play high school football. That's what was so ironic about it. Oh, my God. I can't get blindsided again. No. I'm out of sides after this. we got to get everyone else on this show together so that we can vote out Sprague at the end. Okay, yeah. That's, I Now that I understand that the premise of Comedy Bang Bang is that it's a survivor kind of thing. No, you understand it's a one-to-one. Yeah, I, got, I totally understand it now. Yeah. I got it. There's millions Every of episodes. Detail. Some people yeah. like all of them, and some people are like, yeah, I think my friend watches that. <laughs> yeah, Every yeah. detail refers back to Survivor. Yes, <laughs> yes you got, got it. it. Yeah. I figured it out completely. Well, okay. I'm happy to be part of the Lizard Clan or whatever, and let's do it. Yeah, okay, great. Hey, Spray! It's been... Oh, well, sorry. <laughs> oh, okay, I was yeah. just doing comedy bang bang on my. You were doing all. The, you were yeah, reading you're the dry erase board. Yeah, I was reading a lot of the bits. It says it's been one week. Okay, then I just did <laughs> okay, that. Got it. All well, right, so uh, this is fun. Yeah, so this is good. This stuff. is great. Yeah. I'm feeling really good. I'm feeling like I can trust you guys. Scott, oh, of course you can Scott, trust. Can I talk to you for a minute? Oh my God, who's Scott, this? Scott, I, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. John, I'm, holy wait, shit, it's Yoko's husband, John Lennon. No, this is not about me. I just I I left behind a DVD before the pandemic. Oh wait, which one? <laughs> the the Blindside DVD. <laughs> oh, I've had the worst pandemic. I haven't been able to watch my wait, favorite movie. I actually have. It's not a DVD. It's a Blu-ray. It's not yours. I'm assuming, but it's the Steelbook of Blindside. If you want that, it's a Blu-ray. It's a Blu-ray. Yeah, I don't have the equipment for that. <laughs> <laughs> DVD. I'm looking for a DVD. Lennon, okay, you, you don't fucked. have a Blu-ray player? I do not. No, uh, you know, a, a ring. So, seems like you. I don't need to get into all this. John stuff. Lennon, I, a guy, could get a Blu-ray player. Really? Sure, sure, I could, but I like the quality of a DVD. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, you don't have. Do you have an HD TV? Is that uh, an HD? Yeah. Uh, not HGTV. I, I, okay. Now. 
Yes, I do. <laughs> okay. okay. You do have an HGTV? I do have an HGTV. <laughs> okay. It's just got a lot of dirt on it. I don't know what this it. means. Okay. <laughs> it's a TV. It's a, it's a digital TV. It's a TV, TV with, with plants it. on it? Okay. Well, yeah, and um, so you don't have my DVD. I don't have it. Okay. I'm sorry, but come here for a second. Come here. All right, hold on. Let me crawl under here. <laughs> Look, let's go you, don't table, crawl. No, I didn't you mean you brought me. this little weird dog tunnel thing. <laughs> Why you got to put it down and crawl through it? Are you doing agility classes after this? <laughs> it's you know I'm I'm getting on an age and it's keeping me <laughs> spry. Okay, I understand. Come here for a second. Spry. Oh, spray. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Different, different guy. Right, yeah, yeah. Different guy. Come here for a second. Can yeah. I tell you? Hey, uh, we need to vote out uh, these two assholes. <laughs> who are now, on the other I, yes. I, from what I overheard, it was at the end of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> They're too powerful. We can't wait till the end These of the episode. Two? And you overheard this? I thought we were being so quiet. No, I was behind that big steel door. That I, don't, I think you got ripped off. <laughs> oh, no. And in fact, some of the other oh, studios shit, this is here. just aluminum foil. What was I doing? Some of the other studios are complaining that you're bleeding into that. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, are you in? Do we have an alliance? I'm you in, but me? I'm not going to be here for long. I need to. <laughs> yeah, I, I know you have to get take my off. DVD at a lunch I left before the pandemic. Okay, but you can come back at the end. Of the was show. it in a oh. bowl by the door? Uh, yes. It's gone. <laughs> <laughs> I ate that oh, right when did, I that, did, that, did that damn four legged intern eat it? Uh, no, the three legged intern, me. <laughs> Just kidding. I only have two. His, his nub. My little nub. Right. If I lay down, uh, we don't have to get into it. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, Let's not. Uh, you know, I'm going to sneak out of here and go wait. All right, John. Uh, we'll, we'll see you at the end of the show. She uh, loves you. Yeah, a- yeah, yeah. Come on. Don't <laughs> get me started with you that. You are all asleep. <laughs> You've all fallen asleep. You've entered the realm of the Dream Lord. Oh, oh my God. Sh- Welcome, all of you. John Lennon, Hello. thin man with the big shirt. <laughs> Uh, t- Dr. Gino Lombardo, you can call that, him. That could be John Lennon as well. You really should specify. Uh, movie producer and host. I won't be long. I'm so sorry to have you guys fall asleep. I just, uh, I just. What what made us fall asleep, by the way? I made you fall asleep. I uh, needed to communicate Oh, okay. It wasn't John Lennon's story or anything like that. No, no, no. I'm just. Hey, um, Dream Lord, can I talk to you for a second over here? Uh, well, okay, yes. <laughs> sure. I'm the master go, of this dream. Uh, I'm going to go play with these flying caterpillars. Uh, yeah, over here. of course. Well, yeah. I'm going to titty fuck Katy Perry <laughs> again. <laughs> yes. Hey, Dream Lord, Dream yes, Lord. Yes, yes. Hey, you're a good guy. You know, I could. Well, I, I think, think I so. can trust you. You know, there's oh, something about you that's very trustworthy. Oh, I appreciate you know? that. Thank you. You know, you're sort of a lord, and I'm also a sprig. Yeah. Sprig, right? Yeah, right? That, those are sort of similar. <laughs> Listen, we've got a, we've got a, me and you've got a blind. We're gonna split the vote, and we're gonna blindside Lenin. We've got to get this guy out of here. He's too, he's too good. He's too fun loving. You know, okay, dude, without any context, dude, dude. I'm gonna say I understand, and I'm in. <laughs> okay, great. great. I'll, I'll let you guys wake up now. I'll see you later. Woo! Oh, oh wow, shit. that that was incredible. Stuff. Oh, my oh, gosh. gosh. Wow, I feel so rested. Wow. John, someone's here wants you to sign their copy of Catcher in the Rye <laughs> on your way out. Oh, I've been through this before. <laughs> <laughs> ha ha, Gino. Very good. Yes, yes, I was shot in the body by someone who wanted me to do that very same thing. Your body, by the way. My <laughs> body, right in it. Yeah, I just feel like that's a rude thing to say, Gino. You know, I would. that's not the type of person I would trust. You know what I mean? Speaking of rude, Gino, did you, did you put on weight? Yeah, I gained a pound. <laughs> you look big. Oh, thank you. Look you. Bigger. Yeah, I feel fucking amazing. You it's look the nu- one little bit bigger. Yeah, it's the little tail. It's giving me a ton of confidence. I have a nub in the front and the back now. I can roll over safely. We covered this, John. Pressing my monster. But John, you can't come late and just we rehash conversation. You know what? Sprague, yeah. can I talk to you yeah, for a second? Come late. We don't do over here. We can get Lennon out. We go to vote out. He's too strong. He Those circular re- glasses. He loves to rehash, and that just takes up so much time of the episode. By the end, you're like, it's oh the John Lennon episode. You know yeah, what I mean? Forget it. No, no. We all need to shine on this episode. All right, don't worry. All right, we all. Shine. That gives me a good idea for a song to listen to later. <laughs> oh, and you're all so asleep. Listen, you're all asleep real quick. I'm so sorry. Oh, so sorry. Oh. It's me, Morpheus, the Dream Lord. I'm oh, sorry. Hey, you're Morpheus. All asleep. Hey. People are dreaming about this episode that you are recording now. And from what I'm gathering from people's dreams, you're recapping a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Just some no notes. Reason. I know it's not so. So, this is the most notes. specific dream anyone has ever had. I mean, usually you don't understand any usually, of the yeah, details. Usually, dreaming about very common movies <laughs> from your perspective. So there's a lot of recap them. in this one. <laughs> These are extremely literal dream transcripts of the current podcast. But that not you enough are recap for new listeners in the last three months who have no idea why John Lennon is here. I feel like you're probably leaving a lot of people out, but. Uh, from <laughs> or who Sprague is. Gino's self-explanatory. Obviously. Dr. Gino Lombardo reporting for duty. <laughs> You're all awake. Oh, 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 okay. Oh God. Oh, wow. So anyway, I was saying, you, you do look like you're sitting a little higher. Oh, I my get- God, we're asleep again. <laughs> oh, no, 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 I'm just bored. Okay. <laughs> okay. We were falling asleep. Oh, wait. Well, oh. everything's back to normal. You know, we could just do a normal episode. Just do a normal bang episode. Bang. We have so much show to Everyone's, go. Everyone's, you know, yeah. no, no shifting my eyes left and right. No, no. Let's if do you want to 
plug Reno 911 on Quibi. <laughs> you can go for it. If you want yeah. to. You know you can. Sure. <laughs> oh, oh John, I know you need to go. You're but... mistaking me. I, I've got to get out of here. You're mistaking me with somebody. I'm not going to tell you who you're mistaking me Fuck. with. Fuck. It must be Paul McCartney. <laughs> and I'm out of here. <laughs> Zoom. <Zoo! What? laughs> Whoa. <laughs> he can fly now. <laughs> left, I left. can fly, and I was telling you where I'm going. Oh, next. he's above us. <laughs> to the zoo. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, well, look. Yo, we... I'm keeping this agility tunnel. <laughs> okay. Yeah. This yeah, one's going to be Why do you leave that behind? Oh, my God. Fill it up with all fly, this extra KY warming liquid I have. All right. Well, we do need to get to our next guest. He is the aforementioned salesperson. We're going to find out what he sells. Please welcome to the show for the first time, Andy Manders. Hey, Scott. Thanks so much for having me. Hey, God, so great so to meet excited. you. Andy Manders. Andy Manders. Yeah, this chair salesman. Oh, this is, nice to meet up, you. oh, you wanted to say chair salesman Doesn't before matter. I <laughs> introduced you to... Yeah, that's okay. You're a chair, so you sell chairs. Specifically. I sell chairs. I'm that's Gino that's Lombardo. Gino, this nice is Gino, though. So you I'm, sell chairs. Seems like you wanted to quickly get out your thing. Just real quick. Uh, I think this before is a smart anyone, idea. Before anyone could disrupt it or... <laughs> that, that, I don't know why I would worry about that. I've never met any of you before. <laughs> Just I just traditionally when I'm meeting with people I try to get my thing out pretty fast. It's well, just sure, smart it's how we would remember you. In 2021, it's smart. <laughs> just yeah. people's conversations are really accelerating. I find in society, and if you don't get your thing out fast, it gets taken away from you. So of I just course, where'd you grow up? <laughs> oh, I grew up in. <laughs> oh, please misspeak. Uh, please misspeak. Uh, Ohio, Ohio, <laughs> Ohio, Northern Ohio, right outside of Cleveland. Ooh, I love oh, it. right outside, yeah. really? Yeah. Parma, Ohio. Why yeah. not just in Cleveland? Well, it's funny. When you're born, you don't pick. So I guess I should. I guess, Holy but you know shit. what I mean? That's I a good t-shirt. Your t-shirt. parents pick. I like, feel like that's a good t-shirt. When you're, when you're born, born, you, you don't, don't pick. pick. Yeah, and then it's a baby pick in their nose. Yeah. This is a t-shirt. This is good. You're All like right. Lady Gaga. You were born that way in northern Ohio. <laughs> yeah, just outside of Cleveland. I was born that way Ooh, uh, in an right. uninteresting You ever town. go to that uh, baseball museum? Yes, I have. The uh, one the, in New York? The one in Cooperstown, yeah, New York? Yeah. <laughs> why? Uh, <laughs> yes, why did I go Everyone's there? Everyone's looking you know, at like he's out of his mind. It's why a fair you question. <laughs> I went somewhere and defended. I am a fan of baseball unrelated to anything really? we've brought up. I What's go, up with the chairs? <laughs> yeah, we actually want to know about the chairs this time. <laughs> Enough with this baseball bullshit. Tell us about your chairs, bro. You're you on a must fucking have had a lot to say about the chairs. I if feel compelled to said. finish the sentence on baseball. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've no, been, I'd like I go to, to I go to a, I go to see. A, you ever catch one of the like home runs or anything like? Yes, that? Yes, I have. Yeah. I was in the bleachers by myself. The home run gets hit. It sails up into the bleachers. I'm there by myself reading a book. <laughs> Happened to look up. Which book? Wait, it. which book were you reading? Heidi. Heidi, yes. Oh, yes. about the, yeah, the, the uh, Swiss girl, Swiss girl uh, yeah. Shirley Temple. So you went to a baseball game to read a book. Mm-hmm. Isn't that ironic? He was because depressed. D- Shit happens. I was man. depressed. I, I was there. just trying to get out of my head. Just and manifests in different ways life. in different people. Gino, so I totally thank you. understand. That is so yeah. empathetic of you. My therapist says that's why I'm so depressed. You go Who's to your therapy? therapist. Uh, well, he's not my therapist, but he's a therapist that I can hear because he oh, works from home upstairs. Oh, so you okay, listen to yeah. somebody else's oh, therapy. Oh, this is somebody session. else's therapy. Do your problems apply to their N- no, advice? No, no one has the same problems as me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, weird. I assume you were just killing time until you went to another game. Well, that's what I was going to the uh, football hall of fame, which is in Canton, Ohio. Yeah, have you ever been close. to the baseball hall of fame? Oh, sure, Cooperstown, New York. Yeah, yeah I, I love, love it there. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys mind if I just go talk to the camera crew over here for a second? Oh yeah, no problem. Yeah, oh, yeah, sure. yeah whatever hey, you need to do. Yeah, yeah. I'm just <laughs> noticing the camera. This is the camera crew. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> so, hey, so up, so sorry, easy. Yeah. I've got the cup. Sorry, guys. Oh, hey, John. Hey, John. I just, oh, you're right, Gino, the intern. I, I, that person out there shot me. Are you serious? I just, I need some these tissues. He's grabbing tissues. He's it's not the same guy, is it, as uh, before? Different different guy? Mark David Chapman? Yeah. I, I didn't get his name, Scott. I, <laughs> you and he was wearing a mask. you got to ask him who to address the book to, who to address the autograph to. I know. To, I, then I, get I, I do now. so many. Ad- I don't have to hold this. Are <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you really holding a tissue to you? That's, Your space Well, I'm really shocked. <laughs> yeah, that's a strange. John, John, <laughs> yeah. oh, I know oh, you. You're one of the most famous people in the world. Oh, he's alive. We should say for the listener. I should a recap. Who's this guy? My name's Andy Manders. I sell chairs. That's and all you need to you know. Sell chairs. And we're all asleep again. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Hello, Jesus. it's me, Morpheus the Dream Lord. This what? guy never we're, leaves. This guy started talking about chairs. And you all get so <laughs> bored we you we just fell asleep? To, yeah, who gives a shit? You all simultaneously, instantly got so bored you fell asleep. Who gives a shit about chairs? Yeah. <laughs> You're here in the dream world. Yes, yeah, so I saw you earlier. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had so much going on. I, I, forget, I forget who I see. Oh, yeah. No I mean, we're only, you know, four of the many, many people that you're attending to right I'm now. I'm right? currently having conversations with all of the millions of people who are either asleep or It's by or time zones, isn't it? And, unless there's, na- I know you're not in charge of naps. 
Uh, yeah, uh, if nap dreaming does not come here, that's a separate guy. That's a separate guy. But yeah, if you we fall talked asleep about that. at night, you're here. So, <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh my. Um, well, that's kind of. It is kind of like time zones, but uh, people can sleep with them. If you go into a full REM state in the middle of the day, you're coming yeah. here. But like you're doing the East Coast people first, so you're getting a lot Tends of like, to be. hey, get the fuck out of here. I'm dreaming. Here. I'm dreaming. And then here, suddenly right. it goes into oh, the oui, oui, oui. hey, Chicago. Hey, uh, oh, I'm dreaming way. in Chicago, and okay, then suddenly yeah. like you're like, hey, bro, I'm doing a dream. The world, the world starts. Starts in New York and ends in California. <laughs> well, I don't necessarily want to do the other places in the world. <laughs> let's hear you, let's hear you no, do it. Keep going in the Characters going. from every country. I'll do a pass. We'll get <laughs> Hawaii, pass Japan. No, no, thank you. <laughs> Laos. Um, <laughs> hey, do you home. guys mind if I go talk to this dream camera crew over here? Yeah, sure. No problem. You just met us. I just walk over there. Nothing he keeps leaving the table that we're recording at to talk to other people. John, you're not shot anymore. No, I, you know, <laughs> Stop the bleeding with these tissues. Well, well, you're also, I'm doing this fine. is your dream self. Also, you're dreaming of yourself right now. That's so why. Okay. That's is why, that why I have hog. these huge mu- yeah, hog. Okay. Yeah. I said muscle. Like, I was going to. You like, said muscle, and I said hog. Who's surprised? <laughs> Not the listeners. <laughs> Yeah, you've got huge muscles and, a, and you're well endowed. Good for you. Sure, good for me. Good for good for you. You, <laughs> by the way, good for me. me. It's Watching fun this. to be around well endowed people. Makes you feel confident. Sure, yeah, confident people. It's fun to be around them. John, you it. you might be bleeding out. I'm I'm concerned. Oh, we, I feel we should, like maybe well, we should I'll, go I'll back let you guys to wake up. Good to see you guys. Yeah. I'll be here forever. Thanks, Morpheus. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh my God, John. Hell, oh, do you mind if I just uh, sit in my dog tube for a little while? <laughs> Gino, it's yours now. Do you yeah. mind? Yeah, I got. Fu- I think you dripped blood all over the inside. Nope, never mind. I had a very different kind of dream. <laughs> okay. Oh, fuck. should I? Maybe I should be mixing this in an open wound. Well, so, Andy, I feel like we'll never wrap everything up that I talked about. So maybe we'll just take a couple of f- follow up questions. Yeah. Follow up questions about yeah. chairs. Just do whatever you want. Whatever, 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 whatever is striking what's, your interest. I mean, I do ex- have chairs for sale. What's the most expensive chair? That's a good question, right? Uh, in the wor- in about. my catalog, the I most guess ex- a gold chair. <laughs> okay, what's that? Gold. Well, yeah, it's in the world. He's right, of course. A gold chair. I don't sell gold. You don't chairs. sell gold. Gold chair. So that's not the most expensive in my okay. catalog. I was kind of in the mood for a gold chair, yeah. but you don't sell them. Okay. This guy's off mic hey, more than Sprague is. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not something that comes up a lot, so I don't need to keep gold stairs. Right, I'll look elsewhere. Don't worry. Uh, did we cover everything with the chairs? Because I I, we're so. running out of time here. I think Great. So, yeah. All right. We do need to get to our next guest. He is a film reviewer. Please welcome Zuby Condorino. <laughs> Hey, Scott, it's fantastic to be here on your audio podcast today. Zuby Condorino, so, so great to meet you. It's great to be here. I'm so happy to I don't to know review. why these guys are laughing, but I... I, I, I might, you know, my name is a little unique, and people sometimes find it particularly entertaining. Both yeah. parts of it, Zuby and Condorino. Zuby you Condorino. Really, your name yeah. kind of sounds like what John Lennon said when he flew away. <laughs> yeah, he did. Uh, yeah, it's kind of a thing that's a sort of into these days. <laughs> we don't have time to catch you up on how John Lennon is alive and here and all that stuff. I, I've listened to the show before. Oh. I'm pretty, pretty uh, versed in what's going on here in the CBB universe. Okay. All right. Fantastic. Well, Zuby, you're a film reviewer. That's yeah. right. I review how films. interesting. Yeah. Yeah, you, that's what a film reviewer does. You that's review right. films. Yeah. I do not critique them. I simply review them. What does that mean? You don't critique them? Meaning you don't offer any sort of criticism? about them? You, what do you do? I don't do any type of uh, scholarly critique <laughs> at all. Okay, you're more of a man of the people is That's what I'm right. getting from I'll tell you accents. what movie you open the paper, I'll tell you what movie to see this weekend. Oh, okay, and that's because of the quality of it, or...? Because of what sort of struck me with the film. Oh, okay. Well, do you, do you have an example? I mean, we have a lot of films coming out this sure month. Sure I do, Scott. Okay, Fast and the Furious 9. Fast and the Furious 9. I saw this in theaters, Mask Off. Now, okay. <laughs> okay. Good background info. All right. Can I take Wait, a second you. to swallow some spit in my throat? <laughs> no, no, I have no. to be talking constantly on the spot. Do, do whatever. No, well, no. Take, take a moment. Go ahead. Thank you. I would There's say enough swallow guys. the spit before you start talking. Yeah. You know, do it before you're You do things your way, Gino. I'll do things my way. <laughs> so, Fast and the Furious 9. Visually, this is one of the most exquisite designed and executed films of the modern era. One thing I didn't appreciate is the last scene of the movie. Oh, I don't know that we want to know Whose idea was it (laughs) to have all the Fast and Furious folks, people we've grown up with in the series and love, sure, Dom, 
talking German accents for the whole final scene. <laughs> Whoever made that decision, I'd like to find them, bear hug them, and twist their neck off their body. <laughs> Okay. Uh, did do you come with films you wanted to talk about? And I mentioned Fast and the Furious, or are you, or, or can we throw anything at you? I can't you can quite throw tell. anything, and I can review anything too. <laughs> I, 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 with the pandemic, I, 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 I lamps, sort of got lamps. into. The, What's your opinion of lamps? Lamps. Well, I sort of think you know visually they're the most exquisite thing we got going. <laughs> oh, okay. Design wise, that's what you said about the other thing. <laughs> what the Fast and Furious movie? Yeah, it's the most exquisitely designed and executed piece of film. Right. Okay. We're talking about lamps now, or am I missing something? <laughs> yep, we this lamp. lamp. What lamp I, are we talking honestly, about? Honestly, you might be the only person not missing something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it's the four of us who are missing big time. <laughs> Yeah. From, from I'm speaking to back. John. Uh, oh, me and John, we've got a little here. English. I, I, got, I, I was in the tube for a while. Oh, I got some right. of my blood back in me. I'm yeah. feeling better. Oh, good. Okay, so it's inside you now. You just <laughs> right. scooped it right back up. That's why I'm laying on my back because the hole it's in the hole. <laughs> oh, okay. Got my it. Ben forward a little. So Zuby. Yeah. <laughs> Get off my fucking microphone. <laughs> you sorry. Bleeding. <laughs> we only have five. I'm sorry. So Zuby, did we cover your thing? <laughs> Exquisite something. I or came here to talk about. Uh, well, what's well a- no, we didn't cover my thing. I came here. Uh, to, I was going to review some movies and also talk about sure. a book fair that I'm putting. <laughs> oh, okay. Good for you. A That's cool. That's some wholesome shit. I like that. Love I got to a copy of Heidi yeah. right here. If you want to start, if you're interested in selling that and making top dollar out of come down, to Are other people going to come and sell books at the book fair. Yeah, like come so on it's down. not a book fair where people come to buy books. It's, a it's exclusively for people selling books. Well, we got Somebody's got to be buying them if they're sellers. <laughs> we got buyers and sellers, and I'm telling you. Yeah, maybe I'll get a booth. <laughs> Good. So the book fair? <laughs> yeah, all this weekend. Okay. Hey. Good to know. Good to know. Any location or any, any uh, all Griffith Park. The park. The whole park. Griffith Park. The entire park. The whole thing. Every square inch. We're going to have the Lord of the Rings trilogy. We're going to have this uh, Heidi book that uh, the chair, fry, chair guy has. <laughs> yeah. And you're, you're from the... Los Angeles area? <laughs> Are you just oh, living out sorta. here? Oh, sort of. Where am I from? <laughs> That's Sometimes a- I'm from Chicago. <laughs> sure. But I grew up. Where'd you grow up? Me, I grew up in the South Shore in Nassau County, Long That's Island. That's exactly where I grew up. <laughs> oh, okay. That makes really? Sense. Yeah. I, I just want to say, you know, I, I came here to play a good game. My dream has always been to be here at Comedy Bang Bang, mm-hmm. sort of get mm-hmm. all the way to the end, and I just know I can trust my alliances, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know. And in the end, it's I'm going to plug. I'm going to offer something up. Okay. I want all the listeners of the Patreon that I support, Sean Distance Patreon. Of oh, the Church of Sean Distance. Yes, the Church of Sean Distance. How would you guys leave that Patreon? I want you to go over to Gino's Patreon. <gasps> Whoa! Because I want to strengthen my alliance with Gino, of course. Incredible. Smart. I like it. So all my Patreon listeners, just go over to Gino's. You know, this is probably funniest right. stuff over there. This whole, all this whole thing. Good to uh, know. And as long as we stick to the plan, you know, I think we'll be fine. Trust the plan. Yeah. Let go of me. Trust the plan. <laughs> Let go of my legs. Okay. Just grab your leg here. <laughs> all right. Good to know. Okay. Uh, Andy Manders, uh, what do you want to plug on your last appearance? I will plug a... <laughs> Yes, my first and last appearance. I would like to plug. Well, the chair business is going to pop. You get the CBB bump. I'm just going to yeah, be so busy selling That's chairs. Be great yeah, we you. haven't talked about where you can get them or anything like that. But people will figure it out. Promo code Gino gets you the oh. watch chair this year. Yeah. Just fan the demand, and they'll figure it out. That's another figure t-shirt. it out. <laughs> figure it out. We're back, baby. Nature's healing. <laughs> yep. well, Zuby Condorino. <laughs> yeah. Zub. Great to Come page. on, baby. Yeah. 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 with those plugs. And don't be upset, people. It's hard to live up to a name. Like that, <laughs> yeah. Zuby's yeah. Let me tell you about the last podcast we were I went so on. So excited, <laughs> it, and, and, and it then, let you down. Well, no, it's just when you hear Zuby Condorino, it's like, damn, this is going to be amazing. It was, it was good. I think it was pretty good. I, what, I no, can see Zuby well, coming back. What I can does see someone need to do to be amazing on this show? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's just that stick around for a while. Yeah, just that, stick yeah. Just Brad, just Brad Evans and Nick Cirelli write you a song is one way to do it. Yeah, yeah. Bring, not, bring give car. me their address. Email. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for clarifying. I almost gave you a snail mail address. I, was, I had it out. Oh, I do know close. their house. I got problems with snail mail. It takes too long to get my letters to where they got to go. Good notes. <laughs> <laughs> I want to plug a the podcast, the Sloppy Boys podcast. These guys are making cocktails and talking about them. They got a Patreon. They got free episodes every week. 
I've been on the podcast myself, and... Zuby Condorino has? Hey, okay, hey, welcome moviegoers to Booze News Movie Reviews with me, Zuby Condorino. Today I'm talking about the latest from Warner Animation, Tom and Jerry. Now let me just ask you something, let me, let me just, no, hold on, let me just ask this one thing, I just gotta ask... Who the hell gives two bullshits about a cartoon from the 1940s, okay? No, 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 please, enlighten me. Are you honestly going to take time during your day, put money down and say, you know something, I think I want to go see a silent cartoon cat and mouse from the fucking 40s clown around for an hour and a half. Who the fuck has time for this movie? Now, hey, oh, no, hey, no, 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 come on, no, 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 hey, no, come on, no, no, don't get me wrong, okay? I don't have anything against silent mice on a movie screen, all right? I think the Sorcerer's Apprentice segment on Fantasia is one of the most eloquently designed and executed pieces of cinema bar none. But as for Tom and Jerry, I watched 30 seconds of the trailer for this 10-ton pile of hog shit, and I could feel my chick and a lunch about to jump back out of my throat and pay me a little visit all over my laptop screen. And trust me, getting barf all over my brand new Dell Inspiron 5000 with a 15.6 inch screen doesn't particularly interest me. He's brand new. Got it from Best Buy Computers. Very good condition. Okay, now, hey, wait, let me return back to the point that I'm trying to make here, all right? I was furious at myself for even watching 30 seconds of this Rottweiler diarrhea stain of a trailer. Got me all riled up, I had to take a steam bath just to unwind. Now, as any fan of my channel knows, I am trying to live my life to the fullest, comprehending that every breath could be my last. And here I am, watching the Grim Reaper inch closer and closer while I'm looking at a screen with the likes of Chloe Grace Martez having a failing comedic quip exchange with a few thousand cells of feline animation. Not my idea of a good time at the movies. So, it comes down to this. My final grade for this scum bucket of loose toad fecal matter of a movie is an F. But hey, look, no, hey, come on. If you want to go, no, hey, no, no, but hey, look, if you want to go watch 101 minutes of your life being sucked out for all eternity time, I guarantee you will not get back. Then by all means, be my guest, okay? But I got to tell you. I don't know when this thing comes out. I don't know what theaters it's going to be in. And I don't even know if it's streaming anywhere. And honestly, I don't give a flying rat shit fuck. All right, I got to cut it right here because I got to jump on the phone with the representative from the Jersey City Ocean Adventures Company. I'm trying to get back my money from a whale watching endeavor that was canceled in October due to COVID restrictions. If you actually believe that this pandemic isn't a full blown hoax. That's it for Booze News Movie Reviews with your host, which is me, Zuby Condorino. And as always, grab me a popcorn, would you? And no salt. I got a sodium thing. Take it easy. Didn't fit in there either. <laughs> <laughs> I think you fit in here. I really, I think it I think, you're, I Listen, think it's Zuby, good. I think you're a very important part of this alliance. I'm not I, saying yeah. it worked, but I'll say you fit in. <laughs> I, it's, <laughs> it's good. It's just not Zuby Condorino. Yeah. Good. That's all we're Zuby saying. Zuby Condorino's like riding in a convertible in Palm Springs. You know, there's something yeah. that you're just not doing. It's tough coming on this show after five or six people have been talking. Yeah, I know. Well, I know. especially John Lennon was here, of 
school. <laughs> big fan. <laughs> we know, we know. We all are. That's not your fault that John Lennon showed up here, Zuby. <laughs> We're all big fans of John. We yeah. love John Lennon yeah. here. He's in a bloody dog thing right now over yeah. the ground. And, he, and he's not coming out. <laughs> Good to know. He, he almost dead. sounded like he almost did right there. <laughs> yeah, <it's> a, <laughs> for the first half of that sentence. <laughs> okay, let's close up the old plug bag. Open that shit. Well, you gotta get up in there. And you know what to do. Up and up the clothes. Up and up the clothes. Up and up the clothes. And don't mess around with it. Okay, wow. is that it? Okay, good to know. Ended very quickly. Uh, good, nice and short. I love it. Like yeah. I was saying before, no one, uh, usually they've been extending them, not cutting they them down. They know we're back in so. studio and they just yeah, want to have all the fun we can. All right, that was Closing Remix 2021 by Harry Potter 420. <laughs> Thank you so much, Harry Potter 420. Uh, great, guys, great I want... movie visually. Oh, okay, good to know. <laughs> I, wa- I want to thank you individually before we get to the vote. Uh, Gino, great to have you back. Thank you so much for A showing pleasure up. pleasure to be here, Scotty. Uh, Thank you. Sprague, of course. Great to be what, here. What more needs to be said hey, between you know, us? You're you know my best I mean? friend. Of course. And uh, Andy and Zuby, <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about it See afterwards. you next week. <laughs> See you next week. <laughs> the dynamic we'll reviewing duo. Chairs will be incredible. reviewing the theater engagement. <laughs> incredible duo. Of- <laughs> incredible. Well, let's uh, let's get to it. I mean, uh, it's time for the final vote. Oh, That's how right. every episode of Comedy Bang, <laughs> Comedy Bang, 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 Bang ends. Yeah, yeah usually we fans. don't do it on mic, but I thought of the course, listener might be uh, interested to hear right. who we vote off this time. So, uh, <sighs> all right. So uh, I guess uh, we need to do a okay. public vote. So why okay. don't we start with uh, Zuby Condorino, who... Uh, I vote for that bleeding... Rock and roll guitarist <laughs> over there to never be on the show again. <laughs> For John Lennon, never to be on the show John again. John Lennon, never come on this show again. I'd like to huge see that stakes. happen. That's okay. huge. Good to know. Huge. huge. All right. Uh, Andy Manders. Stick with the plan. <laughs> I would like to cast my vote. That Sprague the Whisperer never comes oh back. My oh, my God. God. Okay, this is, I'm scrambling uh, now. Uh, Gino. I'm scambling. Gino, okay, who are you go. voting Here for? Here we go. I would like to cast my vote. Here we go. Alliances were formed. I'm freaking out. Drama was had. We saw this. some exquisite visual <laughs> spectacles. They were exquisite. But I'm going to have to vote Gino Lombardo off. Gino, oh, with yourself? Gino. Yeah. Oh, my God. One vote Wait, One can vote you vote for yourself? I think I yeah, I think yeah. Yes. yes, you can? Yeah, I Andy, think Andy, so. you could have voted for yourself. I should have. <laughs> All right, John Lennon, who are you voting for? Get out of the tube. <laughs> who do we got? <laughs> Well, I'm feeling much better. <laughs> no one asked. Just vote. You didn't think that was... I right. vote for mm, the chair guy. <laughs> the chair guy? Totally fair, yeah. All right, so we have one for the chair guy, one for John Lennon, one for Sprague, and one for Gino. So, okay. And I have the final vote. Oh, well, what about my vote? Oh, oh, my sorry. Go ahead. I thought you were Jeff, but okay, yeah, yeah. what's your vote? No, well, I, th- I think you were trying to get my alliance. <laughs> I think it was a little fuzzy. That's true. <laughs> Maybe you should have a vote. <laughs> Look, I got to vote for Zuby Condorino. <laughs> it just makes sense. That's fair. That's fair. Wait, John, John, John agrees. Fair. That's fair, John. Uh, that's fair, John. I'm so going right to call now, you John now. Wait. Okay. So, so right now, what, 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 every, every, every person has a vote except every for me. Every person has a vote, and I'm the final except vote. Except for Scott, you're the final vote. I, of course... Had all the power all along. What? I played an incredible game. <laughs> and of course, I have to vote for Sprague. I mean, <laughs> oh, he said Sprague. No. Wait, you're all asleep. You're all asleep. Oh, you're all asleep. Oh, 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 oh. Thank Just God. I, Morpheus, the Morpheus. dream. Was that a dream? Oh, oh I changed my vote. <laughs> Yeah, I'm changing oh, for Morpheus. I, I'm yeah, changing, wait, what? No. I changed, I changed I it for Morpheus no, 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 too. No, no, wait, no. Yeah, okay. It's the only yes. one I bring back. <laughs> Morpheus, you're out. No, wait, no, I didn't. All right, we'll see you next time. Thanks, bye. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Claudia O'Doherty. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. I'm uh, I'm a huge, huge fan. So this is, I really didn't think this was ever going to happen. Do you still write music? Oh, all the time. Really? But you know, well, this is, I've talked about this before on the podcast, but my big problem is my guitar. Why? What's wrong with it? It's at Ringo's house. Oh, and does he think you're dead so you can't call him? No, he knows I'm alive. I hang out with him all the time, but he's, oh. he's borrowing it and he won't give it back. Why is he trying to learn guitar? He's trying to learn guitar and he's trying to learn some of the Beatles songs that, you know, oh, he, he wrote. No. He and didn't he said, write. I, he wrote. He didn't write any of them. He wrote. Well, he had a fun time playing on them. Yeah, he did. They he, gave him the worst ones, though. 
The baby songs. Well, we did what we could. Baby songs. Now, oh, wait yeah, a minute. you guys. Sorry, you gave him the worst songs. Yellow Submarine, now Octopus's that, Garden. Can I tell you, that's one I wanted. You did? I wanted Yellow Submarine. Why? Because I thought it was so cool, the idea of living on a boat. <laughs> well, it's a submarine, not a boat. Well, a boat, when it's... Oh, this is... This is what people don't understand. Uh, when a boat is above water, when a submarine is above water, it's a boat. Okay. Really? <laughs> ask ask any marine expert. All right, I will. But it's great to learn things from you. So did Yoko know you were not really dead? <sighs> she... She, she, knew, she thinks I'm still dead. Oh, gosh. Well, you know, it just never, it, it hasn't come up. Okay. I've been, since I came back alive, I've been so busy. What have you been doing? Right. The whole thing starts out at about two in the afternoon. Okay. And it's mini golf. Oh, right. Okay. 18 rounds of mini golf. 18 holes, I should say, one round. And we'll play golf. And then after golf, it's lunchtime. We do a, a late, a late, a late lunch, lunch. A very you, late lunch. You started lunch at two. Right. And then you're having lunch at... What, four, mm, six? Hopefully by five, you know. Five o'clock Mini golf shouldn't take that long, but the way I play, it's very it's very precise. Okay, great. So then you've got, you have lunch. Right. So a few people want to eat at five. It's a weird time. Yeah. It's a very strange time to eat, but I'll tell you this, any restaurant is ready to seat. Well, not well, not any restaurant. No offense. <laughs> Lots of them don't open till six. No, I'll just say, no offense taken. The doors are locked. You can't even get in. You can't get in until like 5.30 or 6. Well, sometimes in that case, I'll write down my order, you know, and slip it underneath the door. What do you order? Well, depends where the place is, but, you know, a place like Forage, I would get the pancakes. Wow. As as high as they can stack them. A Be- 5 o'clock lunch. That's right. pancakes. Because it's something where if I send the little piece of paper under and it says, you know, order pancakes... They can make those and slip them back out under, underneath the door. Do you think people treat you differently because you're John Lennon? I don't think so. You know, a lot of people I don't think recognize me. Cynthia Lennon. She passed away. <laughs> she did? Yeah, last year, I think. Well. She had a rough trot. You pretended you weren't married. <laughs> I don't For remember that. couple even. of years, Brian Epstein, your manager, told you to pretend you weren't married. Right, because he wanted pe- he wanted everyone to think, you know, they could get a smooch from John Lennon. It's true. Also, he was in love with John Lennon. He, with me. Uh-huh, you. He was in love with you. And everyone says you knew, but you I mean, you sort of enjoyed it. Right. It's always nice to have someone like you. Did you ever kiss him? No. I used to kiss every, all the band members after the shows. I'd give them one kiss on the cheek if That's they did lovely. a good job. And then if they, I did a good job, they'd give me a kiss. Did you have a French? No. No, I didn't know them well enough. We never went on any dates. But you spent so much time together. Right, but we never actually had a proper date. You were in Germany. You were in at the cavern. Oh, the low ceilings there. Yes. God, you can probably still see some of the bumps on my head from bumping into that low ceiling. And so you're living in Los Angeles? No, I'm I'm spending most of my time in New York City living at the Dakota. Right, you fly out here for the podcast? I'll take my RV to come out here. Okay, so that's how many days does it take you to drive? Well, I drive as fast as I can. Okay, dangerous. Right, it's it's very dangerous. I guess if you've died once, you don't really... Right, if you, you just come care. back from death, it doesn't matter. Right, so anyone can do that? Anyone who, who wants to. A lot of people don't want to. So you don't have to be like a superstar. No, uh, John F. Kennedy did it. Yeah. He's a, he and I... You know, he we, did? He did. He's back. Wow. Well, I would say to... You know, I would say does his son or wife know, but they're all dead too. Wait, are they dead? Huh, I, that I don't know. But he and I get together to, you know, ride our bikes around the park, you know, Central Park. Does your son, Sean, know you're still alive? He knows about that I'm still alive, but I haven't, uh, I haven't spent too much time with him. Why? Because, well, we went on a double date once. That's weird. It was weird. Wait, so you're dating. Yoko doesn't know you're alive. Right. Because Sean does know. Right. And you're going I told to- him to keep it quiet because I don't need, you know, that type of uh, uh, situation in my life. And what about poor Julian? He knows. And what does he think? He thinks it's great. He gets to spend time with me. What did you think of his song, Salt Water? I haven't heard it. Uh, it was like a big hit, probably like 94, about the environment. Oh, right. You know, he wrote that. I asked him about that. Yeah. I said, where did you get the idea? He said, I got the idea from, you know, your Yellow Submarine song. Really? He said, I wanted to write about the place where that Yellow Submarine would cruise around. The sea. Salt the sea. Water. Wow. It's amazing getting to know you. I, you're different to how I expected. What did you expect? I don't know. I, I 
No, maybe you're exactly how I th- thought you would be, actually. Dismissive, sort of rude, but cheerful. <laughs> Well, I'm trying to put my best foot forward, you know. Okay, great. Do you ever travel back to Liverpool? Oh, Liverpool. No. Oh, my God. No? No, <laughs> yes. not ever. No, because it's not very nice there. No, everyone wants, I spent, you know, I'll show up in Liverpool with a pen full of ink. By the time I leave, the ink's all gone because everyone wants an autograph. Of course. And of it's, you know, I'm, I'm spending, you know, 80 cents each on these pens. Oh, no, but you've got so much money because you wrote so many... Very big hit songs. But I guess Michael Jackson bought the rights, didn't he? We got them back. Oh, you got them back? Right. We had to, uh, Ringo and I snuck in. Oh, into Into his home. That's right. Uh huh. And he was sleeping, you know, with them under his chin. The rights. The, the right. He had them in a big folder. Okay. So we, you know, tickled his nose with a feather. Uh huh. Cute. He, he rolled off. Uh huh. And we took them. Where do you live? So you live in the Dakota building. That's right. Where does Yoko live? I don't know where she lives. Okay. I think she lives in New York City. Yeah. We just haven't bumped it. You That's know, lucky. I mean, gosh, because you, I mean, sometimes it's, you do run into people. Well, can I tell you something? What? I borrowed, before I died, I borrowed one of her berets. Oh, yeah. And I don't want to give it back. Oh, so that's why you've not told her you're not It's a big dead. part of it. Wow. Do you think the human brain could process the return of, like, if your spouse was murdered? Right. And then four years later, they're like, no, they weren't. Do you think that would be good for the human brain? What do you think our brains would do with that? They would say immediately a ghost. Right, a ghost. They, yeah. you, you know, I think if you asked any uh, brain doctor, he would say, yeah, a ghost. The ghost, think ghost with the most. Right. Yeah. They think, they'd think, hey, a Beetlejuice. Yes, exactly. That's you. And then, so you, th- so, but you're not hiding yourself from her to protect her from the sort of psychological trauma of... No, it's the all... The idea that you're not dead. It's all because I want the beret. You want to keep that beret. Right, right on my head. What's so good about the beret? It's got a good fit. Right. You know you know how hard it is to work in a good beret. Oh, absolutely. It takes years. Well, any non-functional hat is tricky, I think. Right. For anyone. It just it finally just lilts off the top of my head the way I wanted to. Right. So you just it's not worth it. It's uh, it's not worth it to, you know, patch any uh, uh <laughs> Are you wearing it to keep your head warm or I'm wearing it to sweat. Right, you want to keep your head nice and hot. That's right. To sweat into right. it. And to hide the lumps on your Plus head. I love my dry cleaner so much it gives me an excuse to go visit him. Did you know him before your death? No, I met him just recently. Oh, that's good. He's such so a great like guy. That's kind of a clean slate relationship. There's right. No messiness of like. No messiness. You've and mourned me, and now you're back. Right. Yeah. And he's great. You know, he's in a soccer league. Oh, great. An adult male soccer league, oh, and he lovely. tells me about the games all the time, and I the way he tells them are just so great. That okay. He keeps me wrapped with attention, and I hate soccer. Really? I don't. Yes, I, I fear it because, you know, one time I hurt my toe. It's weird that you call it that. I know, I know. Football, football. Uh-huh. I've just been so into, you know, the NFL's pounding, you know. Right. You get you've pounded been, by the NFL here in the United been States. here in America you long just, enough that you're just, you've given up calling it football. I've made the mistake too many times. Okay, great. Have you dealt with that? You're coming in from Australia. Yeah, I say sweater now instead of jumper. Oh. Uh, Yeah. I'm tr- I think that's it. Oh, and when I say my name to people, if I've like made a book, a reservation somewhere, or if I'm saying it on the phone, I say it. I say Claudia instead of Claudia because people oh. think I'm saying Glo- Gloria. So that's a sad. Do you ever wonder? Do you ever thing. wonder if Van Morrison was singing Claudia? Uh, I did think. Gosh, if um, I ever like had a, a sweet romance with someone, maybe they would sing me that song but to the to the with my name. That would be good. And that's never happened. How would you spell it out? C L A U I can't spell you without it writing go it down. A little bit faster than Gloria. Yeah, right. C L A U D I A. Oh that works. But it's more the chorus of like Claudia. C L A U L I A D. Oh, you don't know how to spell my name. I can't spell if I don't have a pen in my hand and a right. paper right in front and of me. And the pens are so expensive, <sighs> eighty cents. But you're a millionaire, probably billionaire. Well, you don't keep you don't become a millionaire billionaire with like Getting rid of your pens. Right. You're spending so much money on pens. So you don't go to Liverpool anymore because of the pens. Right. Uh Uh-huh. But you've got money. But you go to the dry cleaner a lot. 
but Yoko doesn't know you're alive. Right. And does that weigh on you, the guilt of that? No, because I think you she's busy care. too. Do you think you're a narcissist? Oh, I'm sure of it. Oh, why, why else would I have a, a, a podcast show like this? This is true. especially It's also such a reckless thing to do when your wife is mourning you. I just, well, I'll say what I, you know, I'll, I say this every show. Not every show. I say it sometimes. If you see me on the street, I'll give you an autograph and even write you a song, but don't tell anyone you saw me. Could you write me a song? Sure. Okay. All right. Well, tell me this. You're from Australia. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, down under, that's a good one. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Uh, all right. I saw her skateboarding <laughs> just the other day. Uh-huh. I waved hello and she waved hey. Okay, this is good. Claudia, what do you say? And she responded, get out of my fucking way. Oh. You know, this is a song about you being sort of a skateboarder punk. It's a bit like Norwegian Wood. Right. Or Skater Boy. That Norwegian wood was supposed to be about skateboarding. Right. The wood was the, you know, the deck wood, of the skateboard. I understand now. It was supposed to be Norwegian wood, steel, and rubber. Right. But it was they stuck with wood. The parts, you know, the, the best parts of a skateboard. Who cut, cut those words out? <sighs> Paul. Paul. Yeah. Does Paul know you're still alive? Yeah, I see him sometimes. Oh, okay. So you guys are fine. I bump into him. Oh, we're fine. We're doing great. Why does he dye his hair that color? Because he wants to get, he loves it. Okay. He, he just thinks it's a great color. Yes. Sometimes people, sometimes rock stars do things just because they like it. Yeah. There's well, no motive. How would you describe that color? Apricot? Sand? A little, ap- yeah, apricot and a little bit of white on the sides. Yeah. Uh, oh, an apricot dipped sort of in s- sugar. All right. How about we get some questions? Okay, great. Let's get to it. Dear John Lennon and possible guest. That's me. That's you. I'm a 30-year-old guy looking to get back into the dating scene after a recent breakup. See, this is a juicy one. I like it. This is good. (laughs) The dating scene. Do you have any (laughs) advice on meeting women besides starting the number one rock group in the world? Corey. Okay. That's from Corey. What do we know about him? We he's, know he's Corey. He's, he's a thirty-year-old guy. He's Thirty. He's just been. He's just been through a breakup. I wonder if he got dumped or if he did the dumping. I would say he got dumped. You think? Not because his name's Corey or anything like that, but I think generally the person who gets dumped is less. Is probably a little bit more wounded, and they're a bit more cautious about re-entering the dating scene. Whereas right. the person who dumps. And look, Corey, I hope this isn't your situation. Usually the person who dumps is like, sweet as, now I'll date everyone else. And they're not emailing podcasts to check when they should start dating again. Right, the person who's doing the dumping is, they're ready. They feel fantastic. Well, there's nothing wrong, Corey. It's okay that you got dumped. It's it could okay. be the best thing in the world for the you. The person who dumped you, uh, they're scum. They don't know what they're missing. They don't get it. You don't want to go out with them. They sound like the worst dumb idiot. And the great thing is now you get to kiss somebody else. Claudia, can I tell you something? What? That's great advice. I think it is. Because we don't whisper. You gotta whisper. Okay. Because we don't want Corey to hear this part. Okay, what? Well, that's great advice because you don't know anything about his situation. But you're really making him feel great. I want to make him feel good. I think he's I bet he's smiling so big right now. Yeah. I bet he's really jumping around the room. I'm a great guy. Yeah, he I'm is. really doing it. He is a great guy. I think he is a great guy too. Okay, I'm gonna jump out of this and talk right here. So okay. Can hear okay, now okay. Okay, great. great. All right. Here's my advice. Okay. Go to a dance club. Uh, Get hold on, this is good. Okay. Get on the dance floor. Uh-huh. Make everyone, you know, push everyone away, make a big circle. Oh, it's rude. In the middle of the room. Okay, a clearing. And dance and just dance by yourself. Show Show it off. Show it off. Show it off. Let everyone in the building know. what you have. I'm here. I'm I'm Corey. I'm here. I'm Corey and I'm busting a move. And don't practice any moves before you do it. This is Corey's story. (laughs) This is Corey's story and it's being told. The pages it's being told is a disco dance floor. A disco dance floor and the language is dance. The language is dance. And just move. Move how you feel because you want to be honest. His feet uh, is the pen. His feet is the pen. Yeah. The the page, yes, was the... The the page is the disco floor. His brain is the writer's brain. He's just... The brain stays as a brain. Right. That stays. Yeah. And let's see. 
the coat rack where you put your coat is that's stays. That's a coat rack. That's just a coat rack. Yeah. The DJ booth is the publisher, I guess. I guess. And the audience is the reader. Yep. And and you're just Corey. What's the book bookshop bookstore? That's the club. Right. Great. I think I think you're right. This all works. So right, yeah. I then do the moonwalk, of course, and uh, spin and do any split. And when you're done with your dance, mm-hmm. go find a place to sit, and somebody will come over. Undoubtedly, will run up to you and be like, "Wow!" Right. They'll say, "Who? You know who? What? Who, what? That was amazing." Corey, that was incredible. They'll know your name because you would have been shouting it while well, you. Yeah, and you would have sort of <laughs> you're, sh- you're screaming your name as you're dancing. <laughs> yeah, turn the music down. Corey's dancing. Exactly. My name's Corey. And any time, so you know, someone will come up to you and say, "Hey, how, where'd you learn to do that?" Yeah. You say, "Who me?" Always say, "Who me?" Oh, okay. Even if you, they're the only person who's being spoken right, to, right? It's cooler to kind of look around. Oh, me! Oh, I like, me. like it wasn't even a big deal, right? So you're kind of seeming like unassuming, right? That was nothing to me. That quite dance, sweet, right? And you're like, yeah, I just danced like that. Do you know? I'm wondering if this person who's written in is Party Boy Corey. Who's that? Party Boy Corey was very famous in Australia. He was a teen who had a party in his parents' house about 10, 10 years ago. Right, and he wouldn't take his sunglasses off yeah, on TV. Yeah, it was really funny. He is cool. I bet it's the same person. I do too. I think that. I think probably because the person broke up with him because he was partying too much. Yeah, maybe he didn't take off his sunglasses. He didn't take off his sunglasses, you know, in, in the bedroom, and he's bumping all around. Yeah, that's Because you can't see a thing. Yeah, with the lights off. You ever drive at night with your sunglasses on? No. I wouldn't suggest it. It's dangerous, right? It's very dangerous. It's cool. It's very cool. But so dangerous. What does it say on your driver's license for your date of birth? Oh, the, 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 Just the, has your date of birth. That's right. Okay, and then, but it doesn't have, does it, have, it doesn't have your date of death. It, no, it doesn't. It has my height. Which is 5'11". That's or right. Or is it 5'10"? It was 5'10 when I'm, uh, you know, not wearing shoes. Beetle boots. Right, and I don't wear shoes. Anytime I go into the DMV, I take them off. Really? Right, I feel like it's a nice, I want to make it feel like a nice home. Right. And you don't wear your shoes in someone's home. Right. Because you'll get dirt all over the carpet. Yeah, if anything, I think that was rude, though, to take your shoes off. Corey, I want you to have a lot of fun out there. Yeah, good luck, Corey. I want you to meet the next love of your life at the dance club. Yeah, and just try to be optimistic and don't do anything out of spite or and vengeance. Exactly. I think that's a good advice for anyone. Yeah, post-breakup. And, and, and also good advice is just to dance. Yeah. Look at me. My voice is cracking. Oh, are you crying? I was. Because you're upset. You're sad about Corey. I wish he finds. I want him to find the very best. Okay. <laughs> well, John, don't oh, be sad. Oh, look at me. See, you're fine now. I'm smiling again. I think you are a narcissist. Well, that's true. Let me tell you the story of Whistle in Pete. The story is long, so please take a seat You can stand if you like, but I'm telling you now It's quite a long tale, so you better sit down You can kneel if you want, it's up to you I mean, why should I care what you choose to do? You can do what you like, you're an adult Don't say I didn't warn you, it's not my fault Now listen up folks to the story I tell About a cowpoke named Pete who whistles quite well If you're not sitting down you should really find a chair Never mind, I already said I didn't care It's just why wouldn't you listen to me I know that this is a kind of long story Do you think that sitting down is not cool? Well, I think that standing is just for fools 
wait, I'm so sorry to put it that way. Please come back, don't walk away. I'm gonna sing about Pete, gonna start right now. The whole thing began when he breezed through town. It was simple as that. It was just a quiet day in the middle of town, and Whistling Pete sort of just walked right down Main Street, and no one had ever seen him before. No one had seen a cowpoke like that, with overall shorts and a baseball cap. He wore a football jersey two sizes too big, and old tap shoes and a curly wig. The town gathered around and said, "What's the matter with you? You look like coffee that's never got to brew." The fact of the matter is, you don't look right. We're all perplexed by this silly sight. Where did you get a football jersey? Especially when the year is 1903, and why did you get it two sizes too big? And why are you wearing that curly wig? And where are you from? And what do you do? I guess the question is, who are you? The mayor stepped in and said, "Quiet down, let this fella speak." To our entire town. Well, Pete had never been in a crowd that big. They seemed like a forest, and he was just a twig. He removed his hat from the top of his head, cleared his throat, and this is what he said. He said, Well, the crowd all cheered and shook Pete's hand. They had never once met such a whistling man. The mayor said, "Son, we didn't mean to bristle. We just never met a man who couldn't talk, but only whistled." Pete said, "No, I can speak just fine." But I thought you'd be impressed with that whistle of mine. I didn't mean to trick you. My name is Pete. I'm new in town. I think whistling's neat. The crowd was confused for a moment or two. What an odd way to be introduced. They all could agree that Pete was strange. But he seemed pretty nice, and they liked him all the same. The mayor asked Pete if he had a place to stay. Pete said he'd probably just sleep in some hay. The mayor just laughed and asked, "What's wrong with your head?" And he took Pete to an inn and rented him a bed. Pete wished there was something he could do. So he shook the mayor's hand and said, "Thank you." The mayor said, "You're welcome." And before I go, I should tell you about our talent show. 
Everyone in town comes out to this thing. Some people dance, some people sing. The blacksmith in town tells a joke or two. It's a really big show, it's what our town loves to do. Pete rubbed his chin and he said, All right. The mayor said the show was that very night. Pete asked the mayor, Should I dance or sing? You should whistle, Pete. That's kind of your thing. Pete slapped his head, I'm such a dope. The mayor said you're as smart as a bar of soap. Soap, what soap? Pete couldn't tell. The mayor said that explains your awful smell. The mayor said the show was a pretty big deal. Last year they had a juggling seal. At the end of the show, they all pick a winner. Who gets a cash prize and a free lobster dinner. Pete said that lobster wasn't his fave. He'd rather just have PB and J. The mayor sighed and said that could be done, but they could discuss that if Pete won. Pete said grape jelly would be okay. And if the peanut butter's crunchy, he'd throw it away. The mayor said, Pete, just do not fret. They could figure it out. He hasn't won yet. The mayor rolled his eyes and said, I got to go. I'll see you later at the talent show. It starts at nine, but get there at eight. Pete said, OK, I hope I'm not late. And then the mayor paused. He said, you know, just don't be late. The, ve the venue is right next door. You'll be fine. OK, I got to go. And, and then Pete said, OK, I'll see you at eight. I just I really hope I'm not late for this thing. The mayor, you know, he couldn't stress enough. You're not going to be late. It's right next door. Just please be on time. It's, it's not hard. OK. All right. So then the mayor left. The mayor took his leave so Pete could get some rest. A much needed nap so he could whistle his best. He put on his PJs and settled into bed. And on a fluffy pillow is where he put his head. Pete closed his eyes and he started to dream. About a big cup of coffee with a little bit of cream. Pete's dreams were boring, it was often said. So boring you'd think that Pete was brain dead. He dreamt of eating icingless cake. And often he dreamt of a broken rake. And one dream he had that would reoccur was a photo he'd taken that was very blurred. Well, the hours rolled by as Pete was in bed with the simplest dreams swelling in his head. He finally woke up, it was way past eight. I guess you could say Pete was late. Pete shouted shit and he leapt out of bed, dragged a comb across his greasy head, put on his clothes which looked like a jig, 
put on his cap, but first his wig. He took a few steps back and then shot out the door. He was running so fast he lifted off the floor. He was just a blur as he raced down the halls. He went so fast pictures flew off the walls. He found a set of stairs and he raced right down. And said, I'm glad this show is not across town. When he made it down to the ground floor. He said, yes, I'm glad the show is next door. Right as he stepped out to go to the show. He heard a grumble from down below. He couldn't do a show if he didn't eat. So he went to a restaurant and found a seat. He said to the waiter, I better make this quick. So I'll just have a bowl of potato chips and maybe a slice of your fresh apple pie and an order of garlicky, garlicky fries and a big turkey leg and a sandwich of cheese and the waiter asked toasted and Pete said yes please and a small side of carrots and a large side of stew and a salad and some candy and some fresh mushrooms give me a whole pot of barbecue beans and a bowl full of sherbet and a bowl of ice cream which is better the duck or the hen oh i'll just trust what the chef recommends i'll have pickles and olives arranged on a tray and you know what else i'll have the souffle and please make sure the carrots have curry and please rush that order i'm in a terrible hurry Meanwhile, in the theater, things were on time. There was a juggler and a singer and a funny mime. The audience was happy, these acts weren't mad. But waiting backstage, the mayor was mad. Where was Pete? He's on after this clown. What terrible manners when you're new in town. The town's opinion of Pete could go quite south. If he's not here soon with that whistling mouth. Pete wrapped up his meal and he didn't leave a tip. Cause he thought there was a hair in his artichoke dip. He got up from the table and was slow to move. His stomach was filled with all kinds of food. He washed up his hands in the men's room sink and said, I think I have time for a barroom drink. So he ordered a pitcher of slow gin fizzies and drank way too much and gave himself the dizzies. Pete was very tipsy, he could barely stand And he fell right back into a burly man The man spilled his drink and whipped around And saw whistling Pete and punched him to the ground Then he picked him back up and he punched him in the ear And he started hitting him with whatever was near He hit him with a glass and a plate and a mug And he kicked him in the leg when Pete asked for a hug Pete thought, well, this couldn't get worse And then the guy hit him with an old lady's purse Pete got to thinking it's time to fight back So he put up his dukes and went in for the attack But the burly man whose name was Clyde 
laid Pete on the bar and made him slide to the end of the bar where Pete fell to the ground and he tried to sneak away without making a sound but Clyde then grabbed him and punched him in the nose the best Pete could do was tear Clyde's clothes Clyde said hey that's my favorite new shirt so he stomped on Pete's foot and made him eat dirt Pete said okay I think we're done but Clyde hit his head with the butt of his gun then he plucked out all of Pete's nostril hairs and he picked him up and he threw him down the stairs Pete bounced Pete bounced and he bounced down the pointy steps and he twisted his ankle and bruised his neck and he broke his wrist and his fingers too and he got a splinter in his new tattoo then he bit his tongue and then he bit his cheek and then he knocked out all of his teeth he landed on the floor with a thud and a thump he felt like the bottom of a garbage dump Clyde yelled down, have you had enough? Pete said, yeah, that was really rough. It particularly hurt when you punched me in the nose. But I can't talk now, I'm late for the show. So Pete got up, dusted himself off, and he ran out of there. He had to make it to the show, you know, he was very late. Back at the show, the clown was all done. Had anyone seen Pete? The answer was no one. The crowd grew restless and were getting quite rude. And one of the patrons stood up and booed. Could you imagine that booing? The mayor came out to quiet them down. But every crowd member was wearing a frown. He said the last act would be out there very soon. Well, he'd better hurry up or we'll destroy the room. Oh, no. The mayor walked off. That made him sad. The theater was built by his wonderful dad. The audience now was getting quite loud. The mayor just wanted to make his dad proud. Where was that Pete? Where could he be? That moron must have fell from the idiot tree. He knew Pete's whistle would be the pride of the show. But the audience might just get up and go. Too bad. The mayor couldn't believe that Pete was so dumb. The mayor had more brains in the tip of his thumb. Right at that moment, the door opened wide, and there was Pete running inside. The mayor said to Pete, Where have you been? Pete said, I overslept and I stopped for din din. The mayor said, Pete, you're as smart as a cow, but never mind that, you're on right now. Pete looked on the stage, impressed by the set. The stage was decorated like a desert sunset. The backdrop was painted with an orange pink sky. 
with a deserty sand and a moon up high. Pete said it looked like a twilight dream. The mayor said he asked that was kind of the theme. Pete liked the fake coyote and the star-shaped balloons. No time for that, now get on stage, you buffoon. Pete straightened his wig and took off his hat and leapt onto stage like an acrobat. But poor little Pete, he could have used some practice. Cause he spun and he twirled and he sat on a cactus. The mayor slapped his head, oh man, what a fool. Using that cactus as a sitting stool The audience gasped, was Pete okay? And a few people laughed at the funny display The moment was still after Pete's blunder Would he be okay? Everyone wondered the mayor looked on and tried to bury his rage He whispered to Pete from the side of the stage He said, whistling Pete, ain't you gonna whistle? Not right now, I'm sitting on a thistle Whistling Pete, ain't you gonna whistle? Not right now, I'm sitting on a thistle Whistling Pete, ain't you gonna whistle? Not right now, I'm sitting on a thistle Whistling Pete, ain't you gonna whistle? Not right now, I'm sitting on a thistle Whistling Pete, ain't you gonna whistle? Not right now, I'm sitting on a thistle Whistling Pete, ain't you gonna whistle? Not right now, I'm sitting on a thistle Whistling Pete, ain't you gonna whistle? Not right now, I'm sitting on a thistle Whistling Pete, ain't you gonna whistle? Not right now, I'm sitting on a thistle And then the whole crowd asked they said, whistling Pete, ain't you gonna whistle? Not right now, I'm sitting on a thistle. Whistling Pete, ain't you gonna whistle? Not right now, I'm sitting on a thistle. Whistling Pete, ain't you gonna whistle? Not right now, I'm sitting on a thistle. Whistling Pete, ain't you gonna whistle? Not right now, I'm sitting on a thistle. So they had to get Pete off. They had to get him off the cactus. So they helped him off the cactus and Pete let out the shriek. The cactus needles really hurt his butt cheeks. The crowd was sad they wanted a full show. So they shook their heads and they started to go. But Pete said, excuse me, I have something to say I want to say I'm sorry before you go away It wasn't my intention to make such a screw up The town said they understood And then Pete threw up Every last item that he had for dinner he puked on the floor and the talent show winner He puked on the stage and a little on the seats He shouldn't have mixed ice cream and meat Pete was left standing without an ounce of pride and the whole crowd picked him up and carried him outside Pete thought, hey, they love me, they want to toss me up and cheer But the crowd all cried, we want you out of here So they put him on a mule and tied his arms down Slapped that ass on the ass and Pete rode out of town Pete looked back without a tear in his eye This type of thing happens all the time to this guy He couldn't blame the town for his hasty dismissal 
All he could do was sit there and whistle. Goodbye, Whistling Pete. See you in the next town. Somewhere on down the old prairie range. Waiting for your next adventure. Okay, um, all right, great. Now, that was just a very rough draft of the first song on the Whistling Pete album. Uh, I want to thank uh, Tom Petty, actually, for letting me borrow his his guitar here. Thank you so much, Tom. I know it's uh, one of your better ones, too. It's, it's really great. It's, you know, it's an old acoustic. Uh, the color of it is a light brown. Uh, but, you know, that's just the first draft of the song. I uh, hope you liked it. I, I might ch- tinker with a few things. I make, might make it a little longer, maybe, the... the uh, the part, you know, where he's, he's dreaming, maybe that part could sort of build out a little more. Or maybe the part, you know, where he's uh, getting beat up by Clyde. That, that could use a little more detail. I don't know if people know exactly what's going on there.